can feel, I can feel the change. There's a whisper in the wind.
This is a shakedown. Order up that beat just like a takeout. Show me you got soul inside those new shoes. And you can rock and roll with the attitude. So good, so fresh, just the way you like it.
diamonds or pearls But I can give you all my extra time I never look at the other girls Cause you are always on my mind Like a sheep in a bathroom stall Girl, I know what's going through your mind So tell me what are you waiting for Trying to hide it behind the door And they keep on coming up And I keep on moving on And they keep on coming back for more And I keep on giving it up could be
since the dawn of time. All have submitted to one true ruler. Fate. Moments of euphoria. Sorrow. Acceptance. All are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule. Dare to triumph against all odds. Dare to rise above fate. Passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. Dream League Season 21 is brought to you by Intel. Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, and 1X Bat. We are ready for playoffs soon here for Dream League Season 21. I say soon because this was actually the time where playoffs were supposed to start, but we got a little bonus bonus series coming your way. It's a very important one as well with elimination on the line. So all in all, a top tier day of Dota 2 here coming your way from uh, the live studio here in Stockholm, Sweden. And I'm joined by none other than uh, Puck Champanas. Good morning, gentlemen. And I'm joined by none other than my co-host, Chickens. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. I take it that's good? Huh? Yeah? Good I morning. Asked, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Good. How are you? It looks like you have a tattoo, like an arm tat. How do you know? That? It's just my. No, arm I mean, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, your thing, the thing that you got going. No, it's an actual sleeve. No, I know, but it's. Pretending like, to be a sleeve. Yeah, it's like a, one of the tattoo sleeves. I tattooed my whole body overnight. That's possible. People do it. Painful. People do that. People do do that, but that sounds very painful. Uh, we have uh, we have a great day ahead, and uh, we have I know for a fact that we have a lot of extra other than the Dota two, which is also going to be great, but a lot of extra things coming your way as well. So it's definitely worth it to just keep the stream on the whole time. No pressure, but do it uh, with sound as well because it's going to be fun. When you're talking about fun. You're talking about our guests. They're fun. They're gr they're great guys. We're gonna have a great time with them. We have yeah. a lot planned. Yeah, we do have a lot. We have plan. a lot planned for a lot today plan. with these guys. Yes. Uh, so in. so let's get them on. Uh, Park Japanas, please join me in welcoming. It's none other than Fog. <laughs> this is really gorgeous. Problematic. <laughs> Well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to my life, bro. Wow! Oh my! Whoa! It looks actually looks. It looks good. <laughs> it looks realistic. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have a sister? Dude, this is actually absurd. Do you, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't think I. Careful for your long, microphone. I don't think I could ever have long hair like this. What's your longest hair you've ever had? <laughs> uh, probably like. <laughs> 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 Well, how are you guys doing? Good morning. <laughs> doing good. I must say. Don't look at me okay, like I, I gotta, I gotta explain the explicit love. Uh, in in real life, when I see you face to face, it's obvious it's a wig. But on camera, the way that you see it, it looks so realistic. Look good. It <laughs> looks I should have so shaved good. today. I was going to as well too. Dude, it fit better. <laughs> you look like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You're very small Tarzan. Well, every Tarzan needs a Jade. <laughs> Let's go bring out Odie Pixel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Owen Davies. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. What do you think of the new haircut? Looks cool. 
What's the longest you've ever had your hair? Oh, I don't know. I normally let it get pretty long, but my hair doesn't really go long. It kind of just goes out. You know, <laughs> it just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It looks pretty What's ridiculous. the biggest it's ever, like, you know, if it doesn't fall down ever, do you go full... Yeah, it, it's kind of like an afro. When I was a kid, people used to call me afro kid in school. Because I would just not get my hair cut, and it would just be like, it would be big. Yeah. Huh. Mine did, like, the bowl cut. The bowl cut kind of thing, where it just drags, and it's, like, covering your eyes. That's what always would happen, so... Very cool, very cool. Yeah, very cool, afro very sounds cool. cooler. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks good. It looks good. Uh, you both look good on that couch. And I Thank think it's, uh, it's about time that, uh, you know, we talk about combos because you guys make a, gr a great combination, a great duo. And some duos are insanely good. Some duos are insanely fun. Uh, and now I'm no longer talking about commentator duos. I'm talking about combos of spells. Because that's what I want to talk about. And uh, I was wondering if you guys had any combination of spells that you're like, that's the cool interaction. That's the cool one. Oh, and you have one for us. Um, I'm always a big fan of the old armlet terror blade comboed with uh, Witch Doctor Maledict. Explain. Um, you just put your armlet on as terror blade, lose yep. all your HP. Yep. Shadow blade up. Your mate pops Maledict on a full HP hero. You sunder them. You take their HP. Their HP goes from full to whatever it is, 15%. And then the next Maledict tick, they're Good dead. Head. That's pretty cool. Wins every rank game. So queue up it up now, <laughs> boys and girls. Off lane Terror Blade with the position for Witch Doctor. You rush the armlet and the Shadow Blade. And Witch Doctor can get a Shadow Blade as well and just sneak around the map and uh, kill people. A <laughs> very is very fucked. Sorry. Trying to get all the heads That's a good out of build. That's a good it's build. It's a good build. build. It's a great build. It's a, bad it's a one. good build. Yeah, I met his hair, by the way. That Witch Doctor thing sounds great as well. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what about you, Fug? Usually involving some type of Rubik thing. I don't know. Uh, prob probably agonims with blur and sunstrike because you can blur cataclysm, blur cataclysm, blur cataclysm if you get kills with it. So, because it refreshes regular spells, oh, not that's ultimates. Cool. Oh, that's so cool. usually there's there's usually like a million different cool ones with Rubik. I would say. Yeah, yeah. You could rearm in cataclysm too if they have two people griefing and two people going mid. Well, you, you can't, can't, you can't steal rearm. Can't steal rearm. Use scrub. No, Come so on. that's the only way to do you it. Is if you get blur. Analyst. What about? Uh, I'm not an analyst. I'm a co-host. Oh, okay, by the that's way. Fine, then. Uh, what about a uh, napalm plus rot? Yeah, that, rot that takes would, like that what twelve times per second. Yeah. yeah, but what takes there's what phantom? What takes faster? What takes if fast. Phantom's embraces more, right? That's uh, that might be the fastest actually. I can't remember. What, 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 what about torrent tick damage? That, yeah. how, how quick's torrent tick damage? Torrent is fast. It's torrent torrent eight, eight, so eight what's ticks? the, what's the combo th here then? Dude, that would be pretty hype. Sticky napalm and then you hit easy torrent and they're like. Yep. It's you. You steal napalm. Yep. And then you steal something that ticks very quickly. Yep. And then the what else does a lot of ticks? Shackles. Uh, Slark. Dark Sh pact. Shaman dark cycles. Pact dark pact. Yeah. Iron shell. Iron shell might be the fastest. Oh. Iron, Iron shell the fastest. fastest. My favorite ah. combo. Yeah. My favorite combo is uh, Pudge Necrophos. And Necrophos gets the eggs. Okay. Yeah. A heart. Yeah. And you eat the Necrophos. And then, and then you do it. slightly more damage than normal rot. It's very underwhelming. I doesn't no. It wouldn't be that. Why would it be underwhelming? Why is it on the, the, the not aura a with combo, that? Just good damage. Damage. Yeah, but if you're the necro, you just get to sit in a guy all game and you're chilling. Yeah, sure. You do whatever you want. You yeah. can go eat snacks. Yeah. So your favorite combo is the combo that does the that part. has you not playing. Dungeon. Yeah, because then I could go make one of those uh, brownies in a cup where you put the different ingredients. Oh, in. Oh, they're good. Microwave those are it. Good. And they you are got the good. Brownies. Especially are if good. you eat the cup as well. Thirty seconds yeah. later, not true. you shouldn't do that. Oh. You shouldn't recommend people to, <laughs> to do that. Eat the cup. Yeah, that's not a good oh. thing. It's not yeah. a good thing. No. Well, no. I am curious to hear what some of the favorite combinations of some of the players are. I found this from TikTok, you know. Marcy ulti, go, go, go. Fuck ulti. Jump. Woo! Watch TikTok, guys. Go, go, go. Oi! <laughs> Oi, it, it, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it sucks. <laughs> I think it's gonna be like the two people are gonna be in the same way. <laughs> well, let's use the max level and test. Okay. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, it's so bad. I could have done a cycle or something, but it's so bad. Whatever. I don't think. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> I'm sorry, it's so bad actually, but it, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be a cycle. I don't know what roles you have to be, but it also can work like this. Tight Hunter Soup, Dark Sir 3, <laughs> and just sleep. And usually you just put static on top, vacuum them all. You do like this, or I don't know, you press the ravage and after like, I need to hit them. It's not that much damage, but I feel like if people are doing it in the real game, like before, it show, it's like it looks really, really good. And like this type of combos where you need skill and like everyone should be focused, everyone should know what you have to do. You have to be really good player to do this in normal game. So I feel like this is the combo that you want to see and it looks really cool in the real games. Create combo. Wait, I need to like, ask my team. Okay. okay, let's start with this man. They die too fast. <laughs> and now they're all dead. <laughs> now they're all dead. I'm just I'm I'm just gonna hit with this panda. A few moments later. Ah, I mean, it's because the Marcy is, of course. Uh... More moments later. That's why I feel like pressure. Much, much, much later. I mean, you see it. Yeah, you got my point. I am very worried. Because that last one seems actually good, as in the the heroes, you only need the two heroes, kind of, and they are picked in the meta, and this is scary for Yeah, but Bruce banned every game, so we don't got to worry about it, right? Sure. <laughs> we saw That's a bit. Why we saw, we saw what, yeah, we did we get through a bit, yeah. 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 I mean, sure, that was a game what, where they, what, spirit, was a spirit, right? They already had Mega spirit, creeps, yeah. and then Collapse just goes in. But it's still, yeah. the, you, you saw how quickly Brew can just yeah. take your buildings and, in that case, take your throne. Oh, uh, Wings Gaming. Yep. Love it. So what was the favorite one out of the ones we saw? Uh, favorite one? Even I like, though he I like did storm stormers, I thought that was really great. <laughs> that was a cute try one, you know. Yeah. He was trying to set up something nice with the yeah, hooks yeah, and the things, yeah. you know. Like, I mean, the 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 GPK's one I think was the coolest because yeah. I I just never seen that one. That was the first one. I didn't I didn't catch. But that. basically, you, well, for, I'll give credit for because he had to explain it to me as well because earlier when I was watching it behind the scenes, I was like, what, what's going on? But it's yeah. Rubik stealing the Martial yep. and stealing Puck Stream Coil. Okay. Right, and then it's what with the twenty is it twenty five talent or the No, axe? it's just Axe Coil now. Axe coil. So, so with the Axe shoots, Coil, yeah. you 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 attack. So yep. Rubik has Axe Dream Coil. And then of course Rubik has Marcy Ult, so he's attacking super fast. So he's attacking super fast, and because he has the Axe Dream Coil, he's attacking everything. And as you saw, he was doing it in style, he was going up with a Wind Waker because you don't actually need to be you don't need like you, yeah. you attacks will fly out from your hero as long as you've extreme called someone. Yep. So and he that got was it pretty from cool. TikTok. He did steal it from TikTok, Lovely. so he kind of loses points for that. But I, the, that one I thought was, the, was that was cool. The the other guys kind of took it too literally. You know, they're like cool combo. And they just like a team fight combo, which was also cool to see. Yeah. But the originality with it was there with GPKs. Yeah. I wish we saw more of those cool team fight combos. Like oh the, yeah. The wombo combos. Yeah. yeah. Like the the song into. Vacuum, like that yeah. gives me such nostalgia. Of course. But it's it, patience it, from a show. Yeah. Isn't it too much? People are, have gotten too good at their positioning and to be, you know, I'm caught sure. out of position like that. But that that's what makes it even more impressive when it does happen right sure. nowadays. And yeah. it can still happen. You know, you see the best teams of the world and some certain things, especially song, right? You know, at the end of the day, in like a game with Naga Siren that's going like 60 or so minutes, mm -hmm. there is going to be a point where three, maybe four of your heroes are standing too close together and Naga Siren's gonna walk in or blink in with the Song of the Siren and what can you do? It takes like a really chaotic game for that to happen yeah. nowadays, I feel Just, like. Because yeah. because most good teams, like most good players will see like Darkseer, Naga, Enigma, and it's like, we're just not fighting them. Like yep. they're, they're, we're never fighting them because that just means we're bad. Whereas back in the day, it's like, yeah, team fighting is the only way to go in Dota. But it still happens, especially at TI when the most yeah, nerves the are on the line. On. Yeah. The yeah. That's on. when you yeah, see these four-man RPs, these all that kind of crazy it's, stuff. Right? It's why Earthshaker is always yeah. in the meta at He's TI. Always scary. It's, it's, it's just uh, it's it's scary. It's always there's always a way for coming back, and there's it's just it's simple, I want to say, but efficient. You, you stun everybody. Yay! Yep. It's just <laughs> every, and, Lots of damage and, and stun. And the, the, the scary thing, of course, is just how good Shaker is now. Yes. Like you put him mid and he just dumpsters Ooh. so many mid matchups. Have we ever gone into a TI? With mid Shaker. Where, where Shaker was 
actively core in the meta, or because normally Shaker gets to be the meta because it's TI, I but think, now he's already Mid good. Shaker's never been. I think we've the TI, had. Is it? I think we've had off lane Shaker. Yeah, yes. off lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've had yeah. that. Like I, maybe definitely. for one or two TI. We had That's certain been one for that. like Sumail. I think was the one that did the Earth Shaker mid when it was versus like Ember Spirits and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But it wasn't like. Everybody's doing Very it. That was a TI? That was in TI games? I can't remember. It might have been, but it might have been leading up to it. Can't remember exactly. But, but. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that, uh, how that one develops. Yeah. And I, I hope that we're not going to see that IO Brew Ling uh, <laughs> combo, because that's. I mean, if that's a thing, I mean, let's get let's keep Brewmaster banned out. But uh, if it's gonna be banned now, we we'll have to wait and see because, of course, the games will be coming your way fairly soon. Uh, but first, OD Pixel and Fogged. Thank you so much for joining us on this lovely couch, on this lovely morning of this lovely uh, Dream League Season 21 day. Uh, I want to thank you, and uh, I want to go without further ado, with the help of the Puck Chap Pandas, over to our first series of the day. Gaming Gladiators taking on Quest. It's a two-game series. It's a series for elimination, and it is still a group stage series. Jenkins, how did that happen? Uh, power issues. Power, power issues. issues. Yeah. Now, conveniently for Quest, TA2000 is back today. Yeah. And most people say that that's their star player. Yep. Yeah. This guy's, you know, half the reason why they're... Uh, What's the other half? Amar the fucker. <laughs> He's not uh, the team. Well, that's what everybody said back in the day. Now I don't they know. They were wrong. Maybe everybody's wrong. But, you know, people people think TA2000 is one of the carries that has a very unique play style. Lots of people are looking at him to see, you know, how to play the, the mm. TA and different heroes that, that, he, that he likes to play. So he's back today. So we, we have the full Quest uh, TI qualifying roster. I'm excited. Do we have the full roster today? Yeah. The whole the entire roster. Well... Well, minus their permanent stand-in. No, well, for this turn, for Quest. It, it, the thing is, I, do you count coaches with that? Oh yeah, that's true. Because they had a coach during the qualifiers. His name is Guess Who, and now it's, uh, they they removed him. They it's added da the Hawk. The Hawk. It's Da Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it seems like he's also joining them for TI. So are they having their full TI qualifying roster? I would say depends on if you count the coach. But other than that, yes. Because who was you? Who were you not counting? They're offlaner. Toby, he's there. He qualified with them, so he has to play with them at TI, whether they like it or yeah, not. Yeah, is he there? Here today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he is. They got everyone. Guess who else is here today? Effie. <laughs> Effie's here indeed today, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Effie. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you guys? Very good. Very good. <laughs> Great. You want a handshake? <laughs> yeah. You jealous? Yeah. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's what? up, Twitch chat? A handshake. Up, Jenkins. We already Shaking did a handshake hands. today, actually. Oh, we did, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Effie? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? Pretty excited for the series, because I think it's going to be good. I am, too, because this is a, <laughs> a little bit of a grudge match. If you guys recall, Quest was defeated by Gaming Gladiators and Riyadh, and there was mm -hmm. a whole pause situation. Oh, and, yeah. You know. that was Those were dark days mm -hmm. for Quest. Mm -hmm. Dark days, indeed, and a lot of theory crafting going on behind the scenes. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, this is the time to set it right. Uh, I do want another person on the couch, if possible. Park Champanas, please join me in welcoming Purge! <laughs> What's wrong, Purge? Oh, I was just looking at his clap, and I thought it was very interesting. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. That was great. We just made that up. Yeah, I saw he that. He made that up. And yeah, I copied. But you copied very, very good, very fast. Thank very, you. You know, it seemed like you practiced that forever. I do kiss my hands a lot. Yeah, it's like a normal thing for me. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one else? No. <laughs> no, 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 that's just you. That's just you. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Purge. Gaming Gladiator's request. 
Wait, no, you have to go to the spot. It's right in front of you. Stand up. What do you mean, stand up? Yeah, she's putting you on the spot. On the spot. Right on the spot. Where's the spot? Yeah, forward a bit. Forward. Okay. Forward. No, it's a little bit more forward. A little bit more. Okay, now. That's the spot. Yeah, now go ahead. To the camera. Gaming Gladiators is going to take this one. Ooh. And by take this one, I mean get at least one win. <laughs> And thus, make sure they make it into the rest of the tournament. I mean, okay, Wait, obviously. Don't they have to 2 0? No. no. Gaming Gladiators is uh, a little bit ahead in the rankings. You can sit back down. No, that's okay. I'll stand. <laughs> okay. We shouldn't have given him the spot. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to give it up. <laughs> spot is mine. No okay, one well, else can have the spot. While you're at the spot, go ahead. I was done. That was my whole point. Hey, Purge. They just need to win one game. Hey, Purge. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? I need to know. All right, guys, one second. Let's oh check God, it. it. It's going to be. Since we'll check the scores in the meantime. We see the game of Gladiators is three and five. Quest is two and six. There's a two game series, meaning Quest needs to win two games in order to be ahead of Game of Gladiators. And Game of Gladiators winning one game will put them already in the lower bracket for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm but sure that was important, but I have yeah. something more important. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, 22nd of September, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 67 at night down to 52. You, what does that mean? Celsius, please. Yeah. No, nope, I can't. We're in Europe nope. right now. We're, We're in right. Sweden. I mean, this American Stockholm. bullshit. I don't know how long it's going to take me to switch it over to Celsius, so I'm just going to stick with Fahrenheit. 67, that's a really nice day. 67 degrees Celsius? Holy Hannah. What? And that's that's some Saudi level that's, temperatures that's right not there. A, that's not a thing. I don't know how to change it easily What is it? weather app. Uh, that's... What Excuse phone do you me, have? Yeah. Remind me to not get that one. What? I don't like those numbers. Too. I'm going to tell Neil that you said that, because he has the same phone as I do. Oh, Neil's going to be... Angry oh, he's with you, be angry. He's so he's mad lose He loves it. his phone. He'll protect it with his life. Yep. <laughs> he's gonna pop a basket Except for, for you know not putting that. a case on it, but but yeah, his life. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll protect it himself. He doesn't need no case. It's way cooler if you don't have a case. It's true. <laughs> and also not so. Smart. You make a good case. Are we gonna see Group A here in a second? Make no. Why do we need to see Group A? Is solved. No! We're settling Group B here. Yes, we yeah, are. Yeah, but I want to see what Group A looks like. We've already seen what Group A looks I like haven't. many a But you were literally on the panel with you? me yesterday. We solved it. I don't care. Show me Group A. Can we get Group A on this? That's right. Wow, look at those beautiful numbers. All right, go for it, Jenkins. Count the numbers. Shopify is in first. That 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 really makes me feel great things. And so there'll mm -hmm. be immense disappointment uh, coming later today. Did you read that stats document? Which one? The one that they posted in the group chat that was very helpful. I it said really uh, talked that. about the last time that the Shopify players had won a tier one land. For three of the players, it was 2017. For Abed, he's never won a tier one land in his whole career. Abed's never won a tier one land. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is so bizarre. Like to think they've about. always been like so good, but they've never. They had a whole land. period where they came second every single time. That is true. Yeah. Or well, a whole year, I believe, it was one year. But you know, they, they, they're getting there. And uh, please, one step at a time. I think for this team, at the moment, with the results they've had this year, I know I'm getting ahead of myself because it's the next series, but it would be great for them to get a podium finish, even if they don't get first. That will be... Yeah, that they, be good they need it, I think. Uh, it also said that they won, like... I, I'm going to look up the number. This, is, okay. this one was too right, good. To, okay. it was, it, there were so many good stats. It's okay. We'll, we'll get to those sets. You know that, that Shopify is not playing for a series of the day, right, Purge? It, well, yeah, but he started talking about Shopify. We're both so. North Americans, so we're, we just want... I'm almost there. Almost. We just want our region to thrive again, you know? Shout out to TSM, by the way. Shout out to right, TSM. Right. They won three out of their five series and groups, having won just two of their last 24 series coming into Dream League Season 20. Oh, that's so sad. These are sad numbers. But they're doing good now. Yes, they are. What if they're... I know I, I, all the Shopify Rebellion fans are like, oh my gosh, are they peaking too early? No, they're just like, oh, they always do okay in groups, then they're going to get smashed out afterwards. Yeah, that we'll is see. that is yeah. the, that's the rhetoric. Well, later today, they're going to go up against Bed Boom, mm -hmm. but not right now. I want to talk about Game of Gladiators, Effie. What do you still want to say? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, this is Ovid's first Dream League. Like, oh, that's all, true. Oh, that's true. He was, yeah, all yeah. Shop, Shopify played yeah. without their mid laner. They had, they had um, Mikey as a stand in, and then they had Miracle, Miracle as a stand in. So yeah. it's actually the first time they get to play a Dream League with their full squad. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to take it all just based off of like that sure. momentum and that excitement. Just don't it, count them it's out. Different. It is different. That's true. You're giving me hope here. All right, but about the Gladiators. About the Gladiators. This is uh, supposed to be the best team in the world, and here they are, the bottom half of Group B. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what went on with Game in their first couple of days of groups, but this is a team that I do still believe in regardless of their bad performances. And it's not to say that, oh, they haven't been practicing or, oh, they're burnt out. They've played in almost everything this year and they recently won the BB Dacha tournament. They just yeah. came into this Dream League looking surprisingly weaker. But I think this team's ceiling is incredibly high and you never know what version of them. Yeah you're going to get. So I, I think discounting them just based off of a poor group stage is, is very naive. And, and they're not even doing that bad. They're three and five. Yeah. They're negative in games, but it doesn't take much to lose a Dota game sometimes. So, you know, it's a little coin flippy. That's why at a lot of the Dream Leagues, we have two sets of group stages. That way, yeah. like, we're really, really sure that the best teams make it. We didn't have enough time to do that this tournament, but... Still, they all they need to do is win one game here, and we're just gonna forget about this group. They also they also won the last Dream League through the lower bracket, so yeah, it's, it's not like I remember during that we were questioning. It's like, oh, is this is this is really weird for Game and Gladiators? No. They usually crush their way through the upper bracket. This might be different. It wasn't different. They won the last one, and they sometimes have mediocre group stage performances. Sometimes they yeah. do really good, or sometimes they have mediocre ones. Yeah, but then they slaughter the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's just Game and Gladiators things. I think Quest is is up against a. A wall. Uh, I mean, unfortunate I mean, that this that this is the team that they are essentially tie breaking with. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's focus our attention a bit on Quest because, as we mentioned, uh, they have played with Stan in the whole time. Uh, they have said that TA2000 was sorting out his uh, visa for uh, going to Seattle for TI, and he is back. So. Now with their full roster, they should be doing better than what they did before. Effie, this squad mm -hmm. could take it to Game of Gladiators. They've Honestly, done so before. They, they really could because every time they've played against them, especially I'm looking at the series in Riyadh that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they had a really good chance of beating them. I mean, Quest is a tier one team. Unfortunately, they're stuck with the rotating offlane situation until they find their full-time guy, but this team with TA2000 compared to playing with stand-ins is going to look entirely different. Like, there is no doubt that he is their best player. He is their win condition. He is... They're so used to playing around him and rallying around mm -hmm. him and building their drafts around him that not having them there, not having him there is definitely a huge gimp on their side. So we're going to see a leveled up version of them today for sure. We I, should be. I was just going to say, I hope that they don't feel too disconnected switching from uh, Shed, who's played really solid, yeah. but then switching back to TA2000. I hope they get back into it quickly. Maybe played some warm up games kind of a thing. Maybe played some scrims with them. I hope just so. Just because that was one of their faltering points in some of their group stage games. They had mm -hmm. communication issues a bit with buybacks and TPs and who cancels, who can commit. So um, if they if they play at their max strength, they could definitely 2-0 gaming here. And that'd be a really big statement to get them out of uh, elimination because that's what they have to do to win. 2-0. 2-0 Gaiman two Gladiators. Yeah. I feel that's like, a tall order. That's a rough one because I, I do feel like when Gaiman has their backs against the wall mm -hmm. like this, you start seeing like Duraccio Rapiers at 60 minutes, comebacks, and like this is this is not a team that just folds when they're when they're doing kind of poorly. The thing is, while that would be cool, and I think that's a statement we can all assume, we've not actually seen them with their backs against the wall. Like, the one time their backs have been against the wall this entire year has been Riyadh, and they they had a great finish at fourth place, obviously, but yeah. we didn't see them, like, rise to the occasion and claw their way through the lower bracket, right? I mean, it so, was Bali as well, right? Also gave gladiators, so that was... Yeah. Uh, so I, I just feel like they are so used to playing from a winning position and a dominant position that I actually don't know how tested they are when they're in these potential well, elimination series. It's probably going to come down to confidence a lot as well. So we uh, try to gauge the confidence of the players before the match or before the tournament even. I'm confident. I never feel nervous myself. And I feel like we didn't do any prepar special preparation for Dream League, but we are here like at Boom Dacha. So it's like kind of preparation before Dream League and Dream League is going to be preparation for TI. So like we're just going to play the game. I'm pretty much confident in our team. I know we will try our best. It's not our best uh, preparations, but we're still trying to make the best out of it. Still confident. Both very confident. And I think playing the group stages uh, will, incre will increase their confidence normally in terms of playing. Maybe not necessarily in terms of results. Uh, but of course, for Quest, I mean, again, this is the first time back again with their full roster, and I think that will make uh, the difference that potentially will push them over the edge here to get a 2-0 against Game of Gladiators. We do have the draft in front of us. We got Quest on the dire side. They got themselves first pick uh, with Radiant second uh, second pick for Game of Gladiators. So uh, 
Well, yeah, here we are. One cool thing about quests is they pick Phoenix in their first phase if they mm -hmm. can. Almost every a lot of teams ban it in the first phase. That's the only team that that happens against. That so maybe one cool thing to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit since we're in draft about yeah. quests kind of rotating door of offliners that sure. seems to have been going on here because. It's it's quite sad for me that, and I think Toby's an excellent player, and we still have time to see how he's going to fit into Quest lineup. But in Riyadh, when they were playing with Malik, I thought that team looked like they were in peak form. Like Malik, as a player, fit into that team so well. Like they looked way better than they even did with ATF, right? So I feel like, I agree. and Malik isn't really a, a specialty offline player like Toby is, who's like, Toby is one of the best players in the world when it comes to summons, right? But Malik is yep. just a very self-sacrificial type of offlaner and that's when the team looked the best. So I wonder how Toby is going to be able to fit in with playing with like less network very, and maybe- It's a very different play style, you're yeah. right. Those are two very different types of, of offlane. Uh, in Omar's word, he said, as long as we have a stable offliner, we can be the best in team in the world. That's I, why he said, that's why he cred what he credited Malik to, of course, as well. Uh, Malik for Riyadh, he was on loan, right? So he wasn't, there was yeah. never a, a question if he was going to be able to join after because he's literally <laughs> like part of a different team, right? Yeah. It, it was so sad too because Malik himself is really happy with how the team performed. Yeah. And I think they were all sad that that was just their. Yeah. Their one ride. Yeah, I, understandably, though, because he was on a different team, and they're like, yo, we need him to try to qualify for TI. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, but you can't just fly. be like, well, we'll just let you borrow him, and then we'll ruin our chances. Well, Imagine Malik if you're able to try in two different regions at the same time. It's like Malik plays TI qualifiers I think people have Navi, tried that. <laughs> people and have then tried he's that. like, well, didn't that work didn't out. work. <laughs> Let's move I mean, over to the next it, one. It happened a lot classically. It'd be like, you'd play NA qualifiers, lose yes. it while from yeah. Europe, and then you'd go to Europe or, or Man, that was so that. annoying when people would do that yeah. for open qualifiers. Yeah. They'd just be like, oh, I have eight qualifiers I can play. It's like, well, actually, four of those are in a different region, bro. <laughs> yeah. So Quest ends up with the first pick, Naga, mm -hmm. and uh, Gaiman get the gyrocopter. Yeah, uh, this just seems a confident qu let through for Quest. It, it does, and I think that just speaks to their confidence in TA2000's Naga. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel like this is a high priority here for them, to the point where they give away gyro and they don't necessarily have to flex it. Like, when a team like Talon picks the Naga, you know that it's being flexed between safe lane and off lane. And even teams like Liquid flex it between safe lane and off lane. You look at Quest and you know that this is TA2000's hero. He's, I believe, the highest win rate Naga of this competitive season. I don't know if that statistic is correct because I haven't checked it for a month or so, but he, they can confidently build around it. and. I mean, it's just their statement of, hey, our guy is back. Our guy's got this. Yeah, it is a, it is a big statement. I oh, do think statement. you have to answer the gyro with some other picks here. Um, Bane has been one of my favorite that we've been <laughs> seeing. Uh, just reducing the flak damage with Enfeeble is very nice. Uh, Ancient Apparition honestly hasn't been working out so well. But Shadow Demon or Warlock, I think, have yeah, looked SD, yeah, pretty those, good. Yeah, those both look very good. I, I really like the SD. How many Ancient Apparitions we, have we seen? I feel like we've seen three. And one of the reasons that looked bad is that it was played by Gaiman on the position four role and it just didn't do it. I mean, it position that's four, yeah. Don't want to do I that. think also the builds from the Gyro, like people are getting the Hurricane Pike against it. Oracle is being picked against it. Like people are solving the AA with some other stuff, uh, which helps the gyro. And there's the SD, so it's kind of a block pick there from Gaiman. It is a block pick, but it's also a hero with a lot of merits with a gyrocopter. It stacks Ancients for it. It can disrupt the Naga Siren illusions and use them to counter push lanes. AA has been picked five times with a 3-2 uh, to two record in three wins. Oh, that's not good. bad. That's better than I expected, actually. And they get in the matchup they want. They want it against the Gyrocopter. Um, they also go for Toby's Beastmaster, so a lot of comfort here. Uh, Quest has played Naga twice so far this tournament. They lost both games. Uh, one was against OG, and the other one was against Bedroom. <coughs> so I think that letting this Beastmaster through is a little intriguing because this is the go-to offlane hero by Quest. Whenever they have it, they will pick it. But the statement that GG are making with this is that we think our gyro is going to lean well against them regardless, and we do have a save for the Primal Roar with the Disruption. So we're actually not scared of this Beastmaster. We're going to beat it. And they only had one ban available anyways, right? Uh, the the downside of second pick, I guess, in the second phase, you get 
was four bands to start the game, but then you only get one before the second phase starts. So it's like, they thought Disruptor would be the most annoying. But often in cases like that, the Beastmasters would be banned in the first phase versus a specialty Beastmaster mm. team. That makes sense, yeah. But when you're playing against a quest, you also have to consider things like Noob's Pangolier or Kauri's Phoenix. And Brewmasters is too broken right now. I think the trade-off would probably have just been the Nature's Prophet for the Beastmaster, but game are less keen to play against the Nature's Prophet. It can be pretty annoying against Gyrocopter in the late game, I suppose, right? Because he's not really somebody that wants to buy a Quelling ever. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be it could pose to be a big problem, plus split push issues. Yeah, you'd, you'd need to go for a pike in, in that sort of game. I really like the Dark Seer here. You get all the Beastmaster auras if you vac wall him, and then obviously against the Naga Siren, you get an illusion of hurts stronger than she is. And then in the laning phase as well, you have tons of magic damage to go through her base seven or eight armor, or whatever it is. Interested to see what the combo is that they pick with it. I have to ask though. I mean, Shaker's still in the pool, and we've seen a lot of Shaker and Darkseer be really strong. Yeah, that could be good. I, I, I would like to see that. Or, ooh, Mercy, that's cool. But mm. so Dazzle has been picked as a response to Darkseer recently because of the armor he gives the Graves, and of course being able to poison touch the Insta illusion. To kill the, the illusion. Star. Yeah, I really like that. And it's been making an emergence as even an offlane hero recently. Our quest gonna? No, they go for the fucking stud. Is Dazzle? Playable as a support hero is a, is another question. I think it's much better as a core. I think if you pick it as a support hero here, you're kind of risking having this AA Dazzle support duo. And if your lanes go badly, you don't have any playmaking potential outside of an ice blast every 60 yeah, seconds. I agree with that. And a lot of the hero's abuse is lowering the cooldowns of items. I mean, the abilities are there too, but you need levels to make your abilities better, and you need items to lower CD on. Now, this is the second Marcy game of the tournament, by the way. Um, Prior to this tournament, it's uh, it was picked at East Mouth, played in pubs, but its win rate hasn't been the best in competitive. Mm -hmm. But it is isn't a really nice pairing with Gyrocopter because you're giving him free damage and free lifesteal. And it is a lot of damage, especially if you max it early. It's something that it's a little bit hard for Gyrocopter to fit into his build when he needs to buy Ags and BKB and Satanic. Mm -hmm. He doesn't always get that much damage. Marcy's going to make that a big difference, but I guess there is an AA. I agree. I think Marcy becomes an S tier hero when she's paired with a Gyrocopter because the bonus life seal. you have a bonus life seal talent on Sidekick 2. It, all you have to do is support Marcy with a gyro, is just buy your solar crest and run around gyro, sidekick him, rebound him so you can make it camp to camp faster. But this, the life steal aspect of gyro has already been countered by the ancient apparitions. So yep. I wonder what kind of merits Marcy can offer outside of that because I feel like Marcy gets ensnared, Marcy gets roared, Marcy doesn't do particularly well versus Puck either. You know, Puck actually had the highest win rate on Dota buff versus Marcy for the first, like, six months of her release. Mm. And I'm not sure if that's still true, but I look at this game in draft and I see nothing that can effectively deal with the Puck at all. So I wonder, will Game and Last pick something like a tiny mm. Dragonite? I know Dragonite's just like not a good hero, but something that can actually answer the Puck because right now there's, there's nothing. And they get absolute last pick, so they could give Quinn a good game. Are you talking about uh, eSports Player of the Year finalist? Wait. That's right. That's yes. right. Okay. Go vote. As the host of the year finalist, of course. Actually. What about the analyst of the year finalist? And Effie. That's me. Like, oh, we have right two here. nominees on the panel. Yeah. Wow. That is me. What an honor. Yeah. We have a uh, coach as well in the Game of Gladiators. Yeah. Oh, man. We got four. Yeah. Persia, don't you feel and like a husk got, of a man? And we got fog <laughs> casting. <laughs> Fog casting, Fog's also nominated. Is he? Yep. And Lacoste as well. There you go. That's a Willow. Very cool, but uh, the Omar Willow will be. Uh... Is it Omar Willow, right? Or is it Kaori Willow? It should be Omar. It's, it's Omar for sure. I need to think about this Willow. I mean, it's it's good. All the Brambles against... They have, like, high mobility. They have some mobility on Gaiman, but it's all countered by Brambles, basically. Like, Marcy's going to get caught by it. Uh, Surge people are going to be caught by it. Gyro doesn't have that much mobility, so him just walking through fights to do what he wants is going to be a little harder. I'm, I'm cool. I'm still feeling the tiny here. I mean, if Earthshaker was available, I think that would be the pick. But they, they need some mid-stunner tanky man. If, if it was Quest picking right here, I'd be like, yeah, tiny 1 billion percent. But it... I feel like I haven't seen it. I haven't seen uh, Quinn played in a bit. So maybe less of his comfort here. Yeah, maybe. I'm um, thinking about this Willow. So I feel like Willow doesn't do well when she's playing versus Pipe, honestly, in terms of a damage dealer, which Darkseer always does. Uh, she's really good versus 
things like Marcy that want to rebound around, but this is a support Marcy. I think Willow's best thing that she does for Quest here is counter-initiate versus the vacuum wall, and that's probably what they were looking at. Like, the terrorize into the vac wall gives Quest an ability to reset, and then into a potential song, into a potential take the fight on our own terms situation. So Void Spirit picked twice, 50% win rate, and no bans. So definitely a hero of past metas, but it's you know it's the last pick. There's been a lot of bans. I got to go for it, I guess. I will say, so this Void Spirit is really good at bursting the quest supports. It's good against AA and it's good against Willow, especially later on in the game. These heroes are going to get one shot by this Void Spirit. But we have seen the Void versus Puck matchup time and time again. Now, a lot of people think, wow, this is really good for Void, but he just ends up getting coiled and dying. I know this is Quinn, though. Quinn is a, he's, he has mastered every single mid matchup that he plays. So if he calls for the Void Spirit, he believes in it. But I don't think this is a Void Spirit favored matchup at all. I think the, I feel like it's 60 40 to Puck, or it has been historically. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a good Iron Shell target. That's one good that thing going true. for them. So true. it makes Aces hero better as well. If he finds Kauri at the start of the fights and kills him, that also unlocks his Gyro Satanic to be good. And the Marcy sidekick too. So if he can kill Kauri in these fights before his ulti goes off, it, it'd be really big for Gaiman's fights. I also think Void Spirit being changed to a universal hero probably shifted a lot of the matchups where mm -hmm. he would previously lose. Like things get really weird when a hero is universal. He's got like 80 base damage or something within a couple of minutes in the game. Like maybe he does better mm -hmm. against Puck. But I, I agree. I remember when Void Spirit first came out, everybody was picking Puck to counter it because he was he felt so mobile that you just needed something instant like Coil to, to lock him down and then follow up with the silence as well. So it can go both ways, but I do think Void Spirit with items is, is stronger now. I, I think we shouldn't look at this Void Spirit through the lens of, is this hero going to deal with Puck? We should look at it through the lens of, it's going to one-shot these backline supports. Because if you look at Gaiman's draft, the Darkseer, Shadow Demon, Gyro, Marcy, these heroes are not heroes that are going to jump the backline supports, which you are supposed to do when you have these two squishy spell ca spellcaster types. Because if you don't kill them, mm -hmm. then you have the issue of dealing with their spells throughout the fight. But Void Spirit solves that. They've oh. got re great resets on quest, though. They do. So that's one thing that'll help the fights go well. We're going to have to wait and see. There's one game needed for Game of Gladiators to secure their playoff spot. Of course, Quest need to win two in a row. Let's find out who gets a head start here and head over to our commentary duo. It's already Pixel one. Fuck. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, it's time here for Gaming Gladiators to go up against Quest in this all-important series, as Shiva was saying. Only one win needed for Gaming Gladiators to make it on in this tournament. Quest, they've got to win both games here in this two-game series to secure staying in the competition. And, uh, of course, they, they've got their main man back today, TA2000, and on a very TA2000-esque Hero, the Naga Siren. They uh, opened with it. Yeah. They literally yeah, yeah, just first picked it for him. So, I'm, I mean, I think we're in for a treat for sure. This is going to be the full display of Quest that we have not gotten to see in some time. Gaming, let's see if they can make up for the, the bit of the weaknesses that we've seen from them. In particular, Gyro. I actually didn't even get to check. I was going to look right before the game, but we saw a lot of these Gyros lose. It, we also it, it seems like it, it's starting to fall a little bit out of favor. Uh, yeah. I think we saw on the, the pick ban percentage, uh, it was still, it was like 89%. So okay. considering sort of how high that's probably been in maybe like the previous tournament, you know, already 10% of the games, we're not seeing him at all in the picks or the bans. Doing very well. So let's see if Duracho, I think they talked about it. Uh, I think even they, like the game, the team talked about it. Just like he wants to fight, right? This is a guy that always wants to battle. So sometimes he has like max barrage instead of having the flak and the stats and stuff like that. We saw that come into play where he just, he wanted to fight too much. He kept dying, at least the games that we, the game that we got to cover from him. So yeah. let's see if they have a bit of a better plan for it. It does seem like they do, right? They're going to try this Marcy, which you can, of course, you can see the merit for it with just buffing up solar crest, sidekick, movement yeah. speed, et cetera. Oh, so. for sure. Should be some cool stuff. Let's see if it's able to actually withstand the burst potential. Because when you look at Quest draft, they have that big boom, right? They can just delete a hero almost instantly at the start of these fights. Yeah, and it's, you know, all eyes are, are going to be on that mid lane matchup. Now we saw at the end of the draft, <laughs> Gaming Gladys is taking a bit of time to decide which uh, which yep. hero they wanted to put Quinn on. He makes the call to go with the Void Spirit, uh, but it is against the noob Puck. I mean, you can see already at the top, you know, both Duracho. players on master tier heroes. Indeed, Duracho in trouble. He's caught by He's another gone. Bramble. He's gone. Sorry, He's going to get caught. I mean, the ball's out. This is going to be two of them going Oh, boy. As uh, Quest, they're going to start the game with two kills down on the bottom lane. Well, that's the dream. 
give it to Omar on his super comfortable Willow and the Beastmaster. Yeah. We've seen just kind of rising in promise. This hero just seems to be so good. Your level one is actually just so strong. The Hawk is nuts. And yeah, they that, get off to a good start. That is a pretty terrifying way to start lane. I mean, yeah. this bottom lane, regardless, I mean, how was does this, this matchup go in your mind anyway? Like, Is this a favorable lane for Raiden or was it already a difficult lane? I would say it's slightly favorable for them, but Beastmaster should get a lot out of it anyway. Yeah. Especially if he's able to keep any of these like Boris or Hawks alive versus the Flak. Yeah, it should be. It should be good for him. Omar is the one that just have to just watch out a little bit because the Marcy can get on top. But Toby should farm. Darby should farm really well down here. And yeah, talking about Quinn, you know, picking this Void Spirit versus the Puck. This is a matchup that he does like to play a lot. So because you just see this base damage advantage, he's got like 12 over the Puck, just level one. So even though in mid game and stuff, you do have to watch out versus the Coil Lane. Looks like it's going to be pretty okay for Quinn. Yeah, I mean, so far already, just seeing the amount of damage he's been able to trade successfully against new Puck. Yeah. So it looks like the first wave or so will be pretty hot for Quinn. Yeah, let's see if they can make the, the Darkseer look a little bit better today, too. Ace usually has a very successful Darkseer performance. The other day, I mean, things just turned quickly on them. You know, he got, like, his auras and everything, and then they just lost three consecutive fights. I believe it was versus uh, Bat Boom. So let's see if they can get it to round things together better a bit. Because this this game, Pipe, is super valuable. He's playing versus AA, Willow, Puck. If he gets good timings, could be quite huge. And Toby's actually getting no lasted. <laughs> so talking about how he was maybe going to actually do decent. I'm actually astonished that he only That's, has two. That is pretty su su surprising considering they got those two kills at the start, these two. Yeah, I mean, okay. He also just has like a 10 base damage differential over the gyro, so that's a bit, a bit shocking to see. Denied. Quinn, indeed, keeping the slight edge mm -hmm. against Noob in this 1v1. It's all about those stats. Do they check a water rune? It looks like at the moment they are sending Kaori to take one of them away. Well, bottom, they'll Trying be. to get aggressive onto Celery, but Celery is going to be fine. And Duracho just staying at full health. Buff up, buff up with the sidekick. I mean, he he's completely he's free farming. Completely this, free farming. This gyro is feeling no pressure whatsoever on these first few waves. No, I like that he's got the boots too. Yeah. And yeah, he's like he's able to. Uh, Toby's actually able to keep his hawk and everything protected, but he actually has to back up and be pretty careful. I'm, yeah, I'm still surprised. Only seven last hits to the 19-6. That's I mean, it, it's remarkable. definitely a bit concerning. They got yeah. the two kills. And you could not tell that at all. You see the two at the top. You're like, well, that couldn't have happened on the bottom lane because the bottom lane. It's going pretty terribly for Quest. Mm -hmm. But they did check, so for mid, they did check the water rune, so trying to stabilize things a bit there for Noob. Quinn doesn't get a fill up, so 16-3, 16-3. Dead even now in the mid lane. I'm just staring at bottom mostly. I think this is going to be the very active lane. He's trying to make a bit of a go. He's got a lot of one charges and a Lotus, and Celery's in to, to keep him covered. In fact, with a few hits and the missile, it's going to bring Omar low. Dracho still having to keep his distance as Toby steps forward here with the Hawks and the Boars. Flat cannon back up. Does he get CS? He got a Hawk. Almost gets a Boar as well, too. Big money. And does get a good few successful hits off onto the two of Quest. So, again, Dracho remains perfectly Ooh. fine. Top and, CS, 24 and 6. And it gets harder and harder to pressure this Gyro as well, too, because now the two points in Sidekick are up. The lifesteal actually becomes quite important. Same thing with that bonus damage. So, yeah, those first few waves. Definitely not going the way I think Quest expected them no. to after getting those kills. Mid lane started to settle out a little bit. Yeah. Noob's caught right back up. Now the levels are in and he's able to successfully nuke every wave. And they're just double checking runes again. So Quinn, a second time, he's not going to be able to fill up his bottle. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, Noob's been able to recover this nicely. Yep. So we're going to see similar outcomes from both mid laners. Uh, yeah, definitely the, the biggest uh, difference at the moment being on the two side lanes. Carry to carry and off lane to off lane. Quite the difference in farm that the game Gladiators is able to get ahead of that of Quest counterpart. Some very, I mean, overall, like, top lane is probably one of the more passive ones I think you will we'll see in some time. You know, it's a Shadow Demon Darkseer, tough to get really aggressive, and then a AA Naga Siren, so not much going to happen up there. I think bottom is, yeah, we're just kind of going to have to look down here. Celery? Celery stepping up pretty aggressively against these two. Just going to get caught in the Bramble. Could be in trouble. Should get punished for this. Yeah, a little too aggressive there from, from Celery on the Marcy. Runs into the two of them, and he will not be getting out. You gotta respect this hawk. It is so frustrating. Not gonna clear it out either. Despawns in time. But Dracho's farming, so Celery, it's like he died, but kind of doing his job to protect Noob. Really putting the pressure, but now Quinn will get a refill since Celery did die bottom. 
Maybe that was his plan after. I was going to say, you know, <laughs> it didn't seem like a very Celery-esque move to move in like that, so indeed, maybe was playing for the idea that a, a quick refill for, for Quinn in the mid would be worth yeah. his death down bottom. He probably was so calling for it, it right? Could, that could have been a big brain move it for been. Celery. It's a possibility. Definitely makes a, a bit more sense. And move. Quinn, he's at, he's six already, so definitely potential onto Noob if he's not careful around the six-minute power rune. Yeah, and yeah, Duracho's perfectly fine down here. Uh, unable to pressure him underneath the tower right now. Celery's able to swing back across, and Toby's got a rebound. They can land it. Close. Can you get the pull? Whoop. Oh. Blood grenade. Yeah, it's looking like a kill. Surely he's going to be able to get in range here for the disp dispose. Maybe. Oh, okay, no. Duracho's nope. pulling back from this. Doesn't want to continue to chase up to the high ground, so Toby will manage to escape. Another power, another rune checked. I mean, Kaori, this is three times he's checked that top rune. It denies away a DD, so protects Noob versus this level six Void Spear. My god, though, the last hits overall, dominating on the side of Gaming Gladiators. But overall, the you know net worth when you actually pull that one up, it's not the most crazy. It's just that differential between that Beastmaster and the Dark Seer, which is the biggest one. But Ace at this point now, good luck pushing him out of lane. Vanguard's already completed. You'd have to pretty much just bring the puck up here, and even then, he might not even get brought down. And what, what would you say as well, you know, who on each of their heroes is going to be able to farm the fastest? You know, would you be looking at the TH-2000 Naga Siren or Duraccio Gyro? Who's going to oh. clean the map up quicker? Oh, jeez. That's, that's a tough one. I mean, it, it's TA-2000 it's TA on Naga, so he farms so he fast. He does, but, but it's Duraccio on a Gyrocopter. With a Marsh Gyro. He's set up for success on Duraccio. It's so going to be close. It's right? going to be a close one. And they're farming one. up both of their halves of the map. Maybe a slight edge, I guess, to for Duraccio. Oh, to the Naga? Okay. Not, I think I would give a slight edge okay. to the Naga Siren. All right. Well, I was only saying because I think because of the way the Duraccio start is, but... Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Ooh, TA-2000 is even queuing up the Midas, so... Oh, well, so there you go. The real he, he's farm, like, the competition's so. okay. gone. I'll, I'll show you I can outfarm this Duraccio Gyro. Okay. This he's ready to make some money. Uh, do, you, do you like that approach? What does that sort of say to you in terms of uh, what Quest overall game plan is? Uh, he just... We've been seeing, I think, a little bit more of the Midas's yeah. on like these Terra Blades and Nagas. It's not so much on TB now, but uh, like a patch or so ago. I just wants to go later. Wants to get these levels going. Uh, and Nagas sort feels... of later against the Gyro. How does it sort of pan out? I, he can do a lot of damage here, for sure. Because nobody else really... I, the Void Spear, I guess, depending on how Quinn's game go, he'll be the one also to have some clear. But besides that, the supports definitely don't deal with the Naga too well. Shadow Demon can make his own illusions of it, but that's just about it. Quinn? Now nah, he'll get a Power Rune this time. And yeah, the thing about the Naga Siren, too, is I feel like at some point, when... You know, gaming, they're playing with the darks here. They're going to start grouping up at some point, and that's where the test for quest might be. That sure, they can they're going to have to fight, right? They will, might, they might be forced to fight. They do have heroes to do so. They got good wave clear, right? Puck yeah. the Beastmaster and big, big wombo combo team fight, right? They've got the puck coil with the, you know, the fear from the boot willow plus the AA blast. So definitely potential to take those fights around. But if Naga's going Midas, he's not going to look to get involved for a long time. Oh, I should be able to get Corey here. He's looking pretty dead. Yeah, it feels like for gaming, this is. They're going to have that big early game t time to shine to put the pressure onto Quest. Yeah, this top tower probably going to be rather rather abandoned now, right, by Quest? Yep, I don't think so. They're just going to let Ace to slowly whittle this down. Mm -hmm. uh, in the mid, Noob did drop the Dream Core. Looks in a, an attempt to keep himself safe from Quinn going in for any sort of dive. Hey, that's not something you want to see with your puck. Like, Quinn is... Look how tanky he is already at this point. These universal heroes, right? He's got 100 base damage as well, too, so he can start making moves around. Oh, poor old Corey. This was not the spot to beat. GH2000. Just out around this area, he's back to the top. He's going to be going down again. So I... another free kill for Gaming Gladiators. And they got TA2000 also. They're about to. Uh -oh. Big moves, yeah, good invasion there from Quint. Stepping into the, the jungle and just running at him. Known at this stage, and probably once they... They, they spotted him out, saw that close of haste. They know that there's going to be this portion of the game where they could probably continue to do this. You know, just sort of run at the Naga Siren. TA2000 still very much in that vulnerable state of the game. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be a problematic recovery for like the next sure. 10 to Because this could speed up, right, from Gaming Gladiator. It's going to go quick. Like the Dark Steer, his itemization is going to be fast. They're going to be able to collapse quickly. And they have stacks already. Tofu in the meantime, while all this has been happening, they have what? A 3 or 4x Ancient, ooh. a 4 or 5x ooh, ooh, Hard Cam too, so Duracho uh, he's set up for that. I was going to say, he's set up to hit that top net worth oh, yeah. and, and stay up there if he cleans that that couple of stacks up. And how did that... The Wisdom Exchange didn't get to talk about it, but it was one for one. But these supports, they're high level. Everyone on the side of gaming is high level. Tofu 4, but Celery's 
Celery's almost seven on this Marcy already. Supports on the side of Quest really struggling to try to hold these towers. Yeah. Nah, for sure. I mean, that, that that's the thing, right? With Quinn having a good start, as the, the panel was saying, this is a hero that can delete the support to Quest pretty easily. Duracho is fairly tanky right now. He's got rotations coming in. Yeah, Quinn's in, ready to help him get some kills by looks. So he jumps in with the Astro step over towards Toby. Celery's here as well. Uh -oh. They'll punish that. This is looking like the game in Gladiators that we're used it's, to seeing. It is, this could get pretty fast, pretty quickly. I mean, pressure's gonna, it feels like pressure's really gonna be on to noob this game right now, because Toby's lane did not go well, and I mean, Nog's going Midas. Poor Kaori, he just can't catch a break. He's trying to find his level six somewhere. This time, you know, rather than showing top, he shows mid. Ace, no hesitation, drops the wall, kills him off. Oh, and look at this. They're, oh, oh my goodness. Are they gonna, oh, to they're gonna, gonna take all of this. this. Yeah, there, yeah, pop the ults for this. Oh my god, that, well. This is going to be a hard game for Quest. This is going to be a hard and game for Quest. They need to win both of the games of this series to have a chance. Game oh Gladiators, they God. take one of these, they're and they're good. Ancients. Oh, yo, yo. This, uh, this, this Midas from TH2000 is going to have to do a whole lot to, to close this sort of net worth gap. This is definitely one of those games where TH2000, he's going to be hitting the creeps and sort of just closing his eyes from what's happening on the rest of the map and just hoping that somehow the rest of Quest can keep this game alive. Noob needs to have successful coils. Like, the next two coils need to work, or this, these next few moments are going to completely fall apart as they kind of have been already here for Quest. They got to get some success, because the support's still level 5, That's Kaori. The, I, yeah, with this smoke, maybe they... they Duracho's kind of low, but they, 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 they've already been seen. They're actually going to get Celery, but it, it just feels like he's tanking the gank on that one. Gives least... Duracho the chance to, to survive. I mean, because he was yeah. low. If they caught the gyro, they probably would have been able to blow him up. But Celery, he gets him in a spot to tank it. At least it's a high-level support, right? It's almost a level 8 Marcy. It's, so, it's, it's something. It's something at the least, but not what they wanted to get. No. They want to get a core kill. Sure. I, I guess, if anything, because of how fast gaming gladiators are playing, at least for Quest, if they kill just any hero, it it stops the next sort of aggressive move, right? Sure. Yeah, Celery's been quite a big part of the the, the way that gaming it, gladiators has started plays. And Kaori, like his level 6 is the most important thing right now. He need, like. yeah. he need, they need that burst because heroes are starting to get too tanky for them to deal with very quickly. Like, th look at Ace. He actually is very close to his pipe already done. Disassemble Vanguard, awesome. buy Recipe, and that's going to negate That's going to be rough. pretty much all the damage of Quest's yeah. early game. Even if they're getting the Blast debuff on him, yeah. they're, they're probably not blowing that Dark Seer up anytime no. soon. And Duracho's going to be so enabled at this point because of all the stacks. He's going to start working on him. Awesome. He's already pretty much got three components with the Crystalis and Treads. Absolutely. Uh, they, they could be ready to just dive this tower. We'll see how far forward Quest step because Gaming Gladiators, they've got their eyes on them. Oh, Kaori's still not six. Uh, we can see on the, the stonk cam there at the bottom. Oh. Money going up for Duracho. Big stonks. Yeah, they're going in. Yeah. Toby. Straight in. Good setup. The fear not going to be needed. Just the roar alone thrown down onto Ace. Disruption. disruption to block the, the fear. Yeah, I mean, the gone. blast hit, but it doesn't matter. He's still got 50% HP. He's not ticking out anytime soon. He'll just walk that one off. That was that was before he even pipe. I mean, he did, didn't even get below half HP, and they used two ultimates on... Actually, technically three ultimates going for the fear as well. Good good uh, response there from Quinn, though. You see how he was a little patient. He jumped and then jumped backwards just in case of anything. And he's already got his Echo Saber it, finished it, up. These timings. I mean, if, fast. if if Noob and Toby aren't able to set up some sort of successful plays, they're going to fall, start falling so far behind yeah. in, in, in gold, right? 100%. Ooh! That's, yo, a whiff. Yo, yo. That's a whiff dream call there in the mid lane, unfortunately for Noob. It's, it's a slippery hero, Void Spirit. <sighs> These coils, they can't be missing with this. I mean, they need to get some type of connection. TA2000 is probably looking on the side. I mean, he's like, I got my Midas, guys, dude, but like, it's I can't his first do this alone. Day back in the office, bless him, and he's like, oh, my, I've got a lot of carrying to do. This is going to be a heavy one. It really is. Oh, I'm going to do it again to the poor guy. Oh, I was just sort of waiting a little too long, and I mean, he had it here, but wanted to try and not stagger the silence and dream core, yeah, but in, they in terms of him. waiting that long, there's no way they kill him anyway with it. I like, think so. He's got 12 wand charges, 1400 yeah. HP, no I mean, AA that's glass. That's what Noob would tell you. Guys, it doesn't matter if I it hit matter. it. It wouldn't have done anything. Yeah. I like that Kaori's actually trying to do this. He's going He's going to try going for Veil. I think they're starting to recognize. We're like, uh-oh. going to get the damage up. We're going to have no damage very quickly. So any little thing that they can get. Quinn, forcing action onto mid. Noob. Another jump from Quinn. But he's not going to go for it. They're just going for the tower. And they'll be able to claim that one. Well, bottom. Uh, they could claim what they want here right now, yeah. Gaming Gladiators. They could defend even bottom if they'd like to. 
Looks like they'll let it go. Okay. They know that the ults are going to be back up for quest, so gaming gladiators, they don't want to walk into any unnecessary fights. They're much more interested in trying to find this Naga Siren. The, the line's been drawn, they know which area of the map Tier 2000 is going to be hovering in, but at the same time, Tier 2000 is a step ahead. Gets the illusions out, TP's back to base. He Good knows thing. they're off the map, he knows they didn't hold their Tier 1 tower, uh, which, as you said yourself, would have been something that you maybe would have expected from them. Um, so he knows they're on the hunt for him, so yeah. he's out of that area. Great read. Yeah. They get some wards down though, gaming with that movement. This is usually the ideal ones you want to place when you're playing versus like TBs, Nagas, or most carries in general right now. So some deep vision placed from Celery. And they're just they're getting so much out of the map. 6k gold lead. I mean, they're all three minutes. of their cores in a fantastic spot. Yeah. Last quest, as is if if this is a game that TA 2000 is able to take home, they they they, they you know they probably were missing him anyway. Uh, in the games, they didn't have him, and uh, you'll see why. If, if TA2000 is able to turn this around and carry it. It would be unbelievable, honestly. Especially because, like, Toby, his timings are so slowed down at this Super point. Super far behind. Even when he gets his helm, then it, then Darkseer is like, okay, great. Now I just literally wall the Beastmaster in every single one of our fights, and our Gyro is going to have a free Vlad's aura. He's going to be solar crested, buffed up, and everything, too. So, yeah, the timing's coming up very late for Toby. We'll have to see what they look to do with those big team fights. They're going to need to have some in, like massive connections of everything when they do look to fight. But either way, Naga is... He, I don't feel like TA2000 is going to look to fight for another like, 10 minutes. Well, Because that, that's, that's the thing I was going to ask. If you are TA2000, what, what is your plan? What are you sort of... Well, what's in your head in terms of what items you're, you're going to get before you do start turning up? It's, it's a good question, honestly. Like when is the, when is the go... timing going to feel okay for you to, to be a part of these... These defenses. I mean, it's usually just like going for your heart plays and everything like that, but does he feel like that's actually going to be enough, or does he have to do something cute like these Orchid plays like and try to snipe thorn, back yeah. lines and stuff like that? We'll have to see. Because just it doesn't feel e easy no matter what option he wants to go for at this point, just because of how fast gaming's playing. And gaming's set up for Roche already. Oh, they, they can, can actually just it. force it. And I don't think Quest is going to try and do anything about this. No. And look, yeah, so... They're going to have Crimson Guard, they've got the pipe, they're going to have pretty much every single one of those auras being picked up already here for Ace. I mean, Quinn as well playing very deep. He's uh, clearly got Maybe no... Maybe too deep. No fear right now. Ah, uh, they have the song! Ooh, they might have he him here. He may have played with fire a little too much here, Quinn. They've got oh, the they song got into the coil and... Have a, a little too cheeky there, Quinn. Getting a bit ahead of himself. And uh, dancing tip. around in a situation where yeah, TA 2000 was like, well, I'll happily pop the song, and out of the heroes that were there, TA 2000, he's the one to get the kill. Most important one. So, so uh, he a little up bit heart. of a slip up. Yeah, Quinn, it, you know, he would tell he was making space for Rush. Sure, <laughs> space. A little space great there by Quinn. Maybe didn't expect like the was it? The, it was the second point in song, right? So that big radius. Maybe expected him to be a little bit more I mean, greedy. So I think he might have been able to get in range with the level one, right? Probably, but but uh, still. The rest of the game of Gladiators, they get themselves the Aegis. But, space. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a, yeah, a pretty significant kill for TA2000 to pick up against the enemy mid. Absolutely. I mean, that gives Toby space. And it, I mean, look at the net worth. It's pretty much pumped TA2000 up to the point where he's now level with Duraccio's Gyro. Mm -hmm. So Gaming Gladiators, still looking to, to make aggressive moves, of course, around Duraccio's Aegis. Yeah, if they're playing around, I think if they play around Ace and Duraccio, they're pretty damn immortal at the moment versus Quest. But Quest, they're not looking to just straight go for these fights at the moment, right? This is some split up, farm the map until they're ready to go for that fight. Which maybe this is just going to be Heart Naga Siren and yeah, then they feel like on. they actually can. Yeah, but. just man Manta into Heart. No sort of Scardy on the way, just wants to make sure he doesn't get burst. Yep. And only, one, honestly, once he has the Manta in the Heart, do you gaming gladiators really have the, the means to stop him from Song TP? Or is he always going to be able to do it with Manta Heart? Should be able to for the most part, honestly. He's yeah. quite tanky. I think only Duraccio is the big problem for him once he's got that finished up. True. Actually, I mean, Quinn is, Quinn is honestly still farming pretty damn well. He's, his damage is pretty explosive on Void Spirit versus these Illusion heroes, but... Yeah, but so Song TP should be hard to stop, I think. I yeah. mean, unless Quinn's able to get him with, like, a cute remnant, you yeah. know, from the outsides that we sometimes see thrown down that catches Naga Sarin's off guard if they're trying to escape. Absolutely. There, yeah, Gladiators still holding the lead. Tier 2000 still rolling in the goal. Now just signing things. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine gaming with this Aegis definitely want to look to accelerate things, try to close off the map a little get bit more here. Right. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Yeah. And looking to play behind each other. Uh, looking at Tofu, he's got the Glimmer done. Shard queued up immediately. Very, very good Shard game when you're playing versus Willow, when you're playing versus Pock as well too. Instantly purging off those silences and stuff like that can be super nice. 
Aggressive right. jump. He's not going to get caught by the Brambles, but we'll get Dream caught and Ice Blasted. Same Toby. time, they make the aggressive play on towards Toby. He's up to the high ground. Ace is ready to dive. Surge is forward. They'll be able to bring down the Beastmaster. TP's coming in, Omar. He tried oh, to get the fear up, but he gets caught by the stun. Double kill for Duraccio. Holy moly, he died fast. And they're looking for more. Kaori. Okay, we'll be able to hide himself. But Quinn is Ion shelled up. If he sees Kaori even for one second there, that is one dead AA. And he does spot him. And they're also stealing Tormentor. I'll go the way of Tofu. He gets a free shot. And look at Quinn. Does he find him? Kaori's being sneaky. He's able to hide, but he's got no he's got TP. No TP. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Easy wisdom room for TA2000. He doesn't mind if he does. And out he goes. Snatched. But quickly, things accelerate from a 3k lead to a 7k lead in no time with just a quick little move there from gaming. They lose Hillary, but... This... A TA2000 Naga Star, I feel... I, we have seen games like this that he has won. Yes. We have. There, he's versus the Dark Star. If though. there was any Naga Siren player that would win these sort of games, this it would be TA2000. This is very true. The thing is, they have a lot of ways to create illusions of his illusions. They have Shadow Demon and Dark Seer, and there's not really a clear on quest. Sure. And they're going to try and make a go from here. Get away. The, There's no missile. See if Quest is able to get him safely out of this one. Mansa dodging the missile. Nicely done. Should be fine. Still hovering around. He's considering maybe getting back in on this. There's still the Aegis on Duraccio, so not an easy fight for Quest to walk back into. Ace and Quinn. Uh -oh. The support. They're going to find the double combo here onto the two of them. Dragging back both Corey and Omae. will get the fear off. But Quinn, he was in with the Dissimilate. Closes the gap. Should manage to find the two of them. They get the two supports, and now they can push onto the tier two tower. Force out the fortification. Just like Effie was talking about, you know, these supports when you're playing versus Void Spirit can really struggle. You just get popped if you get jumped onto, and we saw right there. They have to be very careful of their positioning. Accelerated pace, another tier two to, well, actually, the first tier two to drop. Now they can actually claim outpost. Continue applying this pressure. Now, 20 gonna, seconds, It's going to be hard into Butterfly for TO2000. Okay. They're playing for the evasion, but of course, the same. I mean, I guess regardless of what he builds, the illusions are going to be great special. anyway. Yeah. Uh, but uh, does indeed amplify the potential of Tofu getting his own Naga Sirens under control. They don't have a way to clear the illusions themselves on Quest either. Now that I'm looking at it, right? Like well, SD, so what, Tofu starts making these. The SD, yeah, the SD could just actually make army and just send them down places to inside the team fights. Could be problematic as well. Yeah, yeah, gotta watch out for him and Ace. Yeah. Tofu and Ace ready to, to use the power of TA2000 against himself. They're, they're all kind of scaling too. Like Celery, he's queuing up BKB, so he's going for his type of scaling too. The SD's always gonna have merit for scaling in these type of games as well. But Quest, they're doing a good job of not bleeding too much, you know, slowing things down, allowing TA2000 to keep the pace of the gyro. Let's see if they can take down Quinn. Here. Gonna have the Raw to follow up. They've easily got him. Coil into silence, Raw to seal the deal. These little catches keeping the game going. Very important pickoffs. Can they persist for a tower here? And they're getting it low. Southern and Ace hovering around. Both do have the ults ready if they want to try and make a play, but of course, for those two, Tricky to control the puck. Yeah, you know what? You can see that Noob, as soon as Quinn is dead, Noob really tries to push the limit of his hero because that's really the only catch for him. Ace, very tanky. Super tanky. He's getting... So now there is going to be another thing that Noob does have to be careful. I'm sure he was checking Ace's items. Ace is about 1,000 gold from a hex. So further form of catch for the puck will be coming out for gaming soon. But yeah, TA2000, closer and closer to yeah, the butterfly. I mean, it's, it's exciting with these two carries, keeping it neck and neck. You know, when you look at the two net worths, you know, we were sort of questioning who's going to be able to do the quickest farming there. They're, they're really giving it up. up. They're all here. It doesn't get any closer uh, right now between TA2000 and Duraccio. And that's probably indicative of saying, you know, the Midas is a very, very good idea. With oh, for sure. He would not down. be doing this without the Midas, so... Uh, not that it's surprising, but TA2000 <laughs> clearly knowing what the, re the correct direction was going to be to, to go this game. Yeah, he's been a, honestly a treat to watch this entire year, and even even before that, we, and he, I know you know when he was naive, you know that was his name, of course. Uh, <laughs> he did have a little bit of di difficulties. I mean, when he came back into the scene, now it's everybody's just talking about as being one of the most stable carries, which is remarkable. So let's see if he can make the magic happen this time around. Just about finishing off the butterfly, and mm -hmm. uh, over for Duraccio, he got his satanic done, and we'll be just amping up the damage next, upgrading that chrysalis for the daedalus. In the mid. Quinn again. Have they got enough? Tofu's in the area. Can Ice Blast didn't connect though. Ooh. Was slightly off the mark. And with that, Quinn's going to live. They're able to turn and they'll take down Noob. 
Ooh. Even if it did hit, I don't think don't it was going to be does. popping, so. Those deaths hurt. Every single time gaming, they're going to run down here with that. Two, what, two, three ultimates on cooldown, 40 seconds, no puck. And there's the hex on it, yeah. The hex is done. They are definitely, you know, the game is in a point where if gaming gladiators are able to get like a couple of kills, they're going to be knocking at the high ground of quest. They can uh, advance very quickly if they start to get these pickoffs. Crimson Guard done for Toby. So a bit of defense for Quest against the flak attacks oh. of Derecho. The gem. That is the gem gone. Oh, we got it. Quinn able to get that Courier Snipe. That's pretty massive. <laughs> Map completely going to get controlled now. Gaming also. Okay, just clearing out illusions. Getting some for themselves. I was going to say, they, I think they caught vision of Omar for a quick second there. I thought they were going to run at him, but not the case. I'm closing in on that timing where Gaming can just look for the next Roshan. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up in less than a minute. And with that next Rosh, that certainly could be the timing to, to try and push it to the high ground for Gaming. Definitely. I mean, the, the, thing about these, the thing about these Naga Sirens is, like, yes, he's farming super well, but it's, it's still complicated for you to walk into any of these type of fights versus all these different ways now at this point to either make new illusions or just kite you around, which is going to be the case. Like his damage just isn't going to really come out straightforward just yet. And the nullifier, then maybe that'll be the call for him to try to actually go for any fights. But yeah, it's just gaming, gaming, gaming this whole time right now. And yeah, let's see. The Roche. They're setting up around top. A quest is all set up here. Oh, they're they're, they're going to get the blast down onto them. There's the fear as well. Pushing back the Tillin Dredger. Was able to get the BKB off. But Celery, he's going to pop. Looks to be ace as well to be going down. And he's. Yeah, but Duraccio. Duraccio is now completely on his own. He's bringing Toby Low. They'll pop the song. He's too strong. They have to back away from this. Kaori. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Taking a hit for the side gunner there. He's got to run. He might still die. A Quinn looking for the double dive. And he finds Noob. Straight in with the two astral steps, closes the gap onto the puck. Now with the vision for the missile onto Omar. Nacho and Quinn might be able to pick up another. Just gonna have to chat around TP. Is there any remnant up? Nah, it's nope. not, not gonna be there. I Can Kiori so. get out? Tofu. Does he have the fit? Does he have the range? Oh. Oh yeah, he's, he's found, found him. Oh, the dieback. They may have got they got the two of them, but they lose three heroes. The, I mean, the Auras, right? You see the AA Blast, it comes yeah. down to the Gyro, there's a Pipe, there's a Crimson, he actually doesn't take almost any damage. Ace dies, but Duraccio, standing strong. Yeah, he's cleaning up. Well on the way to his next time after the day, let's turn up that MKB. Once that's there, these fights are going to be almost impossible for even TH2000 to turn up to. It was a good call here to start this, but Duraccio quick with the BKB meant that whilst they could get the other two, Duraccio himself, he, he was never under any sort of threat here. And he just erases everybody. Yeah. Everybody but TA2000 starts to die very, very quickly. They have to walk away from that flak. A decent attempt, but they, yeah, they're like, uh-oh. Duracho's big. <laughs> and truly enabled from his team. He's got his next time done, TA2000. That okay. nullifier's complete. That'll help a lot versus the Crimson and all this kind of stuff, so... Surge in particular. Yeah, putting everything into the Nagasar in there. Toby letting TA2000 grab that wisdom. Don't blame him. Quinn about to have another hex. All oh. right. The double hex is going to be out. Noob. Game getting harder and harder for him. Almost well. impossible, it feels Very like. You yeah. If you're playing against these two hexes. You make Whoa, that is a rare pickup. A blink on Kaori. Yeah, blink KA. Yeah. What's sort of the, the, the cool with that one, do you think? It's just he wants to be sitting completely back and outside of... The, the, the fight so he has no chance of getting caught. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess he knows how important it is just to be able to live so he can get like the Ice Vortex and the Veil off because they need that spell amp to get kills. I mean, they need absolutely all of it. They need his whole kit. They need the Ice Black to connect perfectly yeah. as well too. It's just, yeah, they're not going to be able to bring down these targets. And now, it's versus an Aegis. Yeah, Gaming Gladiators, they're going to go straight for the fight. They find the Hex set up on the noob. They get the Remnant drag back. Quick dodge there, the potential roll. Yeah. They turn, they look for the fear, but Dracho is in with the BKB on top of Toby and TA2000. TA2000 popping the song in an attempt to get them out of there. Toby's going for the TP out. He'll make it away. So will oh. TA2000. Omar, the only one to fall. Quest able to cut their losses and get the majority of the team out. Corey will continue to get chased here by Ace and Quinn. See if we can get up to the jump. high ground in time. They're certainly going to dive up for this one. Quinn jumps in with a step. They'll pick up the second support. Oh, my God. Did you see how close that missile was to hitting TA2000 on that TP? I think that was like 0.3 seconds or something, maybe even less. Would have also grabbed him. But either way, gaming another massive team fight big win. Big fight. But TA2000 is... Got the waves. Indeed. He's playing well with the illusions, making sure that despite that fight win, 
Gaming Gladiators, they, they still won't quite be able to push for the high ground. Pretty much all waves being cut by the Naga Siren. We'll see that escape again. It was so close, honestly. I, I mean, it looked like Drasher was going to at least get the, the clean up on Toby. Yeah. Crimson Guard blocking pretty much all the damage there from the Gyrocopter, but yeah, look at this missile. Let's see how close it actually was. Oh, oh my that god, that's like point one, right? <laughs> that was. <laughs> oh my goodness. Somehow managing to escape. Next time around, probably won't be as lucky because no. Dracho's got his MKB done. So the damage output going to be even greater. And that evasion not going to do too much for TA2000. As a noob. And he's found Sofu. All right. Great dream call for this. And he's got backup. So should be a pretty dead Shadow Demon. He's going to get a first so get gold. Ooh. Blink. Whoa. Oh, okay. Tofu? All right. He's out. Oh, he's the alive. Base. They've lost Corey. They've lost Toby. He's through breaking ankles outside of the base, whilst the rest of his team uh, takes the base to quest. Fortification's been popped. And they've broken the high ground now. This oh, rack's have. dead. No, uh, no AA. Uh, uh, Toby does have buyback if he wants to. They've got the fortification back up. See so if they're going to put any effort into defending this set of racks, or they just let this one go. They need absolutely everything Quinn. to try to defend. He's Quinn's in. in. He's got the hex set up. It's going to be a dead dark Willow. Omar's out. They're one set of going. racks gone. Yeah, they're still with the edges for two and a half minutes. There's no need for them to slow down now, Gaming Gladiators. There's no wave. Oh, actually, Bottom's coming in. Just kidding. So they should be able to keep this push going. What a quest, too. Are they going to just sack the two racks? You need everybody to try to get this defense, but... They don't want to use the buybacks. Looks like they're just going to let two sets go. Oh, boy. Quest. They want to have everybody up before they go for some sort of a defense, and they want to have their buybacks for the defense as well. Feels like it could just be the last horizon. Whoop! A quick jump, Quinn. They found TA. Has he got a way out of this? A lot of hexes. They have the hex. That's a lot of damage. Another one. Uh, he's going down. Not a chance here for TA 2000. He's out of the game. 80 seconds, and he does not have the gold for buyback. He's spent up. And that that could it. be that, fog. And they just call they it. They call it. Bit of an anticlimactic ending. But yeah. The slow and inevitable one for gaming gladiators. No comeback here today, unfortunately, for Quest Esports. And of course, with that, gaming gladiators. They They'll be it. moving on. Yep. They have secured themselves the, the, the ability to stay in the competition. And unfortunately for Quest, they will be going home. We will, of course, I imagine, still have the second game played out because everyone's a good sport here. Of course. Gaming Gladiators and Quest. But uh, celebrations there for Gaming Gladiators after what was a tough start to their group stage. They bring it back at the end of it all. And we'll be seeing more of them in the tournament, Bob. Yeah, and they make the gyro look real good again this time they around. Do. You know, they, they actually just yeah, crushed the lanes super hard, played off of that momentum very quickly here. and. Yeah, TA2000, he farmed well. He did. But they couldn't really get these successful fights. They find these little pickoffs at times, but that early game was pretty devastating. I think, what, uh, AA hit six at like 13 minutes or something like that. So early game, a bit too devastating, it feels like. Yeah, it was, yeah tight stuff from uh, Gaming Gladiators. They keep this one under control for the most part, and they show that they don't care at all how much gold's being built up by the Snaga Siren, especially in those unfortunate situations where you do spend the whole game farming and then you get caught, you don't have buyback. It happens. It happens to the best of carries, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, 2000 happens to win today. Uh, well played to Gaming Gladiators. As I say, this win was all they needed. Uh, we should get a second game coming up, so we'll hopefully get some fun stuff coming out for these two teams. Uh, but unfortunately for Quest, at the end of the road for them here at Dream League Season 21. Yeah, that, uh, that spells the end indeed. This was Gaming Gladiators win, and they got themselves a second pick gyrocopter, and it did not feel like Quest had an answer to it. I'm joined by Jenkins, Effie, and Purge. Purge, this game, it it, it just it felt really difficult for Quest. It did, yeah. They kind of lacked damage. Is It felt like uh, Puck was there, and Puck got last hits, and Puck didn't die, but it also didn't really feel like Puck got a huge amount of kill participation. And that's partially because there weren't other heroes to combo with. Like, Beastmaster wasn't going to bring damage. Nago, in most cases, isn't going to bring damage. So he was kind of like reliant on his supports to be there or for them to land Ice Blast, which makes the kill opportunities a lot harder, especially when you're playing from behind. Yeah, um, I think the supports on Quest side were kind of dead weights this game. Not, not the players, but just like what their heroes could do for them. They didn't excel at winning the side lanes. They, they just couldn't do it. They got their levels quite late. They weren't able to utilize Ice Blast the way they wanted to. Because I recall there was this one moment where Void Spirit got Dream Quilled mid and the Ice Blast on him missed. Things like that. And 
If you're a support star, these like really squishy spellcaster types who didn't take advantage of their early power spikes with all of the damage that they do, then they're just going to be food for the Void Spirit later on, which is what we sell. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think like part of the Ice Blast missing is that pe people understand why you're picking the AA into gyro. It's like no. everybody, th this kind of feels like a two week old idea. Cause I remember players were all talking about this. Like AA is not the most picked hero, but against the gyro, you know, he gets the satanic, gets the uh, the side gunner, two side gunner attacks during the flak heals to full HP, whatever. And AA was the answer. But now I feel like people are going pike. People are picking like shadow demon. They're picking Oracle, things that can kind of like help evade the ancient apparition ice blast. So I'm, I'm really liking the kind of like new counters that we're seeing this week. Uh, Spirit, they ran the Mars offlane. Yep. Uh, they first picked it, they went blade mail on Mars and he just ran in, bulwarked and tanked all the flax, tanked all the gyro stuff that he puts on the ground and just shredded. Mm -hmm. And they also had a Kunkka mid, so they went double blade mail, double strength hero. I think if you were to ask them, they would say that that is the strategy. You just go multiple blade mails. Cause I remember hearing whisperings of that as well. Like in the first weeks where gyro was super OP, everybody was saying, the counter is Legion. Legion, Blade Mail, you duel the Gyro, he puts all his stuff on the ground. I think just Blade Mail yeah. is the counter. Bane 4 also looks incredibly good. So I, just, I think teams are just behind on, some teams are behind on countering the Gyro. I would have said AA is good like a week ago, but after seeing Spirit play, I think there are better answers. Yeah. I think AA is still good against Gyro. I think the issue is you have to enable your AA to reach the point of the game where he can be very useful. So AA is gonna be most useful against Gyro when it's around that 40 minute mark and you're and your PA is jumping on the enemy gyro and you want her to win the man fight. So you just, you throw in the ice blast and he can't satanic and that's kind of where it is. But you have to enable the AA to get to the point where you're taking advantage of late game gyro's weaknesses when he can't lifesteal. And to do that, you need to have side lanes that can actually kill the AA because he's not a strong laner. You need a mid laner that can constantly play with the ice blast or set up for it. And you need your other side lane to go really well. And in Quest's case, that just didn't happen. That did not happen. Um, I also want to focus on on the two carries because this was, of course, the one uh, the game that TA2000 uh, was back with Quest after using a uh, stand-in for the rest of the group stages. And that's why we chose the two carries for the Acer Predator head-to-head. -head. It's with the net worth because even though TA2000 couldn't really get the game going to their side, the farming aspect of the Naga Siren Purge never really lacked. Yeah, it did not lack. Uh, so he, he did his job technically, and there's lots of good things that Naga can bring. Like when you start contesting your Roche fights, having Naga sleep is fantastic. Being able to like scout where enemy heroes are, being able to split push side lanes, those are all great things. But the problem is they missed some fundamentals here that they got too far behind as a team in net worth. Mm -hmm. They didn't really have the right compositions to get kills and to play an even game. They weren't playing an even game most of that game so that that's what they missed they had these cool tools that they could have been useful if it was even but it wasn't even so that's what they need to fix in in game number two yeah uh we also had the naga overall first phase pick uh jenkins what did you think of that i think he played it fine i mean this drafting order is a little weird because you do get so many bands in the first two phases that i feel like it it is a viable strategy to uh, first pick your carry and yeah. then just ban everything, especially when you have TA2000 coming back. Like they're, they're very used to playing around they him. They could have picked Gyro. And they didn't pick an answer to the Gyro in their first pick because they let it through. Sure, sure. And I do agree with Effie that I do think the AA is still a good answer to the Gyro. I would never contest that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I think is that there are new age counters uh, new age as in this week that also do other shit like i would rather a bane who can deal with the gyro because he's enfeebling him in the laning phase and enfeebling his flak but then also has grip because to me if we're talking about aa and if he misses an ice blast and that's a problem this hero's one friggin ability man like what is he what are his other abilities are they are they relevant at all like i guess the w is kind of relevant but i would Fuck. like i said i would much rather a bane or a mars that does way more other stuff as well as counter the gyro. I just think mm -hmm. that a week ago, a week to two weeks ago, people hadn't thought of these new things because mm -hmm. Bane hadn't been buffed. We, we got a, a buff on the Bane in like the C patch, for example, right? So people are picking that. Yeah, I mean, it was the last pick Willow as well. Maybe not the strongest one. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Willow was unfortunate. Rough. And Bane was still in the pool at that point as well, potentially. I don't know. There's a lot of ifs and buts in a game like this. And uh, the unfortunate reality is that the quest didn't do good enough in the group stages. So 
they needed two wins. They did not get two wins because they can only max get one, which is uh, we're still going to play out the next game, but they are already eliminated in the case of Quest. And that also means that Gaming Gladiators is guaranteed going to the playoffs. They're starting the lower bracket, so they'll play tomorrow. Today is only for upper brackets. We still will have a game to follow, but I also want to take this opportunity to, to remind people, and there are actually a lot of people that have already uh, done this, but ESL1 Kuala Lumpur, the tickets, went on sale this morning, Effie. Ooh, this morning. This morning. Very cool, very cool. Uh, I, I just think SEA crowds are the best and if you're able to go to a tournament like that you absolutely should and premium tickets are still on sale so you guys know what to do buy them buy them <laughs> buy them okay, sure to make sure you that's what you meant what, what, what did you think like i don't know i guess that's all i could think <laughs> just monopolize them and then go on ebay and sell them no he's don't do jenkins. that he's don't do that scalper. don't do jenkins that. bought them all already he's come out he's <laughs> jenkins is scalper i'm not scalping oh. But I will say they're actually going really fast, especially the premium tickets. So uh, make sure to check that out if you uh, if you want to join. I think it's going to be a fantastic tournament. So uh, yeah, tickets are on sale, and that's something you can do like right now because we are heading into a break. But when we're back, it is drafting time for game number two between Gaming Gladiators and Quest. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Wear your passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
Perch and Jengis are trying to hit the mark here, and it seems to be pretty difficult. So we're also going to find out if Gaming Gladiators or Quest is going to hit the mark here with their draft as we're in game number two of this series. It's a two-game series, meaning this is the final game regardless, and does not mean anything. Woo! That's not true. Yeah. This could be really fun to watch, because yeah, you yeah, know yeah. Jenkins? Oh. What? I guarantee someone picks Pudge. Don't. Oh, Fuck never with me, man. The board is gone. Jenkins, they took our board. No, it's back there. Oh, okay. I'll go get the board. Let yes. me do my shots first. Uh, Effie and Per. Effie, say something smart. So, Quest have first pick. They've decided to ban out Gyro. They do not want to give it away to Gaming Gladiators, which I feel is the correct thing to do, especially if the response that they had prepared for it didn't work. Their response being the Beastmaster plus AA. But now that this Gyro is banned out early, Quest should have an extra hero to choose from. And I wonder if they're going to start with that TA2000 first pick carry, yeah. or if maybe they just experiment now. Try something new since this game, you can't fight for your spot in this tournament anymore. You might as well try something within the meta of practice for TI, you know? Yeah. Try your hand at the Vengeful Spirit, try your hand at the Warlock potentially. Maybe even go for that right. Dazzle at some point. Alright, Effie, fun. you don't have to say anything smart anymore. Um, Do you have the board? The board! You're, you're going to make a bold prediction. Not for this game, but for, for this tournament. tournament, for the whole tournament. I think that Life Stealer will come out at some point during the last phase and win the game. We that must be a. Is it a one? Wait, in one game. At some point, Life Stealer will be a last phase pick to counter something that people think like like a gyro or something, and it's gonna win or brew. Oh, it is has that, to win. Okay, let me let me give you some examples. So so That's Lactose said Shopify Rebellion will win the whole thing. Okay. But he gets double points for that. I said, what did I say? Bane mid will happen more than once. So how many points do we give her if she's right for that on that one? Life stealer last pick. Yeah, but she also gives has to win. It has It'll to win. win. Is that a bold pick? Yeah, because everyone thinks the hero sucks. Mm -hmm. It does suck. So not just okay. that it gets picked, because at some point it might get picked, but it has to also win. So she does do two it's permutations. It's overall last pick to counter something, and it's, everyone's going to forget about it, and it's going to own the game. That's my prediction. Right. Do you disagree, Perth? Guess who said that our world devourer will be picked? I think uh, LS. I still think it's plausible, yeah. I think it's an and LS. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to say Willow mid just once. <laughs> but now I have to I had to say more than once. It will not happen more than once, it will happen once. But I did say it will happen. So, mm. so you said LS last pick win. Yes. Bold claim. Is that how to spell your name? Yep, that's it. And let me triple F down F on it, too. And it will be Duraccio who makes the call. Oh my god. Duraccio will take like Life Stealer into a win. I'm going to write big D, and everybody will know what that means. So, do I get extra points for saying which play? I mean, that's incredibly specific. I have to get 10 points for that. That's not 10. That would Why be three. Not? We can X2 that. We can X2 it. I mean, the whole Duraccio being the one, that's pretty. Dude, Lactose said Shopify Rebellion will win the whole thing. Dude, that's, that's a pretty not wild even, claim. That's not even a wild claim. Yes, it is, dude. It's they Shopify. have not won anything since 2017. It's pretty wild. Arkeezy has never won a major. Uh, Purge. What do you think, Purge? Use a different color for Purge. Let me see. Under Purge, what color do you want? Gross. Blue. Blue is your answer, because there's no other colors. Um, let's see. There's a decent amount of uncontested heroes, actually. All right, can I, just, can I just say that if you were to tell me that Invoker and Vengeful Spear would be given to a team, what would you say? In this tournament. What would you say? A team like Gaming Gladiators. Well, I, wouldn't, would I wouldn't believe you. And getting Invoker plus VS, and then also getting the Terrorblade into the Beastmaster, who clearly Gaiman have already prepared for this Beastmaster because it's a Toby specialty hero. And Gaiman's first three picks look so strong. And that's not to say, oh, Omar isn't an excellent Rubik, or they can't do a lot with the Shadow Demon. I, I just think that like, the heroes that Gaiman have on paper right now are just objectively stronger than the ones Quest have. I think this is over. This is GG. It look look looking pretty pretty scary. Quest is out. Scary. No, dude. Quest but they're out. Well, they're already out. out. Got you. You may, did, you did again. may I choose a witch doctor core? Witch doctor core. Yeah. Yeah. There you can. Yeah, that's a one xer right there. I think. I'll take a I one got X. four points for my prediction. You can't up the points. I'm the what points guy. What do you guy. mean? Mine I'm is the points guy. Incredibly particular. You can have. You can have X two for that. 
Sure. You can have X2. Really? You're willing to... That, I you you got to work on your negotiating. Whatever. I think I should get X2. No way Willow will happen more than once, Mint. It only happens... Well, now once. that the group stage is over, yeah, you can't say that's cheating. That's Achiever. true. Purge, what was yours again? I said Witch Doctor Core. But I literally said it yesterday, which was also when the group stages were over. Man, that thing looks like it's about to fall over every time no, you write on it. No, it's not. No, no, it's on wheels. It's a no, fine that's... thing. Jenkins is a strong boy, though, so I don't know. Mm. All right. To talk about this uh, draft. So the Dazzle comes out. Dazzle is a really interesting hero. I do not think that it should be played as a support. I mean, it still can be, but if this were to be played as an offlane hero and just build a lot of items, build a lot of stats, it looks really good. The way we've seen it be played <laughs> the last couple of days, like the CDR into these long fights with Graves, uh, Poison Touch countering, Heroes like Beastmaster or Darkseer, what have you, just having that ability seems really cool. Plus, no. the minus armor synergy with TB plus Ventral Spear. That's a lot of minus sure. armor. Against who Phantom Lancer, this game's over. Who do you want Dazzle to this play? Who's going to play Dazzle? Either Ace or... I would like for Ace to play it, but I can see Tofu also playing. Okay, really because you're support. still thinking Quinn will play the Invoker. There's no chance for Invoker support. I think there's a chance. I there literally saw chance, Tofu actually. playing it as support like a week ago in pubs. I, I, think, okay. I think Dazzle is best core versus support. I mean, they could be playing a support, but it works best if you have some, like, frontliner guy that does a lot of damage that you're keeping alive and makes the enemy team hard to play yeah. against. And that's going to be terrible. Yeah, in this I case. mean, Dazzle TV is a classic combo. Yeah. Easy Sunders. Especially when the Grave lasts, like, 15 seconds. Then yep. it makes it even easier, yeah. And he's getting lifesteal. If he buys a Satanic, it's even better. Man, they have so much to empower this TV. This is, this is legit, like, a really nice synergistic GG draft that also counters pretty much all of quest heroes so far like they're going to need some intense last pick to make this work although i will i will say pl is the hardest like core to core counter to terrorblade like pl just absolutely demolishes that's why the dazzle's nice though yeah. dazzle with the shard is but, like <laughs> sure sure but this pl came out after the dazzle so they're not afraid of it the thing is i feel like PL has to get to a stage of the game where he's strong enough to fight the TB who's playing in a group up lineup. When you're playing with a Ventral Spirit and you're playing against the Beastmaster on lane, you know that the TB is going to have a better start than the Beastmaster, which means that the enemy team most likely cannot play off of the tempo of the Beastmaster. But around the like 40, 45 minute mark, I mean, PL can go absolutely nuts in this game. It's also good against Ventral Spirit. It's also good against Invoker. Like This is a really good PL game. I just worry about I just worry about Beastmaster's entry into the game versus his TP. Like, remember in the olden days when people would play PL versus Invoker mid because PL just lane so long to oh, yeah. stats versus Invoker? Yep. Mm. I feel like if you were to put this Invoker, if you were to flex it to position four, that's also very good for PL. He can just Phantom Rush on top of him. Like, with a yes. sentry, you can do a lot of damage to it. So, like, PL as a standalone hero can do a lot here. And you can dodge like EMP stuff too, typically, right? You, I mean, you love to pick your poison, I guess, but yeah, he's got a decent counterplay. It is a rare PL though. We don't really see that hero that much. No. Do you guys think this is like a trying him out because this game doesn't matter as much? I think it just looks like a banger PL game. Yeah. So yeah, they can't really play for anything. So they might as well see if it works out for them. I, I, I just really feel like gaming have prepared so many solutions for this Beastmaster. If yeah. Beastmaster doesn't have a good start, like we saw last game, the tempo that Quest needs to play kind of that four protect one, play on one side of the map type of style doesn't exist. How about gaming still picks Shaker and then they have the Dazzle offlane with the Invoker support and the, uh, or the Dazzle oh. support. Uh, like, that's Dazzle offlane, Invoker support, Venge 5, and then they can still play Shaker against Earth Spirit. That's it's a good. genuinely great, su that's a great suggestion. I feel like we saw the Dazzle offlane work in the previous couple of days. It procs Cold Snap. It's a double sustain lane as well. Tofu likes to play Invoker. Mm. I could see Ace being a Dazzle enjoyer. Or, or we see Witch Doctor offlane coming out right here. And here we go, the first Purge. To get the thing Ooh. on the board. Lifestealer last pick. Let's go, Effie. <laughs> <laughs> we already have a Terrorblade, though. I don't That's know an offlane Terrorblade with hey, an armlet right not there. time for this. That does sound like a Jenkins build. I, I, I just wonder if Gaiman are confident enough in their early game to not solve this PL or maybe have a backup plan for this. Ooh. So this is their backup plan for the PL. I think Sand King actually is one of the better heroes in Dota versus PL. And it can build really great items versus Legion heroes, right? It can build like the Shiva's Guard. It can potentially even build the Radiance. It lanes well. It's got a lot of like 
AOE control, it's got the damage. It's a cool thought. It's a cool thought here by Gaiman. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the AOE damage with Ags, it's like the standard build right now. Uh, you already mentioned those extra AOE items you could buy that would, if you really want it, but like Ags alone should solve a lot of those problems. Because it gives you like a safe place to fight. Normally there's like no safe place against PL. You just have to like try to go invis or run away somehow. So yeah, it's a it's a cool draft. Pretty straightforward for both teams. Like no one really, no pudges unfortunately. Sorry Jenkins. You lied to me. I lied to you. Like my dad. I, I think that like reaching this four slot PL could be really scary for Gaben, but like Jenkins mentioned earlier, you have so much ways to buff up the TB. You've got the Alacrity from Invoker, you've got the Minus Armor coming out from both Vengeful Spirit and Dazzle, and you have what's looking like the stronger sidelines. So maybe you're not really concerned about that PL critical mass, but if you're looking at that ultra late game, I mean, this this is a, this is a TA2000 specialty, the 1v5 carry type archetype. He can do it. Yeah, and this time at least his hero wasn't overall first pick, so surely that's a, that's a positive thing, Jenkins. Positive. Sometimes. I mean, in this meta, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter that much. I mean, I, I'm a huge believer in the Dazzle versus uh, PL matchup. I, I've, I've heard whisperings of, um, like, this is the ultimate illusion hero counter with the with the Aghanim shard. I remember it used to be Lion for a while with the, the Hex and Mana Drain insta-killing illusions. The only thing is, I do question in the late game, like, Obviously, the PL with the with this Aghanim Scepter is spawning like a lot of illusions, yes. right? And it's not even necessarily about the illusions as much as it is about the spam and the sustain and not being able to kill him. So, I'm not sure how that matchup is going to be if he's a support. Well, we're going to find out how the matchup is going to be when he's a support because it's like, that's exactly what Dazzle is this game, a support. We're going to find out who takes game number two of the series together with Odie Pixel on phone. It's coming into game two. Uh, folks, well, what do you make of sort of what we got for the draft? We're getting to see some PL action. Not necessarily the hottest carry of the patch, but no. definitely one that uh, Quest seems to figure can work in this game. And as the panel was sort of pointing upon, they feel that it can work as well into a Dazzle, which they saw yeah. before they picked it. But as we know, Shard Dazzle can be pretty good against the Illusions. Yes, it's not a Core Dazzle though, right? So the timings and stuff like that will be a little bit different from, I think, almost... I think we've only seen Core Dazzle, right? I mean, sure, but at the end of the day, a Support Dazzle is more likely to get a free Shard from the Tormentor. Very, very true. They also did round up the draft with the Sanking, right? Which is... Quite a good hero versus PL, probably at all stages. I actually am gonna see, you know, with the new Sand King, you know, Aghanims and stuff like that, versus PL. How is that gonna fare in these fights? Because that's kind of just this new concept thing, so I'm kind of interesting how that's gonna, interested how that's gonna work out yep. for him. So, let's see how it all goes down. Um, and then Noob on this Earth Spirit, I think that's the one I'm gonna be looking at the most, just because I feel like he can cause a lot of havoc and he can kind of dictate pace of the game as we've seen a lot from these Earth Spirits. So, yeah, um, eyes on Noob for me, just to make that space so TA2000 can get to the hopeful thing that the panel's talking about, the multiple different, you know, the four different items that he can get so that he can not be online. Yeah, let's see how this goes down. And let's see if Toby, in particular, does a little bit better. I feel like that last game... That's a tough start. It got really rough, even though they even got, though the, two they got kills. the two kills. Yeah, it was, so... It was, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be looking at bottom quite a bit here, uh, just to see how that lane does go, if they're going to be able to actually apply any pressure versus Duraccio on probably his most comfortable hero. Sure. Which they should be able to, right? You, you, you know, Beastmaster, you know, Rubik, there's a lot of spam, there's a lot of harass, right? They get in with the Hawks, the Boars. Yeah. It shouldn't be easy for the TB, right? No, but it's gotten, you know, Fade Bolt is pretty pathetic now. When you look, it, sure it like reduces levels, like yeah. two damage. <laughs> so for one, it's actually extremely pathetic. But yeah, let's see how they're going to be able to do. I love it. The Venge versus the Rubik. The Venge, the better Rubik now in the laning phase in a way, because yeah, of that wave of take, terror. Take down so much damage right. with that. Armor, damage, etc. so... Now let's see if they're able to apply that pressure. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looking at bottom and mid mostly because I think Noob should have some should have a pretty okay time in the mid lane versus the Invoker. Invoker might, might come out slightly ahead, but Noob's going to hold his own. Yeah. So you, you're going to be able to survive as the Earth Spirit. It's just a case of how well can you dodge the MPs and make yeah. sure you have 
at least enough mana to get a spell out to nuke the creep waves. Yeah, and make sure you don't get too right, like too much too harassed because it is that range versus melee matchup. So Quinn doing an excellent job of right now controlling positioning. So noob kind of just has to take the take a beating. Caustic skilled level one onto Ace. So just looking to really apply that pressure. This does not feel like the easiest lane by any means for TA2000. If he had a stronger support, perhaps, but... Oh! Wait, what? Okay, Queen got a free courier. All right. All right. Easy money. I mean, that's going to make it a lot harder for a noob, so... Yeah, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's early waves, but I do feel that's like this painful. lane could start to get... Pretty one-sided in favor of Quinn with the way things are going so far. I, Getting... I, I don't see an Earth Spirit sort of leveling this matchup. No. Especially not if he gets sort of first few waves. Gets a courier kill, yeah, and gets those two big two or three big denies on yep. range creeps. It's gonna hurt him a lot. Omar. And this should be first blood if Stretcher can get it. And he can. Steps up first blood for the terror blade. Never wanna see right. never wanna see that if you're quest, giving it to big boy Duraccio in a game where he is gonna be super amped up as they mentioned on panel he's got venge alacrity the weave armors and when he puts a reflection on a beastmaster depending on what toby goes for no matter what he's gonna be able to get at least the inner beast so definitely a game where duracho he's gonna be a strong man and how are things looking at the top plane does indeed look Ooh. like tier 2000 yeah not not gonna have the easiest time against these two oh and Qu uh, quinn got the connection onto noob again he might even have the kill here uh my goodness, just able to touch the tornado with that rollout, but uh, it, it's not happy times for Noob in the mid, in the mid lane. This so, this is yeah, a, bit, a bit of the old Quinn domination. Yeah, those first waves, honestly, it's massive. Now he's got gloves, so he's just yeah pushing him back, so not the case where it's actually going to be even easy for Noob whatsoever to get any last hits. He got hit by, I think, three EMP so far, so can't even use the boulder smash to, last, to get those guaranteed range creeps. Yeah, he's already looking like a, an early win on all three lanes for Gaming Gladiators. Ace, a little... Uh, to relax there with his courier movement, will lose out on his ring of health as that gets sniped on the way over to him. But they can't put they can't put pressure onto Ace with the dazzle behind him at all. He's actually just doing perfectly fine. Yeah, honestly, all three lanes going even better. It feels yep. like than last game. Celery, it's got stick. Yeah, we'll survive. Able to split the damage uh, between the two of them there, really. So neither Duracho or Celery going down. It will be kept low. Duracho's got one. Celery, he's got a healing salve. Will they be able to break that salve? Looks like he's not going to let them. Noob actually already maybe making an early move just because of how how bad he's getting crushed in mid lane. He might actually feel like he has to just come down I mean, here for a move. Duracho is obviously sitting rather low. Celery is not so much with that salve coming into play. So now that oh. he's spotted this out, a little harder for Noob to make the move. See if he wants to risk it. It's a little awkward now. He yeah. could just die if he goes under tower. Uh-oh. This is uh, indeed a that's painful awkward. time away from that mid lane. Oh man, and he's getting stunned up too, and still just getting hit. Yeah, this is definitely very awkward here for Noob. Tofu top! He'll go down. Good kill. Oh, yeah, bottom Noob and Omar still hanging around. They're, they're so low. Ah, th th this is so awkward. <laughs> Poor Noob. <laughs> he really wanted to get some type of success down here, but yeah, absolutely not the case. Quinn is going to be massive. They still look for Duraccio. Okay, will he get him? Ah, magic missile! The holds back Toby and Dretcher actually able to walk away. Lucky to do so there. He was very low. He's still dancing around the tree line. Oh, Noob at the least, he gets his items and he has got the urn, but this is going to be a very difficult game to come back into as this mid uh, spirit. And Dretcho knows <laughs> it. He'll go uh, you know, basically, uh, good luck, buddy. Uh, this is going to be a difficult game for you. Oh, Dretcho yeah. says that. And I do, at least, I mean, for me, I felt like a lot of that early game momentum and stuff for them to actually make plays, it was going to be revolved around how the Earth Spirits, you know, early game and stuff that he would have so he could set that tempo. So, there'll be some concerns for them. Yeah, super hard now. Like, Quinn is level 6, Noob is level 4. Oh. It's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, have we seen much Noob Earth Spirit? I see on the tiers he's kind of bronze tier, so maybe, maybe a case of, you know, as we said, this game... They're already out, so trying something that he, he, he hasn't played Perhaps. huge amounts of. Perhaps true, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't think I've seen I'm I'm used to more of his like, Primal Beast, his Pockets, Pangos, and stuff like that, so maybe something a little bit newer. They're going to check the runes, just try to at least guarantee that he can get that one, so he'll get an Invis rune. Maybe he can try and make a play with this again. But uh, at the same time, this is probably going to be... You know, Gaming Gladiators is going to know this is coming. Quinn can counter gank very easy as well, too. Even though he's just sitting in the mid lane farming, he's got a big way of pushing in, and he can definitely TP if they see an ex overextension from the Earth Spirit. Scan comes out, they know he's here. 
It's just it's I mean, level five too. As well oh boy. <laughs> from uh, from the D ward around the small small camp, so he's not going to get anything with this one either. Tough he's times for him. Clear and small camp again. Brutal. Yeah, Quinn, he's, he's having the time of his life mid. Yep, doesn't he have to move? Catapult's still alive. Creep. Yep. Getting some pressure onto the tower. And now he's got an urn. Doesn't go for that just quick Midas. He actually just wants to be able to a little bit, be a little bit active himself on Quinn. Just the casual gloves of his for now, then probably go back for Midas. And the power, or the wisdom runes will be one for one. And Kaori will die to some ancients. Um, As Noob loses his entire mana pool. Mana's again. gone, so... We'll at least have potentially a Shadow Demon coming out to refill this bottle if uh, Noob wants to hang around the lane, try and get the level 6. TA 2000. This is the stage where he does have to be a little bit careful also of being killed. Ace has hit level 6. Yeah, they're going to start getting aggressive. Yeah. Hopefully. And he's keeping his distance, TA 2000. Should be fine. Oh, here. here. They brought in a third member here for this move, Gaming Gladiators. They'll take down Omar. TA2000 trying to at least get Tofu on the way out, but he's not going to find him. Tofu's able to get away. He might just commit. He's going to try. Uh, he's not going to get it. The stuns are back up. Double kill for Celery Noob. He's going to miss the spells on Tofu. Tofu's able to step away. Magnetize will proc with Tofu. He's out with the TP. He's okay. He'll be fine. Noob, he doesn't have the damage to take Ace out, so nobody to fall on Gaming Gladiators in this top lane brawl. Oh, boy. This is, I think, as rough as it can get for a mid Earth Spirit. It's rough. No rotations are working. Mid lane didn't work. Levels are going to be coming out slow. Magnetize on cooldown too, and he doesn't find anything. Not even a support kill. No earn charges acquired. Oh boy. And TA2000 now at this point, uh, he probably just feels like, yeah, I gotta kind of just have to go to the jungle with the way that they're going to just play and push onto me. Yeah. Wouldn't even be surprised if we see him change his mind and just go for another Midas gameplay. I was literally but, uh, thinking the he's same thing. He brought the blade. But... He's brought the blade. So it looks like he does want to want to try and have the option of turning up. Maybe feels like if he goes Midas, it's going to be similar to last game. He maybe just needs to try to fight because his Earth Spirit's just having literally no game. So, but will those fights work? I mean, he, it feels like he's going to be very addressed at this point now. And Omar, easy rotation for Quinn. Yeah. And that is the urn acquired. And he's almost got Midas Gold. And they saw the stacks. So, again, just like last game, could see gaming steal some away. Corey's trying to play around with Ace. Yeah, they're stealing. Look at this. They're, it's exactly the same as last game, but worse. Yeah, they, they can't stop this at all. They just don't have the heroes. No. Um, you know, it's, it's not like Noob can come across and do anything to stop this. He's just too far behind right now. He rolls in. He's, he's just going to immediately die. He's dead. Toby can't walk in. Toby just hit six. And oh, top, they will get a connection. Can they actually finish him off, though? Uh, he's walking it off. He's got a Vanguard, and he's got one charges. He's got backup as well. I mean, can they get him? No, no. Tofu's here. And now Noob. Ace is perfectly fine. Celery, he's got, he's got level 6. He's yeah. got the swap back onto TA2000. Cold snap into the magic missile. It's a dead PL. Spreading the magnetize still. He might actually be able to get a kill. Nope. It's not going to be enough damage. And, and now that he's in trouble. Fine. Noob's out of mana. Quinn and Tofu ready to chase him down. It's a rough one. It's a rough this one. Unfortunate for Quest. Of course, they were out already, but nobody wants to go out on a game like this. It, no. this, this is a feels bad, unfortunately, for them at the moment. Are they they, gonna... uh, they're getting styled on by the old Gaming Gladiators. Gaming Gladiators, without a doubt, you know, showing that after a slow start to the groups, they're ready to they're ready for the playoffs, Fog. You know, this is Gaming Glad Gladiators back to the level of performance where they just don't drop games. No, and it's back to the, the way that they play where it's very aggressive and very oppressive. It's like, it's not giving you space to really want to be able to just sit back and farm and stuff like that. They still got smiles on, on but... Noob, you know, yeah. what, it's, it's a what can you do kind of situation. Yep. Yeah. He's like, well, none of my moves worked. I got destroyed in mid, and now Quinn is just popping off. Is that his Midas? Is, uh, that's definitely the Midas coming out. Uh, oh, no, no, he went oh, did he go? First. Oh, okay. Gets the vessel done. Cool. More aggressive. Why not? He also took the Duelist Gloves, so all about that damage for Quinn. That's the blink on Ace. Oh my goodness, these timings are so fast. And the timings on Quest, everything is just so slowed down because just nothing has worked, and not even their stacking. I think just cause chaos, just try to make weird moves at this point now nah, to you, you can't try to break the game. Right, no. you, you just have to keep 
Keep trying your luck across the map. <laughs> uh, but they, they've got eyes on him. He's up there on the cliff. They see him. And he's going down. Was not prepared for the vision to, to be up there, but it was. Noob is not having fun. Quinn, though, he's having a great Quinn is having a great I mean, all of Game I mean, Ace, is having a great you know, time. with his stacks cleared. You know, Ace, he's already got 100 CS here 11 minutes in. Oh, wow. A well executed game plan, 7 to 1. It's it's only 12 minutes in, and they're just this far ahead already at this point. Duracho with zero pressure. He's also, as we said, super enabled this game with all the buff ups and poor TA2000. He's kind of just left on an island because those other lanes went so poorly. Yeah. I mean, Gaming Gladiators, they, they already have that kind of lead where you know, Duracho, he could just probably stay on his half of the map and continue hitting creeps yep. for the rest of the game, and the other four heroes would be able to close it up. Absolutely. Duracho, yep. he's in full chill mode now. He. He doesn't need to do anything. Honestly, Quinn can just run around and kill pretty much anybody on yep. his own at this point. He is unbelievable. It's almost level 10 on this invoker already. Toby, be careful how far you step up. Quinn hunting. Also still has a sentry up in that, that uh, triangle there if he wants to make a move up to that. Very true. Mid noob. Oh, not again. Let's see if Quinn's able to do this alone. That's the mana gone. No one... For Goodbye. any sort of charges or anything here, he can't roll out of this. He'll try, but the vessel's upon him. He's dead again. Another one for Quinn. Same time, top ace. Can they get a kill? Looks like they should. They will this time. They might even get another. They're going to look for Celery. Have they got anywhere to stop the TP? They don't. Oh, Celery will make it out. But ace goes down. Something to be found here for Quest. Something to be found for Quest, but not for Noob, who has now been overtaken by the Tofu Dazzle in net worth. He is literally just at zero, 0-3-0, zero, nothing is going up. At least he got an earned charge for dot from dying. I guess that's the one positive. How's Quinn doing off that vessel pickup? He's yeah, super it's close to Midas. Very, very close to having that. This is going to be some very fast timings here for the mid in, in Poker. And yeah, Ace, even with that death, he is Dyer's just massive. getting so much money. He's, he's pretty much got the bots done on top of the Vanguard 13 minutes in, just, a, just about nine to go away. Yep, then he's just everywhere. And then for Noob, it's even harder to try to make any type of play because they're just always going to have the numbers. And Quinn, I, last like four minutes or so, Quinn is just moving around the map. Ghost walked, applying even more pressure. He's going to be able to take this Wisdom rune away. But looks like Noob, he's going to be able to steal the other one. <laughs> with the high five up. That's how he's done it for him. Nice little sneak away. Oh no. The other stack. <laughs> Gaming will say thank you. Poor Toby. <laughs> Toby literally just stacked for them. Seven stacks. Uh, yeah, all those stacks have gone to Gaming Gladiators, right? <laughs> yep. They're not being able to retain a single one of those. Nope, every single one. Quinn. What's Kiori? Bit off the mark. Easy dodge of the sun strike. Uh, should be able to walk this one off, Kari. Uh, is that why she? He's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's... he's up the high ground. He's fine. The illusion won't be You're able to kill him. Doing very well. I'm very proud of. Him. I'm like, trying to look and think of what the the moment of recovery of when they can actually look to fight back, but they're into this type of lineup. It's not really the easiest when when gaming's just going to be grouped up a lot. And if they're not grouped up, they're going to have numbers because these blue should travel on sanking. Like Noob's game is just so slowed down that. Committing into all these heroes, it, it's just him, you know, feeding himself away if he tries to make any type of space like this. So I think just yeah, farm, try to find a little bit of timing of items, and maybe just wait for TA two thousand to make the call of when you want to try to fight. But they're just losing everything, all their stacks, all their control. Kaori, got there with the jump. This time he's gonna go down. Yeah, no amount of disruption is gonna save in this one. Mid lane. And they get Celery. Surely. Ah, right, he's gonna swap Quinn in. <laughs> celery says, I'm out of it. Maybe uh, Quinn, Quinn dies. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, he's fine. I think Ace is coming in to help him out. No, Quinn, I don't think he's fine. He is gonna die for he's this, dead. but he's been dusted. He's They've killed him. Well. Uh, and now Ace. Uh, they'll get Toby. Tier 2000, Thanks, Noob. they might be able to clean up more. Ace is gonna get Grave just in time by Tofu. But he's very low. Noob's back in with another Noob. roll. Ace, he's going down. Noob, he's still alive, but finally falls. But he's cost them three heroes. A Big little quest. bit of a punch back there from Quest. And uh, a yeah. tip to Celery. <laughs> well, Celery there with the uh, unfortunate initiation, uh, getting <laughs> getting Quinn in on the front lines. But didn't, that didn't go to plan. That was probably Quinn saying, you can swap me, I'll be fine though, right? You'd imagine so. Well, I hope so, otherwise Quinn ain't going to be too happy. <laughs> uh. Look at the play of the game. 
the swap in. I didn't, I guess he didn't expect the, all the four of them to be there and everything too, but a good recovery, a needed one for Quest as yeah, PA2000. Uh, yeah, considering how far behind they were, these you know, they, these kills, they're, they're not nothing. No, he gets Twice two of them. Yeah, taking down Quinn. Very important. Very proud of Gotta need quite a bit more of those, but yeah. a nice it's, little it's inch back. You know, any anything they can take at this point, Quest. Yep. Noob maybe debating if he even wants to finish up the vessel, if, if, or he just wants to go for the Midas now after all that too. I think he's just going Midas. They know the state of the game is still in a pretty miserable position. So even though they get that nice kill, he definitely still feels like he needs something to recover his game. So yeah, he did. He bought the Midas recipe. Yeah. And tier 2000, of course, as tier 2000 tends to do, he's still doing fine. Still farming well. Omar. Farewell. Celery's halfway to an Ags with a medallion. This is the five inch. Yeah, I mean, he, supports yeah, he, are massive. He himself, he was happy with he that is. last play. I mean, sure, he may have got a few of his teammates killed, but he got the double kill in that mid fight. So, Celery, he's he's quietly smirking away to himself as that was all to plan for him. Ace being so very very active, finding another pick up here. Yeah, these boots travel definitely looking really good on him that he's able to get it so quick. And he's now he's got the third component of Aghanim, so we're going to get to see that Ags versus well. the PL. It does sound very hard to play, the PL versus this. As he's just looking for more. And yet, Toby did, of course, go for that helm, so whenever you see that reflection onto this Beastmaster, this Duraccio TB is going to be hidden hard. Yeah, continuing to just keep the control of the map. Kind of restricting quest, so they're keeping that lead. It's still continuing to grow, and they're going to find another one. In for that. Easy jump from Ace. Easy kill for Duraccio. They've got lanes pretty pushed in. Looks like Noob does find a connection. It's a glimmer. Let's see if he can do it. He's got backup coming in. So uh, should be an easy kill on to Tofu. They get a good kickback. Tier 2000 able to finish him off. Can Noob get out? I mean, Ace, he's going to try and commit. Gets him at a good angle there with a the two-man burrow strike. It's enough to take down Noob. Celery was considering a swap forward too there, but the illusions. Now they've seen the defusal is finished up, so T2000 definitely in fighting form. Can they catch the Rachio? Okay, I was gonna say he's a little far up. There's definitely almost potential for them too. That's the one thing I am looking at is the Shadow Demon versus the Terror Blade, right? There is that kind of cool potential of Kaori getting some crazy strong illusions. But then there's a dazzle, so you know, there might just be that shard that comes out, which I imagine Tofu's gonna purchase probably next. Be able to clear out the PL illusions, be able to clear out his own TB illusions, too. Yeah, just continuing to keep all, th all three waves shoved onto the side of Quest. Quinn? Quinn? This could be a... This, this looks... He looks pretty dead. No, they, they, this sort of bot smart just got him killed. TP's up to the top wave. Quest, they were ready and waiting. And it's... Okay, it's next to the Roche, but it's going to be shifting, so I don't think they can force it just yet. Yeah, that's quite the catch from them as that's well. That's a big one. I think, you know, if anything as well, they're probably just setting up for some someone like Ace to go out there with his bots, but they, they get something a bit bigger. Yep. Actually being Quinn the one to, to TP up there with his newfound boots to travel. So he didn't expect the three or four to be up there. Nice. Kaori, though, again shows himself. An easy one. And at the end, we'll die. Should be able to get this tier two. And yeah, they're set up for the Torment direction oh, yeah. on Tofu gaming. Tofu might not need to buy one. Yep. They're set up for Tormentor, and then also, it's 20 minutes. So Roche, it's shifted to bottom. So they're also set up potentially to go for that right afterwards if they'd like to. Let's have a look. Tofu getting it would be the, would be the tasty one. Ooh. There goes the way of salary. I, it's still an amazing one. And so. still Tofu's got the money to buy yep. his own, and indeed, seeing as he didn't get it, he'll just spend his, spend his cash to pick it up. It looks like with the meta, Tier 2 Glyph is down, so they're just going to finish that one off. Gold lead continues to increase here for Gaming Gladiators, even though they lost Quinn. And they're on the hunt mid. Nope. Ax is online for Ace. Ah, they got the setup on a noob. Far too much damage for the Earth Spirit. Oh, and Ace got blessed. I didn't see that. He got the Vampire Fangs, too. Probably one of the best neutral aims you can get on a Sanking sure, when you've got yeah. this. <laughs> That's true. I guess we get the Soundstorm down, and uh, yeah, you ain't dying. You're going to have a lot of survivability with those heals pumping you up. And now still grouped up. They actually don't need to go back for this Roche or anything just yet. They keep wanting to apply this pressure. It's been a very aggressive day. These last two games from Gaming Gliders, there's not really been any slowdown from them just continuing to just bring it to Quest. They're so far. I mean, Salary, he literally said 400 gold from an They're thinking about going on ice. Not the easiest go. 
catch him with the dust, but out of range of it. Up to the high ground. Tier 2000 still wanting to lead forward. Toby's going to open up with the roar. Doing a lot of damage to this tanking. ASAP surprisingly dying very quickly there to, to sort of the... the the push Tofu. from Toby near Summers, they're also going to get the second. Noob might even be able to line up more. He's got the slow on to Quinn. Quinn, he's going to offer the TP out. They've got anywhere to they stop got him. do. The vision's there for him. to get the telekinesis grab. Quest, they'll get Bastard. three. A huge strike back here from the team that was down about 13k. Can they get more? Keep going. Honestly, keep well. looking for these type of plays. That was huge. They zoned on the side there. They zoned Tofu away from Ace. So it was actually beautifully done. He couldn't actually get the grave onto him to try to protect. Yeah, I think three down. Ace as well. Not expecting to die as quickly as he did so. there. Caught by Toby with the raw. He's in on top of him with the helm summons and he just gets Ooh. destroyed. Now they go towards Roshan. Tier 2000 is getting enabled as well in all these fights. We'll see it again on this one. Ace getting caught. Very very leveled, very farmed, doesn't matter. Disappears in an instant. Yeah, Tofu. I, actually, he wasn't even being... I thought Tier 2000 had gone on him a little bit more at the start there, but nope, just got zoned away. And now Rosh, yeah, it's gone. Ace is setting up perhaps to go after it gets brought down, but it's dead. He's gonna try time, he's in! They actually got the steal! And he got the steal! Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! Can't believe that one! That was amazing! AC times it perfectly, he should still die. But the team is coming! But he got the steal! Alrighty, and now they can look to fight. Round two from Ace. A fantastic burrow strike out of the pit as well. He catches both supports. So I will get the steal on the burrow strike, but he's still dead. Oh. Quinn, Quinn cleans up with a triple kill. Ace! It was so oh, oh, he And it, getting the kill as well. Gets the kill, gets the Aegis. Um, may have got caught in the front lines of that last fight over in the Triangle Quest, but back in action, Ace, the sun he's strike. ready to give it back to them here. Jumps forward, perfect jump, perfect steal, and a perfect cleanup. Quinn getting the triple kill off the back of that play from Ace. And now a push of their own. I believe Meta is up, and there's a full butterfly on Duraccio. Oh, uh, what can you do? <laughs> Just after Quest had had a fantastic punch back, it, it gets immediately taken back away from them. And Gaming Gladiators, next thing you know, they're knocking at your base. They were probably all talking as well, too. They're like, man, that was huge, yeah. guys. We got a chance. Oh. Ace, Ace easy again. big jump. Oh, Ooh, a double. The Ag's there, tripping them up a second time. That's going to be enough to take down Noob. He's going to buy back. The lift up onto Duraccio. Duraccio falling low, falling fast. Then he's going to swap him out to the side. But Duraccio is not able to get a Sunder off. His own illusions. Duraccio gone. They're going to try and push for more here with his buyback from Noob. See if they can catch Ace. Ace up to the high ground with the power strike. Omar. Now we get the Storm Swap back off of towards Tofu. Tofu, he's just going to go for the TP out. They've got nothing to stop it. So Tofu will escape. Big but kills. He's dead on gaming gladiators. There's Quest. They're able to hold off the back of that buyback from Noob. So, I mean, already this game starting to go back and forth, back and forth quite a bit. Absolutely. I mean, TA2000 just got a huge cleanup. He might actually be enabled to almost a full another next item after this. Okay. Those illusions, you know, we said, watch out. You got to watch out sometimes in these Terror Blades when you see these Shadow Demons. He killed himself. Like, straight up. This was the Shadow Demon plus those illusions just beating on him. Yeah, once again for a team Quest? that's that's down as much as they are on the gold front, they uh, they're certainly giving it a good fight here, Quest. Yeah, making magic happen with this TA2000 PL who has now hit top net worth. He is seven and two. He's on a wicked six streak. Yet to die since that early game. Yeah, and the last few fights, Noob able to have impact despite being in the bottom three net worth. Uh, Very in true. This game right now, all he needs to hit is us. Kind of these rolls, these kicks, these silences. And, and it's still doing something, which is not something that can usually be said for a mid-hero at this sort of point of the game, being in this position uh, with regards to farm. Yeah, and if he's able to actually finish off, you know, one or more of these team fights, and he can actually finish a BKB, then the you know, luxury of him being able to cast spells freely is much easier. Was, of course, like you said, it was a buyback, so. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But some nice moves, some quest. Next itemization from Toby. He's got his helm done, going for pipe versus Sand King. Versus that Invoker. Definitely going to make a lot of sense. Gaming. Give a little bit more respect now after that. A little bit more careful. Grouping up together. And seeing the next itemization from Ace also. So they're starting to get more and more answers to attempt to go for this PL. But nice swap. A stolen one. Hey, Omar's going to use it to initiate. He grabs Ace straight back. Tofu's able to get him with the grave. Can Ace get out of this one? He'll drop the Sandstorm Tofu with another Burrow Strike, but he'll still pop. Nope. They've taken Ace out. They did not know that he still had swap. Yeah. He did use it in that last defense, but uh, I guess you're not expecting it to still be there for him, as I think it was probably just about coming nope. to an end. Gets the connection. Gonna get the vision. Another one. And get a catch on to Tofu. Quest. Ooh. TA2000 is getting online. <laughs> 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 
They keep getting the Sand King and the Dazzle, and those two in particular, they're the ones who are the answer for the PL. So if they start, if they die at the start of these fights, TA2000 can absolutely run rampant. I was saying, is this quite, is this a nice little value still for the for the Rubik? Can you do some cool stuff with the bad juju? You can. It's a little weird. And if, if you have like Aghanims, that's where it's obviously the best, because then you have multiple, like the three different spells to use. But definitely some fun or some fun stuff you can do. Okay. Big Gladiators, I mean, I feel like in the early game, they probably thought they they were cruising through this one. Mm -hmm. they've, got, they've got to kind of tighten things up a bit. Getting punished. They got to respect the PL. You know, it was, it was one of those like later picks for a reason. Toby, looks like he's probably picked off here. A bit deep. Uh, incredibly dead. Yeah. Final roar on the, on the way out. Quinn almost has his BKB, so that's going to help him a lot. A couple of these fights, as we've seen, they just get on top of him, and he is quite fragile if they are able to do that. How's TA's item? I see he's, yeah, he's got the Scotty queued up. Yeah, he's got so much money. Yeah, I like it if he does commit for it. You'd rather him commit for the Scotty than the Butterfly? Yeah. Uh, the order of the, the picking up of these next two items? Yeah, honestly, probably. Yeah. Just some more tankiness to deal with all this, you know, the control that can come from Sanking and Invoker. Radiant are scanning. But let's see. Let's see which one he does opt for. Which Dorat shows that his Satanic, I think, finished up it is. So, looks like gaming. We want to try to keep his applying this pressure. Oh my god, the Courier. I was going to say, he just picked up a full Scardy. That was a, a little scary, but he did manage to get it round. So, Scardy will be there. Thank you. 2000 in the next fight. And Gaiman will give the respect as soon as they force everybody back. They're going to back it up, so... Definitely not feeling strong enough just yet to push toward this high ground versus the PL. Yeah, new BKB's done. So he has protection, he has liberty to actually be able... He can probably get multiple sequences of spells off now. A lot easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be keep. I'm gonna keep looking at Kaori. I, I do think that these like these shadow demon disruptions. If he's able to get it, if they're able to control the dazzle and the sand king, these illusions they're gonna be problematic for Duraccio. His own illusions plus the PL just surrounding him. I'd say as well for for, for Omar if he can get some of these uh, swap steals again. True. It'd be super nice just to sort of counteract what Stellar is trying to do in the fight. Oh, and maybe he does it himself or get someone out. He could be some other cool stuff too. Let's say he gets the poison touch and he has the shard on Rubik. Then he could also potentially be that clear versus the TV. So definitely some cool stuff that they have going. Uh, stepping up at quest. Feel more confident. Got a gem picked up now. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Pretty remarkable recovery so far. Still quite the gold difference, but the, yeah. the fact that Quest have been able to take at least two of these fights, regardless of the, the fact that Gaming Gladiators do have this lead, is definitely a bit of a concern for the Gladiators. Definitely. The one the, the concern for me is just that the TB is still super enabled in comparison to the PL, but nice. they're making magic happen. And it's going to get the catch on to Noob. Is there any saving him? He's able to get the BKB off. Tries to roll Got away, but Stellar in with the swap timing. That's Noob out for 75. Man, that's the gem. That is a big kill. Duraccio makes his way down to bottom to join his team. I mean, Meta like is at the ready. They're still considering fighting. Tate, 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 he's going to go in. He's going to try and jump straight in over towards Ace. Has to doppelganger out for now. Toby trying to see if he can get the roar off on to, towards Duraccio, but he's only going to get Huge out of Duraccio's perfectly fine. Ace jumps in onto the two, and then they're taking out Toby. They've got the disruption here for Curry. Trying to buy time for TA2000 to back out of this one. Can they he get out? back up. They got any further jump to catch him? Uh, Magic Missile into the tornado. They've got him on the high ground. T8000 caught and finished off by Ace. And Duraccio, that's Jeez. that's gonna be it. They don't have the buyback. CG is called as gaming gladiators. They'll get both the wins here. Very much showing that they are more than prepared and more than cleaned up after their rough days of play in the group stage uh, for, for the playoffs. Yeah, this team, yeah. they're back to where you expected to see them here on uh, on another tournament. They're ready to go. And uh, Good luck in the lower bracket, I'd say, to whoever ends up matched up against them. Yeah, this was, I mean, it's back to gaming with the way that they play aggressive, right? It was just a very oppressive game where they're just limiting space. A couple, maybe small overextensions that Quest was able to capitalize with some nice buyback and swaps, but yeah, this is a Terrorblade who is beautifully enabled, and those three lanes, just gotta go back to the lanes how well they went. Again, right back to back gaming. Them seeming to fix the little bit of issues that they did have. I think so. I think so. There's uh, every reason to believe that this team could go all the way through the lower bracket. So 
we'll, uh, we'll see around the corner. And of course, for Quest Esports is the end of the line, but as we see, smiles, smiles are some of the faces. So Quest, uh, we'll sort of, of course see more from them in the future, but not here in this tournament. That is the end for them. Love them though. They're a super fun team to watch, right? I think all year, I, I, I kind of want to compare them a little bit to when the like honeymoon period of Entity from you know last year and the year before and stuff like that. I feel like Quest has, they've won a lot of hearts. I mean, they're always very smiley, super active, super aggressive players. So hope we get to see them a lot more in the future. There we go. Congratulations to Gaming Gladiators. They only needed to win one game at this series, but of course for them today, it did not look too difficult for them to take both of them. Gaming Gladiators, they'll take both the games here against Quest, and without a doubt, we'll be moving on here at Dream League Season 21. Yeah, congratulations to Gaming Gladiators. A, uh, a 2-0, I wouldn't call it the cleanest uh, second game, but it was sure fun. Uh, we saw glimpses of what Quest was supposed to do in this game with their PL, and at times it worked, but hey, sometimes the team is just better than you, and that felt to be the case in this series. I'm joined by Jenkins, FEM and Purge. First, this game, it was kind of back and forth, but every time it was Gaming Gladiators edging ahead. It was uh, the only person that was like really having a great game on Quest was the uh, the Phantom Lancer. Um, as Effie pointed out in the draft, like just excellent game for him, and it really showed. Um, he kind of got to do whatever he wanted. He kept getting all these kills, and the rest of his team was kind of struggling. Um, Noob only showing as Bronze uh, Earth Spirit in that match, and some of his plays were a bit lacking. So, does yeah. he have Dota Plus? He might not. Because then bronze is the max color. Then maybe I'm slamming. You're, You're judging right. someone by their Dota Plus be. color? I could be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think they're just seeing Gaiman, like, back to being Gaiman. They're confident. They have ideas prepared for every team that they play against. We saw it in how they were dealing with Toby's Beastmaster. Um, they were playing really well from the mid lane. They're playing recklessly sometimes, which is what they're famous for through their carry, you know. So it's, it's just good to see them back in this kind of form. Yeah, uh, on fire. They obviously did not need to win this game, Jenkins, but they are a team that we know that they want to win regardless. It depends on the player who you're looking at, because hmm. Duraccio, you know, in a game like this, uh, could just end up on Sniper and just doesn't <laughs> give a fuck about what's going on in the game. And, you know, Quinn, though, on the other hand, Quinn always wants to win. Uh, and so, you know, there's a fissure there in the team. But it's like, I feel like it's a fissure that, that almost, like, you need that sort of energy. Like, that's mm -hmm. Game and Gladiators to me, is that when everybody says, like, oh, you know, Darachi throw, get this guy off the team, he throws all the time. It's like, how many majors do they have to win for people to realize that... Th you it take, works. You take a single cog out of this this machine, and it's not going to be the same mm -hmm. machine. You could put any, like, top-tier carry on this team, and the, and the team will probably get worse. I think you could even throw Yatoro on this team, and it might get worse. Mm -hmm. Even though we're all saying is the best carry in the world, I think I think you remember the exception. I think there's a synergy between these players there that is, is incredibly special that is very underrated. Actually, I'm glad you brought up Duraccio because a lot of people don't understand just how much he does for his team in terms of morale, but also he's kind of a secret genius sometimes. Like he makes calls in the draft that may seem kind of stubborn or that CY doesn't believe in as it happened in the last tournament. And they just kind of go for it. Like, okay, you're feeling this hero. We're going to give it to you. And, and it works out. So he brings a little bit of extra spice and also extra innovation that doesn't necessarily translate to just watching the game play out. Yeah, I got to have a little bit of chaos in the mix. They got the chaos. You were referring to the lifestealer yes. pick. The, there was a lifestealer was. pick and CY was like, uh, he comes I hate into this pick. <laughs> yeah, I literally said, I was like, I feel like this is a dog shit hero. Why'd you guys pick Lifestealer? And he's like, I agree. It's dog shit. But you know what I said? I said, your carry is a secret genius. Just wait to see it play out. And they won that game. And he said, he said, if, if his team be really believes in something, they go with it. But the thing is, Duraccio had made the call at the very first pick. He's like, this is a good last pick Lifestealer game. <laughs> That's how much these guys trust each other. Even a chaotic oh. little fucker like Duraccio, they trust him. You and got it. It shows. It yeah. shows. And the, in that game, to be fair, he popped off. And then in the next one, he popped off too mm -hmm. with the life stealer. So it's like you, you throw these little chaotic elements in there and you're like, oh, we can like change the meta with this little thing that we mm -hmm. never would have tried before if we had all very stable players. Nobody would make a suggestion like this. It really like mm -hmm. increases your chance to win a tournament big time when you have those little pocket things. Like if especially as the as the meta goes on, because everyone like solidifies around, oh, these are the best heroes of the tournament. Everyone starts playing them. And if he just is like, oh, there's a hero that's going to work here, that's kind of out of nowhere, it, it can be fantastic. So yeah. it's like, that's like stage two of winning a tournament. That's like winning tournament energy. It gives a bit of unpredictability 
throughout the entirety of a tournament rather than at the start when everybody is, you know, coming in from boot camp or from practice, everybody is like showing their stuff. And if you always have not even a practice thing, just a wild card in the back of some players' minds, like, hey, that can work here, then yeah, that, that does take you very mm -hmm. far. It did take them not that far, though. I mean, yes, they're moving through, but they're moving through in the lower bracket. Uh, so they did have a bit of a rough start, but we know that this is a team that ramps up as, uh, as the tournament progresses. And I'm sure we're going to hear more of that from uh, from the person that we're talking to right now. Hey, Quinn, how are you doing? Hello, doing all right, doing okay. All right, nice how doing. many times, how many times have you had it that you're brushing your hair and your brush, you know, you just falls down on your shoulder after you think you have still more hair, but you cut your hair and that's not the case? Um, that has not happened yet. It has not? <laughs> um, no. No, the first few times I got in the shower, I was like, where is it all? Yeah. Um, but uh, no, it's nice. I've, I'm glad to not, you know, my, pound, my head's two pounds lighter and, you know, heavy <laughs> as my head is, I could use to shave some weight. So it's a good thing, I think. Ah, it looks good. It looks good. Uh, game's looking good today as well. And I want to talk about not just the games today, because today looked, looked flawless, but um, it was a bit of a rocky start to the group stages. So I want to I wanna hear your side of the story as to, as to how you got to the, the place you are now. Um, yeah, I mean... To be honest, we were just playing like garbage in the beginning. I think that can be attributed to we just played um, the Bepum tournament. Yeah. And then we had to fly at like three in the morning, and then I flew like eleven hours, and then we have like one day, right? So it's like four. I landed like four p.m. or something, and then we played the next day at one thirty p.m. Um, and so we were all a bit sick, a bit out of it. Um, and I think to be honest, other teams are just like prep more. I think Spirit has been scrimming and it's looking very good right now. Uh, and we were just we were just playing poorly. Um, and I think we're a team that's pretty good at fixing our issues as time passes. Like we're able to see what, what's going on. And I think, uh, you know, we saw some things that we're doing that were really fiend stupid and uh, we fixed them. And so, you know, we're more back to normal now. I think still ramping up, but, uh, you know, better than the travesty that was day one slash two. <laughs> well, you definitely still have a chance, obviously, going forward here in the lower bracket. And if it's continuously ramping up, there's a, there's a high chance we see you guys in finals again. Who knows how this Dream League will play out. Uh, I'm joined by Jenkins, Effie, and Perch, and they'd also like to ask you some questions. Hey, Quinn. Uh, did you abuse well, any Midas backpacking in the last 12 hours? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> really? Oh, there is a bug in, it, it, in Dota. Yes. It's patched now, but if you put your Midas in your backpack, it would like lower the cooldown by like six seconds or something. So like everybody was like... It's it basically the cooldown of Midas when you when the, when the it was in your backpack would ta go five times faster. Yeah. Five and, times? Yes. Holy gracious. Yeah. And it also counted for those six seconds, you know, grace period if you move stuff about. So people were constantly moving stuff about. And uh, yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't even know this was a bug. I'm glad you missed it. Might, might have made a good tweet though. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, it, I'm sure it, I could it have some way to flame brothers about it. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, opportunity <laughs> missed, I guess. For the best. Uh, in the draft last game, we were talking about whether or not you were going to be the one playing the Dazzle mid. Uh, obviously, it's been winning some games, but it's been kind of up and down. What's your current feeling about Dazzle mid, and do you like playing it? Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, but I think it's pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll probably practice it some today and like watch some replays and stuff. I think it has its time and place. I don't think it's like unbelievably insanely broken or anything. Maybe people prove me wrong and the hero actually is super sick. Um, but it, it seems like a strong hero in the right circumstances. Uh, I think it's, the the Ags is cool. I mean, I think it's nice whenever they repurpose heroes or they like give them an opportunity to be picked. Dazzle was being dead for really long. So I'm glad that he's like able to be picked now. Okay, cool. Do you feel content sitting behind your cores and graving them repeatedly? <laughs> Does that make you feel like you're contributing, or do you need to like be? Up That's not what mid dazzle like? does, fam. I'm hitting people. I'm a, I'm 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 TA on. I'm like voodoo TA. I'm, <laughs> there's no way I'm being grading people. I'm not even. I'm skilling stats, bro. <laughs> okay, valid, valid. Yeah. Hey Quinn, uh, how does it feel Hello. being the the esports player of the year nominee? Talk to us. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's weird. Uh. I forgot these, I don't know, it's like, it's nice, you know? I mean, there's no way I'll win because other games have more like popularity and pull and things like this, um, but it's cool. Um, and it's also like, I treat it more as a reminder that, hey, like my team has had a really good year and I'm just like appreciative that I've had such like a good year and a good team, which is something I like would only would have dreamed of like years past where we're getting last at every tournament and stuff, like a year where I have a lot of success. So it just sort of made me grateful for the position I'm in. Well, that's so wholesome, actually. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask how your team environment kind of changes when you play a group stage like you did in this tournament and it doesn't go the way that you would expect it to. 
Like, how is the morale? Like, does it stay high? Are there a lot of arguments that are had? Like, how did you guys manage to iron out a lot of the kinks? Um, I don't think it's arg. I mean, people are like mad, but I don't think it's like argument mad. It's not like we're mad at each other. We're just like, ah, things suck. We're losing. This is gross. I don't like how this feels. It feels yucky, and we want to fix that. And so there's anger, but it's more directed at like the ether or like the fact that we're just losing. Um. And so, you know, there's like, you know, awareness of like what's going wrong. And I think there's also an importance in like calling, like figuring out what's what's actually going wrong and not like sort of beating around the bush, not, um, you know, being shy about things or not like talking about what the actual issue is, being quiet and stuff, people like leaving Discord or being frustrated. Like, I think it's, I think talking about things and like hashing it out um, is the healthiest thing you can do. And I think we try to do that, you know, if people are mad and we're losing in some ridiculous light way, like, you know, we don't like losing. We want to fix that. So we talk about it and we figure things out. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, one last question. It may be a little hard to answer, but you were talking about how Spirit have been scrimming a lot and they've been doing really well, obviously, but they also haven't played competitively since Riyadh, whereas like teams like Talon, I would imagine, also scrimmed in that downtime and potentially Liquid, but they don't look the same as Spirit. So from your experience as a professional player, do you, do you know what contributes to teams that are objectively good doing worse over a break? Um, I think different teams have different baselines and different teams like need more specific drafts for them to function well. Um, whereas other teams like Spirit, I think is the like best example of a team that has a super solid like and just standard formula for how they draft. Claps is always playing a melee hero, Mirror's playing a ranged hero, Yutoro plays last pick carry, Laurel plays space. Like it's just like it's that team's out of the same formula since they won TI. And so for them, their baseline is really high because their drafts and all this like patch from patch, things will change a little bit, but overall they're just slotting new heroes into the same roles. Whereas a team like Liquid or Talon, I think has a lot more fluidity in terms of like they pick a bunch of random crap and they need their drafts to like function around certain heroes and things like this and i think that causes a bit more volatility when you're coming off of a break assuming you haven't scrimmed which i know liquid has like not been scrimming at all i don't know about talent um whereas a team like spirit they've been scrimming and then on top of that i think they're just like a team that has a very very high baseline okay that's really insightful thank you uh, hey big q great to see you a uh, <laughs> couple of questions for you uh first one what's 12 times 14. oh gosh um, Don't answer. Uh, one uh, was that one ninety, or is it one eighty? You're close. What is it? One ninety two. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. Sure. Okay, uh, second question, uh, big Q, <laughs> is uh, I know you're a big fan of uh, French dishes, and I'm wondering if you have a favorite Parisian uh, dessert. <laughs> 168. 168, by the way. I thought it was 12 times 16. No, no, be quiet. It doesn't 12 times 16, that's what oh, I said. You said 14. You I heard 16. Did you hear 16 or 14, Quinn? Quinn you I don't know what he said. I also time. don't know what I said. I also don't know if I was wrong or not, or if he's gaslighting me. I Quinn, honestly, uh, no Quinn let's, let's just agree here, okay? Who gives a shit? What's your favorite Parisian, Parisian uh, creamy dish? Um, that's a that's an insightful and good question. Uh, one which there's so many good choices, and you know the dishes are so varied with such eloquent names that I think I have to, I may have to take a rain check on that one. Oh come on! No, you can say it. Come on, you can say it. It's no, no, we'll 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 save that. We'll save that for a rainy day. Oh boy, he didn't say the word you wanted he didn't him to say. say. The word. The, the word was breast. It's Paris breast is the answer. That Quinn was like, uh, by the way, I don't even know if that's a real dish. I, it might have just been like some fake thing. This, we're in Armenia, to be fair. Like, there's, I don't know, are they, do they, is, do they really up to date on the French cuisine? I don't know. <laughs> that's true. I don't know. They, they didn't, they didn't know their own cuisine at that hotel, actually. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. That's all you got. <laughs> no Thanks. donut questions. Thanks, Quinn. No, who cares? Okay, okay. Um, well, Quinn, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, it was it was lovely, and of course you were moving forward, so uh, plenty of time for us to talk again in the future. If you do well enough, you got any final words for your opponents in the lower bracket here, Dream League? Um, no, no words for my opponents, but uh, as always, to Reddit, suck my nuts, blah, 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 etc. <laughs> you know, you know the bit. So uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Did the bit again. Have a good uh, Thursday. <laughs> Did the bit. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Talk to you later. That's why you didn't know about the the mites bug, because he definitely doesn't go on Reddit. Yeah. <clears throat> the Paris breast was an excellent dish. It was, it's chicken. Is this an inside joke? No, it's not. 
It's not chicken. It's a dessert. It's a creamy dessert. <laughs> this is a dessert? Yeah, they were, they were, they were good. They were good. Not but they living. gave three of them per plate, and it was ex quite excessive. Mm. Mm. Very creamy. Mm. Okay. Very great information. I'm very curious to... Uh, I don't even know if I want to Google pictures of that. That seems like a terrible search term. It's good. It's good. It's actually genuinely Yeah, but a imagine, dessert. imagine Googling Paris breast. <laughs> you are not going to get pictures of food. You're going to get pictures of Miss Hilton. Okay. <laughs> so, I would, I would just oh. like to... Uh, yeah. I like to uh, look at the group settings at a brackets, actually more specifically brackets, because Quest is out, Game of Gladiators in. That means we got a complete playoff bracket ready. And um, in the lower bracket, OG Nine Pandas, we also got ourselves Entity versus Game of Gladiators, so another Western European uh, showdown. And then we got upper bracket matches as well. Purge, out of all these teams that are still in here, Dream League, which, uh, which matchup is the best? Is, oh, no, mm. not the best, which, which matchup do you want to watch most? Uh, probably Team Spirit Tundra looks really Correct fun. Correct choice. Um, I'm, I'm tentatively excited about Shopify Bet Boom. Mm. Can Tentative. Shopify make their fans happy? Can they break the damn curse? I Come think, on. Is it a curse? I don't yes, know. it is. It's too sad to be a curse. It's, it's a just regional depressing. curse. That's just, where curses come mm. from. They did mm. great in the groups. They did really good in the groups. Hear me out. Okay. Abed. It's his first Dream League. Mm. Mm -hmm. Every team plays in a honeymoon phase mm. when, when a new player joins. And yes, he may not be a new player, but maybe in this Dream League environment, in this playing from certain places, you know, it doesn't feel the same as LAN. So maybe it's their first experience playing such a tournament mm. together. I can actually therefore, get behind this argument. Therefore, this it is, is still argument. the honeymoon phase for their online tournament with a mid player that they haven't played with all year for this online tournament. Mm. So it's not just the group stages. They're, they might just be owning right now. I have another theory. We have never seen Shopify Rebellion play in an international LAN from hotel room boot camp scenario. They've always been at an event. Now they're like in luxurious, you know, casualty things. They have the they can simulate the same scenario, same environment as they have during the DPC. And therefore, yeah, they're going to be full relaxed, no pressure, no audience, you know, Th this no fans is, this around. Is, you're right. This no is no talent in breakfast locations. They're like alone on their own island. And this they is a that. winning DPC team. Like yeah. this is the team that has historically always crushed through mm -hmm. the, the NA region. So, are, who are mm. we to judge? What is the reason for that? It could very well be because of that boot camp yeah. setup and all being together and, and, yeah. and low yes. pressure. Because also we may we may have said it jokingly, but that boom team is a team that everybody expects. To perform so highly in every tournament they play because of just their superstar roster, yeah. but they genuinely have a mental block when it comes to playing at lands, like on site. They they just do not do well. And here in this tournament, they looked completely different than the tournament they played last week when they were all on site. So I do feel like this plays an incredibly large factor, more so than we joke about. Yep, I agree. I agree. Um, so we are gonna have those upper bracket semifinals. Today, they're Yay! both played, both in the best of three, played out today. The start time of that is a little bit away, but that's okay, because we've got a lot of stuff planned for you guys. Now, I know this is normally the point where you're like, okay, we got some time, we mute the stream, we do our chores, we do our homework and all that things, or, you know, you, you go do anything else that's not watching the stream. No, you should continue watching the stream, because... <laughs> We got content, Shiva. We got, content. We we got, got a, lot, a of, lot of content. We got a lot of content. Uh, a lot of preparation went into this, I'm sure. And um, you want to stick around. So we, what we did, what we did to make it easier for you guys to stick around is we are going to have a tiny, tiny break. Because we, have, we need three minutes to set stuff up. That's how fast we can set stuff up. We can set stuff up very fast. So in three minutes, we'll be back and you'll be entertained. So stay tuned. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Wear your passion. <laughs> Shh. 
share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. I'm in the dark. Ooh, why am I in the dark? Turn on the lights. Thank you. All right. We got ourselves a uh, tier list. There you are. Hello. A tier list to do. And um, I'm uh, still joined by the same panelist. We got a fantastic board. And we're going to do a tier list with all the teams participating. And we got to choose the tiers, which is really difficult. We had definitely discussions about it. And uh, we're having to still write them down. So we have to decide which one's on top. <laughs> Which is really hard to do. Oh, we have to write them down? Yeah, we do have to write oh, them down. Oh, I was down. not standing for that reason, but I what? guess I'll do it. Why were you standing? We, we can all stand. Because you stand during the national stand. anthem, which is, that was the Dream League national yes. anthem. No, but look, these are these are sticky. You can just sticky them anywhere. Do you guys want, our, want us to help? No, you guys can well, just yeah, sit there quietly. You guys are part of this. sit there quietly. Why are you sitting there quietly? But we were instructed to one, sit on the couch. There's only one Sharpie. Fever, can you, yes, but we can have you to tell me what the tiers are? We have chess club, right? Chess club. 
Uh, did that have to be in any order? That's the question. I don't I know. Think a, guys, we need a tier. We need the, a tier the maker order, for tier The me. order doesn't matter, you guys, because this is just different descriptions of things. Okay. Mm, that's true. So just put whatever you want wherever. It doesn't uh, matter. Chess club. Band kids. You're going to need to slow down here, Shiver. Can you write in bold? So that the Why? Your handwriting is very small. Band kids. <laughs> Saturday detention. Is this permanent? Out there. Saturday yeah, there, detention. It's, it's, le it's locked in. Like permanent marker, like this is the last time we get to use this tier list. Yes, but also the it's okay. also it's what's, also what's the next one? season twenty one. Okay. Out cat. I love that band. And then jocks. 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 Which of course go last on the tier list because. Uh. Okay. And then we have <laughs> all the teams. I was a big sexy jock in high school. <laughs> I, don't you were. I wasn't. I had diseases. <laughs> all right, so we got to categorize where these teams fit into the. Can I? Can ropes. I put? Can I put one down straight up? Sure. I think these these are sticky real well. They are indeed the jocks. Yes. Game and Gladiators. Wait, 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 wait. They true, won everything. True. And they're popular. May they're I, popular. May I make a counter argument here? Yes. You do no longer need to pen. They're gonna edit in here, right here. Look at Tofu. Here he is. Just imagine that he's there. He's the shadow of Shiver. That's Tofu. He has long hair too. He is an emo. Quinn. He also, imagine that she's also mm. Quinn. Look at him. He's got emo hair. I think they're outcasts. I think they're sexy outcasts. But uh -huh. I think an outcast, I think, no. they are outcast too popular, is a band. They are way too popular and they enjoy their time at events mm. far too much. Oh, yeah. you're right, actually. They have you're a lot right. of fun. That is true. They have a lot of fun. They're, they do have a lot of fun. Right, they're jocks. All right, who, so, which, who wants so, to go? I, I must say, I am torn by Tundra. Chess club. Let's no, no, else. no. I would have 100% said that. Word not for Topson. Chess club still. He's a jock. No, he's no, he's not. He he recently became a jock overnight, but he was chess club his whole life. He's like the jock that secretly wanted to do chess club and then is actually really smart. And <laughs> no, no, no he's like he's club. like that. He's like Freddie Prince Jr. in those two thousands movies, you know, where like he he he, he takes off his glasses and he glows up. Or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, like that's, that's top Thompson's, he's chess club. Thompson's he's outside, the glow up. But like, all right, club. what about what about Shopify Rebellion? I, my initial impression. Is but, they? What are the tiers again? Like you jocks. think they're jocks? They're jocks. I, I feel like well. they're jocks. They're oh jocks. man, they are very popular. Yeah, but I would almost say they're like jocks that don't win very much. Yes, but they still but they, go to. They still participate. In they're the just sport, not though. the quarterbacks, you know. But they also have to be there. Flies the quarterback for sure, for sure. If they're walking into a high school, they're getting like high fived on their way to their lockers. Like they are, they're there. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think All so. Right. Yeah. yeah, our yeah. tour, my boy. Right, You're telling me our teasers doesn't get like ten high fives a minute? Yeah, that's true. He's very. This is what they did in my high school. Bang! Oh, oh missed no. like that. There was a Thank huge infertility the, problem. They had to, Thank you for the... They had to have all a... Right, what's next? I, I would like to nominate nine pandas for, for outcasts. Nine I was pandas. thinking about that because they are kind of the outcasts. Because they're not the super popular kids. They still do well enough, but they don't really fit into anything else. So they are the outcasts. They, they're, like the, they're like the group. They're not, they're not uncool, but they, mm. they hang out during lunch breaks out under the trees, yep. potentially maybe partaking in potential things. I will not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they eat sauna. They like to sauna they together. Like to they like to sauna outside. together. I, oh. I just feel like they, they are the trope, you know? They are the trope because they are. Yeah. Poor guys. But secretly cool. Like At least secretly they, cool. They, they have each other. That's hey, the important outcasts part. aren't yeah. uncool. They just, they're different. Well, you think I wasn't a friggin' outcast right. in high school? I told right. you I had diseases. Let's vote <laughs> the other ones. Who, who's, the, who's the band kid? Who's the most band kid of the remaining? Oh gee. Uh, oh, can, can we explain what a band kids are for the for the viewers? Because we're explaining a lot of like or, school tropes. Yeah, these are like a kind of American ban tropes, band kids. Are usually like they they're they're into band. They're usually oh, we got seen. some band kids. Let's go. Can we oh, get the camera true. on we the do have band kids? Look at these guys. Those are band kids. Those are band kids. <laughs> band no, with the long beards and kids. playing Dungeons and Dragons. I know that no. band kids in America are a bit different because, like, no, we're not playing in a garage band. It's like, oh, we play for the marching band for mm -hmm. school, and yes. we play we play like flute and stuff. It's like way nerdier. It's, it's way like, nerdier. It's nerdier than being in a cool. But it's like, band. but it's like they they embrace their nerdiness together. They're like a big group, and they like they keep to themselves. Big group, you say? Big group, you say? Band, band kids. Team Liquid. No, no they're jocks no, as let, well. Let I me think. think. They all go, me, they all go let, to let the me gym. Think. Well. Let me think. It doesn't doesn't matter. You can still be a, a buff band kid. I don't. Think okay. So. Okay. 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 I actually. Okay. Oh yeah, I kind of like that one. That one's kind of a little a little nerdy. Entity, Watson, do you feel like Storm Stormer? That's got to be band kids. I think yeah. they're. I think they're more band kiddy. I, I, agree I think with that. they're the. I think they're the band kids. The most bandy kids of all. Entity. I think that's accurate. 
Yeah. Kind of goofy, good-natured. Yeah, nice guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, come on. I got to send bad boys to Saturday Detention. Oh, they're oh, bad yeah. boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what the BB stands for, bad boys. Hey, they, bad they boys. break the rules a little bit. I think Pure alone gets the detention. Pure, <laughs> Pure's the one that gets the rest of them in trouble, dude. Yeah. yeah. The He's rules. the instigator. Yeah. Pure's in detention every time. Every time. Yeah. Sure. That, that, that's a good one. Too. Well, people don't realize GPK is a, is a catalyst. Mm. He's mm. a catalyst for Pure's behavior. Yeah, that's true. I, I feel like... So Liquid are hard one, hard one to pick. Insania, he's he's too cool to be a jock in high school, you know. Yeah, he's like an outcast or chess club or band kid. Cool yeah, but it's the team. Nisha. Like, is okay. Team Liquid always comes second. They okay. They not this dream league. It's fine. They do pretty well. Mm -hmm. Their performance has to be has to be filtered in somewhere too. Does it? I yes. think I think they're chess clubby. Is my feeling. Because because the thing is, you think about Zai. Zai is the type of type of kid to like Ooh, walk into he's dreamy. You know, he walks into class wearing like a trench coat and he oh. doesn't talk to anybody and he like looks out the window Jesus. but when the teacher oh, okay. when the teacher calls on him he has you the right answer. You mean when he was in high school to be clear. But when he when the teacher calls he has the right answer. He just so I don't feel like that type doesn't fit into the jock Do category. Do you think they're outcasty? That's that sounded like outcast so But that's one of them, right? Cuz Insania yeah. feels like Insania Insania feels like chess club cuz he's very smart. I, I think there's th there's too much gym bro energy with these guys. I don't think so. It's all it's all recent. Like they're like chess club guys that just started going to the gym. Yeah. No, have you seen Blitz's tree trunk? Sure. Yeah, but literally, have you seen the transformation that Nisha had only in a year's time? Yeah, he's he's just a transfer student. Yeah, but you all. can't you can't take the chess out of his body just because he works out now. Oh, but he's. I, more... I feel like they're band kids. I think band kids works really good. Band kids. They, is, what, I, I, what is your it's identity? Not, what you uncool. were? What you were or what you are? Because he's changed. We're right? still in the same school year, though. Where he was at the start of the school year after TI. And I think you can give people, I think people can change in a couple of months. It depends. Yeah, but you, you get can't. on a new team, you meet mm -hmm. Blitz, he, you join the gym cult. Yeah, but once you're in the club for the year, you're in the club we for the year. We might have to put them in jocks just because of how popular they are. Mm. I think it's not the personality tropes. It's just like, imagine Liquid walking and everyone's high-fiving them too, you know? Can I put them in jocks, I, but like here? No, I don't think they're jocks. I, I'd prefer band kids or, or chess club. I think band kids is fine. Okay, but not convincingly. Okay, chess club could work. Why don't we rip it in half and we'll just put one in one? No. No, Liquid Liquid No, you can't, you can't, don't. you cannot. We need to use those. I, I, Are we re we're reusing? No, them. we're doing right, both. Let's let's come back to it. Let's come back. Combination yeah, we'll, we'll between chess and band. We'll come back to liquid. We'll come back. I think quest, quest is definitely chess club. Oh yeah. What do you say? Or they could be outcasts, because I can see I can see quest just being their own. Group I would I would say and not outcast. and not socializing with other groups even though they are friendly boys like they're so fresh they're, they're, they're super friendly they're lovely, but they lovely. like they formed their own squad not from other Western European teams they just made their their hmm. own place which definitely puts them in outcast yeah that does yeah, I'm into that mm -hmm. they but created the space for themselves oh okay eg detention for sure dude come yeah, on oh, EG, oh, EG, that's yeah, obvious Chris different. Luck is enough. Yeah. yeah. That is detention yeah. for sure. And they've, detention. Been they've been losing a lot lately, so definitely put them in detention. Put them in the slammer? Yeah, for sure. Put them in actual jail. Yeah. That'll straighten them up. I think team spirit are band kids because they, they really like enjoy what they do. They practice in their mm -hmm. downtime. They love spending time with each other. They're all yeah. very good friends, but they're mm -hmm. not, they don't give off jock energy. And everybody, everybody, I, I mean, nobody really feels like they hang out outside a tree and do questionable activities on spirit. Eat their lunch at lunch. Yeah. Sauna. They don't go sauna together. They don't go to the sauna. No, I, I agree. They're Skin issue. That's band kid. Yeah, 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 for sure. Band kid. Two more to go. OG. I think OG's chess club. Just because. They're chess clubby. Dude, they all have they? glasses. They all wear glasses. Oh, that's Are true. They? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. BZM still goes to school. That's true. I don't know if that counts. Do you think? Because I feel like OG are Maybe also band owl. kids, though. I, no, I think OG is also band kids. I think OG are also band kids. And the other chess club would be Talon. They would be chess club. That is actually so true. So what I hear is band cut kit. Band kit is like the loveliest tier. It's just. It's like uh, you, very group setting. You Shout out to the band. Yeah. Shout out to the band. <laughs> band kids. Spend a lot of time with each other. Wait, I, the mm. thing is, I, I can see. I can yeah. see like Talon. I can see Jabs. And 23, I think they go nuts sometimes, you know? But I feel like they can go nuts during their performance in the band. Wow. Also. Because they're, you know, they can... And There's no, kids. we can put them both as band. That doesn't... It does, we don't have don't, to have it be even. This yeah. is OCD behavior. We can have them be uneven. Yeah, no. So I think, yeah, Talon, Talon for sure. 
I don't know. Are they chess club or band kids? Yeah, it's just a both. They're be, he, we said we're going to come back. Let's get no, out of it. No, they're she, both she, chess she, and Vaughn. She, she, chess please, and Vaughn. Please, please, you're not You're going to make them short circuit. OG or chess club. OG or chess club. We'll get there. I, I agree. OG or chess club. They are. They are. Yeah, I think they're more chess club. They are. Because they're, they're, they're quiet. Band, they're, yeah, they're, they're quiet. quiet. And they, they love And they have glasses. Reserves. And I think all they talk about with each other is is chess Dota. I think that's all. Th when they hang and out. And I think Talon's chess club, too. They're they're pretty quiet as a whole. Like, you know, they got some passion, but you disagree? I think Makoto is in the chess club, but I think yeah, Jabs definitely. is definitely a band kid. Jabs? No, Jabs Wait, let's is go also through. Let's club. go through. Let's go. Sunbi is a jock, but also he probably is part of the chess club, I would say. Yes. He'd be both. Sunbi does give uh, chess club energy. He gives chess club energy. Uh, I was sure. Jabs He plays chess. chess. He actually plays chess. Jabs is definitely chess club. You're telling me that Ollie and Q... Actually, you're right. Yeah, chess club. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're like three to four out of five. Chess That's a lot of chess club people. Well, we yeah. are playing a very nerdy video game. Yeah, so. that makes sense. There's a lot of band kids. A lot right. of. I just really feel like 23 is a band kid. Like I feel like he sure. likes. He wants sure. to play an instrument and go nuts. But he's know? he's the outlier. But I he's like. the outlier. Like majority is chess club. Nah, nah. In the middle. In the middle. Like yeah. no, not in the middle. Like no, I, I, like, a like I'm taking a little dip. Like the little toes. Oh, come on, no, just no. slap him down in chess club. Jabs is a band kid too. We need. We have these beautiful straight lines. No, this is good for tier list. This is good. Because nobody can be put in a proper box, Purge. Yes, you do. That's what the Purge. tier lists are for. Stop <laughs> trying to put people in a damn box. Yeah. They can be whatever the hell they want one to be. Player, yeah, one Purge player shifts them down. Barbie. One player shifts That's it down halfway. Yeah. You're, you're Knuff, Purge. You're Knuff. You know who's not Knuff? Liquid, because we don't know where to put them. They are a mix of all. Well, they're I, out of here. Who gives a shit? No, listen. I think Liquid are actually jocks because Sorry, if, if there's like an if there's yeah. a, if there's a popular circle and amongst Dota teams, yeah, th those are the three friends. Those are the three those friend teams. Those are the three friends. Because everybody on these yeah. teams, Shopify, Gaming, and Liquid, they're all friends with each other. Yes, yeah, true. So that's I just a feel solid like, point. And the yeah. jocks are all. It's a football team and the cheerleaders. And that's what, these guys would make mm. the football team and the cheerleaders. Yeah, Can right. I just say if I do this? Based on a year 2023, one is not like the other. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> then I kind of feel like this almost doesn't believe because you can't be a jock if you're losing. But you're, no, yes. you can be. Yeah, you can yeah, be yeah, a bad yeah, yeah. and be a jock. There's a JV and a varsity. They're just the bad out. football also, players. They, they play different sports because I feel like Liquid would be like the baseball team. I think Saberlight is an outcast, so I'm doing it like this. Just a little I bit of a dipping. I really and hate this shit. <laughs> No, I mostly did it really to bother. Burn. No, Saberlight <laughs> really is bothered. not. Saberlight is a class clown type. He's the type to be loud and boisterous. Mm. You'd be very popular he's gonna, on a he's sports get a, team. Get himself expelled, whipping things out that he shouldn't in class. I, I don't think we shift the. I think they, they're solid. I think we keep tier. it like this to trigger punch. Yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. His AI. Hey, hey, everyone goes sit down quick. Program for this. Everybody goes sit down. I don't really think there's a single that. outcast on Shopify though. I don't. I don't know how it. Yeah, she's just trying to bother me. Oh, so that's two out of four of us that are very annoyed right now. Fix that. Great. Right. I think this is a good. Wait, one. does my opinion not matter? What's your opinion? I don't care. Okay. Okay. You care about where Talon is? Is this what we? Is, are we happy with it? No. What's wrong? Why not? Talon. Talon is, is no. chess club. They no. got three out of five dedicated chess clubbers. There's guaranteed. six people on the team, sir. Don't forget about Sunby. He's a Canadian legend. How dare you? You apologize to Justin Trudeau right now. Look at the camera. Apologize to Justin Trudeau. Flat camera. Justin Trudeau. I'm so sorry, but he's <laughs> in chess club. No, because listen, band kids are kind of like chess club, but in different ways. Yeah, I agree with that. So I think that they fit in both because I feel that band kids have a little bit more camaraderie in terms of, you know, when they're playing their instruments together, that's when they love each other. Mm. Weird, they love each other always. Yeah, chess club is more they're, they want to beat each okay. other, they're competitive. It's time to... Uh, that uh, makes sense what I just Everybody said. in favor <laughs> of this being the final <laughs> tier list, say aye. 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 I don't care. <laughs> uh, I almost had a draw. <laughs> almost oh, had a draw. Can we go right, the other way too? This is our locked in tier list. Thank you so much. It is time to move on to our next subject, which is Taskmaster. It's back. The Bounty Hunt. Sweet. Yeah, I, oh, we're not going to break, huh? No, we're not. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am not allowed to sit at my desk, I have been told. Uh -huh. That's right. All the things that you need are in the side. We I'm need, the host now. We need uh, two different, two extra people. Though. Yes, Shiver, I know, because I'm the host. Obviously, I know these things. I know these things. Uh, one of the two people that we need <laughs> is Bogged, Woo! ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. 
welcome. Where did that chair go that was here? That would have been great for Fog to sit in. Oh, That's a great question. Fog, it was here for like two. You have to sit on the chair. I have to. It was here for yes, like three days. And now we are contestants. You are not. Okay. Kiefer, can I draw on your stuff? Uh, yeah, but make a new page or something. <laughs> but you can. If it's the if it's the match that was just happened, then go to the previous page. I don't know how to do. No, that. the other way. Go the other way. The other way. I don't know what you're talking and about. And one more, one more. I'm just gonna whatever. let this thing go away. Uh, how? What was the taskmaster? How are you guys doing today? How do people host? Fever? <laughs> you're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, we you. need we need that man too. We need that man over there. Is well, he, he doesn't have a microphone. He's not microphoned up. Oh, that's a problem. Um, did uh, did you do all the taskmasters this time, Fogged? Me? Yeah. No, I didn't do here. any. <laughs> you didn't do any? Oh, you're judging. Oh, you're the judge with me. That's why I'm We're over judging. here. Oh. Can we share a Can I move over? Yeah, come on over here. Come on. Can I move this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you okay, can. Okay, well, that's not going to work. Your Whatever. I'm not moving. Falling you down. can host. Yeah, it's okay. We'll you can also host. We're co-hosting. That's what yeah. I'm here. There you go. So say something. I don't know. Hello. Did Taskmaster. This is a very tough segment from what I've heard. I have no idea what any of the tasks were this time. Did you, so. you played first season, right? Yeah, first season. Did you win? Who won? No, I, I, I know. He I did think win. you won, won because win. everybody failed with the balloon thing by stepping over the edge or picking up the balloon first to start balancing it. I did too, though. But oh. I think I think all of us messed up worse. I actually don't remember. We, the, the, I remember Jenkins cheated. Big... That's all I remember. So. No, I didn't. The best score was like three seconds or something. It was very pathetic. Hang on. It was sheep, me, fogged. I think. Mean. Who was the last contestant? It was me. Jenkins. Yeah. Jenkins surely did not win. Why am I so forgettable? <laughs> I think it was fogged that won. I think it might have been me. I think it actually. It was, was me, and then you, I think, and then Cheap, and then Jenkins wasn't even in contention. No, and and, <laughs> and when we this is absolute lies and slander, by the way, which you will be hearing from my lawyers. You literally cheated. Just so you know, we took the balloons out here and redid to say who would win the final thing. And, and I, I won again. No, I popped both of your <laughs> balloons because you were dumb enough to hand them to me, and so therefore the only balloon remaining was mine. I think we need to move on to our taskmaster. Agreed. We're trying to host from the couch, Sheever. Welcome to our next person who is ready, like you said, Sheever. Odie Pixel, ladies and gentlemen. What? What? I think. No. no. Lacan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys are going to keep right. it going. Keep, keep it going. Keep going. He wasn't ready. Keep it going, guys. Yeah. Keep it going. What's going on with you today? Uh, how, come that took you, how come that took you so long? Uh, I don't know. There was some confusion, and uh, I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm standing for Owen. Owen knows oh. no one. Oh, damn. So oh, you weird. didn't do Taskmaster? No, he did. Uh, he did? Oh, you did? Yeah. When did I do it? With me. It was like three days and ago. Yes. Oh, that was Taskmaster. <laughs> okay, yeah, we did it together. Wait, 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 okay, yeah, we hunted. I'm an expert. Yeah, I just didn't know it was called bounty that hunter. way. Sorry, sorry. Bounty hunter. Yeah, we, we were called a bounty hunter. Taskmaster is, of course, not something that we did. No, it's not yeah, ours. No, no, it's not. It's a bounty hunter. Yo, you're doing a great job hosting, I gotta say. Bounty hunter. Really? So was he? Is he gaslighting? No, he actually did. No, he actually did play. He is supposed to be here. Was it? Was it hard? Not really. Because I was playing it with Purge, and uh, he owned. He actually owned. I won last season. Fair and square. So why did they put you in this season if you won last season? I guess the champion. Defend my title, obviously. Okay, that's fair. Do we have the video ready? It's not a video. <laughs> it's a picture. Over anything? It's no. not okay, a video. Okay, over anything? <laughs> Jenkins, not the thing that you need is the thing on your right, on your left hand, on, it's on the floor. Everything's on the floor on your left. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. <laughs> So we have some items. And it's not prepped. <laughs> you, you guys were supposed to pick what is a lucky item. That's true. Do you know the rules of this? Or should no, I, explain I wasn't told. Okay, anything. so they were supposed to pick uh, a lucky item, bring it from home, mm. which people failed at this task, I will say. Bring it from home. Uh, but that's okay, because it can still be a lucky item, and we judge how lucky that item is. And they can explain, I guess, why the item is lucky to kind of defend their case. So I, I suppose I'll just pull these things out one by one, and you guys can tell me whoever it is. So we're just going based off of their word? Yeah. Yeah. So there's no proof or anything. There's a whole no. lot of crap okay, in here. So. Yes. 
<laughs> I think I have to move over there to see it. I don't know. No, no you, you, you can, can you can bring them the all up. You can oh, put oh, them all on the put table. Put them on the table, or you can just pick one out. Okay. One at a time. Is this actually somebody's no. choice? <laughs> no. <laughs> no that, I think that's hungry. Fever, did you just use this as a garbage? <laughs> no, that's not even mine. I don't eat that one. I have the Saibo all the time. No, dude, it's not in the box. Oh, it's, it's not the in the floor. box. Oh, that's a garbage oh, I was just pulling out of. It was actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we have one. Here we, no, no. Here no, we have the don't. first. I'm gonna turn the rainbow okay, thing. Okay, no, that one no, is that's part. <laughs> that, that is uh, one. There's one part. There's another notebook there. That's part of it. The Shevers. It's mine. All right, come right here. Come here. It's like a we got a notebook Ooh, and a this. pen. All right, where's my camera, everybody? Shever, make your it. case. I'm gonna make my case. We need a close-up shot here. Hello. So, I personally think luck is something that comes in the form of opportunities. Opportunities often come in the form of <laughs> preparation done well and then timing's gone well. And one thing that I consider lucky for me is my work ethic. And this is a little notebook. And I use notebook for basically everything. And therefore this is my lucky item because my lucky item is, uh, is a notebook. That's it. That's it. Okay. My work ethic is my luck, and my I luck creates opportunities, and it's how I get lucky. We went to the end. I, 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 I want to do I just want to say but one because thing. Because I'm stupid, because I can't remember anything, so I have to okay. write it down. So it has nothing to do with lucky, but. Uh, I, yeah. Also my favorite scientist, Stephen Dawkins, said luck is when opportunity meets skill. He didn't say that. I'm you sure. are an unbiased judge. Quit making her point better. I'm here to slander her Stephen luck. Stephen Dawkins say did say that. He invented, he invented revolution. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, regardless <laughs> of what anybody else said, for me, that will be lucky, regardless if I win or not. I like it, Chief. I'm happy. I like it. All right, awesome. ladies and gentlemen, we have our second item. Ooh. I don't know A where that's A lot of from. money. Let me look. Bird? How do you know it was me, Shiver? Because it's been used earlier this week. That's a prop, and someone told me it was yours. I would guess. Oh my Perch. God! Somebody Perch, spoiled. Go to the spot. All right, we have to. We need to do over for the whole challenge. And Shiver was told that. No, I'm just kidding. Can we do it sitting down? No. Make your do case. you know how magic? Yeah, this is, to this make your this case. Is money. I'm gonna hold it up. Uh, guess where we found this ten Diez Cordobas? It's a uh, money from Nicaragua. First of all, how much money do you think this is worth? I think it was 63 cents or something. Someone looked at it. Yeah, it's, it's not much. It's not much. But guess where we found it? It was on top of a volcano with nobody around when the winds were, get this, 32 kilometers per hour. Winds going crazy on top of a mountain, just sitting on this black rock. There's nothing around anywhere. Just black volcanic soil. That's the most purge thing is to pick up 20 <laughs> cents on a fucking on volcano. volcano. <laughs> and excited. A quarter? The volcano is just launching lava everywhere. And he's like, oh my god, a quarter. We're what? like half a mile into the air. No plants. <laughs> no bugs. Just money. Oh boy. And your girlfriend, and is. It you're still together after this. Yes. So you didn't get like Impressive. a volcanic rock or something. <laughs> they were everywhere. You got money. But there was only money. Impressive. Isn't that interesting? That is the oh, most so purge thing. Can I have that? Anyways, Noted. Go, Noted. No, you can't keep You can look at it. So if I got this correctly, there's ATM on top of Volcano. Exactly. And you withdrew some money. <laughs> yes, and I withdrew that money. because That's all I could afford. Of Wait, course. did you just say that he can keep it? No, he can't keep it. That's Okay, lucky. well then you lose points. That's not how this works. I'll trade you. There's a single gumball here. That's we'll another five dollars. If you keep right it, now. Jenkins, he loses points and he also loses uh, 63 cents. And luck. 27. Luck. 27. Luck. Okay. I'll trade you five US dollars Wait, for it. Wait, you only found luck a month ago? Yep. <laughs> Would you like to trade a one USD for that? <laughs> yeah, that's a cool story. It that is, is cool. Story. I, I actually, that is cool. I actually enjoy that. There was that. literally, no, and the way the wind was blowing, like there, and there was no one else on the mountain on that part. Okay. Did you get any volcanic oh, volcano. rock as well, too, or did you just? Uh, I don't. I think we did steal a little bit of volcanic <gasps> rock. Yeah. It was everywhere though. Okay. Anyways, it was really interesting. We, we well, touched don't the ground. go to it Coliseum. If you act that way, just don't go to Coliseum. Stealing rocks from, <laughs> from it or the money. Oh, but I mean, there's, there's like so much volcanic rock around. It was really interesting because as you approach the volcano, there's just no plant life because it erupted like 10 years ago and uh, killed all of them. I don't want to hear Persian describing really things. We're going to move on to the next, <laughs> uh, whatever this thing is that we're doing. Lucky Charm. It's a little bracelet. I also have one of these, so I'm not gonna. I was gonna say, wasn't he? Yeah, I, thought can, that, I thought he was wearing. You take them. a look you, at that. You give that to me, please. They have their own. Mm. I also, I was also on the volcanoes. Oh. Of, okay. Of <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, I was at the top of a volcano, and uh, right here, lucky item. So 
says my name on it at the at the volcano. The, it started to erupt, so I had to escape. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a genuine. No, wow. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if you laugh. I'm bad at this. So I started to flee down the volcano and I thought everything was over. But boom, I see, you know, a young child. <laughs> what the? <laughs> she wants to win so bad she'll do anything for it. <laughs> and then Don't she's laugh. Like, it's a true story. This is what the child did. It was crying. <laughs> <laughs> a young child found me running, trying to flee from my life. And they beckoned me over like, come sister, come. I was like, yes. I ran towards them. They put me in their shelter. It was a little cave, you know, somewhere near the volcano. <laughs> and we, we, <laughs> You'd have to cry with just thinking about it. It's we hung out, we bonded while we waited for the volcano. <laughs> to finish erupting, we exchanged stories of our lives and we laughed. A cave child? <laughs> no, 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 what country were you laughs. in? Laughs. Nicaragua, of course. Okay. It was like birds. It was a cave child, yep. <laughs> we had laughs. We had friendship. We had fun, you know. I made some stew. <laughs> it was like a rock stew. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> was this 10 years ago when the volcano actually course, erupted? Of course. This was a of thousand course. BC Did with cavemen, see? apparently. Oh, of yeah. course. Anyway. Rock anyway. Nails? This, 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 this volcano child, they had a, a craft booth, of course. Because that's what you need when you're trying to survive a volcano, a craft booth. And then they crafted me this bracelet right here. Of course, this was 10 years ago. I was still not known as the name of Effie, but they named me that. <laughs> that's her game that's an origin story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> good way to get a game. And, that and that's how I got this name and bracelet. <laughs> wow. So lucky. So lucky. That's incredibly lucky. Some holes lucky in this story. Right? Right? You, you didn't know that was going to be an origin story when you sat down. <laughs> You did not know that. You guys made me laugh. Where'd so you ruined my story. Jenkins, where'd you get your matching bracelet? Oh, I was in Nicaragua the other day. <laughs> I met a cave child. No, I referred Weird. you. I referred you to him. Yeah, yeah. She's like, dude, I know her. this guy. I referred you to her. Remember, I was. I like, know this girl. She saved me. You she's should go visit her. And she's older now. He makes the best. She's bracelet. older now. She's married to two children. Oh yeah, Squeen yeah. Spleen. She's a Dota fan. Great names. Great names. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move on from that. <laughs> Moving that on. Uh, we have this, which looks like a brain. A picture, <laughs> laminated <laughs> picture of a brain, I guess. Yeah. Could be mine, because I'm acting like I don't have one in the last couple of days. So. Should I pick it up? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Go. We're talking about Nicaragua now. It's your turn. Is that a nut? <sighs> he was it is. Get it away from me. <laughs> Get it away from me. <laughs> Do that laminate, Nicaragua. Uh, this is not a sad story. As you can see, this is a nut. I couldn't bring it into the office because there are certain people allergic <laughs> to nuts, uh, fogged included. Uh, so this, I had a near-death experience uh, before I came here. Uh, I was at the gates of heaven of and something fell on top of my head. Not true. And it was uh, these nuts, these type of night nuts. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, who gave it to me? I, I couldn't figure it out. Someone actually threw it, and it was the presidential candidate uh, for the U.S. presidential um, elections. Elections, and uh, it Wait. was these nuts actually. He gave it to me, and uh, from now on, every single time I play Dota, I used to just hold it in my hand to, for a better performance. I can't uh -huh. use because I do a cue with fog most of the time, as everybody knows. But I can't use it because he's also allergic to nuts. So that's why we also couldn't have the original picture of it. This is just a picture, but couldn't bring it in. So but, your lucky item is something that kills fog. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I can't use it. Put it away, Jenkins. That was so beautiful. I, I don't know how Fair much enough. that is. I, I also have a similar story at the gates of heaven. Fog, are you actually high allergic five, to walnuts? High five, high five, Fog, please. Not all, nuts. Fog, all nuts. All nuts. Yeah, all nuts. Fog, I'm impressed that he was able to make a D's nuts oh, I, while also I insulting you. I thought you say, you said walnuts, not all nuts. Yeah, same thing. Hmm. Oh, okay. How much of that was true? Uh, 40% at least. Mm. So I feel like I like misunderstood the assignment. So how is it? Forty percent more than sure. Uh, Stop discrediting no, my story. No, but for you don't real, know what I've been I, through. Sure. You know, I, I just want to. He doesn't know what I've been through. Wait. Okay. okay so here's, here's, I have, I have how this is gonna work. Wait a second. Shut up. The cost. Story's not finished yet, Jenkins. Yeah, dude. So I have listen. walnut always on my desk when I game. This happened like two, three years ago, and and it's still there. And from time to time, I'm just gonna you know check what's inside. Did the little fella die? He didn't. He's still inside. So good for him. All right. I don't have the name for him. Are you maybe, talking about maybe we should name jumping it. beans? Huh? Are you talking about the <laughs> Mex Mexican jumping beans? No. You know the ones that have the little <laughs> thing inside that jump around? It's like a worm or something. It's like what? a little worm? Is that what yep. the... Is it? Okay, number one rule of this game is the first person in first place gets four points. 
Second place, three hmm. points. Third place, two points. And one point for last. So, Fogged, it's up to you and I to rank these beautiful, beautiful gifts. We get to, we get to keep them. Keep uh, them? Yeah, we it's can, my can origin story. Excuse version. me, you can't keep them. I, I don't think I want to keep them. It's a new rule. It's my origin story? No, not that one. Of course. So, uh, I'll let you... Uh, me? Yeah. What do we write it? What do we do? Uh, which one do you like the best? This which which, which one do you like the least? Let's you, start with the The one. least. Which one do you like oh, wow. the least out of all of these? Oh, this is so unfun. Fairy's biased. The I mean, least. He, I'll, 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 biased? Wait, I'll delete say anything. I'll delete oral, oral messages if you pick me. How many messages do we have on WhatsApp, you and me? I'm not going to share that information. <laughs> share it on the stream right Probably now. Probably like 1.6 million or something like that last time I checked, I think. Like 1.8 million messages. How much, of, how much of those storage are is that burning? stickers? A lot. 40 gigs or something, I think. Are you serious? <laughs> how much of those are His stickers? His phone is really slow. <laughs> My phone is really slow right now. My phone now. doesn't have 40 gigs. Anyway, data. I will have to say... We start with the worst? The one, we like, the the one that we like the yeah, least. Yeah, how do we agree? Do we, do we discuss just just, just say it and I'll just agree with you because I'm lazy. I'm sorry, Effie. What? Yeah, I got it from a cave child in a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many holes in the story. I'm sorry. What do you mean? Name a hole. <laughs> Name you said I was there with Kevin. Trash. Kevin was just there. No, then you no, said no. 10 years ago. I, said I wasn't there with Kevin. I never said that. I said okay. Kevin was also there. Play back. Effie is in last. What? I don't, you don't, I don't vote? I can't vote. Oh my god, I it's just put the whole... Oh my god, now, I'm the now host. I feel mean. I'm sorry. So now, <laughs> now what's the next one? The next crappiest, worthless story that was told on this stage today, Fogged? Probably, look, probably Lacoste. Yeah, I agree. You made it. He's not joke. Probably Dominic. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you took this opportunity to, to appeal and placate Twitch chat rather than tell a, story, a real story. Now I just need to know, do you actually have that wall nut? I do. You do? I want to see a picture ASAP. So we have this Volcano Money or Shiver's book. This one's tough. This one's tough. Do you want to read a page from the book? There's nothing it? in There's there. There's nothing in it. It's an empty book? There could be Ooh, if you write it's something. It's an empty in book. It. Write three points and it, something's going to be inside. I think we need to temper. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he's making up the volcano. I, was just I, don't, think I don't think he's even in there. How could an AI have a girlfriend? That's true. There's no way. That's <laughs> cave child. There's no way. It's not advanced I gave everything. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Shiver is winner. your winner. Shiver <laughs> is your winner of the very first... Woo! I forget what the game is called. Bounty Hunt! Bounty Hunt. Hunt. Very first well bounty. Congratulations, Shiver. I'm just glad I didn't lose the other two. <laughs> <laughs> well fought, 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 well fought. Well, if you guys wanted more points, uh, that's good news for you because we're going to actually go to a quick break. And we have another bounty hunt. We do. Because we got plenty of content, plenty of fill time today, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Passion. Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
is a shakedown. Order up that beat just like a takeout. Show me you got soul inside those new shoes. And you can rock and roll with the attitude. So good, so fresh, just the way you like it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome back. Yeah, you're just a co-host now because we don't do any judging in this next one, by the way. Okay. Uh, we are back with Bounty Hunter, which is a series Yay! where uh, they compete with each other in very stupid tasks. Uh, are you looking at me? That they have to master, <laughs> task master, if you will, and uh, see who can do this stupid thing the fastest or the slowest or whatever the thing is. And they're very competitive, so it'll be very funny. Uh, did you guys, do you guys know what we're, which one we're going We've over? We've been told. Yeah, we have been You've told. You've been told? You've been informed? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll explain for the audience. Uh, well, I think there's an intro vid. Do you, do you know the past accounting thing? Okay. Well, they did a they did a past accounting thing where there was a, a cup and it had past in it. They had to count how many pieces were in it. I think we have a vid video to explain this, actually. So let's just go to the video first and you guys can understand. We actually have a video? Oh, looking uh, dapper today. My ah, fine thank friend. you. You Hello. too. Well, welcome. Nice welcome. seeing you again. Welcome to Bounty Hunter. So, you know how this works. You've done it before. Yeah, I come here and I win. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> By following the rules and not getting random bonus points Eliminated, yeah. from other people. Yes. You need to read oh. now. Figure out how many fusilli are in this bottle. Is that it? Ah, I see it's a pasta. Time will stop once you guess the correct amount. Your time starts now. <laughs> wow. What? What? What is the video? Is the video Great not explainer. Play? That's, that that's the explanation. Oh. Okay. For... What about the? Things we did. Well, now we deliberate on how well do you guys think you did oh, terrible. on this task. I think terrible. I did awesome. You think you did awesome? I always do awesome. Because, like, I should have, instead of the one point, my origin story should have gotten 200 points. I was not so the touching. judge for that. That's you like deserve zero, frankly. I did great. I had a different method <laughs> that others didn't use, so I believe uh, I was the one who actually won this one. Not sure, though, but uh -huh. uh, considering how quickly it went with me, I'd say I won. So it's I took a long time, the fastest, and right? on hindsight, yeah. I definitely had the wrong method. But I didn't think about the other methods until I've already done the slow method. I went for the slowest method. Just follow your there. heart, Chief. Yeah, I, I, I did, and I, yeah. I well, doubt that I won. Let's see what method Shiver uh, employed <laughs> this next video, and Purge as well, because he also sucked. <laughs> God. Oh God. <laughs> Would you consider yourself good at this? Do you think you're going to be better than the other participants of this strategy? I wish I brought scissors. No. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Give me a second. So I've realized that my initial strategy of counting one by one is inferior. Hello? Do we have scissors? Shiver! It's like, can I rip this bottle open with my bare hands? Probably not. You're making piles of ten. Yeah, yeah, because Clubber. otherwise I don't. That's good. I don't trust myself to not get distracted, you know. Mm -hmm. Grouping it in fives is very helpful. I should be able to always count to five. What you on? God, I didn't make piles of ten. You think I'm counting yet? 110, 120, 125, 126. I have a gift for you. I saved it for you, so it didn't fall on the floor. 126. The final answer is 126. No, time will stop once I guess the correct amount. So you have to say if it's the correct amount. Because otherwise Do I have to say if it's correct? Otherwise the time won't stop. Because if I say the wrong amount, apparently it doesn't stop. It's 126. 
Well, whatever. Yay! Yay! Now I leave and you have to stay here. Oh. Awesome. That wasn't in the note. <laughs> How long do you think it took you, Shiva? <laughs> it's like 10 minutes. If you had to guess 10 That minutes. long? No, no, I think, I think like 7. Okay. Maybe 6.4 or something. And Purge, how long do you think it took you? 6.4. I mean, I it took a while to shake them out, but <laughs> like for my method, I think I was fast, like above average if someone did the same method as me, but mm. I, 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 I ended up long, cut. I ended how long up did you take to get the scissors? Quite a bit, but I didn't have scissors. I just had a knife and I, I cut it open on the side and I opened it up. <laughs> and then they spilled everywhere, so I also grabbed them from okay, the floor. That it, like took while, okay? it took I, a while, okay? It took a while. I think they right, also right. timed you running to get the scissors. Yes, I did. I would imagine. So that's included in that. And uh, unfortunately, that does mean you uh, <laughs> last five minutes <laughs> and eight seconds, <laughs> oh, okay. which is better than 10 minutes, which is what you said in Purge. You got four minutes oh. and 35 seconds. Okay. So not so bad. Oh. Do we not have the purge? So I'm the I'm one time. point, you're two points. Well, that we'll was we don't know what the other two people are yet. Oh, I I'm imagining we know lower. by the fact that they're in a separate video. <laughs> he was <laughs> in the video. He was in the video. However, Lacoste, you seem very quiet over there. How did your counting go? <clears throat> Pretty good, I would say. I used uh, two different methods. The first one was not working, so I switched to something else, straight up math. And uh, I mean, we can watch the video. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's watch nice. the video. How many? Let me see how big they are. Standard ones, the, the medium size. Uh, that is a good use of your time. Should be around 60. Am I close? You do know the exact number? I do. It's a lot. It's more than 60 for sure. This is like 97. I'll give you one spoiler. There's less than 500. Oh, dang. That, so, that so helps a lot. No, well, now you only need to count a maximum of 499 numbers. Can I say more than 50? Correct, that's the right answer. I'll give you another spoiler, it is more than 50. More yes, between 50 and 500. Yes. One. There's one. <laughs> Can I get some hot water and salt, please? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are you genuinely trying to beat this challenge? Well, looks like it, because okay. we're not gonna stop. Seems like these are the rules. Can I give up? <laughs> I have more patience than this. You have, you have more, you get more time. I get more. Why do you keep reading the text? Because maybe there's something to it, you know, maybe there's... <laughs> yeah. Is there well, we another envelope that's... Oh, the, the answer is in here. Is it? It is. What can is you say? read it for me? Mailman. No, 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 it's in here. It's right there. What's okay. The, what's what, the number? What does it say? Yeah, what does it say? You tell me. More than 50, less than 500. <laughs> Who wrote that You're too here? smart, Cinderin. <laughs> Look, what came with the mail. It's two pieces of pasta. Oh, what should I do with it? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to put, put it back, back in. in. The bottle. Oh, they fit right in with the other over 48 and less than 502. Wait, 498. So we have, this is going to be my final answer. 102. That's my final okay. answer. I'll give you a, a hint. You're closer than you were before. Really? Yes. Okay. So between 77, which I didn't say, and 102. It's uh, 126. That is my final answer. Good job. Let's go. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, isn't it? Good guess. It wasn't a guess because I did the math. You know, he gave me a number between. I already guessed. He said it's almost a double of it. And uh, then I you know, divided it. Also, whoever cooked pasta at home, I cook uh, almost every single day when I'm at home knows that you need to like boil much less pasta, mm. also al dente pasta, this sillies. So yeah. you can those tell, people you can who tell know what I'm way. talking about will right. figure out the method. I feel like we're missing some information. The video kind of just jumped quick between you having no idea what you're doing to yeah, like knowing the answer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, there's something mm -hmm. I that I zone out for like five I don't seconds. Know. How like long did it take me, Jenkins, do you know? How long did it take you? Think yeah. you did better or worse than Virgin Chief? I think the video was long, but it took me less. You were four minutes and 49 seconds. Ooh. Is that worse or Which is better, better than, than purge. purge. Better than Purge. Yeah. Worse than Cheever. Oh, so so I got double points. How many seconds was I? These fools? How many seconds but was I? I was going to say Mira definitely won this. She's better than Cheever, worse than Purge. I said it the wrong way. <laughs> better yeah, so you're, oh, okay. you're a second. Yeah, sorry. Not nice. Give me a little extra spice, we'll you know? We'll say we got a you're not bad. But we're we missing one person. We've a lot of <laughs> well, there's, there's, one. there's one other person that, of course, we did not see counting. She probably did the worst. The problem why was why it took me so long. I didn't see Cinderin in a long time, so also we had a 
bit of a chit chat. Right. right, you're reconnecting. The chemistry yeah. was still there. <laughs> yep, mm. makes sense. Makes sense. But we'll see if the chemistry between Effie and the pasta was there with this video. Ooh. I'm gonna say, looks like there's one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, I'm gonna say eight, eight is. Eight is incorrect. <laughs> I'm just ballparking here, Sundaran. You're gonna be so impressed if I have correct answer. If you get it first try, I'll be very, very impressed. That would be the exact amount? Yeah. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Time stops since I get the correct answer. I'm gonna go 110. 112, 13, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126. Yay! 126! Good job! Woohoo! I didn't know that time started when I was looking at the bottle. Time started now. Oh, whatever. You literally read it out loud. You did it. That's it. Cool! You win! All right, cool. I'm the best. That's, yes. Okay. Actually, You figured out the method. That was good? That was good. Pretty good. I mean, that was like That's the good. obvious. I'm surprised all of you guys were counting fast. <laughs> no, I, I ballparked. Like, I looked at the bottom of the bottle, and then I just counted how many I could see at the bottom. So then I just counted every row, and then I ballparked like 110, and then I just counted. And it did That's say good. that when you got the number, he had to yeah. tell you. There's so. no limit on the Very guesses. Smart. They didn't Very put a limit smart. on it. Yeah. That was how the long part. did it take me? I assume there's one guess possible. It That's took I you. To one minute and 11 seconds. Make a win. Ooh. Damn. Yeah. Very good. Hey, you guys got well smoked. deserved. Yeah, it's cleared. Easy. I'm sorry, I cleared you guys. So the final score is Cheever in last place with five minutes and eight seconds. Uh, then Lacoste in second to last with four minutes and 49 seconds. Purge with 435. And then Effie with one minute and 11 seconds. This is, and this is your combined points, by the way, from the previous. Ooh, it's tight. Uh, Bootmaster, whatever this is. Bounty. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter, yes, Bounty. of course. Uh, so, Purge, you're in the lead, buddy. Again. Again. There's always more challenges to drop the ball, don't worry. It's not over yet. Are you going to get robbed this time? Will you get um, thumbs banned? I don't know. I'm not sure how we did on the, the, the next two. The next two are... We'll see. So it was also, it was four things still. Just uh, or was it more tasks? We did do four things. But but guess what? Plus, There's plus. another reveal, yeah, guys. Five in total. There's another reveal. Five. These okay. points weren't truly correct because we have another video revealing some insight into what happened. Mis mischievousness. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Grouping it in fives is very helpful to do math because then you're counting a smaller number less. So I've realized that my initial strategy of counting one by one is inferior. So yeah, 77, and I sent a... It's uh, 126. Let me just... Let me just... Nope, they're not. You just shook them off. Okay. Because if I say the wrong amount, apparently it doesn't stop. It's 126. He's a little also, devil, isn't he? Yeah, it was also in the notebook. <laughs> very, very. Yeah, yeah that's not too late. I, I got lost. I mean, Cinderella, he's a beautiful man, so I was lost Don't in his, the beautiful eyes as well. Instead of looking at the, what was right in front of me, I just couldn't see it. Hmm. Hmm. My Understandable. Eyes the pasta. Yeah. I was looking at the pasta, not the, anything else. In same, the same. Every Dream League season, these get more and more... Tricky. They trick you. Mm -hmm. so how does it feel to be tricked? Like a bunch of clowns. Not great. Circus. That's okay. It's on purpose. Okay. Effie deserved to win. She outsmarted us. She did. Yeah. That, that, true. That, true. True. That blooper video did not really change the, the grand scheme of it things. Did not. I just no. wanted to create hype. It was painful to watch. He's still a winner. The amount of times that he grabbed his cup. Yeah. He was very aggressively was very sipping obvious. it as well, yeah. too. And so. there was nothing yeah. in it, so we should have noticed <laughs> it as well. He's, he's drinking a lot. If, if he's just constantly yeah. going during all these videos. True. Of course, you guys wouldn't would know that because you did them separately. There's the trick. That but, is the uh, you know what else is a trick? What? I don't know how to transition this, but we're going to go ahead and go to a five-minute break and then come <laughs> back 
with the 10 minute break. <laughs> no. Not 15 what? minutes. Wait, what? what? Not Five like adding. I'm not minute. adding. I'm saying we're going to have a 10 minute break. Okay. And then we're going to come back and we have Shopify versus BetBoom. Coming your way. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Passion. Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
Hey, you're the sound guy, right? Oh, hey, Jenkins. Hey, what's up, man? Um, just want to talk about last season. I feel like there was some stuff flight over the soundboard that kind of made me look bad. Well, sorry to hear about that, but uh, unlucky. Damn, this guy's an asshole. You know I can hear that, right? What? Uh, I'm the sound engineer. I can hear that. You can hear the stuff in my head. Unfortunately, yes. What the fuck? Hey, do you mind? Sorry, dude. Didn't mean to. You know what, Jenkins? I think I have a way to make it up to you. And that, and then that's when I said, Shiver, that's my dog beef. Hey, what the fuck, man? He's supposed to play a laugh track. What is this? What is this? Are you part of this? I, I'm a, I, what the fuck, man? I don't even know if that guy works here. Can you hear this? Is it just me? This is not funny. This is not remotely, remotely funny. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. You'll be hearing from my fucking lawyers. That was awesome. I, I'm, that not, was I'm awesome. not in a good mood. That was really cool. That was really cool. Hey, I, I, thought think... that, I thought Thomas, Thomas, you coordinated that, didn't you? Yeah, you guys look so cool. So damn cool. Really awesome. Bob. <laughs> Clown. I thought it was cool. Thank you very much, Puck Jump Pandas. And uh, yeah, we well, got some Dota to go through. I don't know what's happening. Exactly, but uh, I do know what's happening Dota-wise, so that's something I can talk about. We got ourselves Upper Bracket Semi-Finals coming your way, and there's a lot of excitement about the upcoming series in particular. But before I talk more about that, uh, you might have noticed that there's an empty seat 
next to Effie. Effie, mm. if you could choose a person to sit next to you that is not already sitting here on the uh, platform ish, mm -hmm. who would you choose? Shiva, of course I would choose my beautiful, my incredible TI-11 panel. I mean, th there's, there's no one else that I would rather have next to me besides Lacoste. Introduction, Effie. I appreciate it. You got two intros. I'm that cool, Jenkins. Do you want to have an, have an intro, Jenkins? I kind of do. Okay. Go together. <laughs> Please don't don't say that language. What? The, uh, you, you cannot Dude, use you're gonna oh my hand. This is what it's gonna be. Like. This is. Look, we can, we can solve this. Just stare right into the camera and apologize to the sound guy. Yeah, that's the only way. Just Fuck you, sound guy. <laughs> Believe that. That's <laughs> <laughs> what the sound of. I, that's what that's gonna sound like when I'm done with you. Is that? Ooh. That's what that's gonna sound like. Jenkins. That's not a threat. That's not a threat. Jenkins. I promise. Y you know what they say about an eye for an eye and the world going blind and all of that. That's Hammurabi's coat. <laughs> I think that apologies and forgiveness and acceptance is how we move forward with this production. Yeah, do you do you forgive us for ranking you low on the Taskmaster or the Bounty Hunters? That was, that was pretty messed up because... Oh, here we go. Preach of forgiveness. No, I mean, I forgive you. I forgive you. It's just I didn't that, do anything. It's just that after I saw how everybody literally individually counted the pastas, I, I don't feel as if... <laughs> the, the score <laughs> from, the, from the lucky item is reflective of our actual performance. <laughs> you feel you feel superior, Effie, for a good reason. You know, yep. you got that one in a minute. Uh, other plebs, four or five minutes. Uh. But I do forgive and forget, as Jenkins stood with the sound guy. We'll see what we'll see what transpires. We'll see what transpires in the Dota 2 as well, because yes, we want to talk about Shopify Rebellion. We want to talk about BB Team because both of those are doing pretty well. They're in the upper bracket semi-finals here of Dream League Season 21. We got our lovely play of brackets on the screen. And uh, I think this is, I, I know earlier Purge said that he was very much looking forward to Team Spirit vs Thunder, which is very, very nice and very, very true, but come on. When is the last time we have seen Shopify Rebellion do well, Lacoste? Yes, the stats guy, Lacoste, can you let uh, us know? Stats guy? Okay. Like the Abacus? It's, uh, it's uh, been uh, been a while. You know, mm. at Riyadh Masters, they didn't do good. Uh, finishing up in uh, 15th place. Uh, DPC NA, third uh, sure, third that's tour. Great, yes. that they did absolutely amazing. Uh, Dream League Season 19 was the one that stood out the most, you know, getting that third place. And at Lima Major, that was long, long time ago, getting the fourth place. And uh, this was like the best Dota they played, I would say, up until now. I feel like Shopify Rebellion, they're in a really good spot. I think they're very innovative with their drafts. They feel like they're not afraid of anything. Seems like there's no pressure whatsoever, considering that they already qualified to the TI. And uh, this tournament, with no pressure, it feels like they're experimenting a lot. Arteezy is back in the form. You know, they, they're doing great, and they're going to be playing against uh, one of their former teammates, Nightfall, who played yeah. the offlane. There was a short period of time, and there was still EG, you know, when they were introducing these Eastern European offlaners that were ex-carries, and uh, now Nightfall is again playing carry, and he's playing a mean carry. He is playing a mean carry. Let's uh, let's focus our attention on, uh, on, on Shopify first and foremost. So other than their results, of course, uh, their playstyle has been uh, has been fresh. I think that's a, that's a right way of putting it, Effie, because we see them. Uh, I don't know. They they basically they reinvent themselves. It almost feels like. Yeah, I'm not sure about you know reinvention, but it, it is it is new patch, and sometimes new patches just click better for a team than old ones do. And like we mentioned before, it's Ovid's first Dream League. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is very relevant when you're playing um, the entire year on this Dream League without your mid laner, you're playing with stand-ins. I feel like this is the time to prove yourself. Especially now that TI is coming up, I'm sure Shopify aren't happy with the results that they had this year. This is the tournament to practice before TI. You have to take this seriously. And maybe some of the teams that we expected to take it a little more seriously didn't, but 
Overall, this is positive, positive signs from Shopify. Yeah. Afi, what's your opinion on Lacoste's bold claim? We we ask we ask people to do bold claims here mm. at Dream League, and we write them all down. And uh, it's starting to seem a little less bold potentially. But uh, Lacoste had a bold claim that Shopify Rebellion wins it all. I think they could definitely get a top three finish if they continue to look like what they did the last mm. few days. I don't know if they're going to have a mental distinction between group stages and playoffs when it comes to an online tournament. Maybe they have that going for them outside of playing with their mid laner. Maybe the nerve factor isn't there, or the comfort factor from playing from their homes or their boot camps or what have you. So I, I can see top three. Yeah. So so, so you don't think unusual. it's for the means top three? I, I I could potentially see that. I think this series is of course very important, being the upper bracket and everything. But because uh, Bed Boom, they looked uh, I would say like the second. Strongest team for me in this tournament. Uh, team Spirit being the first one, Bet Boom, and maybe Shopify in there. It really depends how they're going to show up today. And uh, what I like the most about the team is the support duo because they've been doing really hot lately. Crit is back on some of the heroes that he likes to play these Dark Willows, mm -hmm. uh, these Hoodwings. Uh, we still haven't seen him on the signature Earth Spirit, but uh, he's been very active. Like the first 10 minutes of the game, both supports always rotating to the mid lane, playing around Abed, one of the reasons why Abed shines so much in this Dream League. And also Arteezy. I think they, they just just understand like how to utilize him and uh, for a long time you know there was this feeling that he's feeling like he's afraid not joining some of these early team fights when he gets his hands on Sven there's a certain timing he understands he's gonna be popping off mm -hmm. And I like that you brought up Crit, actually, because it does feel like Crit he's, is back, baby. It feels like he's back to his um, like comfort area in Dota and his his olden days. And I think the statistic we were given is that he has the highest average assists of any player mm. at Dream League, which is what you want to see out of your position for. You want to see them have high kill involvement. You want to see them moving around the map. So, very, very. Good, good signs for yeah. Shopify fans. It's good for them that uh, Techies is no longer in the meta because that was not <laughs> yeah, his yeah, not his hero. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was, I was gonna say, I feel like it's, it's. Maybe this is just like some NA copium for me, but they they have been a little off the radar for the whole year. And, you know, coming into TI when it comes to like buffs and nerfs, usually it's the teams that are winning the big Riyadh Masters and things like that that do end up getting their heroes nerfed. And, you know, Tusk is back. Crit is one of the best Tusks in the world, mm -hmm. you know. Saber Light's on his Giga Chad anime arc right now. Uh, going to the gym, hitting those weights, you know, maybe. Maybe this is NA's year. Maybe Shopify could really do it, Lacoste. I already said that. I don't know why you're looking at me because I already <laughs> stated it multiple times. It's on the board as well. Well, then let's focus our attention on their opponents because it's great to know that Shopify can potentially do it. Uh, but in order to get this top three finish, uh, you are guaranteed top three if you win this series right here because upper bracket semifinals, that's just how how it works, how the bracket works, and if you uh, win against Bet Boom, well, then you definitely deserve it because, as Lacoste pointed out, this was one of the favorite teams coming in, despite their not so great performance at uh, BB Dasha. Bet Boom seems to be playing uh, very, very well. You can tell that the the time they took since mm -hmm. their elimination from that tournament and the time before the start of this Dream League, they've definitely put in the work, Jenkins. It was a fairly short time for some teams, but for them, because they got knocked out so early, they actually had a, <laughs> a few days and, a good and they thing, didn't huh? getting eliminated early on. And they didn't they didn't stick around. They they just went straight home, started boot camping. I think at BB Dacha they were talking about how like they were kind of treating that as scrims. Like obviously, yeah. you know, they they said they're gonna take every tournament seriously. They they wanna win, but you know, their teams are going on vacation and stuff and relaxing after Riyadh Masters. Uh, and so it looks like they're they're finally back in uh, their their boot camp form, their online mm. form. The, the thing with BB Team, I thought that was most interesting was that at the last tier one tournament, they left it early when they got knocked out, whereas a lot of teams opted to stay and just hang out because it was a very fun setting. Party. And it was their namesake tournament. Like, yeah. It was by their by their org, but they chose albeit re reluctantly on some players to leave and focus on the Dota. So I, I think that's quite good and it's promising for the fans, but this team consistently does have issues with land performances because every time they've played online, especially at the last Dream League, they looked excellent. 
like in their online form, they are one of the best teams out there. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at these players, they're some of the highest skilled players in the world at their respective roles. And I want to highlight, especially Toronto Tokyo. He transitioned to position five at the start of this competitive year, but he's at the point where he has mastered the role, it feels like. He's been giving S tier performances every game. I just wonder where their mental block is, why they can't take this. Well, yeah, I, I, I have like two biggest enemies for Bet Boom team is themselves and F9. If the game gets bought, <laughs> like they're gonna lose the focus. I, I think uh, pure, like they need to stay in the game throughout mm -hmm. the whole game pretty much and uh, just keep playing. They, yep. they had, jokes aside, they had really great performance, like even at Riyadh Masters, because I, I think they should be pretty satisfied. The team of that caliber, I think you would still, you know, want to get like top uh, top two, top three, maybe even win the whole thing because you definitely do have energy and the skill to do it. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. And when they, with all this talk about uh, how the teams go into this, mindset is a big factor here for this series. And we have the players giving some words on that. I don't, I don't think I'm like really confident right now. I mean, we just lost Ben Pumdacha. Didn't really play much Dota before this tournament, you know, but I guess like wait a little bit more time to get like back into the game. At least for me, I just want to win, you know, I, at this point, I don't really care the money and I don't care the fame. I just want to win. So I think winning this is like a good, a good uh, starting point to like going to TA. Ah, just just win. Uh, this uh, this was all recorded, by the way, before group stages began. So I think Saves' opinion might have changed a little bit now that he does have some games in. Because he obviously did not... At that point, he was probably just eliminated, so... Did not feel too hot uh, going into this. But uh, it's uh, it's working out, Jenkins. It's, uh, the, the mindset also for Saberlight to not care about anything but winning. Good. I, I, I do... Yeah, I do respect that a lot, mm. actually. Um, because, you know, I feel like if you're going to like your first TI or something as like a, you know, brand new player, millions of dollars on the line, fame, like you are thinking about all that stuff, it does add pressure. But it's like Shopify has gone through the, the ringer so many times at this point. They've gotten good records, they've gotten bad records, been knocked out. It's like they've experienced every emotion. So it's, it's almost like he can look at the game objectively now, which I think is what you all the best teams do in the first place. Mm -hmm. We got a first pick Radiant, doesn't happen very often anymore, but we do get it right now. And that is because Shopify had selection priority and chose second pick. Whoa. Oh, this is pretty nice. immediate. Uh, there's a... One thing I see from this draft is that uh, Doom is still left in the pool. Uh, every single time Shopify plays, they ban this hero most of the time. Might, might be ban him in every single game because they love to pick heroes that... Uh, do have a lot of healing. Every single time there's a hero with a certain amount of healing on their side and Still in the pool, but uh, bet boom, they will pick up Invoker in the first phase and immediate response with this Kanka, good laner against uh, Invoker. At the start of the year, throughout the year pretty much, I did not like Kanka at all. I think this was Garbanzo pick, but uh, in this meta with uh, other heroes also being nerfed, I feel like the rise of Kanka is there for a good reason. Because you can, like you're a blade mail carrier, I know Jenkins likes blade mail. And also, you build into all these tanky items, uh, you get shard later on, you pick up Aghanim Scepter, make fights much more chaotic in the mid and late game. The new Ags is so strong. The fact that you can target it now is so much better than it was before. You can hit people super duper far away from you. Yeah, and it's not just that, it's the flex potential of Kunkka. Because I think this is Shopify's second Kunkka, but... The last time they played it, was it yesterday or the day before? Not sure, but they played it from the offlane on Saberlight. So nice. when you can when you confidently can win with a hero that you can flex the two court positions, it makes your drafting so much easier. And I feel like Shopify have found that with their Kunkka. Like they're going for some interesting blade mail into Crimson Guard from the offlane, just making him be a tanky catch type of hero. Yeah. I, I like that conceptually a lot versus Invoker. I think that I think that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh like maybe when Kunkka was going for this Daedalus Shadow Blade. It bullshit. never worked out. But that, but that also like was not a build that you could really do from the offlane. But other offlaners are going for Blade Mail, Crimson Guard right now, and that would be the mid Kunkka build as well. So yeah, you're totally right. It makes sense as a offlane flex. They um, on the side of Batboom, they took a incredibly long time to think about, in particular, the the Warlock ban. Mm -hmm. 
I think they just were thinking about if there was a chance that they could take it for themselves. But Shopify go for the AA instead, which leaves the Vengeful Spirit that a lot of teams do like to combo with Invoker yeah. because yeah. that way they can Alacrity a carry, but also use Vengeful Spirit's damage amp through her aura and her wave. Um, I thought AA was kind of only good against Gyro. Shopify disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's good having always this healing stop at every single stage of the game. You have the setup for it as well. You have X Mark, which is a pretty cheap one. And they also banned out Centaur, which is uh, a hero that Pure did play yesterday against EG, and he finished the game with 10,000 HP, mm -hmm. literally 10,000, diving the fountain with his build, with the shard, but uh, they, they, they're gonna respect Bandit, even though they have X Mark to spot, which is a uh, you know, big counter to Stampede. They're sk still gonna pick it up, and on side of Bed Boom, two supports, mostly looking at Shadow Demon. This has been pretty much the hero of the tournament because you can stack so much. He's anti carry and also having break mechanic later on, can buy a little bit more time for Ancient Apparition, Kunkas combo, so he's gonna try to like break the game. What I see from Bed Boom is they're gonna try to split up these combos that Shopify relies on on hitting. Because if you don't have the boat, if you don't have the Ravage, you, you save people, terrorize them away from a team fight, Bed Boom can easily reset. It's been quite interesting for me to see how some of the high tier supports have already kind of shifted to make way for others, like the Shadow Demon and the Willow, because typically you would not expect the Vengeful Spirit to get ignored throughout this tournament, but it seems like Willow has just made a very good impression on a lot of these teams recently. It seems like just her ability to chain CC with her brambles, what her shard gives, and of course the damage through Bedlam can always be useful. But I do like what Shopify did with the AA plus Tidehunter. I think when you have these two heroes together, it makes it so that taking team fights is very simple. The Ravage into the Ice Blast will work whenever these spells are off cooldown. And this is something that another Eastern European team yesterday, Team Spirit, they ran the same combo, Dark Willow plus Legion Commander. Ever since the change to Bedlam, that you can now throw it onto your allies, it feels much better, so you're never going to lack damage. And also, it was the same matchup. They played against Tidehunter, so you will have the Lockdown, another Blade Mail Carrier as well. Just lock down this Tidehunter from 100 to 0, because you definitely have enough damage. Sunstrike, Bedlam, mm. as I already mentioned. And there's no save on Shopify other than both, which could not come in on time. I will say though that I, I I don't I think a lot of people overestimate Willow's damage output um, early on because when you're playing against natural pipe buyers like Tidehunter and Darkseer and Willow's a support who sometimes just doesn't get enough levels, you could often be playing with a level one Bedlam at minute 20 versus a pipe and it doesn't really do that much. So it, it can go both ways a little bit. I think this Legion Commander was just picked to duel the Tidehunter. Yes. Because when you're playing into a Tidehunter, you can't really disable him. You just crack and shells it. And you have to deal with this like, Watermelon's teamfight ability. So typically the counters are something like a Void that can chrono him, and Elsie that can duel him. Anything that constantly debuffs or disruptor Static Storm. And I think Elsie is the one that makes the most sense here because Elsie can also just probably lean into any hero in Dota right now. Pretty much. Except Monkey King. You, you know what I'm thinking? It's a good game for Ursa and Yatoro yesterday. <laughs> he did say. He talked about their I don't know, you know, secret build on Ursa. I don't know if he meant like Crystalis, who plays for Team Secret, that he builds an Ursa or something, or that or you build a he crystal, has you build or build a crystalis yeah, on Ursa. <laughs> first yeah. item Crystalis, like Gyro does on yeah. Ursa. They're gonna remove some of these like super late game heroes. I think there's potential to pick up Monkey King, but then again, you're playing into Ancient Apparition. I know some of the teams would not care too much about it because you have like free lane. I think there's also a good, it's a good Razor game. Nightfall didn't play it yet. Nightfall mostly plays these like super late game carries. I, I think ideally you'd want to take advantage of your team's ability to amp you up as a carry here. So something that can hit the buildings for a bad boom with the Alacrity and the LC press the attack. So m most melee carries that do that comfortably have been taking out taken out from the pool, like the Naga, the Terra Blade who can meta, and Could be, PA on the side yeah, of Yeah, also Medusa, another hero yeah. that doesn't care about Ancient Apparition ulti. Later on, you build into Silver Edge, you can also break Tide, even though you have Legion Commander. I think, like, damage output on Shopify Rebellion is really limited. Like, Kunka uses his thing, if there's a save from Disruption, Hoodwing Sharpshooter, Tidehunter is pretty limited. Mm -hmm. This last pick, Arteezy needs to deal a lot of damage, I feel yeah. like. Or for, like, I like the Medusa idea, but also Luna, right? Because you'd want some kind of 
ranged carry to siege buildings for you, if you could. It's good versus Tidehunter online, and it pairs well with the Shadow Demon. Tropify has the response pick, though, is the thing. Like, mm -hmm. if they Medusa, there's still the AM. You're playing into Legion plus SD, so it's not that good. There's still Slark. Like, I do worry if, if Betboom doesn't pick something that's, like, a fairly but, generic good carry. That, that's why I mentioned Medusa, because you already have LC, and the LC is one of the better counters against AM. Like, you don't care about his counter spell, because it duel's always going to go off. Juggernaut, the first Juggernaut of Dream League, wow. ladies and gentlemen. That is a generic Very carry. Generic. Yeah, it is. But it's is it a generic <laughs> good carry? It, it, beats, it beats tight in lane. There's a whole ton of magic damage and stuff that he can dodge and disjoint with with his spin. So I, I think it's I think it's actually a pretty good pick. I mean, obviously, you have the AA Blast versus the Healing Ward, but you have to actually hit the Jug, and even then, he's got so many ways of just not taking the damage mm -hmm. from the AA Blast. And on paper, it's the great Jug game because... The Hoodwink A supports are just going to die to the Swift Slash from yeah, Juggernaut, that's right? Speed. And then you have the Blade Fury to play into the Tidehunter if you're worried about a Ravage. And the only annoying interaction for the Juggernaut is with debuff immunity changing, you can actually X him back from a spin TP. True, yeah. In, in most cases, but I don't necessarily think that'll matter too much in the big picture. Like It looks like a very solid hero. The Razor still looks good for, for, for Shopify if they want to go that route. Uh, very good against Legion and Lane, good against Jug in the game. They actually go with the Ursa. Oh my god. There it is. Okay, Lacoste. It's a, it's a good like lane partner with Ancient Apparition. I would say just good overall matchup against Juggernaut. You don't care too much later on if we're talking about like the mid game. Uh, there are no silences on Bed Boom, so I feel like this Ursa might be able to like get stuff done. It also takes early Roshan. Both of these teams were heavily focused so far in the tournament at playing the early game. Like, first 10 minutes, both of the teams were very impressive. I'm going to give a lot of advantage in this one for Bet Boom. I feel like, uh, even though Juggernaut is just, you know, a Juggernaut, uh, that's that's how I feel about the hero for a long time. The other four, I really like what they picked for themselves. Um, I think Shopify's draft has a lot of merit, and especially with Abed on the Kunkka, he's going to stabilize the game and hopefully be able to like play with this Ice Blast early on. But as far as Bet Boom's draft go, I feel like it takes every box. They have a setup for Invoker Spell from Toronto, Tokyo. They have Pure, one of Pure's best heroes in the LC. And I think the Juggernaut just kind of exists, but he's going to do his job later on. The other four heroes on that Boom team have so much counterplay to Shopify's draft. They have the save versus the Ravage. They have the ability to control the Ursa with the Willow. And they have a hero in Invoker who's going to lane well against Kunkka. I, I actually think Legion beats Ursa in lane now, by the way. I think with like the move speed buffs, and now you have to go for the Cornucopia rather than the Ring of Health if you want to go for Battle Fury on Ursa. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think Legion loses lane to Ursa. I think it's actually the opposite. It's like 55-45, but it used to be much worse for the Legion. We're going to have to see how this one plays itself out. It's a best of three. It's our first best of three here at Dream League, so there will be a victor one way or the other, but who is going to get a head start this series? We're finding out with Odie Pixel and Fog. for some upper bracket action here Hell in yeah. season 21. And what a way to start things off. Some bed boom against Shopify Rebellion. And honestly, first glance at this draft, we're just seeing some good old classic carries here. We're getting a nice yes. juggernaut and an RTZ Ursa fogged. Definitely some fun potential for some crazy type of plays. We don't get to see the jug, I mean, jug versus Ursa. When the hell was the last time we got to see yeah, these what two players versus each other? I so. Mean, we're in for a treat. We're in for a couple different fun interactions and stuff, too. We've got a Kunkka Abed playing this one, been rising in popularity more and more in this tournament. This hero just seems real good right now. Blade Mail build, naturally incredible. And then being able to get that Torrent Storm online can be super strong. And he's playing versus Invoker. This used to be a traditional counter pick versus Invoker. Let's see if it fares the same versus the Universal Invoker. And I think so the overall story of this, this series really is going to be if you know, can Shopify Rebellion this time, this tournament, take yep. that magic that we see so many times from them in the group stage through to the playoffs? It, it, it's going to be a tough series to do it in, right, Fog? Because Bet Boom, these online tournaments, 
they look good throughout it all. Oh yeah, and honestly, I've been, their off lane for me has just been incredible. Pure and save. I think I've, we've always been talking about save his four position. He is just an absolute beast. But then looking on the flip side, Shopify has been doing kind of similar throughout this group stage. We've been seeing Crit back to his usual self, playing his tusks, all his comfortable heroes and Saberlight. And him definitely have a powerful lane that we used to see combo together. The Hoodwing Tide. This was the Tundra Classic for some time. Yeah, pretty good kill potential, really, with these two. If the, the two of them stepped up too far. Yeah. I mean, let's talk a bit more about these carries. Something like a Juggernaut. We, we don't see it a lot. Why is that? And what do you think it was about this draft that they should have said to, to Bet Boom and to Nightfall that he wanted to bring it back for, for this game? That's honestly a great question. I'm I'm not too certain. You know, there used to be this kind of way versus AA that people would pick the Jug and stuff like that because you could just reset fights. The AA blast hits, if you don't pop a target, you ju you healing ward, reset and keep going and stuff like that. But overall, this hero's just completely fallen out of popularity. And I'm wondering what Nightfall is going to be able to make with it because this hero just doesn't naturally farm as fast as a lot of these new carries. But then there's an Ursa on the other side, so a bit of a similar function in that sense. There's no spends, no gyrocopters, no super farmers this time, so let's see how these timings hit with their itemization. And yeah, I'm watching. I'm going to be looking at mid a lot oh, because yeah. the Kunkka oh. used to do excellent versus these Invokers, but yeah, these are different times. Yeah, Invoker nowadays is. Uh... Yep. A bit of a different beast than a lot of those matchups, as you say, that in the past Kunkka you know, or Invoker would not have fared as well in. Uh, it's just not the case right, right now of how strong Invoker Ooh, saves. is. Who saves? Could be in trouble. Fly hit Tulip first. I mean, Cold Feet's going to proc. Come on, right clicks from Fly. He's got, got it. it. First blood for Fly here up on the top lane. Nartiz, he's getting the swipe stacks up on Pure. Yep. He could be in trouble also. Uh, he could continue to run this down. Pure's only got one stick charge to rely on. It's not going to save him. This is going to be a second kill for Shopify Rebellion safe lane. Huge. I mean, massive. I honestly, Fly. Like, save just walks up a little too far to make sure he can block the camp, but Fly's ready too. Blood Grenade, Cold Feet. He's got more than enough. A hot start. Lanes. First few waves looking good. Abed keeping that control. 10 and 4. Even though it's 9 4. He's getting that even CS at the moment. I mean, and the potential for this top lane, safe lane duo from Shopify Rebellion, if they start to get a bit of a lead, can can these two continue to kind of snowball this laning matchup? I will have to see. I, I don't know about with the new, you know, with these new Legion commanders and stuff like that, because this hero does seem to fare much better than he used to versus his Ursas and Monkey King and stuff like that. So we'll see. I would I would say yes for Arteezy, but there are things that can trip him up also. Brambles is frustrating to play versus. Might be able to go for Toronto. Tokyo here, it's pretty low. Save life, he comes in with some good body blocks. Crit should be able to hit the combo. He's got the blood grenade out. The healing ward is there, and it's certainly doing a lot of favors there for Toronto Tokyo. So he will manage to walk this one off there, down to the, the help of Nightfall. Very value stick lane. Actually, all these lanes kind of are. They had, what, I think eight stick charges up on Toronto Tokyo. He has 14 on Nightfall, so should be more than fine down here, but looking at Nightfall CS, he is getting slowed down a little bit. Saberlight, his constant anchor smashes in his face. They have no kill threat down here onto this Tidehunter. Not for some time. Top lane flight. Getting low. All right, and he's prepared. Salve at the ready. Just looking at the CS across the board. It's pretty Pre close. It is pretty, pretty. Yeah. I mean, mid lane, very, very close. Two carries in a very similar sort of position. Uh, obviously, Artie's with a bit bit of an edge down to the fact that he was involved in two of those kills. And uh, then looking at the two off -laners. GPK. A bit of a lead for, for Tide. Indeed, mid. Arbet's got the setup of the X mark. Ooh, the mini stun. Yeah, didn't let him pull in out. time. Did mess up the combo there. He could have died, honestly, if it didn't catch him fully. Oh, if that, if that caught GPK, indeed. That, that cold snap saved his life. Yeah, and we'll have to see how much this... I mean, this is going to be a very aggressive lane because the bottle versus no bottle is bottom. See if Nightfall can get crit in return. So a few stacks of poison onto him as well. But uh, should be okay. Also has the Lotus. He bops it just in case. Nightfall does zone him away from the bounty. Shopify getting the kills here in this landing stage. Yep. Oh, mid torrent. Ooh. I, I bet I it's mean, really bringing it to him right now. He certainly is now putting GPK on sort of death's door time and time again. GPK has got to be very, very careful. He's ghost walking, so he's going to heal a pretty decent amount with this, but that just means free CS for Abed while he's sitting there lingering inside that ghost walk. Doesn't want to get hit either. If he gets hit by Tybringer, it's going to cancel that regen. Time with some good body blocks onto Saberlight, but not quite enough. They have the disruption, and we'll let him get a few more One more. poison up. I'll do it. I take him down underneath the tower. Nightfall, perfectly fine. Healing ward out. He's going to keep himself in a good spot. It's Bet Boom. Get that first kill on the board. Stepped a little too far. Level 3 was hit on Toronto Tokyo. That extra bit of damage was more than enough. 
Yeah, this time around, it's uh, early boots picked up. He's playing versus the Jug, so it makes sense with this Tide Hunter. Then he's going to go for that Meteor Hammer. A lot of times you just see that naked Meteor Hammer, but can yeah, definitely understand if, it. If you can get away with rushing, it feels good. Yeah. As you say, that, that little bit of a movement speed difference could save his life in the lane. Teasy, taking a bit of a beating. Yeah, Shadow Demon can just sometimes be, you know, we, we talk about how it sometimes just catches off guard. You can't dispel these poisons, so even though this Kraken doesn't help. Nightfall. Nice catch by Crit. Not enough. To the yes, they do. Shopify. Sees an opportunity there to punish Nightfall whilst he's been left alone with Toronto Tokyo, making moves elsewhere on the map. Crit doing the, the nice little tricky way of doing that acorn bushwhack. Beautifully connected. No way to cut it in time. Yeah, of course, uh, leaving the lane there. Toronto Tokyo to try and help secure the power rune. And we'll, uh, we'll manage to do so. Scares away Shopify's presence in the mid lane. GPK is able to pick up the shield rune. Back up top, yeah? He's getting chased down here by Artesian Fly. Safe. So we get the brown ball down to hold back RTZ. RTZ still attempting to push forward. He can actually just turn his attention over towards safe potentially instead. Into the shadow round, but as soon as he comes out, RTZ is going to be ready to start. Into a bramble. Away. He's going to look for the kill. He's going to get the one of them, and he's going to be able to kite out Pure as well. RTZ on the retreat. Pure trying to run him down. A couple more hits would do it, but again, the slow's there Vortex. from Fly. RTZ able to stand his ground, get the kill, and get out. Very important stuff there. Close to him if he gets the attack. I think he actually did get the attack proc from fly hitting, but he was too far to actually get that secondary hit. So Artizi gets away with that kill. Looking for those seven minute wisdom runes, but yep. uh, Toronto Tokyo has been found out. They know he's here. Radiance. He so, was uh, taking a, an interesting route to try to get that one. Yeah, it's going to be a bit awkward getting past that tier <laughs> two tower, and indeed he won't be able to. He'll have to back off. A hot start again, though, for Shopify. We've seen them do this this entire group stage. Now into the playoffs, still looking good in this laning phase. Yeah. High levels on these supports. Level 5 on Fly having a very good start up top. We'll see if they can keep it up. Something that we have seen from Shopify, uh, sort of outside group stages in other tournaments, right? The start of their games, their laning phase, it, it pretty much consistently goes well. Yep. Pure. Stop. He's going to try for the kill and we'll get it. Can RTZ find the return play? It doesn't look so. No. Pure a little too speedy. He's able to get in and get out. Pushing the limits up there, pure with one or two attacks just Rip. from dying. Mid. He's going to come in with the plus one mid. Not going to quite be able oh. to land the combo though. GPK easily able to step out of the range of the uh, the boat and he'll have time to turn around and drop our bed a tip. That was a little awkward. <laughs> our bed will get his bottle filled up though. They're going to go for GPK They're going again. again. Yep. They, they want GPK dead. Round two. Backup's coming in. This and time. This time. And indeed, of course, Tiff is going to be throwing their way back at GPK. That's not an opportunity. He missed to drop a tip straight back. Hi, this is a very, very nice plays coming out from Shopify so far. Very good aggression coming out, putting pressure everywhere. Still looking at last hits, though. Bet boom. Farm, super They're the even. ones farming really nicely at the, uh, across the lanes here. Super, super even. And if yep. anything, the only one missing out a little bit is RTZ. Yep. He's falling a little bit behind on the CS, um, despite that uh, early couple of kills that he was able to pick up. If he gets like, one of those other kills, then he'd be just pretty much neck and neck with this jug. Nightfall. Yeah, just slightly ahead here. GPK. Crip. Get set up upon by GPK with the combo. Torrent will Another hold good one. GPK. With both support still here for Shopify Rebellion. They do an attempt to try and turn onto GPK, but not quite able to get the setup with the bushwhack. So, GPK, he'll survive this attempt. And GPK opted as we saw. Treads first, just Bracer getting some early stats finished up before he goes for the urn. Lots of different approaches we've seen from these invokers. Oh, it's easy. Just trying to find that level six up on this top lane. He Pure didn't stick. quite get it. Pure indeed hitting the six first. The duel's there. The damage oh. is in. Pure able to take him down. Just in time, that final hit gets him the damage. Yeah, I think Arteezy was literally one creep away from uh, being able to potentially get that enrage, and maybe then the turnaround potential would have been there. But Bet Boom seizing that opportunity, punishing that, that little bit of a window where Arteezy's not able to save himself. Those small things, they matter so much. Arteezy now, you said he was already a bit behind, and now it's a big margin that he's going to be behind this jug. So timings, as you said, these two heroes, they don't flash farm so well on their own, but it's about that itemization they get. Nightfall's going to have quite a bit of an earlier battle uh, for sure now. yeah the, the overall game state is close but out of all the cores indeed RTZ definitely struggling the most they're gonna go on him again he's still five it's a dangerous spot of the map to be in he, he will get the six now off this creep dying under the tower okay so a bit tougher of a target for Bet Boom to dive in upon and highly likely that he can survive long enough for backup to come in for himself. How many TP cancels? That was one TP cancel, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's going to go for the Omni Stash and he's going to not get it. Jumps Fly right through. He's through the portal. Toronto Tokyo was waiting for him, but Fly 6, he turns the Ice Blast on towards Toronto Tokyo. Toronto Tokyo will get a few more stacks of the poison. It's enough to still kill Fly off. Let's see if uh, Arteezy can take anything in return. Turns towards save, but the Shadow Realm's up. Crit. Coming in through the portal, he's here to back up, TZ up. Might be able to go for save now with the Shadow Realm unavailable. Crit. 
got the setup he has. Bushwhack connects. Arteezy's in with the enrage. A couple of swipes and save will fall. Arteezy able to strike back and find a trade. Action packed. Constant moves being moved, happening on the ramp. And now it's Taberlight. Bottom line, it's going to be another duel. Wow. I mean, 10 minutes in, a couple of duel wins. This is pretty good going here for the Legion. Absolutely. I mean, Pure is pretty much going to have the blade mail done already. That is super early. And it's a lane that they picked to try to shut him down completely, right? With the Ursa. Not the case here against Pure. Yeah, a lot of good. Good action, a lot of good movements up and down. I mean, look map. at mid. Both teams switching things around. It's just constant. These rotations happening from everybody. Yeah, really trying to go for GPK, but as you say, with his early stats, he's not super easy to catch, even if they get him in the combo. Arbet, he's got an opt for an attempt on save. X-Mark into the boat. And Ooh. lovely shot there from Crip, pretty much across the map, coming up from, from up in the river. He'll manage to finish that one off. Crit having a hell of a game, for sure. 3-0-2. Yep. All of his rotations almost seeming to work perfectly. Playing around Abed here. But Nightfall, as we said, he's the one to be looking at. He's, he's getting a lot of space. Getting way too much space lot, so far compared to Artor. A lot more space indeed compared to Arteezy. Yep. So that, that sort of farm timing on his Battle Fury, it's going to be much quicker. On the flip side, the one nice thing that they do have, bes you know, besides like the other stuff, just because Arteezy's struggling, is Saberlight. He actually naturally pushes build. Now check this out again. The setup's there, and crit ready on target with an easy shot. Beautiful. See it again. Bam. Love it. Gotta be watching for those snipes this game. They certainly have. They've got fantastic setup. Shop of Fire Rebellion off the back of the combo from Arbed. And yeah, so, so Saberlight, this Meteor Hammer, it feels like it's going to do quite a bit of work because he can even maybe waltz toward the mid lane pretty soon and start applying pressure onto this tower as well too. They have some pretty strong team fight on Shopify early. Sure. I mean, I'm sure we saw them be able to take Saberlight out just now in the bottom lane, but, but overall as the, the game continues, does it get a lot more difficult for them to kill this tide? Like, how unkillable is Saberlight going to feel on the front lines? I don't think he's going to be that unkillable. No, Omni Slash and Duel, they're pretty strong. Even Bedlam is pretty powerful versus a Tidehunter, so it does have to give some respect to these abilities. But overall, he's the one, he's the best tower pusher in this game in the early game. He's the one who can actually set up and get these objectives early. And they're on the hunt here for Nightfall. It's a tricky catch. If you can get the Blade Fury off, they won't be killing him. Ice Blast. Nice try. He's going to pass over him, but now he's going to know they're hunting. So Nightfall will not stick around this tier two any longer than he needs to. I feel like, I don't know, I, I didn't get to see every single one of the games there in the group stages, but the the activeness so far that I'm seeing from Shopify is, it's really, really nice. Like even bottom, attempting to go for this kill rather than just like sitting back stacking or anything. They're constantly getting aggressive and they're stacking. So Fly in the meantime, he does get, I think, what, a quad ancient stack? Something like that set up for our team. They want to try and hold this tier one as well, Sableye. Okay. Moving up to the top. They have very strong team fight rallied around Saberlight if they yeah. do want to take it around. And, and Bet Boom's not going to risk their chances here. I don't think they not only saw Saberlight obviously coming in with the Meteor Hammer, they hit Scan deep behind the tier one, so they knew that it was a plus one with Saberlight. They'll uh, uh, smoke up and look to go elsewhere. Uh, they know that they forced a response for Shopify Rebellion top, so potentially other areas of the map are a little less safe for Shopify to step into, and maybe Bet Boom can find the catch. Nightfall has the Battle Fury done, so super early timing, and he's got stacks to boot. Sunstrike, off the mark. <laughs> How's Arteezy's Battle Fury looking? Yeah, he's still a full component away, so. Oh, hell yeah. Is this the Ursa build nowadays? Battle Fury Midas? <laughs> we did see a couple, what, it was Yoragi who was doing the casual gloves of haste a couple times that we saw. That looked pretty cool, but we'll see if he does go for the Midas. Mid. Grab for GPK. And you know what I'm hoping for as well? I'm hoping for that secret, secret Ursa build that Yatora led on Yatora led on to the other day. Which one is this one? I think I know what he's is on. Is it about. the Wind Waker one or I whatever? The, well, I, I, I don't know how secret it is. I mean, I think BSJ was talking about it. But yeah, the Wind Waker yeah. Octarine. It's pretty ridiculous. It's, which, if he's going Battle Fury and Midas, that sounds like the kind of farming setup that you go for if you're then going to try and get an Octarine on a Wind Waker. I mean, we'll, we'll see well, what we'll we'll see, see, we'll we'll we get. See, that's, a, yeah. that's a lot of gold. But. I have definitely seen it. I mean, it, it, it was, can be pretty busted. We saw it from, uh, I think it's yeah. uh, Low in China. He, I think he's the one who started doing it because yeah. I saw it rising all over in pubs and then people are doing combos with like Coddle and everything. So you're just perma enraged. But we'll see if we do get to some type of stage like that. Game, neck and neck. But Nightfall does have that margin of advantage over yeah, Arteezy at the moment. right now. Yeah. Nightfall farming up an absolute treat. Yeah. Pure getting closer and closer toward his Blink Dagger as well, too. So pickoff overall, both teams do have some strong pickoff. 
especially Pet Boom when they've got this Blink Dagger into pure. The solo kill potential is definitely there for him onto a lot of these heroes. And he did get blessed with the Duelist Gloves. A stack stolen. Trying to set up on pure, but not going to get the connection. Toronto Tokyo is there anyway. Yeah. I think even if they get it, he was very prepared. They do indeed have one of the one of the better combo breakers in that Shadow Demon. Yep. A couple different ones, right? They even have pressed the attack for some saves and stuff like that. So it could be a little difficult for them to set up at times. From a very fast-paced, aggressive game, things have kind of slowed down a little bit here. Both teams. Yeah, I, I mean they're going to try and speed things back up. I, I would assume Bet Boom. Could I would be, think so. The Blink Dagger's just come out for pure. So he's got Blink Blade Mount. In fact, he's going to use it straight away. He's going to jump over all Saber. Like Ravage comes in. That's awkward. They turn with the setup. They've got the boat coming in onto pure. Pure getting burst incredibly low. Pulled back by the tidal wave. Pure, he's going down for sure. They'll punish that. As that was a Blink Dagger reveal gone wrong. Anti synergy. Shadow Demon disruption onto the Hoodwink, I think, as he's trying to duel him. So they just completely panic for a second there. Yeah. And quite the big sort of uh, fight for you know, Sableye to be able to walk out of. That's that's his money for his Blink Dagger. Absolutely. This tide continues to be insanely far. And now mid tier one, they will have Glyph. Okay, I was going to say mid tier one might just go down here as well off of that. So. Nice catch up method there for Shopify. Or TZ getting space to get that farm to get caught back up versus Nightfall. Saberlight. They're going to go for him. They just open up with a duel. Do they do anywhere near enough damage? They not quite do yet. not. A very, very ambitious attempt there by Bet Boom doesn't come anywhere close to succeeding. They probably need the jug there in order to try to go for those type of plays, but Nightfall. He's still just getting that farm up, so. Bit of a wasted effort there. Again, onto Shopify. Is, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Arteezy is very happy with the way that this is starting to go. See the itemization from Save? Used to be the automatic itemization for Willow, but now he's playing versus the Kanka. He's playing versus the Ursa. It's even more, yeah, even better now, going for this Yule Scepter. I think we've seen most people deviate away from it in a lot of games, but this one you can clearly see why he won it. That's a lot of damage just straight up from from the support combo there, but Ice Vortex. Not hey, Ice Vortex with this hoodwink shot yep. is it's nothing to laugh at. Yeah, didn't quite have the ice blast up, still on cooldown for about ten seconds. If that's there, that's a kill. Honestly, yeah. These two could these two could definitely set up kills like that onto anybody. But now though, oh. they'll still remain rather squishy. Neutral creep. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> But they got the dual damage. He gets the dual damage. Now, who cares about the kill? Yeah. Just about that infinite scaling on the right click. And I believe he's still he, a winner. Did he have the. Was it. Okay, he's still level one dual, but he had the dual talent. So he gets the 18 damage. Yeah. Plus 38 for pure. Yep. Still a very healthy amount of damage to be building up at this early stage of the game. And there goes the mid tower. So. Saberlight able to get that one. And let's see, does RTZ commit? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I like it. It's the secret Ursa build. It's been. It's don't, been kind of quiet, but oh, I don't know if I like it. Okay. No, that's just queued up instead. The dream is dead. The dream is dead. Yeah. Standard. Standard Ursa stuff here. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, it looks like he's just gonna get a, a little bit even more status resist, I guess, yeah. versus the duel and stuff like that. Okay. And of course, BKB incredibly necessary when you're playing against uh, these invokers and you know, shadow demons and willows. Yeah, eventually. Nice and wine to BKB for RTZ on the build. Mm -hmm. GPK, kind of quiet. Now he's the one who's actually starting to fall quite far behind because he he's not really farming so much. He's rather like kind of moving around. So seeing Abed pull massively far ahead after farming stacks. Abed's sure. level 14. He farmed, I think, what? A quad stack ancient, a quad stack hard camp as well too. So Abed, very enabled. GPK, the one who's starting to really fall behind. Yeah, cleaning up huge amounts of the map. I mean, keeping up as much as he is with Nightfall. Look at those neutrals. 2,000 for the Kunkka. And incredibly hard to go on. Not a, not a target that Bet Boom can take down too easily. As you said earlier, they, it does feel like the Bet Boom's lineup, for all the control it has with their supports, if they want to have the straight up damage, this Legion, it, it's got to be paired up with one of the cores. Absolutely, it does feel like it. And Shopify can get themselves a free rush. They've got this Ursa. Yep. Ravage is back online. They can look to take these fights. I see a lot of shards being purchased too. Sableye, he bought his shard. So we've got the dead in the water. I love this one. I see how proactive Shopify want to get with this pickup of the Aegis. Let's see if they even feel to need to be too proactive. I mean, they're getting so much scaling out of I mean, RTZ is you know, keeping up on the game nice, nicely now. He was
was uh, was rather behind, but now he's up there and give him a few more moments, nice. likely to be able to catch up to Night Force One. Mm -hmm. I just this this differential between GPK and <laughs> and uh, Abed right now is absolutely ridiculous from all these stacks. GPK has or Abed has BKB almost 15. So they are actually probably, you know, you know what you're saying, they probably will look to fight and accelerate things now, definitely, with this BKB. Yeah, they're going to smoke. Yeah, they feel strong. Shop a fire bellion. They've got their ults. If they get the setup, they'll be able to blow up any of these heroes, as long as the Shadow Demon stays not there. Radiant mm -hmm. He's tempted to come back for that last range creep. You're least, my friend. And that will cost him his life. Love it. Love the anchor. Right away, coming into play. Good luck dispelling that. You cannot. Yeah, I guess what well, the only thing that really gets you out of that one is a good old four stuff, right? It's like the leash is like a pound leash, right? You need to kill it. But you can't force out of it. Pretty sure you have to kill it. No, I actually don't remember. <laughs> All I know is that thing's fixed on you, no matter what. It's very, very difficult to play versus in most situations. I love when they buy it early. Pulled from my chest. Shopify up to 5k. That slowdown, it's been working beautifully for them. Step lively now. And tougher, Bebum overall, their team fight is a bit lackluster in comparison. Like running into this Kunkka, running into Tide, if you want to actually take a straight up 5v5, sure. it's going to take a, probably quite a bit more time for Bebum. There's just more about looking for these little pickoffs with the duels and stuff like that for a while. And it, and it feels like uh, a lot is going to rely on Nightfall to carry on a Jug. It does. I feel like we, we just don't see Jug carry games that much this, this day and age. No, and he's playing versus Nursa, who can just click and rage if he ever does get Omni slashed or anything like that. So It's a difficult matchup. Yeah. That's what see Nightfall can do. Obviously, he has the edge in terms of farm, you know, keeping a good distance still between himself and Arteezy. Let's see if that's going to be enough to allow him to carry this game on the Juggernaut. He's going to go for a bit of a bait. Have Nightfall push in the mid. And then smoke up. Try and try and maybe catch Shopify Rebellion in this potential attempt to yeah. go on Pure. I think they're kind of trying to catch him split up a little bit here. Pure. And try for the combo setup, but quite off the mark. Not quite falling into place there. And now they want to go for the big target, but Abed's got BKB. They'll settle for Fly. Yeah, they get an easy punish and an easy bit of dual damage. Pure's able to jump in, clean that up. Oh. Bottom time, crit. He's turning with the ult. Now it's easy. He's there to help out to bring Toronto Tokyo down. Tornado's attempted to hold back Arbed. He's already got the X mark out onto GPK. Ravage as well to follow up. They lock down the Invoker. Bushwhack there from crit. No chance for an escape for GPK. Arbed, he's going to put the BKB as he wants to move on for more. Chase down, save. X marks back up. They'll be able to drag back the Willow. Shadow Realm is in place. But turns around, gets the three man fear off save. But he's nowhere. He was not caught. Able to jump back in with the blink. And Shopify, they may lose one, but they take down three. Well worth it, and in, I mean, immediate rotation. So quick the way they move. Saberlight just appears almost out of nowhere. When it just was two heroes at the start there for Shopify. Yeah. Quick moves. Absolutely. I mean, they definitely feel like Shopify there. They're absolutely playing on the same page. Something that yeah. we've, we've not always seen from this team. Especially kind of after the laning stage. No, it's transitioning very well into the mid game. 23 minutes in. Yeah, making moves as a team, and Arteezy, he's getting the space, he's getting up there in the farm. Once he's got his BKB, I don't know how Betboom kill him unless they get that set up with the duel. I'm not sure either, because even if they do, there's going to be like the rum that comes out. They have a lot of layers that they're going to have to go through to try to address It's, it's hard Shopify to get those kills now. from behind, Betboom. Yeah. Damage is starting to be a bit lackluster unless the jug is there. Yeah. Which, yep, yeah, Nightfall. I mean, he is going to have the butterfly, so that is going to be a bit of a timing, and Aegis... Expiring in about 30 seconds, so maybe that'll be the call for Bet Boom to go. But GPK probably feeling like, man, I just showed up to like my first fight after getting my Midas, and I just get killed instantly. So maybe he's feeling like he doesn't actually want to do that. Could be a little awkward here for Bet Boom. Oh, there we go. We are going to get a bit of the components. A bit of. Old Octarine is queued up next. Okay. Get the cooldowns down. And for Arteezy, so building towards that almost permanent enrage. Yep, and you take all the right talents from now nowadays on this yep. Earth, so when you do this type of build, because you're just, you're Earth shocking constantly and you're spreading fury swipes onto everybody, so. Oh, we're definitely in for a treat to get to watch this one. I don't think I've gotten to see it in a pro game yet. I've not got to see it in a pro game. I've yet. seen it a ton in the pubs, but yeah, not quite yet in a pro game. So a pure BKB's finished. So starting to get that itemization to counteract some of those big team fight ultimates. But GPK still a, quite a ways away from his. Can they get a pick off? 
Saber light. Do they kill another doom? Be close. Try. They do. Yeah. They do. They have enough. As you say, get the jog involved. And now that they can push for those sort of plays, gonna feel a bit better about their pickoff potential. Bet boom. That's a big one. Big one to open up the map. Who got the? It was Pure who got the last hit too. Yeah. Okay. Toronto Tokyo's also got his blink, so much okay. easier for Toronto Tokyo to be able to break the combos that Shopper Fire Belly and try and lay down on one of Bet Boom's cores. I mean, that's really important. Combos and also just him being able to control something like the Ursa throughout a lot of these fights, because then he could just pick and choose the demonics. Ah, uh, Bet Crit. Ooh. Rana on uh, GPK. He's got a bit of a setup here. Try and get him out of this one. In fact, Pure's also ready to just run in aggressively with the blade mail. Look for a chance to get the catch. But Jewel still on cooldown, so there won't be any damage to pick up from this one. Just the kill. Big kills. GPK gets it, and that is soon to be the BKB, and they find a DD up top. Well, that could be nice for Pure if he wants to grab that and go for a duel. Have they got a bottle to give him? They're saving it for somebody here. Maybe Pure wants it. Uh, yeah, I'm nah. no, oh. just wondering if they had a bottle to store it up, but they, they don't. So he's just going to grab it. Duel's up. Could be an easy kill if Pure finds a grab. If they can find Saberlight out of position here, that could be huge for Bat Boom. Do they have any walls to drop down on a high ground save? Not any observes at the moment on the front line, so not able to play for some crazy dive. They're checking some of the camps up top with the scan. Uh, not to find anyone though. Shopify Rebellion for now, couple around the base. The rest of the two of them playing the bottom half of the map. Barteezy uh, able to push the wave all the way out. Radiant's and I believe is that his next is item done. Did he finish it? He went BKB. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, we didn't get the Octarine. He keeps teasing. <laughs> He's like, guys, I want to really try this out. He's playing versus, uh, he is playing versus the Invoker and versus yeah, B, Brambles, B, which sure. BKB makes is, sense. If you don't get it and you lose the game, you're going to feel bad. Yeah. BKB in slot now for RTZ. But it could have been glorious. Abed, Aghanims, it's finished up. Pretty fast timing, as we said. You know, he's been giving a, quite a bit of priority of farming on those stacks. Yep. We saw those neutrals that he was able to get. But, you know, that 5k lead They're for Shopify, gap, it's but, gone. Yep, they absolutely are. I mean, Nightfall just continues to farm at a pace unmatched this game. Nobody's keeping up with him. 335 last hits run out the 27 minute mark. Has to be one of the higher ones. That isn't an illusion hero. And now, looks like he can probably just go for the Tormentor himself, too. Yeah, easily. Uh, maybe we'll see RTZ do the same thing on the other side soon, too, because he can also do this type of play. A shard for Toronto Tokyo. A good one. Not the biggest things that he can actually demonic cleanse off in particular this game, though. But either way, it's always a strong one for the heal. Now, fight time for Shopify. RTZ with the BKB. He wants to get involved. Okay. Yeah, they want to force like a they want to force a fight. They want to use their big team fight abilities, especially with Abed having this agonims right now. But the timing it's a big timing on the jug also hit now. Level 20. This blade dance lifesteal. Shadow Blade done so can get in and out of the fights mm -hmm. pretty well. And that's that is the BKB's done, right? So they they have BKB on Legion, BKB invoker, so they have ways to play versus those big team fight abilities that Shopify has at the ready. The clash. I really want to go for this bet boom. They want this fight, but so does Shopify. Let's say Ward's being placed down. Tense moments. Who goes in first? It seems a case of both teams waiting for the others to walk into them. Both just trying to constantly give information. A secondary smoke, Shopify, they're this, going for a wraparound. This could go nicely. Yep. Nightfall is going to have eyes on fly. We'll take the Ward. They're going for the long wraparound here with this second smoke, Shopify. Ooh. It's going to get dispelled now. They know there's someone in the trees. There's going to be the jump. The Ravage is there. It's only going to catch Nightfall on the edge. That's awkward. Saberlight went for the chance of catching someone in the tree line. And unfortunately for him, the one in there was Toronto Tokyo with his own blink. So They're Toronto Tokyo go. able to jump away. And now no Ravage on the table. And Fly. Fly's been spotted. He has been. He gets the force out to the side. They'll slow him down with the ultimate. Nightfall's in ready to finish him off. They'll get the quick kill onto Fly. And now Shopify, they're outnumbered. And they're they don't surrounded. have Ravage. Arteezy, he's TPing out. Is he going to be able to get out of here in time? Saberlight, he won't. Arbed, he'll BKB and TP out. Saberlight gets left behind. And for that, that boom will be rewarded with a second kill for Nightfall. Oh, and extra damage for Pure. Oof, I mean, Saberlight takes a risk going for that. It was a that, risk going for that. It's not a small risk. That's a pretty big risk that he goes for with Roche being up and everything too. They're, they're going to make their way bottom. It's shifting and they're going to kill that. There's no Ravage available for Shopify to even fight. They're going to have to cause something. You know, they have to do some weird stuff here to try to contest it. And Nightfall's already here. I he is. Tz has got to run. It's a run at Tokyo. Whoop. He didn't get the disruption. Oh, Tz is just a little too speedy. 
to go any oh, further away to close the gap. I mean, Chris kind of caught in the river. He tries to push himself up to the high ground with the sharpshooter, but will be unsuccessful in doing so. As Beppu, they'll clean up another and now. We'll take the net worth lead. Oh, Cindy, they caught a whiff of, of Toronto Tokyo. I mean, maybe. Yeah. I, 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 the blink dagger on Toronto Tokyo was only picked up you know, moments before. Maybe Just they didn't check go, the yeah. inventory. They didn't expect that to be there. Uh, and then if you're getting in and you're catching the Shadow Demon, maybe that is enough to sort of snowball the team fight. But unfortunately for them, whether they checked it or not, he had a blink. And uh, easiest blink of his life at Toronto Tokyo. And they get, I mean, they get a massive advantage out of it. Multiple dual yeah, kills. They get themselves a Roche. It's not just the, it's not the first one either. So H and is a secondary form of save. A very nice turn of the fight there from Bet Boom. Very nice, wa very nice ways of like play. playing around the map too, where it's like you can feel Shopify. They had that strong window with their big team fight and stuff like that. Bet Boom just kind of split up, finished BKBs, and now they're getting these pickoffs all over the place. Pure, I believe that's his nullifier. Actually, already finished up now too. So going to be incredibly strong versus this Ursa. Yeah, and even though the game did slow down for a period earlier on, it's still 122 damage on the Legion. True. A very formidable amount for Pure. So, Shopify Rebellion's next bit of players now that that Aegis has been picked up by Nightfall. The next few minutes could be difficult. They're certainly in line to be losing some of the base here. Tier 2s have gone. And look at this, Nightfall. He's like, okay, cool. I got myself a Tormentor ready. Ready to ready. Can't That's quite do it on his own. Well, I guess yeah, he waits for a few ticks of the heel. Just got to be a bit careful as he finishes it. I mean, oh, he needs a buddy. Just straight up he needs a buddy. Yeah, he's kicking, kicking back a bit too much damage from now. Yeah, he's like, yeah, never mind. Someone else come here. Oh, now they, you guys now want they don't have the healing water. I guess, yeah, pure's around, but they, then they'll be fine. That's when you tell your team, I'm doing this for you guys. Do you want the shard? Get over here. And they will. Let's see if they, uh, I mean, if you bet boom now, do you want to try and push high ground? What's sort of the next play here with the Aegis? What do you want to get done? I mean, they can just push these lanes out, keep looking for these pickoffs and for these fights. I mean, they're, they're, they're probably feeling they're in such a comfortable position now versus this tie. They're probably thinking, you know, we can always avoid these ravages and stuff like that now that we've getting, been given the opportunity for BKBs and, you know, the blink, like you mentioned before, on Toronto Tokyo to reset. Playing really nicely around their vision. They see that they see op at bottom. They see a couple heroes, and then they look and pick to choose how they want to play around it. Shopify coming quite a bit outside of their base. You can see how you can see how confident Nightfall is just pushing forward because he doesn't really have to worry about any of those you know BKB piercing disables. He can just spin TP in any function, so he's actually playing super deep. I look mean, at this. Shopify spreading out as they are feels rather risky. Great. Sun strike. Got, ah, very nice there with the sun strike. Giving them the setup, giving them the vision to get in and get more damage secured for Pure. Uh oh. They're getting way too much. Jopify's just not. I don't think I've seen them be able to get like a big team fight in almost 10 minutes now. That boom's just toying around and getting these catches. Nightfall. Two minutes, that could be perhaps the catch that they want to be able to poke high ground a little bit with. Yeah, and he's, you know, at this point, just easily more than a full item ahead. Yeah. Barteezy, he is in the perfect spot. The spot you need to be to, to close up games as a jug. Absolutely. And these, you know, you the Shadow Demon, T Toronto, Tokyo, he's got his blink, like you mentioned before. He had his Philly Stone. Things are starting to rack up. He's two components toward an agonism. Agonims now, too. So the Earth's game, he's got to deal with a lot of purges. With the jump. And the Hex. Taken off and though, Nightfall able to blade here and back off for the healing ward. So that was the Hex reveal from Sabrelight. Hex reveal and MKB reveal. MKB on uh, Arteezy, that is. They look I, to keep going. I mean, again, it's it, yes, just this, the fact that they have this Legion and Shadow Demon. So many ways to just disrupt how Shopify want to open up onto a hero. But boom, they've got the counter plays. So many. So many of them. These BKBs, they're very important for the side of Shopify. They haven't even really gotten a chance to use theirs either, right? Nine seconds still on Arteezy. But this BKB, you know, it'll protect him versus the Willow and the Invoker in a way. But this Shadow Demon, this Purge, it's going to be devastating for Arteezy. They need to find Toronto Tokyo in these fights. And that's why you can see why, how much, you know, Saberlight really wanted to get on him with that Ravage. Yeah. Yeah, if, they, if anyone gets the chance to jump the Shadow Demon, they go for it. It has to happen. But their jump, it's... It really only is Saberlight at this point. Ah, so much rest on the Ravage. Yep. Dyer are scanning. 13 to 13. Slow paced. But my Nightfall just continues to have incredible success. He almost has his Ags finished. Saberlight. 
Did not quite get a glimpse of him, but they heard him. They know he's down there. Uh, there she just will end up backing off to the, the base here, Shopify. Aghanims, yeah. Uh, it's done now for, for Nightfall. <sighs> it's Level quite... 23. He's massive. And he probably got one of my favorite neutral items. I didn't mention it from earlier, but probably the best one that you can get on these tier 3s. The Vindicator's Axe for a Jug is just incredible. 20 seconds on the Aegis. Shopify, are they going to look to perhaps time it? I mean, Nightfall's pinging. He's probably like, hey, guys, my Aegis is going to be wearing out. And they have this I mean, ward that was right in the middle, so they saw everybody. They, they, they know exactly where Shopify is. They're setting up. This might be into the hands of Betboom. Betboom's starting to get more of them together. They've got four heroes down here ready for an altercation. He just reclaimed. And this might be a little too far for Shopify to set the smoke up, but it... It still just feels like so much of a risk. You can see the hesitation from Shopify. They don't want to be the ones that go onto the other side of the map. No, and top is, like, top is starting to get poked. No one's showing, so they already saw... Beboom saw them all down there with that ward that they had earlier, so yeah. lots Shop of information given. Yeah, Shopify's going to know that they're yeah. onto this. And they can't afford to walk into Beboom's hand. How's uh, items looking? How many Lotuses? I believe... Okay, yeah. Crit, he finished his a few moments ago, and I think Fly is getting closer and closer. These Lotuses are definitely going to be really important versus this Omni. Mm -hmm. Try to protect Arteezy in any type of way. That boom still, you know, waiting out the time of the smoke just in case Shopify were going to proceed with the move. But now they'll, uh, uh, they'll know the, the sort of the showing top of Arteezy that the Shopify did bail out on trying to make that play. That boom is just, they're playing very, very careful, very, very confident. He's playing just right perfectly around that ward, sitting behind Nightfall. He's definitely making a lot of calls. I'm seeing him yep. pinging constantly. I mean, it's so. his game to, to, to win right now. Absolutely. He's, he's the one that takes charge when he's in this sort of position. What do we have? A greater... How many greater healing lotus? Greater healing lotus on Toronto, Tokyo. I thought I saw one more, but maybe it was on Shopify. Either way. Ninja Gear, Saberlight, picks up a pretty damn good neutral item here. Maybe we'll allow him to get those type of sneak plays to get a good Ravage off. Nightfall gets his Spell Prism. See how much they want to poke the high ground in this uh, window where, of course, they don't have Aegis. I mean, and it will start until we'll see when it's back up. They're going to force him back. It's double Siege Wave. This is dying quick. There's no glyph. And they've got the Hex done on GPK. Oh, he got the spin off before the Hex. Forced everybody back to base. And then they go address their lanes. Nightfall. Uh, he's very, very close to hitting 25 I after this Wisdom. This good God. Uh, he's, he's making the jug look good. And GPK gets, a re I honestly, it's a really good shard. Another one. I feel like most of these tend to be, and he gets Timeless Relic at the same time while he finishes up a hex. So a lot of item timings coming up for Bet Boom. And for Shopify, they're getting smaller items, but these fights definitely feel complicated if they can't find those back lines. I mean, they're, they're trying again with these smokes. They know that if they go for a move, they've got to do it before Bet Boom get another round of Roshan and Aegis. And another round of items. Tokyo, he's about to have his Aghanims. Full Ag soon to be done on Shadow Demon. I think an AC coming up very soon for Pure 2 or Pure 2 as well. Abed hits another timing also. The 20 talents been received while he has Shiva. So, I mean, he's still... If they fight around him, there's chaos. It just... It hasn't happened in a long time. DD bottom. bottom tower Double ninja gears. I mean, they're, they're moving around as five Shopify, but they're just not finding anything. No. Maybe Pure. And they get the catch. He's too quick with a blink. To He's already clear, out I'm away from the creep wave. I don't mean it it's not going to get caught out by that sort of attempt. As drop a fight. Continue to struggle to find a, a move to make, really, as it feels for the last five Ooh. minutes or so. And Roche hits up. Refresh your shard. It's, it's dead way too fast. Who's getting the refresher shard? Give it a GPK for some cool combos or just a Nightfall? Probably GPK. I don't know if Nightfall has space, does he? Ooh. I give it a pure, okay? Pure Couple rounds of the old, old duels. I mean, that's BKBs. He could just effectively take out two heroes almost instantly, right? He duels yep. one, kills one, jumps the next one, duels, yeah. double BKBs. He's got control. Okay, cool. Yeah, and he's, he's sure. pretty much got the slots to play with as well because the, the AC is just under 200 gold away. So he should, okay. should manage to get that wrapped up before the next fight. Yeah, he's still going to have to like, do some swap type of inventory stuff. And maybe he does pass it off. Who knows? We'll have to see inside these fights, so. 
And that is the, okay, so Ags, Toronto, Tokyo. Like this Shadow Demon, if if he gets to cast his spells in these fights. Fight. Yeah, it, he just, he'll just anti-carry Arteezy completely. So eyes on Shopify. Can they get the wraparounds? Can they get these jumps I mean, on the back? And they're lumping up with the old air. Yeah, straight away, the Bushwhack is there to catch Toronto Tokyo. Trying to follow up. He's able to get the disruption off though. And Shopify, they've got to back away. They cannot attempt to throw any more spells down. Onto their stable, they will go for the Gets DP the out, but Pure, he'll find him. The duel's there, they hold <laughs> back the tide. Nightfall comes in for the secure. I mean, save. He's starting to toy around with Arbed as well. Arbed does have BKB available, but the fear's there. Well, oh, he's in trouble. To follow it up, Pure jumps forward, and there's no chance for a BKB. Arbed also to fall. Shopify, they're two cores down and two cores without buyback. Nice sun strikes early from GPK. These little vision sun strikes. A couple times now, it's gotten the vision for those duels. Excellent start there. Yep. Catching Sableye as such. And yeah, Arbet, I guess, just sort of holding onto the BKB too long and, uh, and to a point where he just didn't have the opportunity to get it off anymore. Yeah, I think Curse Crown stunned into the fear immediately right afterwards. And at that point, he's too low. I didn't think he didn't want to use it. All right, Bat Boom. Jesus, it really feels like it's been almost 20 minutes of them now yeah, just really absolutely has. dominating the map. Yeah, the first 20 minutes, he looked hopeful for Shopify Rebellion. But the, this second half has yeah, it's been all Bat Boom. Nightfall <laughs> diving in there deep, trying to take down Flight. It was just the Swift Slash still has the main Omni to play with. But at the least, holding him back and getting all the space in the world for him. And GPK to push down a full set of racks bottom. We'll see if they want to stick around for more. Still 20 seconds, no Arbed. Shopify, what do they do? 16k behind now. At level 25, near level 26 Juggernaut. Jeez. And look Taking at the spacing. Base. Like, look at how. Do, who are you going to ravage? Look where Pure is. Look where Tokyo is. They're playing thousand range away. How do you start this fight? They're going to try, but instantly Nightfall. He's back and he's safe. Yeah, see, the, I mean, Arteezy, Shadow Demon's missing. I, I really think like they have to find some type of smoke wraparound. You got to get on this SD. And back in they go. Lots of problems now at this point. Not just the Shadow Demon, of course. But what are they going to do? But they're gonna watch their buildings die. And they're more than ready to go again, Bet Boop. Still a couple of minutes on the Aegis. Everything to play with. 10 seconds on Healing Ward. They're gonna keep going. And they're gonna make a move soon, Shopify. Sableite's going for the wraparound with, with Crit. Let's see who they find. Can they find the Shadow Demon? Can they find Toronto Tokyo? There's the jump, there's the Ravage, it's onto the three of them. They're trying their best to burst through the Shadow Demon. They get the Hex follow up, but Toronto Tokyo is going to get saved. Cheese is there, he's back up to full HP. Pure gets back in aggressively, dueling Sable. Like they've taken out the Tide. He's down for a minute. Arteezy was able to take down Nightfall at once, but Nightfall's going to be back after the Aegis. It's two dead on Shopify. Bet boom, everyone's still good to go as they're back onto the rack. Was that, two, was that the double duels that it comes in, I think, too? Refresh your shard. They can't even kill the Shadow Demon. Instant press the attack into Cheese. They just can't fight them. They it's cannot. Fight. They're far too far behind. Wow. All right, Bet Boom. They've looked so hot this tournament and continue to, even though, like you said, those first 20 minutes. They're, yeah, a bit of back and forth, but there's a, yeah, 20 minutes onwards, it was just all the Bet Boom show. Oh, yeah. Oh, cute little play there from Nightfall, using the Ags to jump out of the cold feet. Oh, Bet's back in action, but Stabilite's still down for 30, and even if it was back, the, the Ravage, of course, already been used. Oh, it's easy caught outside of the base. They got the loads of support on him, he's able to put the in range. The Omni. Still tripped up by the Bramble and he's caught down on the low ground. GPK just toying with him as he drops the meatball down. Pure and Nightfall wrapping around. They do get the Hex off on towards Nightfall. The duel's back up. Pure sets up. Triple kill, ultra kill for Nightfall. As this game, it is over. Wow. Bet boom. No mercy. Truly no mercy in this one. I mean, those, yeah, those first 20 minutes, it looked good. And looked then... Like we were going to have a close game and then Bet boom said no. Nope. No. <laughs> Perfectly dodging fights, getting their BKB, and then, I mean, how many pickoffs after pickoffs after pickoffs, getting this Roche, getting the. Uh, it, pretty much after that Ravage from Saberlight, unfortunately, things just become completely one sided. Bet boom. Yeah, just it, their wow. draft had everything covered, and yeah, Nightfall making Jug look really, really nice. Great timing on the Battle Fury, and it's just farming at a speed that nobody could keep up with, and was able to just freely enter these fights and be that. That force you need to just end the game, hit the barracks, right? He's got the healing ward, he's got the damage. I mean, he's he taking him down and he's got all the backup in the world, right? Pure save, Toronto, Tokyo, even GPK just sitting behind. Anyone jumps on this jug, they're gonna get immediately combo broken. Absolutely, and he actually, looking at the damage numbers, this game is very weird, it's kind of deceptive. Look how little damage there is. We don't have building damage off on this, but for building damage, 
the Nightfall did 22,000 building damage. Yeah. So this yeah. was more of an objective-based gaming where, yeah, Batboom just kind of danced around, waited for these opportunities to strike, and those opportunities were massive. So. They were. Cool. They were. Very, very, cool. very well played by Batboom and uh, Shopify. They've got to step it up in game two if they want to have a chance against Batboom today, it seems, as a very impressive second half from Batboom. Gives the, yeah, no question on who's the one to take this game. Batboom will take game one of this best of three. Yeah, convincing very much so for a bedroom. We'll see what happens in game number two, of course. This is the best of three in the upper bracket semifinals. Shopify did come out with the Ursa, and we did not see the secret build, which I was kind of sad about, but it also... Maybe, maybe was, this was we the saw it. We no, thought this we is just not didn't the get there. He just didn't do it. He didn't no, commit to it. They would have won. He needed to go for the Battle Fury Midas, the OD pixel build <laughs> that he does on every hero, including ranged heroes. <laughs> Artizi knows. Uh, but he didn't do it though. He didn't Would have the... that have won them the game? Yes. Off screen Wind Waker? He didn't have the cojones to do it. Uh, I don't if know. If they won this game, thing. maybe we could all call this a secret build. You know, this is what uh, Yatoro was yeah. talking about. But, but Yatoro uh, yeah, warned us the, about. Did it didn't happen. No. I don't know. I, I think we gotta give credit to Shopify because, again, they won the laning stage 10 15 minutes into the game. They're playing very aggressive, both supports. Uh, from their side, the making the moves, uh, making GPK's life uh, miserable on this in this mid lane. But uh, overall, Bet Boom seems like that whenever they play online, like their strategy, they're so much more calm when it comes down to execution. I think if this, if a game like this is on land, they would probably crumble. But uh, they are getting better, you know, with each game that they play, and they managed to make a big comeback. This was like five, six k gold lead for uh, Shopify Rebellion, and in the end, uh, Bet Boom. Just the decision-making wise, they were really on point post 20 minutes. Mm. I think Shopify's boon in this game was that, like, typically they'll have Abed on this gap close catch type hero, like whether it's a spirit or something like a puck. This is a second option to take fights, to start fights. When you're entirely dependent on a Ravage for a fight, that gives the enemy team a lot of counterplay. And Batboom were able to exploit that very easily. They knew that for Spotify, Shopify, <laughs> my bad, for, for Shopify to take these fights, they had to kind of group up together, go for a smoke, look for like that big play around an objective. And that's something that you can easily plan for. You can position your heroes in a way to counter it. And all they kind of had to do is sit back and farm and have a really good read on when Shopify were looking to group up like that and use the Ravage. But I, I mean, that was just perfectly read by them, perfectly executed. That was flawless farming by Nightfall. I mean, that was some of the wildest, wildest CSing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I think geez. Fog was saying it was like minute 27 or 25. Over like, no, it was minute 25, with like over 300 CS. Something That's about crazy. these Eastern European players, carry players that can play Juggernaut, they just hit different. They have mm. a bit of this oomph. It's not a bad hero in their hands. Absolutely it's a, not. It's a really good hero. And I, I think part of it is like knowing what the correct build is. Because I feel like if you go one wrong item on Juggernaut, you're playing into you know something like an Ursa, and he doesn't get that butterfly early, and then Ursa jumps on him with the Basher, Blink Dagger, and like takes him down from full HP. You can see something like Jank that happen. Sit properly. In five years, you're gonna be like, why does my back hurt? This is normal. That this is not normal. This you is sit the like shrimp. This is the Ursa <laughs> posture. <laughs> I'm trying to look like Ursa. All right? I'm getting into character. And if I were Ursa in this game, I'd be thinking, what the hell am I doing against this this Juggernaut? I try to jump on him. He's got the butterfly. I can't burst him. I'm getting. I'm having to use my enrage for the duel, so I can't use it for the for the Omni Slash. Uh, but I agree. These uh, Eastern European jugs look. Uh, <laughs> okay, I gotta work on the phrasing for that. <laughs> These Earth, Eastern European juggernauts. <laughs> to be clear, we're talking about Dota here. Look very, very strong. Ah. Very nice jug. <laughs> it took it. Yeah, the guys knew instantly what we're talking about. I was very confused. Why is it so funny? I see, I see. No, I mean, I don't even think Juggernaut's that bad of a hero. I mean, it's it's a solid hero, especially if you don't have any BKB piercing disables. There's always room for Juggernaut to play, especially if there's those supports that get completely shredded by the Slash or Omni Slash and they. Like, Blade Fury counters their main initiation, which is Ravage. I mean, Nightfall was set up for success through the draft, I think, but he also just played incredibly well. I mean, I feel like another carry would have maybe joined a fight that wasn't favorable for them, but at no point did he waver or join fights when he thought his team was weaker. He had, I mean, he's playing up against his, his former team, you know, he's got the he's got the motivation from that one as well. Maybe a little bit of extra oomph coming from that. Uh, for our Ace of Predator head-to-head, -head, we do we did want to highlight the, the offlaners because there was just a glaring difference in terms of, obviously, we got a Tidehunter 
versus a Legion Commander Lacoste. Those are two inherently different roles coming from an offliner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what uh, Tide wants to do, get this Meteor Hammer, sit uh, in the lane, farm, move to the tower. What Pure wants to do is dominate the laning stage on Legion Commander, and this is his probably like top three heroes we're talking about. I He's the best Legion Commander on the planet. Probably, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think you can give him Legion Commander, especially like this whole Tidehunter and then there's a Legion still available. Tidehunter's win rate at this Dream League is really not good. It's this sub 20%, it's really bad overall. So I feel like if you want to play the hero, this Legion Commander, it has to go. Sounds like a simple solution. Very case. easy. It was it? Anyway, I mean, maybe part of that potentially go for the secret build on Ursa or don't go for Ursa? We, we gotta mention what's the secret build, like what's the secret sauce. Yeah, Wind Waker so Octarine is the one the that's royal being jelly. described. There's no, no, yeah, okay, there's no royal jelly in Dota anymore. So, so but to be clear, this secret build, as it was explained to me by you illustrious, beautiful people, mm. it's a BSJ build. Mm. He explained it to you guys. So I want to be clear, so the audience is clear. It's you get BSJ, an Octarine. Bear's secret juice. That, that's what it means. Go say again? Bear's secret juice, BSJ. That's, that's the build. They, Secret yeah. builds are not. Mm. I think it's the jelly, the royal jelly that was in Dota. We haven't explained it yet. It's Octarine, Aghanim Shard, and you're keeping permanent uptime on the Enrage because it stacks. It stacks the seconds. And then the Wind Waker is for what? What's the Wind Waker for? I don't know. You can also use it a lot with an Octarine. Low cooldown, so, so you're, you're pretty immune, much invulnerable. In, yeah, you, you need the mana because you want to be spamming mm. out the spells. You have this talent uh. that gives you... Uh, Furious five charges and also level 25 with uh, two charges on Earth Shock. So you want to get there. You also need Hand of Midas. I don't know if you mentioned that one to get and those Battle talents Fury. and uh. Battle Fury as well because you want to farm. And also maybe get in some Keeper of the Light here and there mm. to reduce the cooldown even more. So you're perma enraged. Try it in pubs and uh, let me know how it went. Okay, now if you can make a real point. She had a real point ready. Is he frowning over the builds you guys just presented? Effie, He's like, Effie, please. that doesn't sound Put this good. back on the rails. On Thank the rails. You. Uh, yeah, no, I, so I don't think the Ursa um, was the issue in any way. Like, sure, the lane versus Legion Commander wasn't good. But I think the problem was Shopify's ability to pick and choose their fights was incredibly limited. Mm. Like I mentioned before, it was very easy to read when they wanted to five men, right? It's around these rush timings, around when like the lanes aren't out. Oh, where are they? Oh, they have to use Ravage, right? So then there was a lot of pressure on Saberlight's shoulders to find the good Ravage, mm -hmm. but it's really, really difficult to do so when that's the only way you can win the fight. And we saw it in that one moment where he only clipped the Juggernaut and then Juggernaut just ran away. And then for the next two minutes, there was nothing that Shopify could do on the map. So I feel like, Potentially, this could be the issue with a mid Kunkka paired with something like a, a Tide Hunter. Is that maybe your playmaking potential outside of the laning stage and you know the first initial group up and taking towers just just isn't there? Maybe a little bit too one dimensional of a draft. Only one way to to really fight. And obviously, if we know what the one way is, Bet Boom knows as well, and they're going to try to avoid that, do their darkness to make sure that they take only fights that they can win, which they did, and they did win game number one. But what will happen in game number two? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
you're catching us in the middle of a series. It's Upper Bracket Semi-Finals, and we have got BBT versus Shopify Rebellion in the draft already. First couple of bands are out of the way. We don't care about those. Uh, do we care? No, we don't really care about those. First, uh, picks are in as well as we have Shopify on Dire side. We've got Baboom on the Radiant side. First pick goes the way of Shopify Rebellion. And um, uh, this is normal. It's the size in the pick, anyway. It's promising. Yeah. Getting the pango on Shopify for Ovid, that that changes like the issue that we were talking about last game with being dependent on a long cooldown from the offlane to take the fights does not exist when you have a pangolier. And not only has Ovid had excellent performances on this hero in Dream League, but this is not only one of the strongest heroes in the game, but you never have to worry about your ability to initiate from the mid lane. How does it make you pango. feel the first place? How does it make me feel? Yes. It makes me feel optim optimistic. Optimistic, Pogchamp Pandas. Uh, these picks make people feel optimistic. And that's not to say I'm favoring them. I hear optimistic, not to say I'm optimistic them. music. That's what we want to accompany. I, 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 I don't favor one team over the other. I would just like to see Shopify have, Push a, it to have, a, a, nice, have a nice tournament for a change. How about cautiously optimistic? Cautiously optimistic, yes. Ca okay, well, I think that they nailed it on the head. Be a then. little bit cautious here, Shiver, with what you're about to say. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. What do you feel, Lacoste? I'm feeling... Uh, I'm feeling this music. Nothing has to change. Uh, I'm uh, more focused it on the draft because... Uh, again, Dawnbreaker's banned out. Uh, at Boom, they are opening up with Phoenix. This is Toronto, Tokyo's kind of becoming special hero as well because... Uh, before, he had pretty limited hero pool. I mean, the whole squad did. Like, even if we go back to Riyadh Masters, they were one of the teams that had, like, the lowest hero pool, and they really expanded it, uh, mostly coming out from Pure on that position four, who played basically three, four heroes. Mm -hmm. But we're going to see... But we've seen him already at the Dream League playing uh, five, six heroes. That's two more than four. Absolutely. Uh, including Dazzle, of course. And that was a very strong performance where we saw the Dazzle offlane coming out from him. Well, very curious to see what uh, what will play this game round. Hmm. I I think Save is one of the best Willow players uh, in the world, and once you have a Phoenix, you can combo it with things like Willow. Well, that that Sky idea is right gone. Day. But generally, what Phoenix in the first phase opens up for your draft is the ability to combine with things on your team. Right? For example, you could have something like an Earthshaker protecting you. You could have something like a Willow terrorizing the egg. You also have the defensive ability to buff up a carry like Medusa. So, for as long as the first phase goes, I understand why Batboom want to experiment with this overall first Phoenix. Shopify still did not lose with Vengeful Spirit when they picked it. They do flex it between four and five. It's also a great way of just bursting heroes, not necessarily needing to use it mm -hmm. defensively. We've seen this as a great counter to Gyrocopter specifically, where he gets away from his team and then this burst damage comes out. Great to split up the combo if we're talking about Skyrat Mage. Yep. Uh, like first two heroes that come to my mind immediately. Again, Legion Commander, maybe Axe for Pure. These are two of his Two out of three, probably best heroes. So something with the low cooldown that can start a fight. Even Centaur comes to my mind. It was banned in the previous game. Yeah. But uh, again, Shopify Rebellion picking I, I, for the strong laning phase. I think Shopify lost one out of all games, like just like lost the laning stage one game so far in this tournament, which is pretty impressive. Their, their laning is excellent, but I, I do like the idea you mentioned of a Centaur and Axe or even the LC, just something that you can kind of have your Phoenix dive in, egg, maybe potentially bait a target to come yeah. hit it, one of the ones that you, that you don't want, and then you could follow up with this duel from the LC into the burst damage from Skyrath Mage. So, I mean, on paper, this is a very formulaic draft from Bed Boom. Yeah, it looks really good. I'm, I'm a little worried already for Shopify, because Enchantress, Vengeful Spirit, if you lose laning stage with these heroes, these heroes don't really scale well. They can't easily get the farm. And uh, we might, uh, you know, spice things up a little bit uh, because we're getting to the later stages of the draft. So give me some tense music now. Tense music? Tense music sounds cool. To be fair, though, I, I do not think these heroes are in danger of, of losing lane. Like, I think Beastmaster Enchantress is one of the tried and true combinations in Dota. Even if they're not on the same lane, they end up collapsing on the same lane at some point and just pushing for towers, pushing for... Um, dive pressure, maybe going through the gates, what have you. And Vengeful Spirit, it's very hard to see her lose lanes these days. So I, I'm not worried about Shopify's laning right now. 
I, I think they have a really nice draft going for them in terms of skirmishing. They're not depending on big cooldowns like they were in the last draft, right? Now they can just play on either Enchantress's push tumbo, Beastmaster's map control, and even the Pangolier's outside of his role, his swashbuckle, right? The Vengeful yeah. Spirit plus Pangolier do so much damage with the wave into the swashbuckle. I'm a little worried for their lockdown against this buck. Vengeful Spirit mm. stun is not reliable. Nader is rolling thunder. Beastmaster, he also would love someone else to go in. He can't just like rush in and uh, get the stun. This is also have in mind Beastmaster into Legion Commander. So you will have the spell mechanic. Uh, I feel like this is one of those games where Puck can go with zero deaths. Even if the if they lose the game, Puck can still pop off and uh, end up the game without even dying. Mm -hmm. This last pick for Shopify Rebellion, I feel like it also needs to provide them with some kind of a some kind of a stun, some kind of a silence, maybe just like itemization wise, because right now GPK can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. I mean you are right that the lockdown for Puck is a little bit scary. But I think that if Shopify play for an early timing, which it looks like they're looking to do yeah. with their Enchantress and Beastmaster, then they're not too concerned about catching the Puck. They just want to do their own thing, right? They do their own thing before Puck can get up to his shenanigans. Yeah, there's a one hero that you mentioned in the previous game, which I really like for this one. That's Luna, potentially, for Shopify. If they want to group up, have all these aura, Aura's Beastmaster, Vengeful Spirit, Enchantress with uh, like one item, and then Pango with his Diffusal Blade, I think they could potentially get away with that. I'm not a biggest fan of Luna. I'm just, you know, thinking that how they can try to fix this draft. Bang, can we get a can we get a drum roll please for the last pick here? They have to pick into Muerta. This pick might take two minutes. It might take two minutes, so <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> they have a lot of bonus time left, I'll say that. Uh, we did see a Muerta earlier this week on the side of uh, Shopify. It was amazing in the hands of Arteezy. They crushed with it. Yeah, I think Arteezy is actually one of the players who has a, a solid understanding of Muerta. Like, he always itemizes well, and he finds a way to make the hero look useful. Um, my only issue with Muerta is often her laning just backfires. Like, it just malfunctions. So all it takes is one rotation. <laughs> Sorry, Effie. I'm testing Yen, so I just want to see how good this is how good cardio is. Difficult hero to make work. I feel like Muerta has been buffed in terms of maybe support role, position four, there's been uh, a lot of pro players practicing it in pubs. But when it comes down to carry Muerta, like you also picked it into Legion Commander, which is a blade mail carrier. They still have the last pick. They didn't ban TB this time because Muerta works really well. There it is! Against it. Oh, oh you're so Ooh. lucky. You're so lucky they didn't go to the last 45 <laughs> seconds. So we got a PL, guys. Yeah. Um, just so follow up on Lacoste before you talk about the PL. I think the safety of this Muerta is the Ventral Spirit swap against the LC. I think Muerta gives you a lot in this draft, right? You have the Revenants to silence the Puck, a way to play into Puck early game. And then also you have a way to kill the Egg. She just ulties and she hits the Egg in fights. On the other hand though, there are ways to kill her. She can get coiled into Mystic Flared, dueled into Mystic Flared. Even Phoenix before, I mean, in the early stages of the game where he has a lot of magic damage can really F with Muerta. Yeah. You know? But it, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Also, like this defensive swap, I, I don't think it's going to be as effective because if you're swapping someone out of the coil, like the coil mm -hmm. still is going to snap, you're going to deal damage, you're going to be stunned, and then the rest of the team can potentially burst you. So I do like how they round up their draft on side of Shopify Rebellion, but still, again, giving at least 55, maybe even 60 in this one because this Ooh. is Nightfall PL we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He's one of the better PL players out there if someone can make it work that's definitely him pure he's already you know he played legion commander in the previous game and gonna play it again i think it's another great this game might be even better lc game than the previous one i will bat for shopify because even though it is a good pl game as he scales i think shopify have a lot of map control They've got the Beastmaster and the Enchantress and the Pango, who's going to have a solid lane versus Puck and then rotate on the PL over and over. I mean, if they accomplish what they seek to do, which is end before 40 minutes, which in mean, their laning on Shopify has been quite good. I'm, I'm not too yeah, concerned that's, about that's them not true. being able to play the map. Then they should have it. All right, well, one thing is clear. I think we're going to have an exciting game on our hand for some extra excitement for the game. We're going to the Puck Japan.
Let's see, ladies and gentlemen, if Shopify Rebellion can strike back in this game too, or if Bet Boom's going to be able to walk home with the 2 0. Fogged already with this draft. I'm seeing straight up they get this puck for GPK. A little worried if they're going to be able to lock it down on the side of Shopify Rebellion. And then there's also a PL at the end. Two yep. slippery heroes. Do Shopify have enough to, to lock them down? We'll have to see. I think lanes are going to be really important. I think Shopify has to have an advantage coming out of these lanes in order to put pressure on it. And I think if the game slows down too much, I completely agree with what FB is saying. I think this like 35 to 40 minutes is likely, unless Shopify is like some tremendous lead or something like that, that's when they probably want to look to be closing it out. Because, yeah, the lack of catch could be a problem. And they did pick four heroes kind of in a way to shut down this Pango. And the Pango, I feel like, is the one who can actually address in a way versus that PL and stuff. So, yeah. Legion, Sky, oh, Phoenix, Puck nice. could cause some problems for Sounds Odd Bay, but let's see no what goes games. down. Yeah, for sure. Because one thing we know, and we saw it in the start of game one, the early game for Shopify Rebellion, they're pretty yep. good at that bit, Fogged. Yep. And they need, and that's what they need to have happen here. Because they do have, they also mentioned, you know, it's strong group up. If they get this Beastmaster up to a good start so he can get his helm, they play with the Enchantress creep, they're just kind of grouped up and they're just bringing that pressure. But I do have concerns, I gotta be honest. Like, the egg hitting definitely looks a little lackluster. It's really just the Muerta and I guess the Beastmaster aura that's gonna help to hit a little bit. But that means you're putting your yourself in a position right inside of that egg, so. Yeah. I mean, how do you yourself rank Moeta right now as a carry. I think we always say we're not the biggest fans, right? I don't know if you're still on board with that, but we well, got I, some buffs since that, right? It did. The the, uh, the revenant overall is much better. You get yeah. that additional revenant, and the duration gets refreshed if you get a kill inside of it. So I guess they were trying to they were trying to find an extra control for the puck that was actually a carry also. Because if you looked at their draft beside that, it was like, uh oh, this puck can definitely run rampant. This could potentially get them that catch. So we'll see if it works. Crit should be fine here. Toronto Tokyo not wanting to, to try and make a play there with a blood grenade. Mm -hmm. Respecting the fact that Crit's still out of fair fire. And we have to, of course, talk about, like you said, besides just you know the elusive heroes, all that, Nightfall. This is a specialty PL. You know, people can always remember Epileptic Kid when he used to have that name. This was the one that people were just terrified. You did not give this man PL. Bottom lane. Did you say there's much kill potential for Shopify Rebellion? Or, or unlikely? Unlikely. Top Tokyo, player. if he misplays, probably, but Cure. They're, they're, they're gonna, gonna get him. You Nicely see. done there. Nice. Shopify able to secure that first blood. Into Both. the hands of Arteezy. Both times. Same thing last game. They hit level two first, they get the aggressive move. It happens again. Pure, still only Need level one. Can't actually protect himself right away. I think, I think I've seen Fly and Arteezy win most of these lanes. Although last game we did see, it was kind of a bit of both. You know, they started really good, but then Arteezy got killed a couple times and ended up really swinging fast, but... Fly? Good fit there from Arteezy, but not enough. Not enough. Not enough to say Fly. Kill and return here for Boom. Bit too much burst. Yeah, let's uh, let's see bottom. Because may maybe they do, you know, maybe they do have some type of kill threat onto Toronto Tokyo if he's not careful. Because you're extremely low armor, and versus that Venge, you're going to be put negative. So maybe if he does, you know, play a little bit too over aggressive with the Icarus dive. Not while I yeah, Sableite trading nicely here, holding the, the wave as he wishes. Okay, a fair bit of nice. 10 and 4 right now. Nightfall still CSing fine though, 11 1. Lotus. Looks like Tokyo is going to be able to snatch that one away. So far, Link's looking pretty decent. More to getting that free farm. Pure definitely getting slowed down. And not only just getting slowed down, but keeping him. I mean, Pure might just die again. Be close. Kind of blocked by the creeps as well. Yeah. That managed to step back. But indeed, not a great, great spot for Pure to be. And he's still got a couple of tangos. Yep. This actually is faring to be much tougher lane for him than it was last time. Constant harassment coming out from the two ranged heroes. Definitely a problem. They're really getting aggressive on the spot. Oh, wow. Shopper fight. They hit the level threes. They want to go in on them. Getting both. Yep. Both of them push right back under the tower. Toronto, Tokyo, very low. They're zoning uh, Nightfall off with this creep wave pretty nicely here. Off the mark with the axes that time, Saber Live. But still, the boars bringing Toronto, Tokyo down. Still, to, to a very dangerous point in terms of regen on this bottom lane. 
I need the stick charges for Toronto. Now, South just come out. Yeah, he's just got it he was delivered. Bad. South and Tango's ready. Yeah, Nightfall. Oh, he actually, I mean, he did miss quite a bit under that tower there, but still up to 20 and 1. But he, that was good, good, good aggression there coming out from the side of Shopify to slow him down. Now, mid lane continues to be pretty much dead even. Yep. That's the least fun lane, I think, to watch right now. It's constantly trading back and forth. Top and fly, he does have the camp open now. Level 2 enchants online, and he's got a centaur creep. So it should continue to be pretty dominant up here, in particular for Shopify. So, so far, things looking good. Yeah. Proving very difficult for Bet Boon to really harass the Artesia at all now in the lane. Yeah. And overall, not really able. Their lane bottom isn't really about trying to push Saberlight out by any means. It's a Phoenix and a PL, not really the most aggressive. So, Saberlight. Should have good timings on his helm. And crit's already starting to get stacks started. The beauty of Venge. Don't even need vision or anything like that to get those stacks going. Yeah, Pure. Hopefully having a tough time. Now, Fly is able to let me get quite aggressive here. Might be able to set something up. He's got to slow. Arteezy wants to join with this. So they can go for save. He'll get the silence out. He gets one. He might just get the two of them. I mean, Pure's got stick charges. Quite a bit of prox, now, but... Arteezy's just able to kite this out. They're going to be able to take both of them down here, surely. He's trying to hide, but Fly Ooh. finishes him off as this top lane, Arteezy and Fly, continue to crush it. Damn, the, I mean, the calling. The, this buff is pretty crazy. <laughs> the additional revenant and everything, too. Pure walks in. He's like, oh my god, I'm actually taking an absurd amount of damage. Yeah, so far, this Muerta, they said it, right? The, the, they've been the ones who has been making it look good, and Arteezy's been playing is. it quite a lot in the pubs, so... So far, looking hot. 37 10 to only 18 onto Pure right now. And I mean, they might get another kill out of this. Oh, Pure's yeah. come back to the lane, but Shopify bailing. They have three heroes in the neighborhood. Oh, Pure's getting baited. Ah, he's looking pretty dead. As more gold and glory here for the safe lane of Shopify Rebellion. Beautiful move. Love this rotation. I mean, Pure's just getting completely shut down this game. He's got to walk He was up. popping off last game in, in game one, but it's going to take a lot for him to get back to anywhere close to, to sort of the momentum he had here in game two. Uh, he's going to have to walk all the way back up there. Only level three. Level five already finished up on Tartizi. This, uh, this is as rough as it gets as a, as a start for a Legion commander. Absolutely. And they're even considering looking for more. I mean, they're setting themselves up even for the Wisdom Rune. Crit's still in the area here. Heavy rotations coming in from the side of Bedboom. Three heroes now. I have a crit. I mean, is he going to be able to steal this one? I mean, they don't have a stun. Let's see what crit can do. No, it looks like he's scared. Yeah, he's a bit scared. Doesn't want to stand his ground against those two, so Bedboom will secure the wisdom for themselves. Ah, uh, but he doesn't have TP. So. What will oh, they find? The, the Dukes? Whoop. Now nope. oh, they see him. Now make them, make them fight for it. Yeah. It's pretty beefy. I was on his own against the two of them, but uh, indeed, there's no way out for Crit. No. And now Crit's probably like, man, maybe I should have just risked going for that Wisdom Rune, perhaps, but tough call to make. Pure top. Can they get the connection? The stun. And the fear. Oh, nice easy. Perfect angle. Got some stick charges, but these body blocks from Fly, these two continue wow. to play it perfect here. That was beautiful from Fly. I don't know how you got, you got kept in the Revenant duration pretty much the entirety of it from that. Level 6 on Arteezy, 2k lead overall for Shopify Rebellion. We saw last game, even though it was close at the start, out of all the cores, Arteezy, he was behind. This time Absolutely. round, Arteezy, he's already on top. Yeah, this is, again, you know, their early game, their laning phase. They needed it to be successful. So far, it's looking hot. And they're already getting a bit aggressive. I see Fly, he's walking in looking if there's any stacks. Already level 5 on the support. I'm trying to see if they can maybe get something going around mid around these 8-minute power runes, but of course not the... Not the easiest for them to catch a puck. Definitely one of the downsides of Shopify Rebellion's draft. Sieging, though. Definitely one of the positives of their draft. They already have this Dark Troll Summoner fly. Might be able to get a little bit of tower damage here. And with this Beastmaster having such a good time, like these supports are just running around whatever they want. And Saberlight, he actually has his helm already finished up. So, yeah, incredible timings at the moment for Shopify. But Puck, still free farming. So is Nightfall. It's Pure, really, the one who's suffering the most. How much can they start putting to apply pressure onto these towers, though? Shopify. Can they catch Nightfall? I mean, the rest of Bet Boom. Mark them around for the start. They get a good opening with the Magic Missile. Should be able to find the follow-up with the Rolling Thunder as Arbet in on top of Nightfall. Roars there. 
And with the squash buckle, they'll take the kill. Dreamcore's gonna get laid down. Only catches onto Sableye. Do they have the damage? I think Sableye's fine. They can turn for more Shopify. They'll get the stun onto Toronto Tokyo. They'll take out a second. And they'll another. probably get save as well. In with the squash buckle. Shield crash as well. It's the third hero dead on Bet Boom. GPK tries to turn up to bring Sableye down, but Sableye, he's perfectly fine. GPK's got to attempt to get out of here. He'll have the orb up in a second. They got ways to chase this. They should if Arbed hits the spell. He's yeah, gonna be able to pick dead. up another, and he will. Triple kill for Arbed. Shop of Fire Rebellion. There, they're completely slamming Bet Boom here. Bet Boom here in this early game. I mean, pre-10 minutes, 4K lead, 9 to 2. Doesn't get much better than this for Shopify's early game. No, every move is hitting. Perfect rotation coming down from them again. And Tower looks like it's gonna probably go down here as well too. Sableye still has the Helm Creep, and that was quite a lot committed too. Bet Boom, that was their coil. Yep, they brought GPK down there. Yep, and they're not able to find anything. In fact, they just lose everything here. Toronto. You won't want to dance around with them too much either. Jeez. And well, I bet he's the one who got all the kills too, right? He almost triple. has the. I mean, he's 800 off defusal with Arcane Boot Corrosion. The timing's going to be really, really quick on this. And yeah, Tower's going to start falling very fast. Even the mid tower, I believe, during that whole exchange. Fly took the mid tower. It's going to be so difficult for Bet Boom to fight into yeah. Shopify right now. They've got to sort of reset and avoid fights in a way. Unlike that they were doing in game one, you know, game one they had the tools, they had the potential to fight back. This time around, with the lead that Shopify have, it, it's almost impossible for Bet Boom to fight back. Yeah, they're gonna have to split map a little bit and just go for these catches, especially when I mean they're gonna have to wait for these supports to hit six. Still level five on Skyrest, still level five on Phoenix. Everybody level six on the side of Shopify so far. They need this burst damage in particular from Save to go for any kills. It feels like now. I mean, Shopify's just running at them, fly charging in. Very nice. Not place. really a lot that he can. He has to be scared of uh, at this point of the game. And yeah, that's that is pretty. Yeah, defuse on 140. That is, it's very very early to have this. They can look to just snowball off of this playing around Abed. Keep looking to pressure these early towers. And Arteezy's just got all the freedom in the world. Wondering if he was gonna. I think a couple of the games I saw in his pubs, he did go for the Midas no, no, anyway yes. on the Muerta, but he's just going for the. I my opinion, I, I like this build better. You know I hate Midas so. I like seeing him going for this Maelstrom Dragonlance. That boom's gonna have to slow things down, but Shopify, they're not gonna they're not gonna slow down by any means. Defusal, as we said, done. Crit level six too. A save in a bit of a dangerous spot. And an attempt to pick up some action top Deleted. and he'll, he'll get more than he bargained for there, Arbed. That's making quick work of the Skyrath Mage for that defusal pickup. And he got blessed, of course, with the Lance of Pursuit as well, too. So yeah, Abed. Cruising, and he's gonna get the power rune top as well. DD spawns right in front of him. Could not ask for a better start here for Shopify. But can they turn it into a windfog? Something that has been difficult for them in these playoff stages of tournaments. Definitely has. Definitely set up for success in this one, though. As long as they can keep applying this pressure, don't give up too many of these kills to some sneaky little blade mill action or anything from Pure. So they're definitely looking real good for them right now. That boom's gonna need more time. They do now have timings though. So PGPK has Witchblade, big amount of damage increased there, and they have the Phoenix Six and the Sky Six. So might see them smoke up, start looking for some type of movement here on the side of that boom. Uh, the group up for the top tower, uh, Shopify. Radiance top tower is under and Shopify as well, definitely a lineup that could consider a Roshan. Uh, decent timing. Yeah, Radiance with the Venge, with the Pango. Yeah. Beastmaster, quite easy for them to do so, and here we go. That smoke's coming out. And they got to find something with this bet boom. They saw four heroes top, so they want to look bottom because they expect this hero down here to be alone. And will they catch Saberlight? They've got the scan on him. They'll happily take a Beastmaster kill if they can get the catch. He knows. Seems to know it's up, but he's still going to get back in. Should be an easy one. There's no hesitation to drop down all the ultimates for that. Hey, they're going to take a stack with it, so... Sure, why not there from Toronto? Bet boom, you can... I mean, that indicates quite a lot there that they're just like, okay, we're quite far behind. We have to get any kill that we can at the moment to get space for Nightfall. Uh, Shopify, maybe see if they can try their luck at getting a kill themselves. They had eyes on Pure. Pure's already away from the wave top. Maybe they have eyes on this Wisdom Rune as well, too. Flying crit still lingering in the area. Yeah, you see, Bat Boom's actually pinging the other side. They're like, uh, guys, I might not be able to get this one on the left I mean, side. Yeah, Fly could just walk in for this, and I, I don't know if Pure can afford to try and stand his ground against these two. He's indeed got to stay hidden and, and just let Shopify take this. He's got to be careful how far he shows himself. He's going to get it. 
Swap back on the pure. Magic Mistel Rolling Thunder to follow up. They'll get the kill. Damn. I bet five and zero. Flawless performance so far. And they get both wisdom runes, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Clean stuff. Nightfall, farming to recover. Aghanims is online. Puck still farming to recover, yep. but Arteezy getting all the freedom, and this pa yeah, this Pango is just absolutely enabled to have great success so far. Toronto Toki as well, also farming to recover. Going the Midas, Midas. Okay. It's going to be the way out of this game for Bet Boom. If they can hold, if they can turn it, if they can get to a point where Shopify trip up. That is what they're looking for, right? They're looking to go for that later stage with mm -hmm. this PL pick, but say, I mean, Shopify definitely seems like they're set up to be able to keep that I pressure mean, you, going. I certainly think so with the lead they you have right so, now. You think so, yeah. <laughs> and as you say, with the success they've been having around Arteezy's Moeta. This is true. In some of the other games, he, he's going to hit yeah, timings that he can't complain about. Yep. This is as good as it gets for how quickly he's going to have this Mjolnir. Dragonlance online uh, at a point where he could definitely join the team, look to force these objectives, and with that sort of build-up, there's no way that Nightfall wants to turn up no. to a team fight. No, he'll just get shredded from yep. the Pango and the Moeta for sure. Yeah, fast moves, 7k lead, just keeping that pressure up on the map, and Batboom, you can see they have no interest in really taking full fights or anything. They probably want to look for some more pickoffs soon, but not the easiest to do so with the way that Shopify's been setting up. And yep, now nope, looks like they might head toward top. This could be soon a call for that Roche. I, I think, think when the helm's done. I think but they wait for a stabilized helm. Okay. But maybe they do set up for it already. I would imagine, though, with Batboom's position, they might try and chance a team fight around the Roche with their ultimates. Or you think they won't? It's definitely risky versus the Pango. They need to get a clean initiation, but... I mean, they're smoking up now, Bet Boom, but uh, yeah, they, they've hit it with the scan. They, yeah. They're going to know that this is going on. The question is if they want to try and do something about it. Yeah, Helm is on its way. They don't even need Arteezy here to bring this down. And yeah, it, do, it doesn't look like they're going to make any efforts to no. go across Bet Boom. They, they hit the scan, they know they're in there, but uh, I have a feeling that at this point, they can't afford to take that sort of risk to bring the fight over to the Dyer's top half. No, not quite having those fighting items. I mean, Pure is, pure is zero and five. He's got phase blade mill. No real form of initiation tool. It'd be kind of them setting themselves up to disaster to walk into this lineup right now from Shopify with this lead. And Sabre, like, quickly setting up for he bottom. He wants to start something off maybe down there. Yeah. See if the rest of Shopify join him. Tier one will be taken by Bebu. They're looking to get a catch bottom. Two supports continue to play around GPK. I mean, they're coming through the portal as well here through the Twin Gates. Oh, yeah. Shopify looking. with the wraparound. Dyer's the numbers are in side. the area here for Bet Boom, though. They, they do have are. the Legion kind of close, too. Pango looks like Abed's going to start running over to connect. Right, now they'll have, they'll have the potential for the 4v4. Eyes onto GPK. Rolling Thunder, hello. And indeed, Abed coming in from the perfect angle, waiting for GPK up on the high ground. <laughs> he wasn't ready for that one, GPK. That was sick. Just it just collapsed in upon them from all the, all angles. No way out there for the puck. Yeah, GPK did it did it the right way too, right? Like he did the orb phase as soon as he saw them in the direction opposite. But boom, yep, everyone just there. Shopify covering their bases this time, and this is I mean last game, 20 minutes, right? 5k lead was there for Shopify, but this game they do have better ways to they force objectives. And they have got that little bit more of a lead. Yeah, and the, yeah, as you said, they've they've got ways to push. Mm -hmm. Catch yep. here. Trying for the walk-in dual attempt onto Sabrelight. Uh, Sabrelight's out. That's absolutely not what I expected. I mean, the rest of Shopify are around as well if, if Beppoom do try and push this effort, but you know, after sort of the, the failed attempt to start the fight, they won't throw anything more into that Beppoom. No. Pure is about to have Blink, though, so next time that can be a catch, so we'll have to see is Crick going to be in position every one of these times to get these swaps off versus these dual plus Skyrath Mystic Flares. Good D wards. Shopify. I mean, they want to fight with this Aegis. They have a haste rune and a shield rune on Abed, too. Aegis with all the ice essentially got like three lives. Save. It's going to go down very, very quickly for Shrum. I and mean, GPK is going to try and jump in and out. But Save's already gone. The Dream Calls dropped down on the two of them. Can he quite fuck? Finish off this Venge, because I don't nope. think he can. Crit's fine. GPK has to back off. Nothing to be found with the Dream Coil. And now Tier 2 bottom is in jeopardy. Courier will get killed from that glyph there. 
But in tonight, Shaman, they can get this push going. Yeah, and they're getting all this done with just the four of them, of course. Pretty much the entirety of this game, RTZ, he's just been hitting the creeps because he's not needed to be involved quite yet. I like it. I love it. Honestly, he doesn't need to go down there. He does so much pressure anyway. But now, RTZ, Ooh, he's been caught. The blade mail isn't it? Oh, oh my win. god. He's a little too strong for Pure to take on, and that's going to be some free bonus damage there for RTZ. Easy plus 18. He got the ult off just before that duel comes out to enough damage. All the little things come into play too. The Grove Bow Spell Lamp, probably the thing that she's enough Check in. Check this out again in deep there it is. <laughs> Milliseconds before there, popping the Pierce the Veil as you say. Wait, the, I think the Raindrop actually saved him, right? The initial Raindrop blocking the damage too. Okay, I mean, all the little things. There we go, frustration for one, but smiles for the other. Whew. Oh, Cheesy gets involved. <laughs> 9k lead. I believe, is this a full Manta coming out for the Pango? Yes, a full Manta, no, casual Ogre Axe. Okay. Now we have this. Oh. Yell of excitement coming out from Saber Lane. Okay. <laughs> It happens. Well, sometimes you just want to let it out. Yeah. It's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just sticking as this four-man unit, and it's working. Uh, they're keeping the lane pressure going, too. Or Tarteezy continues to free farm, and they are constricting a lot of farm from Bet Boom. Nightfall is getting a bit, but he's not able to even catch up to Arteezy so far here. And Abed did get blessed. Always want to talk tier two. He got the neutral that you want to get on a pango, of course. He got the orb of destruction. They're gonna try again. Pure. He wants round two against Arteezy. He needs that plus one, so save is in the area with him. Looks like they're gonna to try to claim this wisdom. Maybe hope that they can get someone else. Can these four also take the tormentor? It's a bit risky. Radiant oh, it's definitely risky now with these TPs coming in. Abed this here. It's risky. Well, oh, catch him with the swashbuckle. Pure is gonna put the blade mail. considering. Maybe he's trying to turn around with the ultimate, but he gets caught by the Rolling Thunder before he can make that decision, and Pure, he's out. Manta caught him off guard, perhaps, there. Removes that silence. And there's still prying pressure top, even with just two heroes. And of course, Pure, he did, he did manage to get the wisdom, at least. Okay. Fly, can he actually also get away? Ah, uh, they're committing the coil. Dream call on some right. It's pretty beefy. Not beefy enough. No. Bet boom. They'll find a little bit of action. Not getting a lot of kills this game. That's only the fourth one so far for them 21 minutes in. It's a little bit of something. A little bit. We'll give the money as well for uh, yeah, Toronto Stoko to get the GM out. So they can now start trying to just take back a little bit of control of this map. Yeah, I was actually checking. I knew that they had a gem on the side of Shopify. I thought it was Fly actually who had it, but Crit, he's the one hanging on to it for the time being, so. But yeah, important. Whenever you're playing like this at a deficit, getting this gem, it can be a saving grace just to control the vision. 11k. Keeping it up here, Shopify. And next itemization for Saberlight, he pretty much has the pipe finished. So okay. versus the Phoenix, the Sky, the Puck, gonna yep. be very effective when they group up around this. And Arteezy's build's looking nice and safe. He has a oh, yeah. sphere completed now. He just goes for the BKB next. And at that point, it's probably gonna be ready to try and close it up. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen a couple of times even people purchase the shard relatively early on this hero when you're playing versus these blade mills and stuff like that. Maybe you could see him do it, but I don't think he feels like he needs to. No more duel that he really has to worry about for for a very long time, because Pure, he's so shut down this game that he's nowhere near the realms of having any type of cancel. Yeah, zero damage. It's zero got kills. It's zero got damage. Got very different story to his game one Legion, which oh, was yeah. uh, absolutely popping off this time round. It's been well and truly punished. Just seems that Shopify, they knew the exact lane setup they wanted to throw at this Legion commander, and it has worked brilliantly. Pure just completely shut down this game. I mean, Fly has, honestly, every time I watch Fly plays Enchantress, I, it, it comes back to me and I'm just like, damn, why don't people play more Enchantress? It's like when Celery plays it too. Sometimes they're just able to secure these lanes so well. Honestly, between him and Arteezy, it was quite flawless. And this, uh, for this game, I would say like the Legion with the Sky, in theory, has the easier ways of going for kill combos, but it just because of how poorly that wait lane went, it's just non-existent. And now at this point, everybody's got like a Dispel or a way to protect themselves versus the combo. But Nightfall, trickling back in. Still 
A decent gap there between him and Arteezy. And Arteezy having the tools to deal with a PL. And they have the and they have the Pango as well too, right? So they do have multiple different forms of dealing with this PL as the game progresses. No eggs built though. That's the one thing on Abed. He's gone for more of protecting himself rather than going for killing PL and stuff like that. So. Uh, Shopify. Despite the lead though, they're slowing things down again. I can only imagine because they want to go for that next round of Roshan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that would be sort of the dream situation for them. They can get the Aegis and then also have the BKB completed on Muerta the next fight. Yeah, definitely some big timings that they'll be hitting. Toronto, Tokyo, I mean, his Midas definitely has merits. It's starting to pay off a bit here. Almost level 12, so level 2 egg. He's actually matching the farm of Fly. But we'll see if that egg is actually able to survive versus this Muerta. Another 2-2. We're going to be a minute and a half on Roshan. They're playing so careful. I, they're just, they're really, both teams kind of just playing around their carry. And now at this point, Arteezy even having his buddies with him. Yeah, Boom, yeah, just, just trying to buy this time, trying to get to these later and later stages. Let's see if Nightfall can carry this. It's going to be a tough one for him, but he is getting that farm going. And they do always have ways, you know, they, the one thing it does come back to until, I've been clicking around looking to see if anyone's building Hex or anything, I didn't see it except for Fly. They can't cut waves, right? That is one thing that can be a bit of a nuisance. This PL, this Puck, they can't play behind the lanes to cut for a while to prevent some push, but Shopify gets one or two catches, they push buildings very quick. Yeah, they do. Uh, this is going to be the third and final Tier 2 tower. But, uh, they'll be able to take away from Bet Boom here, 25 minutes in. Yeah, it's just Fly and an Alpha Wolf pretty much killing that Tier 2. They might poke high ground. I yep. think they will. They feel strong. They can go for this and just see, see what Bet Boom do. I mean, and the Bet Boom bring back the whole squad. Does Nightfall stay out on the map still? And we have to watch for the swap plays. That's the big thing about the Venge with the Muerta. If you swap this puck, it gets instantly silenced. That could just be an instant kill. So those initiations could come out here from Crit. Uh, they can keep poking at this. They know that Bet Boom, do, they don't want to bring all five heroes back for a defense right now. And in the meanwhile, uh, Saberlight, or sorry, Fly actually has a creep inside the pit. So they'll know immediately when that Roche does spawn. And it does at this exact moment they ping it. Let's yep. see if they want to back up for it. Could, could go for maybe sort of one more round of the push just to really increase the chance of the Bet Boom of return to their base. Looks like they're happy with the state of the lane as it is. So off the Roshan they go. Do Bet Boom do anything about this? I, I don't know if they do, right, Fog? I, I mean, don't they just got to so. sit back and wait and just hope that Nightfall's able to hit all the creeps that he can. Mm -hmm. It's also going to die so damn fast versus this with this Muertus farm. He wasn't even there last time and it died fast. Now let's watch how quick it is going to be. Yeah, I mean, he's massive. Doesn't need to pop. I mean, if he wants to, if he popped the ult, it dies in like yeah, four or five seconds or something like that. But either way, it's dead in, in no time. That will be an Aegis Cheese, another set of protection, and now it is Arteezy who's going to be able to grab that Aegis. Yeah, this high ground defense is not going to be easy for Bet Boom. Chopper fight in a fantastic position, a position they've been able to maintain this whole 27 minutes so far. Mm -hmm. Seen them sometimes struggle getting into the mid game, but this, this time round, Chopper fight, so far, so good. Looking hot. Just don't overextend too far on these pushes here. That's where you can start to, you know, really suffer versus these constant land spams and stuff like that. But so far, yeah. They're going to try and catch them outside of the base, but it looks a bit bad boom. Oh, okay. They're smoking up along the mid lane. Nightfall, the only one to reveal on the high ground. It looks like Shopify are kind Indeed. of aware that Bepu might try and come in from this other angle. Saberlight definitely seems aware. He's parking himself yeah. in front. He knows what they're trying to do. He's going to get vision on save. Now they're going to jump Saberlight. In with the duel, they'll get him. So whether he knew that they were doing this or not, he's he's going to lose his life for his attempt at trying to get that information for the team. Saberlight down. That's a big kill. Nightfall starting to feel confident to peek up a little bit here, throw some lances. RTZ does force the glyph. GPK. Start toying around with him and be able to pop the Lincolns. They get the Dream Core down. 
And Arteez, he'll just put the BKB in the pierce. The, the egg. It's going to be the super over out, but Arteez, he's able to focus it. Crit is dying on the back lines to Pure. Arteez, he is very, very low, but he's Night standing his down, down, bringing Abby up. Pure's going to be able to walk up to the high ground. That is the age just gone on Arteez. Arbet, he's diving in. Swashbuckle's off the mark. He missed his Pure, not able to kill the Legion. Dive forward, and now he's caught by the Ancient Steel. Arbet, he has to cheese there. Back up to full HP. And they got Nightfall. Nightfall does not have the luxury of buyback. But boom, they did use the two support buybacks themselves. Toronto, Tokyo, and Save coming back into the action. They still lose the tier three. Nightfall died in seconds. I, I honestly, like, I think three seconds or something. I saw him get hit by a swashbuckle, plus a couple hits, I think, from the Muerta, and just deleted. Unable to keep himself alive. TPK tried to deny the egg. Did you see that? <laughs> he went for this little cheeky hit on it, but wasn't able to get it. And the push, Shopify, they can keep going. They'll, they'll be happy with back. that one. Yep. A couple of casualties on the side. They lose the Aegis, but they take the tier three, and they get a fair bit forced out from Bad Boom. RTZ not able to, to be focused, because during this BKB and Pistol Veil combo, turns towards the egg. Easily able to bring it down, and Pure will put the blade mail, but RTZ doesn't care. Happy to get the damage in and lose the Aegis in that instance. And our bed. They throw so much onto him after that dive, but ready with the cheese, he can walk this off. Great team plays, 14k lead. They're looking to get this Rax. Bat boom. No egg available at the moment. 20 seconds. The Rax is claimed. They're happy. Aghanim is fully delivered onto Saberlight now, too. And I believe a full Aghanim is onto Abed. So Nightfall, we saw him kind of get the lead in that last fight. <laughs> it feels like it's actually just getting harder and harder for him. So it's from Pure and Safe. They were seeing if someone TP back for the tier yeah. 2 mid on their own, see if they could get a quick catch, but it's not going to be the case. And Toronto Tokyo steps outside of the base. That's him out for 70 seconds. The power of Avenge. They've got this wave pushing it up top. Are they just going to look to connect toward the mid lane with it? <laughs> Looks like so. I mean, there's no real reason for them to back down here, Shopify. They've got such the lead and such the siege, po siege potential that they can take these buildings down. GPK's going to try and jump in and toy with the back lines. A four versus five here on the defense. The tier three's gone. Saberlight just having his army here pummeling into the barracks. It's not. I mean, range racks are dropping quick. I've got to do something soon. If they don't want to let the second racks go down, jump forward again from GPK. Shopify, they're being careful, but they're still pretty much full HP here. They've taken out the range racks. And the melee racks, Focused down by Arteezy. It's going to be a second set of racks here secured by Shopify. They're just full HP. Just rallied around these auras. It looks like they might just continue. I don't blame them. I mean, they've, they've got mega creeps on the mind. Mm -hmm. As everything really has been going to plan for Shopify in this game, too. This is yeah, this, the sort of way you ex expect to see them be able to play out the games when they have the sort of leads that they've, they've had in the past from their laning stage. Absolutely. And this time, they've turned it fantastically into, into the mid-game and into taking these barracks, taking these objectives, and just holding the game in a state where, bet boom, they have no answers. No. And even though like they did pick quite a lot of heroes in order to try to address this pango, Abed is 8-0. So... And yeah, they haven't managed to kill him? No. Uh, and sort of these elusive heroes from Bet Boom, it, it just hasn't mattered. Nope. You know, Shopify, they've just been hitting buildings, <laughs> pushing objectives. They don't really care that they don't catch the Puck or the PL that easily at all. I mean, as we've seen, you know, Nightfall, it's, the, the game's too fast. He's not been able to really get involved in this, the action at all. Yeah, I like that they're just playing, they're playing their own style. They're not playing to react to what Bet Boom's trying to do or anything. They're just like, we've got this push lineup, we've got this group up, and the whole, pretty much the entirety of the game, you know, RTZ, since mm -hmm. the start, had freedom, and they just moved around and took pretty much all the objectives. Yeah, he's got his next start and done now as well, Arteezy. I think, what's that, the full silver edge? Yeah, I believe so, Full silver so, yeah. edge coming out. So pretty much, uh, pretty much six slotted here, close to making Muay to look very, very good. Definitely something that uh, teams are, are going to have to have on their mind when they're going up against Shopify in future games. Yeah, honestly, it, with the with all the little buffs and everything, if you're able to have a good laning phase, this hero he has merit. Yeah, he's looking incredibly hard to deal with at this point. RTZ 6k ahead of that, of the farmer Nightfall. Good God. And they're going for the base again. I mean, they, Bad Boom, I, they've got to get back. The Raxes. If they want to stop these Mega Creeps from coming out. I mean, they're, they're just going to have to go. I mean, they're going to try. They're in with the Instant jump, but the swap. swap's there. As Pure is going to be dragged towards his death outside of the base. RTZ perfectly fine. That was the Supernova as well. They're ready to dive in and clean this one up, Shopify. GG. As they go in, GG is called Shopify.
That's the kind of games, that's the kind of performance they need to be bringing out in these upper brackets, Fog. Flawless victory. That was very, very nicely done. A nice tip there from Sable to Artiz. He definitely deserved that top lane. Pure never got to play. He literally was not really a hero in this game. Two and eight on the Legion. Did he even, I think, did he even end up with a successful duel? I don't even remember. But either way, Shopify, super clean. No mistakes, no overextensions really whatsoever. And Abed, 10, 0, and 6. And that was what, with the first pick, Pango? First pick, Pango. Right, I mean, Pango. Something that already you see that get through the draft, you're like, oh, they, they got their Pango. They, I mean, any to get the Pango is always a worry. But Bet Boom, they did, yeah. They threw a lot of heroes in that could have had answers, but they didn't. They just did not. Abed no, having a completely free game. Him and Arteezy, both of them not dying at all in this one. As I say, this is, this is the Shopify that the fans have been waiting to see in the playoff stages of a tournament in this upper bracket. This game, too, looked fantastic. Can they do it a second time, though, or a Bet Boom able to bring back that magic of game one as the series, this best of three, now stands one to one between Shopify Rebellion and Bet Boom? Tie in our upper bracket semifinals. That is what we like to see, and in great fashion here for Shopify. They uh, they smashed it out of the park with this one. I'm joined by Jenkins, Effie, and Lacoste, and we're going to break down the game and tell you exactly why and how Shopify was able to have such a flawless performance, Lacoste, because I could probably call this flawless. The rotations early on, I mean, they start right here. They did not give Bad Boom an inch. Absolutely. I mean, every single time Shopify plays in this Dream League, they just win the laning stage, period. Uh, I think the top lane was the biggest one, completely shutting down Pure. Uh, it was Fly who had some really great micro. Like, if you think about these two heroes, there's not much, like, synergy between Enchantress and Muerta, but he did some really nice body blocks inside the Revenants and then also the slow and also the stun from a Centaur two times. So just the overall, like, maybe, maybe they underestimated the lane, how much damage these two heroes can output early on and shutting down pure means that you're not gonna have like these this playmaking LC that was in game number one. Yeah, yeah, he didn't he, he, How much damage did he end up with? Did we know uh, that? Like 30 minutes in, they had uh, zero. I know, oh. I know that they went for like, 21 minute rune, try to steal XP rune mm -hmm. and also try to get some like dual damage. Uh, didn't happen. They they got surprised by this uh, Manta style, Illusion rune, also bottled up uh, by Pango. Uh, let me just check if I can find if he had any dual damage because he gave 18 damage to Muerta as well. So not the best LC performance, even though this is one of his better heroes. Uh, both Pango, both Abed and Muertizi, they did not die a single time this game. No, I think this was a good performance. That was just very yeah. textbook by Shopify. I think their draft was excellent. Um, I was concerned that there would be maybe some disciplinary issues where they throw away their lead at some point, maybe misplan an Aegis, but everything went well, right? They collapsed around their Beastmaster. They completely crushed that bottom lane of the Pango rotations. They managed to get that eight pick Pango, which is so wild in this meta. And the, the call to pick Merita was a great call. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure when you see these like last pick carry situations come out, it's usually the carry player himself who calls for it. And I mean, it was it was genius. It turned out brilliantly. Like hats off to them, honestly. I feel like Morita could end up being like a low key broken hero. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is, I'm not saying like based off of this game, but I just had like a hinkering feeling, which is a word that like, it's been enough buffs at this point that like sometimes you're just <laughs> playing against Muerta, you're stunned for like a second. And it feels like she two shots you, especially if you're playing an Agi hero. Because I know a lot of people like, in, obviously we saw in this game, you pick the peel into the Muerta to counter her. Mm -hmm. But if that hero gets locked down, you are still an agility hero with very high armor, low HP. Usually the way that you survive is is through having like 30 armor. Muerta obviously completely tears through that. Yeah, but I think not even that, because I'm not sure if I would call Muerta like low-key broken or anything, because she feels too specific, right? She feels too much of a niche hero, and not many players are willing niche to... Niche broken. Niche broken, sure, I can see that. Um, but I think just the call to pick this carry when maybe a lot of people wouldn't have gone for it and have that means to kill an egg, have that like extra damage, have that like strong lane that we didn't expect them to mm -hmm. have, that, that was the brilliance in it, because draft-wise, what they did differently than the last game was they had ways to take fights that didn't include a long cooldown. They had this Pangolier who was able to like collapse around any point of his, the map with any one on his team. And I think that's what really stood out to me. I think Shopify look best when they can skirmish. Not when they try to take these big team fights, but when they just 
take over the map and just go for the small kills and not the big team fight plays. And someone who's very instrumental to those uh, small kills and the skirmishes is, uh, well, first of all, it's the support duo, but Flyless Enchantress, Lacoste, he has some, uh, he has some good plays, some good micro. Can you talk us through what's happening over here? He's trying to get pure here. He is going to get it. Uh, there might be a second one where he manages. Uh, th this is the one that I mentioned at the start. Uh, this is mm -hmm. also with the rotation of Crit, who's uh, very uh, active early on. We said that, that this meta does allow him to like get more active, and this is the clip that I was talking about, like the body blocks, and yeah. they still understand like how much damage they have. The last impetus is going to do the trick. Uh, Fly, you know, pretty silent, I would say, as a player, you know, but he also does. Uh, a lot of flashy things and mostly you don't focus on a position five because the there are like bigger names always a flashier hero in the game but he can make even enchantress uh, look really really good i think um, we can also go back to something that we did mention multiple times already on panel this is the importance of 24th pick like how much influence does it have again the, the, like you don't like, even though it's a PL, it feels like it could be potentially a good game if this Muerta is off to a good start, and she definitely was. Like, this 24 pick doesn't seem to be working out. Yeah, the overall yeah. last pick, Phantom Lancer, was was already feeling, like, countered in the lanes. Yeah, it, it was a bit slow. I yeah. think uh, what Shopify Rebellion was setting up for, you could already see, like, how to amplify the damage of one big bad carry in the mid and late game. They're going to be grouping up, so you had... Uh, Glimmer Cape, you had Solar Crest uh, on Vengeful Spirit, and then you also had Beastmaster Aura, you had Vengeful Spirit Aura plus Vlad, so you have Lifesteal, you have multiple ways of amplifying damage, attack speed on Muerta, who just one-shots people pretty much. Like These supposed to be tanky heroes, they die in two seconds. I think generally with regards to the last pick too, like, there's just not that much cheese in Dota right now that's that strong. Like, usually it's Meepo, Huskar, Broodmother, PL, uh, like we saw there, but P I don't think PL's in a state where it's so broken that it's like this insane last pick where you really want to play for last pick. Uh, and I think like also a lot of the stuff that's currently in the meta has some options to counter the uh, like OP last pick heroes. Like PL, for example, you know, Beastmaster can choose to go axes and the drums, for example, rather than like the boar build. Like a lot of the stuff where you'd have like, oh, it's a free PL game. It's really hard to find those scenarios in the current patch. And maybe if certain heroes fall off, then last pick will actually be strong. I think with with cheese, like PL or Muerta, you, it doesn't really matter what it looks like in the game. It matters, honestly, how your team can enter after the leaning stages. And they didn't have a means to do that. I think the strongest pick in this game right now is that 18 pick uh, for, for the team with first pick. That 18 pick catches people off guard. This was an 18 pick Beastmaster that they had no solutions to. And this PL is trying to, they were putting a band-aid on something with, okay, maybe PL can carry us to victory, but there is still no solution for this Beastmaster or a way to play against them or take mm -hmm. away his map control. They had Phoenix and Elsie who didn't win his lane and like Skywrath Mage. These heroes cannot play into the Beastmaster Enchantress tempo. And that's the issue with when you put all of the bands, when you focus all of that in the initial phase and it targets meta heroes and OP heroes, you can actually get caught off guard by these 18 Beastmasters and these 18 LCs and these things that look really good in the game. I think that's actually the strongest pick right now. And to be clear, 18 pick is the pick, the last pick out of the second pick phase, yeah, the right? Yeah, second pick phase. Yeah, yeah, so it's like effectively like the new last pick. So the, the, like. the fourth pick overall of, of a team. Yeah, yeah, you get to pick, and, the then you pick and then you ban some stuff to protect yes. it. Pretty much. Well, with that in mind, it's going to be interesting to find out who has that first pick and therefore 18th pick, and uh, who does not. Uh, we're going to head into a short break, but when we're back, it's draft time for game number three here between Shopify and Betboom. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Wear your passion. 
share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. One night in New York Is like a lifetime anywhere We're Dancing in the dark Up in Central Park All the bright lights up Times Square This town is champagne So shake the bottle Pop the cork All the deadliest sins Are like one night in New York Put on your silk and your satin We're stepping out in style We'll be the toast of Manhattan Cruising the golden mile This town is alive Go wild and let your money talk Any man can be king And reign one night in New York And your satin We're stepping out in style We'll be the toast of Manhattan Cruising the golden mile One night in New York Is like a lifetime anywhere Dancing in the dark up in Central Park All the bright lights up Times Square This town is champagne So shake the bottle, pop that cork All the deadliest sins are like one night in New York Don't you know all the deadliest sins are like one night in New York Who's more alive 
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back Dream League Season 21. That's really good, by the way. That's also a lot of money. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on this one game. It's game three of a best of three in the upper bracket semifinals between Bed Boom and Shopify Rebellion. Shopify will be uh, Radiant this time around. Radiant's second pick. And then uh, Bed Boom is uh, Dire first pick, which we mentioned first pick. Uh, very good, specifically for 18th pick, which is the fourth pick, like about right the below one where right Jenkins before is. the last one. Yeah, I was I, gonna point out like where below that consists. I'm wondering what happened. Like, why did suddenly for this series Shopify Rebellion stop first banning Doom? Because the series has not been contested, and it might be a pick uh, against the Beastmaster. We might see some Night Stalker mm -hmm. as well as a counter, which is uh, you know Nightfall playing hero that uh, yeah. turns into Night. He becomes stronger. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a thing. Uh, Night Stalker also could be Pure's hero. I think you gotta figure out how to deal with the Beastmaster because, as Effie mentioned, this Beastmaster on 18th pick in the last one did a lot of work, and now this is the first phase hero for Bed Boom. So let's see how they're gonna approach it. When I was talking about Bed Boom, I thought Shopify for some reason had Beastmaster. That's why I said all this nonsense. It's but all the same good. things. Same thing applies for Shopify. Now that we have the opening two picks on the board, I quickly want to hear from Jenkins how that how this makes him feel. This makes me feel morose. <laughs> Are you really gonna play, have the band play morose music? Yes, play something morose, please. Something like death and sad, sad and, and somber. Sad and somber. And sonder. Morose. Why? I just woke up today feeling depressed. I see. This is we the type of music it. I could feel Vorlocks. Has on his like. That uh, is true. I could while see he's that. taking a shower, you know, just in demon music. Himself. The exactly. But this beastmaster opening from uh, Bed Boom is quite interesting because they've never attempted to open with this hero. But I think that after the last game, they needed to address it in some way or the potential for it, and they didn't want to expand a ban when they were first picked. They decided to just build around it, and they do so by banning out the enchantress. Um, Bed Boom are a very good Beastmaster team. I, I just feel like when it comes out this early, there are options to get terror bladed or just get countered through the safe lane very early on in the game. Five seconds remaining. But I yeah. suppose if you do that, then you're taking away from potential like Abed initiating heroes like Earth Spirit. They take out the terror blade you mentioned. Yeah, that, I mean, you had well. to do that. You had to take out terror blade versus Beastmaster. I, I feel like Warlock is probably pretty good against this new beast who's yeah. playing with the hawk and the boar in lane. Just fatal bonds and having the little imps running around, blowing up the minions. Feels yeah, very yeah. convenient. Pushing the lane as well. They're not messing around. Shopify securing the safe lane. Phantom Assassin, like she was kind of always the counter to Beastmaster. I would say not as much lately, but with the help of Warlock, I still feel you do really well in the lane. And this is uh, the hero that I thought we're gonna see more. Uh, it became like really popular on the second day because it was played mostly from position four, builds into Spirit Vessel. With the changes to Nightmare, you can just solo kill people pretty much if you're having that good of a start. And now you have two really good heroes to protect the egg with. We didn't see egg go off in the previous game many times. I mean, you are playing against Beastmaster, against Myrtle, so it's not going to be that easy. But uh, Fiend's Grip and also Beastmaster Roar, even if you have a BKB, you're still going to be able to protect it. I saw this exact scenario. I mean, not in terms of draft order, but a PA pick being picked into a, a Beastmaster and then a Bane comes out. And then you somehow get baited into PA because she's a very strong hero this patch, but then you're playing into two BKB piercing disables. You're playing into the Primal Roar and the Fiend's Grip. And often, if a PA isn't snowballing to the point where she has her Ags early, she can go into these fights and just get... Her BKB will not protect her. She doesn't really play on that spike if yeah. Bad Boom have any I, kind of I, I think advantage. Shopify did a really good job addressing this Bane. First, it was picked into Warlock, so Golem very easily to interrupt it. Uh, Kunkka with just X mark could easily interrupt it. Then you have Swap as well. So I don't think they should be too worried about Fiend's Grip going off. 
Lacoste, I got something really important to say here. We got Storm Spirit that's going to be creating storms. Kunkka, that's obviously guys in around the sea with the boat. Water. We're going to need some sea shanty type Sea music. shanty! Because they're, they're going to be sailors at the sea, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like this big storm. Epic storm. And teams are looking for the perfect storm with their last pick, of course. I think, yeah. I think Bet Boom have a really good idea with their draft, honestly. I mean, it's not to say that Shopify's heroes aren't good when you look at them, but all of these are their bread and butters, and they get the GPK Storm Spirit versus very minimal catch. And what Abbott did on the Pango last game was he was able to collapse on the problematic lane that they were most concerned about. Storm is going to do the same thing for his team this time around. He's going to go to that PA's lane and try to kill her over and over again. And then if PA doesn't have a good start, and there aren't many disables to catch the Storm Spirit, because honestly, there's only the Vengeful Spirit stun, which is dodged by by Lightning, and then there's potentially an X, which can also just mm -hmm. be played around. It feels like a free Storm Spirit game right now, and I think that he can do a lot for them by way of shutting down Arteezy. Very interesting. I mean, they... Do have Kunkka, but still Bed Boom protecting it with the puck pick because it is a flex pick for Shopify Rebellion. They did rain Kunkka on the off lane because you build pretty much into like same items. We did mention Blade Mail. You can get Vanguard as well, turn it into Crimson Guard if it's a good game for Crimson, and now also protecting it uh, with the Queen of Pain. So looking at the, the hero list that Abed did play, something that could work out against the Storm Spirit. There's still Earth Spirit available, which would give them like slightly more lockdown against uh, this Storm Spirit in terms of like laning stage. If you pick any melee hero, pretty much you're gonna lose the lane against the Storm, but you might need to pick something like that for the game. Mm. What kind of carry are Bedroom going for? Are they looking for an active carry like the Bloodseeker? Just out of fear for what essentially comes out of Ovid, or do you think they're gonna try to outlate game the PA? Because I think the more aggressive type carries will suit Betboom's draft better here. We'll have to wait and see what comes out with our final picks. I am going to have a quick question before we continue on on the last picks. Because the 18th pick is the Storm Spirit in this one. Do we feel happy with it? Is this a good hero to pick on that position? It's a very strong Storm Spirit pick. I mean, like I mentioned before, the disables are minimal, but... Mm -hmm. If this lane goes well for Storm, he's going to rotate a lot to PA's lane, which is the lane that they need to shut down. And if they're if they're able to do that, they can give Pure on his Beastmaster a game, and they can kind of reverse what Shopify did to them last game. They can also have similar types of map control. I, I like your. If you have a Kunk on the off lane, if they okay. switch that to off lane, then yeah. they're not going to have that much playmaking on Shopify. I like your Bloodseeker suggestion against Phantom Assassin, which makes her really vulnerable in a fight. Can't really jump around, but if they want to secure the late game, I had some other suggestions. Definitely not would have suggested troll. You could have you could have lied and said you hundred percent. I know that, would have that's what Jenkins does, you know. <laughs> he mentions two heroes, then the third one comes out and he's like, Yeah, what about troll? That hero, I was going to suggest, of course. It's very good against Kunkka in lane. If, it's a great pick. If they do want to run the Kunkka, this like makes the Kunkka offlane feel weird. Yeah, and even if they choose to run the Kunkka mid, whichever offlaner they can pick here still will not lane well into a troll. It's a good troll game, because look at these heroes. Where's the damage going to come from? He has high armor, Vorlog's damage, pretty limited, so is Vengeful Spirit. I don't think troll needs to worry about getting his ulti off. He's not playing into any silences. He's playing into very limited amount of stuns that they have. So it looks really good, and in terms of tower damage, how they can amplify damage on him, make him survivable in a team fight, Sunray, Beastmaster, Aura. You gotta be look out to, to take some early Roshans as well on Bed Boom. What about Underlord? I think they should play this Kunkka offlane. If they play this Kunkka mid, they're, the game is looking kind of over, honestly. They need they need a playmaker on Abed. They need to be able to fight back. They need to be able to counter-rotate on Storm's rotations. Kunkka does not do enough. I really think this needs to be flexed. If not, I'm super concerned for a Shopify. Well, they're definitely taking their time to think about this one. It's a very important pick. And with only 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds on the clock, sorry, a drum roll will definitely be in place, as I am sure that the discussions being had right now on the side of Shopify are intense. They go back for the Lena. Magic damage, Lena, baby. Somebody's getting one shot this game. Oh, this, is, this is good. Got him. This is good. Uh, this is 
very cool because not only can it counter rotate or try to secure lane side lanes if anything goes wrong or a GPK starts making rotations, you have a really great lane versus Storm Spirit. Historically, Lena has always outranged him. She's also an excellent egg killer. Like Lena's fiery soul just eats Phoenix, especially because her attack range is so high. And with the way that people have been playing Lena, making her just full burst magic damage, she can 100 to zero any hero if they're caught off guard. So I think that's probably the best pick they could have Yeah, I, I like the pick a lot. Uh, I also want to see what the itemization is going to be, because uh, what they were lacking is magical burst damage against this troll. There was a lot of talk during Riyadh Masters, because uh, like Leshrac against Storm matchup, uh, Storm, he like, if you don't have enough lockdown, you build into Yule Scepter. I feel like this game might be it because it's a setup for Torrent, it's a setup for your LSA, not necessarily as your first item, and also you can protect yourself uh, great against Troll to buy a little bit more time. I know it's not like the Lina item at the moment, but uh, I feel like if he builds it, they're going to have enough catch for this Storm Spirit. Um. I think overall, I do favor Bad Boom's draft just because it feels solid in every aspect and it's a great storm game. But I think Abed is going to be the difference for Shopify here. If he can pop off on his Lena and just be one of those Lenas who hits their peak really early and just starts bursting heroes all mm -hmm. over the map, all of a sudden PA is going to have the space to farm and potentially hit her peak before a troll does. So I can honestly see that happening. We're going to find out. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen here with the mid Lena versus Storm matchup. Before we head over to OD Pixel and Fog, though, we're first going to have a quick musical intermezzo from the Pop Jam Pandas. Time for the deciding game three between Shopify Rebellion and Bet Boom. And uh, indeed, some exciting uh, stuff going to be coming Very out from exciting. the mid lane to finish things off with that pick from Arbed. He's going to be bringing in the Lena. And uh, as indeed on this patch, as you'd expect, it should be the magic Lena. He's going to yeah. look to just blow some people up this game, Fog. Is he going to get to do it? We'll see how the lane goes down. I think he should have a pretty damn good lane. Let's see how the Kunkka does in particular. I think Abed, he's definitely set up for success to do it. I have some worries for Saberlight. You know, I think they picked it, picked it in a position where they had to kind of flex it, and now either lane that he kind of went to could be problematic. Laning versus Troll, definitely not the easiest. So they had to kind of... And they didn't want to lane it versus the Storm, so they had to shift it up there. So let's see how he's able to do But yeah, Abed, this should be fun. And I'm glad that uh, Effie talked about it at the end there, in particular. The secondary thing is being able to have an Egg Killer. Usually what first Troll you want is a big magic burst, and this gives you both that and egg killing. Yeah, I mean, sort of overall, do you have a, a team that you kind of would give the edge to after the draft? I can't believe I'm going to say it because it's a, there's a troll on it, but a slight edge perhaps for Bep. Hey, well, what's wrong with the troll? Is it the He's carry better. that you feel you've just seen just fall flat on his face a lot? I mean, what, what's sort of the downsides of this hero? You just can't control yourself, you know, man. You just, sometimes just, he, he just goes down this way you don't want him to go, and yeah, you just end up dying a couple times you don't want to. But I don't think that'll be the case this time, but it could be totally wrong, and I think we'll have to see based on how Abed, how his rotations work, and I think he's going to have that type of potential to be able to make early rotations and shut down Nightfall. Right, let's see, see indeed how much of a good lane can be secured for Saberlight with Crit on the Venge. If you can keep this offlane Kunkka safe, and let's see how bottom goes. This could be, I, I think this was, this is something that everybody kind of, I think, like knows now at this point is that the PA is one of those like big counter picks, or it used to be a very big counter pick versus the Beastmaster. I'm just wondering if it's that, if it's the same now versus the new Hawk and stuff like that. You're constantly getting rooted, you're constantly getting grabbed and stuff like that. It does feel like it's a, quite a bit better for the Beast now than it used to be versus this PA. And he's got a feeble on him, which that's pretty miserable. <laughs> It's been kept very low, it's easy. Yeah. See in the mid lane. Yeah. I mean, as, as matchups go right in terms of sort of a, a classic, you know, Lena versus Storm, this this should be uh, pr pretty good stuff for Arbed. I mean, it's, it's harder than it ever has been yeah. because of the new Dragon Slave. Just getting that constant debuff onto him, too. Arbed's holding skill point just in case. So we'll see how much GPK is able to force out of this lane. 
Spam it out with the remnants. It's, 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 it's not going to be easy. No. This uh, should be our big getting quite the significant lead in this matchup, this game. Yeah, I feel like two lanes are going to go very successful for Bet Boom, while one lane, that mid lane, is going to go very successful for the side of Shopify. Because bottom, if you're looking, Artizia, I think he just got his first two CS. Maybe he's going to get a kill, though, Steve. I might do so. Jumping aggressively onto save. They are able to turn. Shadow Word's going to be bringing save down rather low, but should be fine with the Tango regen against the early level of Shadow Word. Fatal Bond plus Shadow Word. Yeah, he's okay. Easy. I still trying to go for this, but Pure just turns with the axes. Oh, my goodness. Both cores here living on the edge. Artizia only has three last hits, though. It's causing problems for him that they're having to go for these times. And like you said, they're pretty much out of regen down here. He thankfully has a Warlock behind him, but not able to get much CS whatsoever. Yeah, maybe we'll get a bit more space now that uh, Pure's as low as he is. It doesn't quite feel as confident stepping up and trading with the PA. Nah, but the bigger deal really is, even though yeah, Artizia's suffering so much, look at uh, GPK kind of has the jungle a little bit here versus the Lina already. Gonna try and go for save. Lotus battle. Save's gonna grab it. And now he might get a kill. Ooh. Shadow Word's there. So with another dagger, one more right click save. He can't quite get it raised. Ooh. The axes not going to reach either. So Artizia will live. Only just. Four lasted still. But yeah, Ar Abed, absolute free farm. 21 8 to the 10 1. So, yeah, these, these lanes, we'll see what repercussions it ends up happening with this Lena being so yeah, damn Abed's massive. got to do so much. He really has. You can tell it already. And yeah, honestly, uh, good person to put your confidence into, right? After that Pangle performance before, too. What, what else? I mean, does this bottom lane ever get any easier for the PA, or is he just downhill from here in this matchup? I mean, if they stay down here, it doesn't feel like it's going to get much easier. The point, like, what? He's going to have level 2 brain sap in a second, too. Does not feel easy whatsoever, even though there's a Warlock behind. Those first few waves matter so much. I think he can't last it, even with daggers. And they're even going to pop the aggressive Glyph. Shoving the wave in, Fly. They might just kill Fly. Yep. Yeah, he, he's going down. That's first blood. This bottom lane, this not a happy place for Shopify Rebellion right now. Arteezy's likely just dead as well. And comes the Hawk. Double kill for save. I, I, I mean, do you, I guess you have to come back to this lane as the two of them, but... You absolutely have to. All right, Abed. Uh, yeah, this is <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I say, if anything, at least you know that that top lane. I think you were maybe a bit concerned of how well it would go. It's not going bad for Stabler, right? He's doing perfect. No, I actually thought he was going to struggle yeah. a bit more. So yeah, holding. I guess because it's a Phoenix, not a super aggressive hero, but Troll usually fares quite well versus these contests. So yeah, Stabler holding his own up here. But my God, yeah, this is this is going to be one of the slower starts. I feel like we see for our tour. And save getting both kills. It looks like he is going to try to just rush up some arcane boots for him and his buddy. Yeah, I mean, Pure's perfectly fine. He's got the iron that he needed. He yep. has that helm of, of iron will, so will not be getting harassed out of lane anytime soon by this Warlock and PA. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really do feel like this this kind of matchup has kind of changed a little bit with that PA versus B. Saber late now. Let's get the X off. He should be safe. I mean, while over in the mid, good things for Arben. Oh, and they're t are they going to steal the stack away too? That would be huge. Saberlight is able to survive as well. One lane, another kill for the two of them, pure and save. Doing some uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nasty stuff down here. New Beastmaster is just a, what a hero this is. He's <laughs> Hawk, can't even walk up versus him. But he's just consistently getting rooted. Rotation's now save, he's like, okay, I did my job. Bottom is ruined. I gotta go help out my GPK, because GPK, he needs it. I mean, they're stepping up aggressively here with the Laguna Blade, looking for GPK. Nightmare will hold back up. Eh? GPK trying to stand his ground. He's got the back of a Toronto Tokyo, but Toronto Tokyo is TP'd in. Incredibly low HP. Will dive. In fact, he will hold the dive to go back and get the damage down onto Arbed. In front of a magic missile out. Dragon Slave not going to clip Toronto Tokyo. Safe. He's chasing them down, and they're going to be able to bring down Arbed. They get the kill. Save. Can he get another one out of this? He's not quite got the mana to play with. It looks like he should. But, I mean, the oh, oh, up to the miss. high ground. High ground missile will do it. Still got boots, though. He's 35 movement speed faster for now. The nighttime kicks in, though, so Crit gets a little more movement speed from it, but so to save. He's not got mana. He's only going to no. have right clicks and Saber Light. Then he'll have the torrent to hold him back, so Save not able to get that one out of there. But they do come in, they keep GPK safe, and they make sure that Arbe goes down. But GPK loses his tower, and that is very early, so access points for them to get into his jungle. Absolutely there, and they already have Deep Vision, too, to catch him. But good moves from the supports to salvage things a little bit there to protect GPK and get those kills. Save is very high level. Wisdom Rune, though, looks like... Okay, it's going to be a battle. Who's going to get it? 
Should be. There's no dive. Fly. He's got it. Or does? Oh, he's scared. Oh. He's gonna be quick on the click. Hey, oh, it's gonna be Toronto, Tokyo. Okay. Fly's got a TP. He does. Okay. He'll be out of that. One for one. I don't know why I thought it was spawning two seconds yes. earlier. And I was like, oh, Fly's there first. But yeah, no. <laughs> it's right afterwards. Of course, with moves like this, the Arteezy's just left on his own. Uh oh. The Nightmare set up there. They're bringing in a plus one as well. Pepim, they're gonna have the three of them going for this one. He's got the Blur Arteezy trying to juke it out. Jump back to the safety underneath the tower. That's still left incredibly low. Full thousand gold behind his counterpart and a full, almost what? A full level behind the troll as well too. Nightfall's actually almost hitting level six already up there. Yeah, they're already bringing everybody here too. They have three heroes. Oh, they tell me Pure's hit the six. A raw will secure a kill. They've got the Nightmare. And they go. I don't know if there's any way that Arteezy can be saved here. Don't Raw comes so. out. Arteezy's gone. Another kill for the offlane duo of Bet Boom. Here's Arbet. Over the rotation. Arbet drops the Laguna down. And they will manage to punish Bet Boom. The Shopper fight. Coming I think, with the gank. I think Pure is a little confused. He's like, why is Fly not waking him up? He, he sends Fly a tip after that one there. Arteezy bottom of the cores. Where is save going? He's not got a TP, you know, he's yeah, just he's got, sneaking to, around. got to take a little bit of a walk back to safety. Yep. And we'll see, see again here indeed, the setup. He handed him a Tango. That's kind of interesting. Uh, tango weren't going to do anything. Yeah, an instant tip from Pure. Yeah, that's a bit of an interesting one. Admit it, save. In the meantime, just gets a casual sleep onto the Lina. Arteezy's actually just taking the mid lane. He's like, I don't want to go back. You don't go there. bottom. Yeah, he's like, Saberlight, that's yeah. your job now, man. It's not the place that anybody wants to be. Yeah. Quick timings. Lens already finished up. I like the, the you know, the recommendation of the Yules. I was about to say, I wanted to see if he was going to decide to go for it this game. He was debating up the boots of travel, but it's such a good Yules game. It's not just for the extra catch onto the Storm, but even versus Troll Warlord, you know, controlling him during his ult and stuff like that. Can be very valuable if he wants to actually complete this. A perfect Arteezy high-fiving GPK. Level 5 PA. So yeah, slow recovery gonna be for RTZ. Yeah, same to be said though, Joseph, for GPK. Yeah. Both of these cores, each for, for each side, are gonna take some time to recover after what's been difficult lanes for them. Any stacks for him? Okay, he does have like at least a couple stacks here for GPK to yeah, finish it up, but it's still under Ward Vision. So let's see if Shopify looks to snipe him out here when he's farming this camp. Crit's already kind of walking up. Doesn't look like Arbet's interested in joining right now. Wants to just clear out the stack himself, working on his Ancients. Yeah, it was just that a thing word, but he's just securing the rune here. Crit still playing in the area. Toronto. I mean, Arbet's here now. If they get a magic missile into a light strike. Oh, what a and stun. they do. Very nicely done there. Predicting a bit of the dive. To... Okay. Yep. Yeah, Arbet was, he was confident that Crit had that covered with the right clicks, and he did. Yep. That was a beautiful stun there. Arbet just catching him on the dive. Five to four. And very equal on the gold. Just mm -hmm. the 1k gold, it's just uh, quite the difference of how it's been uh, split on each of the sides. Illusion. Absolutely. Pure is just, I mean, so massive. That's the one thing I always just watch, this, especially with, with what we just saw from the Beastmaster last game. Like, he was really just the controller of the pace of everything here, and Pure definitely set up for that. Warlock, level 6, same thing for crit. How is Phoenix doing? Still not quite six on the side of Bat Boom. Both teams happy to slow things down now. Mm -hmm. Arteez is getting his space. GPK also being able to just go in and out the jungle, refuel at base, and uh, start to do his best to close the gap between him and Arbed. What if they do look to try to make a move soon, though, because save, he does have Fiend's Grip at the ready. Yeah, both teams having uh, both supports ready to play with the ults. That won't do. Not easy. <laughs> he just throws a dagger that does absolutely nothing to GPK. <laughs> And it's the Fiend script smoke that you're looking for. Oh. They do kind of reveal themselves, though. Brain sapped an illusion. But they're looking for Artur. I mean, they're still going to get the jump. Vortex into the Fiend script. TPs are coming in. GPK has he got the damage? Not quite. Artur, he's going to be able to jump back in aggressively as the boat comes in for Saberlight. 
Nightmare for Snape to hold RTZ back, but RTZ, he's going to be okay for now. Uh, they'll dive in with the Supernova, and that'll do it. He'll get him. And the Supernova not going to be able to be taken down by Stabilite, so Toronto Tokyo, he'll get back out. So, nice cleanup there from the Phoenix. Nicely done, for sure. I mean, how many misses was that? I think he missed like two or three times onto the blur there from the Storm from GPK, but either way, they get the damage. And I believe in the meantime, Nightfall also got a solo kill. It looked like there. He did, I believe, find crit. Yeah, he did. So being enabled, I mean, Nightfall continuing to get his growth and Arteezy continuing to get slowed down. They're putting so much pressure onto this PA. Yeah, Shopify not quite able to save Arteezy. No. It's going to be a slow Battle Fury timing, unfortunately, from this game. And definitely not a game where it's going to be super easy for him to just jump in and out of these targets. There's a lot of annoying control for him, even if, even once we get to the point of like these BKBs and stuff like that for them. Fiend's Grip, Roar, even this Root that comes out, of course, from the Troll Warlord, who already has Battle Fury. Arteezy, he's getting close to Battle Fury, but it's, it's naked, completely naked, while Nightfall has a lot of small items in between. Let's see if they can set up for this tower here. Saberlight looks like he's going to be going down a bit of aura route to protect versus this Beastmaster and Troll. Crimson Guard is one of the best items versus Troll through most stages of the game, so... Cool. Some good itemization coming out here from the side of Shopify. Abed did go back for bots, and then it looks like he's going to go for the Yules. I guess the state of the game is the slowdown. He wanted to have boots of travel. Yeah, he's got to be the ready to back up Arteezy yeah. if Arteezy's getting dove upon under these tier 1s. Uh, Arteezy's trying to find the farm. Oh, that's a cute little ward there from Save. I don't think I've seen that ward in particular. I've seen the ones to the left and right of that, that southern camp there, but not really right on top of it. Cool. And how's Pure's timing? Pure, I mean, very close to the helm of Overlord. Oh, top net worth. Yeah. That's going to be... Very a, much making up for his rough game too here. Definitely. I mean, that's going to be a very strong thing for Bepboom to rally around with the team fight, with the egg, plus with that helm. That could cause some issues, but Shopify, they do have the Warlock. They have this Kunkka too, so massive amount of damage if they can get the connections with these two. Uh, see if they can get the setup. Oop, I mean, they'll settle for save, or they'll just try to. He's going to be able to break the combo there with the Nightmare. So Torrent off the mark. Still Shouldn't a matter. As he'll get chased down. Swap into the slow of fly. There's no escape for save. They'll get the kill. In the meanwhile, I, the bottom though, they're just using as much space as they can. Pierce starts to get some decent damage. It's actually forcing a glyph. They're going to try and see if they can maybe catch Pure as well. Mm. I mean, they can't always call for the Lina to TP down, right? So yeah, they do bots see. Ready. Bots up in eight, yeah, eight seconds on the TP. I'm still, still watching poor RTZ trying to find places to farm, but definitely still struggling. Dyer are scanning. Nearly got the battle fury. Nearly. And the... Uh, the jungle will become a bit more of a, an easy place to clean the creeps up. He's got that boom. Toronto Tokyo once again going the Midas route on his Phoenix, getting those levels okay. in. He's got good timing on it as well, 15 minutes in. They probably feel like they have that great scaling. I mean, they yeah. do have Troll and Storm with the Beastmaster, so they're, they're, their scaling is pretty scary. Versus and they're going for Arteezy. Uh -oh. Arteezy yeah. wants to try and step up to get some farm from the wave. But Bet Boom, they're on him. They're just bullying him. And there is, there's going to be no help for him here. No way out of this one. He gets the oh he gets the creep and he, he gets, gets the, the range fury. creep right in time for the go. battle fury. He's at least able to make the purchase okay. before he goes down. It's something. It's something, but it does feel like you know reminiscent of that game earlier where he was playing the Ursa versus this Jug. Nightfall is going to be a full item ahead of him at most times because they're just putting so much attention to gank this this poor PA. And so far they're not able to find Nightfall really at all. He's just chilling on the sides while his team makes all the space in the world for him. Still yet to see a rock. They haven't quite had the, the team fight combo come out yet nope. from Shopify. Bet Boom just a little too split up, not leaving opportunities for Shopify to find this early team fight with their ults. It's reminiscent of the first game, just dodging those big ultimates kind of in a way, waiting for itemization to come out before you really want to take that real head on fight. It's going to start coming pretty quick, though, right? I, what they did last time it was just buy the BKBs on multiple cores, and then they did have that answer to those ults. They have the swap stun. They're trying for it. Nice uh, GPK playing nicely on the edge of vision. So, crit not quite able to set up with the ult. Might give away the fact that there's a ward there, but either way. Oh, this is going to be a tough one for Shopify. Oh. First two games this series.
Now he had the lead coming out of the lanes this time round. A very different story. Arteezy doesn't even have boots yet. GPK on the prowl. More heroes rotating though. Saberlight's here. He's gonna reveal himself with the dagger. He has got further numbers backing him up though, Arteezy. I'm gonna go for the boat set up on Pure. The rock? He's gonna be dro I mean, he's dropping it on the... Of course, the, 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 the dinosaur here, he doesn't want to get killed off. Pure's gonna go for the TP out. It oh. won't make it. Trick comes in. Uh, he's gonna farm the creep too. All right. I guess Fly was dying to it, so he had to. Protect I, he was terrified. With it, this so. dinosaur was coming for him. He was. <laughs> he, was he was not hesitating on dropping the rock on that dinosaur. All right. Who got the kill? Arteezy gets the last. It's all important. Treads now finished up. But about three thousand behind this troll warlord already. Yeah, Nightfall just getting all the space in the world on his half of the map. No one has been able to find him yet. Yules is finished up now for Abed, so further forms of being able to catch and control. Save. He's got Fiend's grip. They do have the grip if they want to commit for this. And they're bringing in Nightfall for the damage. They know that after that fight bottom, it's unlikely the Shopify can really do much to respond to this one. As, yeah, Shopify, they've just got to let Sableite go. Nothing to save him. <laughs> you should have put to port sooner. Radiant are scanning. <laughs> How is these timings looking on that? Troll, BKB, and 400. Oh, yeah. Very close to being able to just, yeah, just straight up look for these team fights constantly. And Tokyo, the Midas, you know, you mentioned, he's getting dangerously close to level 12. So we did mention how the Lina can have kill potential onto this egg, but there are ways to disrupt that. You know, I think the only way they kill that egg is if Abed's full focusing it when yeah, it hits level 12. So he does have to be careful because there's Roar, there's Fiend's Grip. There is even going to be like these Enfeebles and stuff like that, so. Time this game. Bet boom, they're the ones with the easy rush lineup. Oh, yeah. Night Nightfall is just huge. Level 14, RTZ only 11. And the thing is, too, the matchup of this PA versus Troll, it's not the easiest one in the world by any means for a PA. I mean, just overall, it, it does not seem like an easy game for a PA at all. No, definitely not. A lot of answers. And regardless of what sort of item build you go for on the PA, this is not an easy game to carry. Agreed. And who does he want to go on first? Like, I mean, once we get to these points, like, who's he going first? If he doesn't catch these supports, he gets enfeebled, fire spirit, etc. Yeah, definitely a problematic. How Saberlight's timings look. Just Crimson bought the shard, and he is going to be going down that Ags route. Nothing too out of the ordinary. And there you go, Artur. Gets himself a Helm of Overlord creep. Big money. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. bottom tower. Yeah, these timings though, they're so fast. Yasha soon on the horizon for nightfall. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And they have the easier way to take these buildings. So if Shopify doesn't react up toward this tier two, it's gonna drop very quick if, if Bepum does want to just push forward for it. And they do not push buildings on the side of Shopify. They look for fights. Now the TP and in, Saberlight. Let's see. Okay, he's with the X mark. He's just coming in to try and clear the way, but the fortification will be popped, so it won't be able to stop this push. He's got the Crimson down on it a little bit. Yeah, block some damage, but yeah, this is dropped. Radiant's top tower has Tormentor. Sh Shopify steals the opposing one. Batboom will steal theirs. And the game has slowed down, and it definitely feels like this favors Batboom. I mean, for, yeah. for sort of the, the first couple of ganks that Arbed was able to come in with, it, it, his game slowed down quite a lot. It sure, did. he's still got a lot of farm, and clearly the you know, Shopify Rebellion as a team, they also want to play for the later stages of the game. And we'll see how well Arbet's able to fit in with that and how how, how much this burst and control is, is, is if it's going to be enough uh, against Bet Boom and disrupting sort of the flow of, of Nightfall in these team fights. But you know, with this good timing on the BKB, it feels doubtful. Yeah, and with Radiant GPK, who, you know, did struggle inside the laning phase and stuff like that, he's pretty much recovered. Yeah, Arteezy's ahead of him and stuff like that, but the thing about the Storm versus the Lina matchup is if the Storm catches this Lina, Radiant this Lina is, like, 90% of the time likely to die unless he's got some great swap backup or something like that coming out from crit. Yeah, has opted for the, the Blink Dagger Arbet, so should be, uh, oh. be pretty hot with the positioning. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We lost them all. Hello? Go. <laughs> Well, let's let's hope they're back. Reason. Yeah, re true. <laughs> reason. Reason, please. Come on. There we go. There's a good there's a good sign. They're reconnecting already. Yeah. I mean, these Somebody two... tripped over the internet cable. Yeah. 
I mean, these two teams, they always do taunt each other a little bit back and forth because, you know, Nightfall, of course, former teammate of them all. They were even taunting each other with uh, voice lines at the start. That's true. I think Nightfall was calling out Arteezy for not having Dove's voice line at the start. Well, he said shout out. Arteezy said shout out to Dove from Nightfall because Nightfall was yeah. spamming the voice. Yeah. There was some despair from Arteezy. He did type that Dove doesn't even watch his game. Oh, that is true despair <laughs> right there. <laughs> Why would they? Sick I tell you what, if he's able to pull this game out of the bag and turn the it around, the the it, it, you, you, nobody's going to be missing Arteezy's games in the future because they'll be ones to watch. This Very is going to be sure. quite the comeback if Arteezy's able to turn this on his PA. So it's been a rough start. I thank you. Save does get blessed with the Eye of Vizier as well on this Bane, so the cast range, look at this enfeeble cast range in particular. So the damage from Arteezy is always going to be quite lackluster, mm -hmm. especially versus this Bane. Let's see what Magic Abed's going to be able to do. He said he bought a Blink. Oh, he had a Q'd up. I thought he had a clue, but I don't think he bought it yet. No, okay, no, yeah, he he's got a Q'd again now. He didn't, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But uh, he was thinking that he had Blink and Tag and it was Q'd. Yeah, I guess he bought the Shard and stuff you needed on these Corlinas, and then, yeah. I'll say, like, trying to slow down these pushes, but uh, only so much you can do. These Tier 2s are still going to fall rapidly to the push of Nightfall. And they can't actually do the same kind of thing on the side of Shopify. They don't have the heroes to really push like that. Arteezy, Deso's online, but still 3,000 gold ahead. This troll still continues to have that itemization. And the confidence from Nightfall. He's literally just running in by himself. I think this is like the uh, third he's time. He's got to the point where he knows he's far ahead. Uh -huh. And not a lot that can... Uh, they can take him down. Maybe they get some sort of instant burst into the Laguna. They can bring him down the once, but that ages for a minute and a half. It's, he goes where he wants. It's always risky to play when you're versus the Bane. You know, you drop your combo and he just sleeps and pre prevents some of that damage or something. So, ah, so there, there, there indeed is the, the blink done for Arbit. I mean, is, is this sort of uh, for defensive purchase purposes or is he is he trying to jump in and, and blow up someone like the Bane? Probably jump in and blow up. It's positioning and just in particular is absolutely the most important thing here for Arbit. Uh, they're going to try and go for a smoke. To, to go for the big reveal on this. See if Arbeck can maybe find someone alone. This is a lot of small items, though. So the Aghanims is quite delayed no, because of him having to go down this route. Still yep. has very good levels, but... They know what's easy down That's there. a long one. Hello. And they're going to catch him. Again and, and again. And there will be not... There won't be any save in this PA. Narteezy caught once more. Got to live. Even when he jumps and hits save, you see that feeble effect. Zero damage. <laughs> What's the, yeah, okay. Still just the 30 seconds left on the, the Aegis, so I yep. see Bet Boom hold back a bit. I don't think they'll feel any, under any pressure this game. They, got they get something. At least something. With the combo, but oh. uh, I mean, TP's coming in for Nightfall. He's oh, going to the BKB blood. and look to go. And he'll, he'll set off for crit. Happily yeah. take a kill here and there. GP they gets close to close across the map, and indeed... Oh, boy, they get the biggest catch save. He's got the flank, and Nightfall actually bugged. Is he? What Where'd he mean? go? It looked like his hero was just kind of... Well, he's ulted, right? <laughs> yeah, but he was kind of freaking out. Yeah, oh, Kurt says, it's your ult. Yeah, but he was ulted. Is he not, yeah. not right? <laughs> yeah, but he he couldn't... Yeah, like, well, let's see if it continues. No, he's fine now, but what happened? It just He was just spazzing yeah. back and forth. But whatever. They caught Abed. No, he's good now. He's okay now. <laughs> Big pickoffs. Uh, it continues just to be the case here. They pick off Arteezy. Oh, yeah. Now it's up and to a 5k differential between him and the troll. And the MKB soon to be on the horizon here now for Nightfall. Yeah, if Beboom continue to play this out as they play game one out, it it's not going to leave many opportunities for Shopify to break back in on this game three. No. This is uh, this is looking like uh, the, the good old Beboom that we've seen close up game time and time again this tournament. Seems like they have a really good feel of how to play versus Konka in particular, right? It's a similar kind of concept where they're just like, okay, we, you know, you have good team fight, blah, blah, blah. And I guess it was the tie that game too. We farm BKBs, we split up the map, and then good luck fighting us when we've got all these timings. And yeah, of course, the lanes went super well. But. Time to go with a smoke. Ah, but it's going to be up in a few seconds. Of course, bots are the ready. He will, he will be able to join them. There's nobody yeah. up here at the moment from Bet Boom, though. Saberlight also now has Aghanims finished up. So, I mean, the team fight, it's there. It's just... Is it actually going to end up happening? Are they going to be able to connect with their spells here? And is Abed going to be able to do... He's got his work cut out for him because he's got to do the damage to be able to burst the troll and he's got to be the one to kill the egg. So it's it's got multiple different roles he kind of has to partake in as this I mean, Midlina now. They need to find something. 
but I don't think they're even going to get Toronto Tokyo. He's he's already pulling back from this area. Not going to to get any opportunities with the smoke shopper fight. It's crisp gaming here. Lincoln's now finished up. GPK. Now he's got protection. I've, I don't even think I've seen. I've been able to use his Yule Scepter this game. We haven't seen a combo. Nope, haven't been able to see him. And now he's got protection versus both the Yules, the Swap, etc. and stuff too. And now Bet oh. Boom, they're coming for them. Arteezy showed. And TPK, he's ready to start things off. And they're gonna drop the rocket and attempt to keep Arteezy safe, but he's been caught by the Grim. He goes down. They'll jump forward over towards Crit as well. The Supernova's out. They've got a run shopper fight. As Crit will get left behind. As the two supports fall alongside Arteezy. Right. Only Saber Light and Arbet able to escape this. Bet Boom, they just take these team fights easy. I mean, every time, it's just they know exactly where Arteezy is. They get him again for the sixth time with the pickup before the fight starts. That was actually the, the boat. Net. Everything ends up dropping, but it does absolutely nothing to the side of Bet Boom at this point. And Dean, we see again the efforts. And Nightfall just hot with the way he pops BKBs. These fights starting, he's not holding back. BKB just charges in. Make sure nothing can be done to hold him back. And as you see on the side there, finding flight before Flo is able to successfully, you know, to try to successfully TP away. I mean, they're cruising. They, they yeah. really are. This, yeah. is, this is looking to be in the bag for Bet Boom unless some sort of drastic mistake happens. And we've seen Bet Boom have these leads. They just don't mess up. Nope. Not with this strong scaling and not when Nightfall is given a game like this. Again, just like his jog, 26 minutes. The man's got over 300 last hits. I think it was 27 minutes or 28 minutes when he had the 330 on Jug. And he might even be hitting better timings on this on this Troll Warlord yeah, this couple, time around. A couple of pretty much flawless carry games from him this series. Yeah. Set up for success, for sure. I mean, definitely have to give a bunch of credit to that bottom lane. It's save and pure just breaking Arteezy this game in particular. And what, Roche? It's a bit of a longer yeah, a minute spawn. and a half still. Until that one, but Bet Boom, they can wait for that. Yep. They're not in a rush. Yeah, it gives them time to get their spells back up. They get that MKB done for Nightfall, just a couple of hundred gold off it. My god. I mean, at, at this point, you know, the the PA is well and truly counted. In every aspect. It, it feels like your artist, he, he cannot even jump in in these fights. Who is he going to kill? Who is he going to touch? You can't even find the backline heroes. MMR is just a number. Yeah, they're trying to... Yep, trying to find any type of solutions, but it's just been... Yeah, they're just avoiding these fights, and then when they do feel the opportune moment for them, that boom just surrounds them completely. Shopify just... Yeah, they, the Lina, in the laning phase, it looked great, but after, it just it really hasn't been able to not find a, any type of hit. Not a lot's happened. No. Unfortunately, for, from our bad indeed. Yeah, it's, it's so reminiscent of the first game. There's pure, total menace. Right, Beastmaster, this hero. Absurd. Soon an Aghanim's on Abed. But his PA I mean, is... It's a lot of burst. Or... But will it be enough? Radiance and even if they do manage to attack. annihilate one of the heroes of Bet Boom, Bet Boom's at a point where they can probably clean up fights four versus five. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, just, it really does feel like Abed has to do everything. Now <laughs> at this point, like, yeah, kill Egg, kill the supports, kill the troll, while also trying not to get controlled and everything from this storm. And he's fragile is the, is the problem too for Abed. Because he's got this blink, this yules and stuff like that. They just get on him. He's just instantly dead. Has another rush. I mean, Shopify. See if they can do anything with it. They're not going to go for Rosh Jam, but maybe they can catch someone alone whilst the rest of Bet Boom's going for the Rosh. Checking around the triangle area, but they, they won't find anything. So Bet Boom, they take the Rosh easy. Aegis on at nightfall. She used to be grabbed here by Pure. And the Aghanim's done. Let's see if Shopify Rebellion can somehow pull out some sort of insane high ground defense. Now he just needs the 20 talent. <laughs> the spell amp. Then he needs the timeless relic. Then the E-Blade. No, he he's probably just has to go down like a quick item next to the refresher. I mean, refresher, he's got it queued up, but okay. we'll see if he can get there. I mean, double Lagoon amp to buy the Ags. It's, uh, it's hard to live through. It's very true. Unless you're Battle Trances. Ags PA. It just still doesn't feel like Arteez is going to have any realms to be able to try to fight versus all this. Now with how fast Bet Boom can take buildings, if if Shopify Rebellion fell one high ground offense, that'll, that's going to be GG. You know, the, the base is going to get cleaned up so fast. 
And there's, I mean, they're just, the, the thing is, too, they're just scaling so hard still on the side of Bedlam as well, on top of everything. Besides pressuring an immense amount, like, Pierre's getting closer to AC. TPK almost has agonims. Like, it's, their power is just becoming more and more prominent. And that's starting to get to the point where Shopify, lots of heroes getting stuck inside the base. Only really RTZ able to venture outside during the blur. Yeah, Bat Boom, definitely a strong team of just these chokeholds that we've seen them be able to apply. If they do get a lead, rarely do you see them drop it nowadays. What would you say was the, the big sort of difference that, oh, top. Oh, GPK will find a freebie. Finds crit. Escape with the Oh, that's a gem. What were you saying? Uh, what would you sort of consider was the, the big difference really in game two compared to game one and game three that what? that did allow Shopify Rebellion to, to to manage to run over Bet Strong safe lane. I think it was like so much of it. I saw Fly with his Enchantress and Arteezy playing his Muerta just looked super comfortable. This one, I mean, they shut down Pure completely. This game, Pure, I feel like him and Save have dictated majority of the pace of this game just around the two of them. So yeah, I think that safe lane is definitely one thing that I would look at because Abed smashed it, right? He did. But the problem was that bottom went so badly that then the supports just moved, and then they started to help out GPK. Sure. I mean, that's definitely going to be the concern right? looking at this game for Shopify Rebellion. That yeah, mid and top went pretty well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Found him again. Hello. Game is hard. Now run it down mid here with the push that they can come with. That boom with the Aegis and Cheese, and with no threat of a PA, even though, of course, in this game right now, there's not really much for threat of the PA, even when they're alive. But unfortunately, how far behind Arteezy is this game? They could look to to go for the high ground. Mate. They absolutely can. AC is done for pure now. Everyone's just going to get tickled, it feels like. A shield rune on GPK with a cheese. MMR is just a number. Yeah, they're just trapped. All right, Shopify, the big plays for the swaps, the tidal waves, this sure. is the moment. Maybe they can get someone in the fountain. Maybe. As this swap, quick Laguna. That's what the age is gone. GPK jumping. He's used a lot of his mana for us, but he's able to bump it up back up to half. So he's still got much to play with. He's in on top of stable and nightfall pops the BKB in the ult. Straight in There's they the go. They get the raw control onto Arbed. That'll be the buyback from Stabilite. Arbed does have buyback available as well. Stabilite trying to pull them back with the side away. GPK is in over the walls. Crit crits out. No buyback available for him. GPK a little low on the mana. But they got no chase. He's going to be back up in a second, but he's got enough to keep the distance here, GPK. Oh, awkward tidal wave actually pushed <laughs> Pure outward. And Stabilize trying for the setup onto Pure, but there's no way to fight outside of the base. Arbed still holding onto his buyback. Looks like at the least Shopify Rebellion, and they'll let this top ranks go. As Nightfall and Pure push on. Fortifications there. Arbed will now come out with the buyback. They got the upheaval in a great spot. Yeah, they've got the ponds sort of upon them all as well. Trying to go for Nightfall. Nightfall gets dragged back into the Laguna. They've got it. They've got one. Arteezy's now looking over towards Pure. They get the x mark dragged back. They're going to be able to bring down the Beastmaster as well. Shopify Rebellion getting some kills here on the defense. As they push back, Bet Boom does cost them, of course, two core buybacks. Two real big buybacks. A bit of an overextension there, but I mean, they were just pushing so far forward because they get those kills. And it's something. It's something, and it's much needed for them. I'm waiting to see. Is Arteezy going to queue up Rapier pretty soon? Because it does oh. feel like it is. That is a huge play. Wow. Wow. I can't believe what we're seeing right here. Yep. That, I, I've never seen anything like that before. Me either. Wow. I'm so glad that all you viewers were able to witness this uh, with us. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was amazing. That that just changed my life. Anyway, back into the action. Oh. Yep. Here. Round oh. two. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this is just a replay. Not as amazing as the thing we just saw. No. Uh, anyway. But uh, yeah, what, they hold. Good buyback. They have to come in with the buybacks, but they do hold. They keep the game going, Fox. Yep. Unfortunately, Saberlight does take this kill. I was hoping that Arteezy was going to get this one over here. Look at this. Come on, Saberlight. <laughs> What's Saberlight have to do with that money? I guess he spent up with the buyback. He was yeah. getting the pipe, right? Okay, and he's got it finished. Okay. It'll help a little bit yeah. versus like the Phoenix and stuff like that versus Storm. Okay. Phoenix does, though, on the other hand, Toronto Tokyo have his hex. Okay, all right, all right. And Arteezy's not going for the big risk. He's actually going for the normal items. He's going for Bash. I, it did. Feel, I thought maybe there was right. potential. So just want you to Bash in a BKB? Okay. Next moments, the most crucial ones, of course. No buyback yes. on Abed, no buyback on to Saberlight. Abed very close to refresh here, so could, we could definitely see the, the explosion happen onto the troll. Oh. Oh. They had the nightmare. Oh, hello. Uh, this is uh, this is a confirmed dieback by the looks of it. Uh, Saberlight tried to push up. That's 100 seconds. Uh, Save said no. Puts the stop to his attempt to pull him back with the X mark, and that is indeed no kunker. 
for the inevitable defense that Shopify is going to have to come up with. Bet boom, they're ready to run it down mid. Get that, get that refresher finished up. Go, Abed. Catch him off guard. He's, he's close Double with the money, you're right. Double ah, no, that way. He's got, he's got a fair bit more to go, isn't it, nowadays? Refresh it's 800 it's, it's, yeah. it's rather expensive. They're gonna start. I, I, I don't know, but he's not gonna get the money before this high ground defense. I don't think so. They're gonna they're gonna be prepared to protect Nightfall with yep. leaps and everything like that. All these Lincolns being thrown at him as well. They break it, then he gets left. Four versus five. What have they got? What have they got is Shopify. Look at the open, they they've got him! They're out Arbet. of Blumont, Christian with the save as well. Swamp's back Arbet, they're trying to get Arbet out of the fight. Arbet's able to use himself up, but Pure and GPK, they're pushing it under the table. Refresher, he just it gets it. picked up into the second yours. It doesn't matter though, Arbet goes down. Also out without buyback, as they may have lost the troll. But as said before, Bet Boom, they can clean this up four versus five. And at the moment, it's four versus one. Arteezy, the only one left alive. A buyback comes out from Fly. A Bet Boom, they're onto the second set of racks. Pure picking up a death zone. He wants push out. Up. He With wants to end this. To hurry up the siege. <laughs> As the racks in the mid gone, they can resume what they were looking for earlier, move over to the top. Yeah, Nightfall is probably like, you got me, but we're all scaling, my friends. Another racks to fall. The game will steep, you know, keep going. Only just though. 22k lead now for Bet Boom. A Two sets set. of racks up. Mm -hmm. Four sets of items coming out to Pure with his. Very valued Deso, of course, being picked up. And GPK with the Shivas. That wasn't too bright. I mean, that's, that's the funny purchase by Pure, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Many more valuable items that he could have gone for, but who cares? Oh, yeah. Sorry, did you say that? He has go he's going for rapier. He is going for rapier. He's going okay. for the rapier. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, it, was, it was feeling like, honestly, even before the Bastion. He can get the rapier. Yeah. The mate. There's always a chance with a PA. It is one of those heroes. True. I honestly thought that he was going to do it instead of the bash. Does he get blessed with... I got oh, the and he got the Penta. Okay, okay. Get the Penta edge, you get the Rapier. Maybe. He's going to need some big crits. And Roche, 30 seconds. Bet Boom being Radiant careful. I mean, at least for Shopify Belly and the fact that Bet Boom is spending time and effort hovering around the Roche looking for the ages, it's giving space for Arteezy to get that final bit of gold he needs to get true. the Rapier. Very, very true. And Abed, he got his relic. Timeless relic. And we've seen already, he did blow up that troll pretty pretty easily. And from a pretty safe distance, of course, as, a, as Alina. So the job's going to have to be... Free shot for Arteezy as well. Abed's got to delete the troll, and Arteezy's got to kill absolutely everybody else. That's what it feels like is the only way. But now they're going to be playing into this third Roche. How's the buyback situation looking like? Are they coming back online? I won't do this. Still some time. About three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. And they also the two, used two the Warlock ones. one before, too, so... What we got here? Mouse off. Yes, I'll turn it back on, then. Oh, it's easy coming in with the lag excuse. Oh, yep, it's yep. the lag. Ah, it's lag it's from lane, yeah. So Standard. Suffers a fool. I suffer from that all the time. Me too, yep, yeah. GPK, yeah. Now we know why lag. these lanes were lost. There we go, you know? lag, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> GPK got a smile on, I love it. Another Roche, and this one, it's a big one. There's a refresher shard, lots of different ones. They, I mean, anyone they really put on is amazing. This game, Pure Nightfall or GPK in particular, all three sound great. Still give it a Pure again. How's the rapier gold looking? Still 500 gold to go. It's got to find it somewhere out, easy. Oh, 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 uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. They're, on, they're on their way. He kills it fast. He knows, yeah, though. He, he knows, Arteezy's away. Done. And there it is, it's completed. Okay. <laughs> Next step, of course, is getting the 25. True. Very, very true. And with the Fatal Bonds connecting onto everybody, oh, they need to get some big Fatal Bonds. Fatal Bonds and Triple Daggers. Yes, they need some big ones. That could work some magic. <laughs> well, let's see. They've got to try and hold the high ground. Only buyback they have is crits, which could come in clutch for mm -hmm. a swap save. Pure at the ready with that refresher, so double roars, double BKBs. Let's see how they set this thing up, because it does yeah. feel like Abed, when he shows himself, it's like the full commit. They're going to just delete him in. Oh, yeah, they're going to be straight on top of him. Let's see how they do set up on Shopify. If they do, have just I think probably saving the swap defensively and using, using the other spells to just go for the catch. What a, what a hunk. Huh? Well, let's see. Yeah, these, these next moves, I think, yeah, focus on crit, really. Yeah. It's got to be ready with the swaps. 
That won't do. Saber light can pretty rely on the reliably front line. On the defense, here's the Kunker. He can step up. Very few ways that Shopify can try and start a fight from the high ground. They've kind of got to wait until Bet Boom come to them. Nice. So Bet minus. Boom overextend. Great minus, Tokyo. Nice ball. Oh, look at that. Even the preemptive little oh, sleep agent. There, there is Trader. They're going to close the gap on towards Crit. They take him down, but Crit has got buyback available. They turn the attention over towards Sable Light. There's a supernova on top of him. Sable Light's out for 75. He doesn't get anything off. He's completely controlled. Nightfall. Fly. Sending the Golem in. Still all right. And they're in again. GPK is going to be able to find the second support. He's in on a fly, but he does get caught by the Sun the Lagoon and they're bursting through GPK. They're going to be able to take him down. GPK out of the game. A big one, a swap. They've got the other the setup as well. I bet he's not quite got the setup. The follow up with the Light Strike array. They've hit him with the magic missile. Daggers out as well. RTZ ready to jump in there. Able to burst through the troll at once. He's completely alone. The Aegis gone and Sableye was able to get the money for buyback. He's in for round two. Nightfall's got the BKP. He's going to try for the GPA, but he's going to score by the bash. First hit bash there off the dagger of RTZ. They get the X mark ready to drag back post BKP. They don't even need to. He's dead. They hold oh, the oh, fort. Oh, they oh. hold the defense. <laughs> Big connection there. That was a great swap there from Crit. Super quick to get the troll back in after they get the kill onto GPK. GPK, that was actually astonishing that he almost tanked the double Laguna and survived. That was close. That's got a lot of HP to get through, but they do they do, do that. Yep. They get through it. Step one. A minute now with two cores dead on Bet Boom. And I believe that's Arteezy. Is he 25? He's very he close very, to 25. He's very, very close. And we're 30 seconds, and he's going to have the luxury of picking up that Wisdom Rune, and then he'll have it. Are they looking to get more catch? Okay, they had this ward that was placed from way earlier. Almost potentially catching Pure. And now Pure, he's like, okay, game got serious. He sold his Desso. I mean, he's like, that Desso was a mistake, my friend. I guess so, but he's also spending up. No buyback gold available for him if he does get Ryan's caught. Middle mm -hmm. tower is under attack. Shopify making magic happen a bit here. Abed near 25 as well. Wisdom Rune's there. The RTZ, go and grab it. Pick it up. Yep. There's the 25. He's, he's got pretty it. much get it anyway, but there we go. 25 online. He's got that triple dagger. As you say, this could be pretty insane damage output if the Fatal Bond setup's there first. And even without, it's a PA with a dagger and with a with, with a with a divine rapier. Bepum feeling completely shaken up now. Certainly. Waiting for their troll to respawn. That's inside the base, though. That's one thing we have to keep remembering. Shopify, that's them because they're fully set up in their base. Doing this outside the base, quite a bit more complicated versus Bepum. And Bepum, they're just getting prepared here. Full smoke for this next fight. What was the buybacks also, by the way, right? It was the Kunkka used it, and Lena now has her available. That boom, they'll have a shield room ready oh. for the next fight, so another it's wisdom. harder to burst through them. Another wisdom rune here on the side. Abed, he's he could, well, he could get his 25 right. Yeah, uh, it's easy to take. Okay. They're heading over the GPK. Checking out the area, he's gonna go in again. They found the three of the pure, he's in with the raw, he's gonna put the refresher in the raw to They have the feed grip as well, Arteezy completely locked down. He's gonna jump to the side, he's actually still alive. He he's gonna swapped. get back in, what? He survived for it, the crits are coming out. Arteezy's gonna be able to take down the two of them. He's ticking down low though. He's, he's blowing still alive. Away. He's actually gonna live. No way. He actually lives. The rest of Shopify step up, they look towards Toronto, RTZ is there ready and waiting, he can jump in with a Phantom Strike, get the triple, RTZ survives! And look at GPK, he's gonna get caught as well! They could go for more, another jump forward into Holy the moly! RTZ strikes back hard off the brink of death! Reacher. Gotta give Crit the credit though, he saved his life, that swap! Oh he completely goodness. bails RTZ out! He gets what pretty much what, he gets double roared, he gets fiend stripped, everything onto RTZ, but BAM! Whoop. He's out of there, off to the side, and that's enough to allow Arteezy to turn the fight around. Where the hell did Nightfall just disintegrated? Oh, man. Rapier PA. Go to hell. They've got, what, 70 seconds, no storm, 40 seconds on Nightfall. Oh, my God. Starting to swear a bit here. Oh, yeah. On Bet Boom. Completely different faces on their yeah, side now. Yeah, out now for RTZ. Did he spend out? He did. Buys the Abyssal as well, too. He's all in. All right. Down the mid they go. It's going to be a timing, though. Bet Boom, they're going to have Nightfall back up as well as Toronto Tokyo very shortly and likely for the defense. We'll see how much Shopify can do beforehand. Fortification out. No buyback necessary here from Bet Boom. 
Huge influx of gold, though. That what? It was up to 22,000 gold lead or something at some point. Down to three. Everyone now blessing themselves with some full items here. Fly. Potentially a full Agnus, but holding buyback. RTZ. And aggressive there with the safety of the X. Buyback's all. I mean, Lena, buyback. Starting to get quite a bit of them online again here for Shopify. And Abed with Wind Waker has protection for himself, even if they full jump. This is under attack. Clearly even game, if not sided now for Shopify. We'll have to see how these next few jumps go. This PA. Nightfall still not quite level 25 either. Perhaps that could be a bit of a difference maker if he hits 25 to try to protect himself. But as we've seen, he still just gets disintegrated from a crit or two. Not only got to control RTZ, they've got to find crit as well. Yes. But you see how one little swap can cause this type of a change. Poking high ground. That boom looks like they're trying to finish up perhaps like these one or two buybacks. GPK about 300 short. Everybody else having theirs available. They commit on save. He commits for that full Aghanims. All right. This next fight could be everything. Both teams here playing to stay in the upper bracket. Shopify will have to back up. Waves being shoved in. Twenty eight hundred damage crits now coming out from RCZ. It is it's at that point of the game where this PA will kill everyone. Mm -hmm. Still very close down the last fight, an ultra kill. I mean, RCZ. Nightfall got two shot, so that's gonna be always something to look at. Starting to group up, move out. Both teams just rally together as a unit. Blur is a powerful tool here. Especially with the Ags. Swallowed mm -hmm. up now by RTZ. We'll go back and pick up the brown boots again after that slot's open back up. They have vision here. Toronto Tokyo's been spotted. Let's see what RTZ can find. You get the chance to jump in now. A dangerous part of the map. Now it's a little scary. High ground has been claimed from Betboom. Crit, scouting. Doesn't quite see anything himself. RTZ on Aeon. that high ground. That's the Eon's prop. It's a free proc of the Aeon, though. Cute little plays there with the X. They could go again. They can keep doing this. They can keep fishing with this PA. He's in again. He got hit by X's that time. Missed chance. Level 25 has also now been hit onto Nightfall, so he's got the strong dispel. That dancing with death here. That's easy. If he gets caught once, that could just be it. If he can get at least one kill in the fight, he'll be close to he'll having close. buyback. Sure, yeah. Rapier will be dropped, but there'll be another another chance to hold. Massive patience. Wave mid starting to shove in pretty hard onto the side of Shopify. Abed, he's going to have to be the one to go back. He has bots too. I mean, bad boom. If, if someone scared. steps forward and gets jumped by this PA, they won't, they won't be standing a chance. They're just so scared because the free scout that they're doing with the torrents yeah. constantly. RTZ. GPK tries to go for the pull. A thousand pings a second right now. Artis is ready to get X'd again. Abed's here. Lincoln's popped. You can see save. He's always going to be ready with the defensive nightmares. Bottom Rex starting to get taken. Melee Rex might actually fall on the side of Bet Boom. Well. And, and there's the catch. Toronto Tokyo's gone. It's the buyback. And there's the, there's the jump. GPK is going to try and get on top of Fly on the back line. Boat buff is going to be out on towards the Warlock. That's a lot of mana from GPK being used. RTZ is in again. This is going to save him for now. Night 4, but the BKB is out. Does get hit by the Magic Missile. Fly drops the Golem. Supernova's been placed, but they can step out of range of this one. The Torrent Storm's out. Shopify don't it's want to go back into this. And there's the jump straight over towards Night 4. Night 4's able to put the battle charts. RTZ backs up with the BKB. Rules being used with the swaps there from Crit Crit. Keeping RTZ safe. Night 4's getting focused down by Arbed and he's going down. He's out. RTZ's back in. Triple kill for him. GPK out of mana and soon to be out of HP as Shopify. <laughs> they take the fight. They get the team wipe. Another rapier purchased. RTZ's all in.
Uh, such clever ways of taking these fights. So many scout mechanics. Throwing the wave of terror, throwing the torrents. They're constantly getting this vision to get these fights. Nightfall, he has to pop Satanic just to hit some golems to try to get some regen. Beautiful ways for them to take these fights. Pretty much 5k damage. Crit's coming out with these double rapiers. Woo! Onto the Roche, and we see there indeed just the small out of placement there for Toronto Tokyo. Immediately punished. Arteezy ready to go target to target and knows that as long as Crit's there, ready to get him out of any sort of dodgy situations, he can he can play like this. He can yep. play full aggro with the rapiers. And it was a, look, look at GPK. If I'm not mistaken, he jumps over here on the left soon after this egg to try to stop the combos coming out from the Lina when everything comes out. But either way, Arteezy's able to just constantly jump in, reset these fights. Look at Nightfall. He's just hitting golems. Oh boy. And that boom. They are running out of options. Yeah, Pure is like, uh-oh. What do you do? What do you do? It's, the game is in that territory where this PA has a beautiful lineup behind them. And, and they've got everything they need to close this up and to carry this one. It's yeah. now falling into the hands of Shopify Rebellion into whether they make any mistakes. Absolutely. I, this is, honestly, I, this X play, it's reminiscent of some times of the past, just how much you can abuse this X mechanic, especially if you have, what, three different forms of giving vision, as we see the torrent to give vision, the wave of terror, and then just a blur walk-up. Definitely causing issues for Bepum, even though they had wards, sentries placed everywhere. And I see them, they're like, they're mash pinging too. They're like, we need to find crit, but there's so many things now they have to actually address. This is remarkable. And now they have time to potentially go for a little bit of a push here. I think so, four dead. So if this gets either of the buybacks out from Bad Boom, in the ball and GPK. Bottom racks also dropped to the creeps while that whole fight was happening too. So they have extra momentum down bottom. <laughs> Should be a mid racks at least. Let's see what Bepoon can do. There's just the two of them. It's pure and safe. They don't want to use these buybacks. They'll let this mid racks go. Still, let's see it two in the top lane. Almost Mega everybody. creeps won't quite be on the menu yet. Almost everybody on Shopify now have buyback at the ready. Now for, I mean, for Bet Boom now, who do you want to actually go on for? It still feels like crit, but you there's just so many crit. different things to solve, because Fly is also a counter initiator. Oh, crit, he's going to use this, he's he's gonna use this progressively. He's going to set up on a pure. Well, it's easy able to finish him off. That's pure out for two minutes. That's a dieback. He's out. My God, are you crit? Look at him go. They're already looking for more. <laughs> Four versus five, and against an Aegis and a Cheese. Bet Boom's got to try and hold. Crit can confidently, he just like stood at the tier four there versus four heroes. Has no fear, he knows he has his team's back up now. <laughs> Look at him go. I mean, he's got the swap at the ready, so they're terrified. I mean, what do you do? It feels like you've just got to sort of let the mega creeps come out. You don't want to fight without pure. It's 90 seconds without him. The supernova's out. They'll kite it out. Crit able to back off. GPK's actually going to come in and put the pull back of the Vortex, but it doesn't matter. No damage to be done. Crit's fine. He's looking for the aggressive swap. He's going to find it. He's another Nightfall. Nightfall pops to BKB. RTG. He's jumping up, but he gets caught by the Grip. But he's X back. And he's going to get dragged back to safety. Crit back up to full HP. They catch him with the Hex. The Light Tracker ran the Laguna. They're bursting Nightfall down. Like GPK jumps in with the Vortex. Nightfall's in trouble. The boat comes crashing down. Was able to get the ult off. He but can't another move. The Light Tracker catches him. The boat's flying in. The Golem's on top of him. It's, it's over. They can't hold. They've done it. They've absolutely done it. What a comeback. What a turnaround from Shopify Rebellion to not only secure the game, but the series two to one. They're moving up. They're moving I on mean, here in the upper bracket. No lower bracket yet for them, as they will not bet boom down. A well-deserved hug. Abed, stone cold as usual, but look at Boba, all smiles. I mean, this was this was one of the most ridiculous comebacks I think we've seen in some time. That's a crazy one. What, 22,000 gold lead. Bet boom, a team that rarely does give up when they ha give up these type of leads they or stuff don't. like bet that. Boom, but you don't make comebacks against bet boom. But you know but what? Today, they maybe got a little overconfident. The Deso purchase from Pure and stuff like that. Definitely gonna look back and regret that, but you have to give the credit to Shopify. Those buybacks in the top lane, that's where it all started. Yeah, the last few team fights, that late game coordination from Shopify, just on the same page like never before. And uh, the way they, wow. they sort of poked and prodded 
in those last few engagements, having Arteezy hunt things out on the front line, and yeah, crit, not only with the saves, but those last th those last couple of ag aggressive swaps, that really closed the game up. Honestly, and, and that was a game. huge risk to take, you know, because crit, obviously, yeah. it was so important that crit was able to provide saves, to, to, to have the foresight to be like, I'm actually going to go in on the front, and I'm going to set up this final play. I mean, mind, mind blowing stuff there from Crip. Yeah, he was honest, definitely my MVP. Because that that top situation, that's where the game is likely over. If he doesn't get that swap, GG. Probably. It's game over. But multiple times, yeah, clutch swaps aggressively, defensively. Wow. Oh, well, they've done it. As I they said, they've it. done it at a point where they've struggled in so many tournaments before. They will be moving on. They've managed to move on here. First round of the upper brackets. They smashed it. They smashed it. They had a rough, 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 rough one. Oh, yeah, one of the games was rough, but the other two. One where they played ahead, they kept ahead on this kind of a comeback. That's the sort of performance you need to be pulling out to, to go all the way here in these top tier tournaments. Shopify Rebellion, they'll knock down Betboom today, two to one. They sure did guaranteed top three finish here at Dream League and in what fashion, a fantastic comeback off the back of amazing swaps and of course ultra kill for TZ's PA. It was, uh, it was a joy to watch. A lot of cheery people here as well. We got some biased panelists coming out here, Jacobs. This was Oh, uh, come on. Just one of us. Just one of us. Wait, listen, look, look. listen, we've well. not been a fucking region for so long. <laughs> for so long, because our teams go to lands and stuff, and they look so good. And then there's, there's the chokes that happen. Uh -huh. That was the opposite of a choke. That was, that was a clutch. Yes. TZ clutched with the rapier. Like that fight where he got swapped out by Crit, which by the way, beautiful swap by yeah. Crit. Super amazing play from him. But going back in, like just trusting that, okay, with this sliver of HP and the the lifesteal from PA, I am going to be able to, like the only play there is to go in and kill literally everyone. It's, it's such an insane call because otherwise I think he jumps out of the fight and he like dies anyway and then the game is over. Like legitimately the one decision that he could make there is just trust that the 10% HP and the lifesteal was going to be enough. But it's like the balls that it takes with the rapier in upper bracket when you're so close to winning the game to do that after getting swapped out of such a desperate situation is like, this guy has nerves of steel. Mm, this he, was uh, this Arteezy I'm talking about too. I know, I know. This, I mean, this was the Shopify, formerly EG, that we have seen when they were still EG. This is the team that made a top finish every single time, Lacoste. Pretty much. I mean, Arteezy, he can carry the games. I think this is the big one that it really shows. And after horrendous laning stage, he didn't like no well, he boost was of speed. He, yeah, he was lagging and couldn't uh, CS properly. And there was a lot of friendly banter in this game as well. You know, a lot of all chat. Usually we don't see that uh, and it's nice to see it. But uh, yeah. It, it's hard to choose like who played the biggest part. Something that we did mention uh, before the game started is that they have so many tools to break this uh, combo that they have with the Beastmaster, uh, with the Fiend's Grip, uh, these swaps, these golems on top of the Arteezy just to make him more maneuverable. And Aghanim Scepter on PA, this item is straight up OP. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. That was just a fantastic series by Shopify. And honestly, towards the end of that, it felt like I was watching Team Spirit, you know? At, at some point, that game looked really hopeless. We, we had all thought it was over. We walked back down to the studio, and then all of a sudden, I hear screaming from the side. And it's Jenkins. Most of us walked down. <laughs> <laughs> I played against PA enough on this patch. Okay. All right. But, um, I, 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 just, I just really think that the persistence and the resilience that Shopify showed there was so impressive, because I think games like that are where a lot of teams may just kind of give up on, right? When you've lost your Rumble. racks, when you're yep. when you're down 20k net worth, when it feels like you've got no buybacks, how the heck are we going to win this? And you just wait for that PA rapier, you wait for the big play to come on in and then things just align in your favor and your your resilience pays off. And it was just really, really great to see this version of Shopify. I feel like I haven't seen them show this much grit in a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, they, they needed to win like seven fights in a row. And like they the, did. The moment that he picked up the rapier, it's like, okay, they got the, you know, the one nice like fountain swap and killing these heroes in the base. Now they just need to do this six more times and they've got this. And they fucking did it, man. <laughs> they actually did it. Cool. I can't believe it. And they have okay, been baby. in situations like that before where they didn't do it. Yes. So what was the difference? Wait, you know what? Anime arc. Anime arc? We can ask Maybe. them. Maybe. I hope we can ask them. I believe we can ask them. Uh, we're jumping on other than Arteezy. Arteezy, congratulations on a great series and top three guaranteed. And uh, I don't know if you heard a little bit of the conversation we just had, but what's the difference between 
what you did in that game versus in the past when you were in similar situations with your backs against the rope? Uh, I don't know. I think we're a better team. I think we improved a lot. I, I don't think it's like magic. I think we are putting in work and it's kind of showing. At least it's starting to show. Um, and uh, it feels good to have, you know, some visible improvements. So it gives you some hope. Okay, hard work paying off. I love to, I love to hear that. Uh, earlier this week, uh, I asked Atura for a tier list of carries. And I would love your take on it as well, since you seem to be the only one who is playing Muerta as a carry as well. And I would love to know how you rank her and which other heroes you would consider really good or maybe really bad. Um, I think if I had to do, like, it's pretty common knowledge. So I would say it's like Gyro, Sven, PA. I think those three are top tier. Um, and then there's like the... I, I don't know what to label it, like niche, maybe comfort, maybe situ like situational, maybe player specific, but I really like Morta. My games have been felt like pretty strong when I play it. So uh, in my pubs as well, sometimes I go 0-10, sometimes I go like 20-0. So I just like, I feel like naturally she's just some like wild card hero. So um, it was like, we lost game one and I'm like, okay, so what do I want to play into this lane? Cause I know he's in the pick like one of two heroes that he always plays. So I just asked for Morta and it worked. I but they banned it the third game, it was kind of sad. I was actually wanted to play it again. <laughs> hey, respect where it's due, you know? Uh, it's all good. I'm joined by uh, Jenkins, Lacoste and Effie, and I'd also love to ask you some questions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hi, RTZ, congratulations on the crits. Uh, I have one question. You haven't won anything, uh, like, first place-wise. Uh, from Manila Masters in 2017, <laughs> you're 1BO3, 1BO5 away from it. You came really close uh, during the Singapore Major, are you doing it this time? Uh, I think I am putting as much effort in as possible to achieve it. That's like the simple answer. I think I'm trying to play as much Dota as possible, trying to spend as much time as I can. So, yeah, hopefully, let's just say let's just say yes. I believe in you. <laughs> we we can we can show you the board. I'm also putting a lot of faith in you. I said that you're taking the whole thing three one in the grand finals. You better do it. Against who? Uh, didn't say particularly, but uh, it's just gonna be three one. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> there you go. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Uh, congratulations on the win, RTZ. I just wanted to ask you about how burnout affects your team because I know that you guys declined to participate in the recent BB Dacha tournament, and I I'm curious mm -hmm. on how you feel about conserving your energy versus maybe using downtime to scrim, maybe to go on vacation. Um, I think it just sucks sometimes when you're um, in a bad place as a team and then you have like a, a tournament into a tournament to tournament where it never feels like you have that time to kind of catch yourself. Um, I would say that is the lead contributor to burnout, at least from what I can see for me and sometimes my teammates. It's like when you, when you want to learn something from a tournament that you lost, it feels really difficult to apply it while you're in this like tournament mode for the next tournament. So I felt like the, it was like a kind of this snowball that happened to us from Bali to Riyadh that we weren't able to actually like kind of catch ourselves up and like enter the tournament with a brand new conception of things. I feel like um, that's what affects us the most in terms of like the burnout sensation. I see, thank you. Hey, Big A, good to see you. Uh, we have a moment from the game, which I think you should be able to see somewhere, where you were 10% HP, you got swapped out by crit on the on Venge, uh, and you decided to go in as PA. Can you just describe your thoughts during this moment? I'm just looking for a blink target in this. Like, I'm just literally looking at like, who do I blink on right now? Because like, the only way to win this team fight is if I insta-kill some core. So I need someone to blink on to insta-kill another core. Because the thing is, the change to her second spell, where you like lifesteal, it's like, it gives you these opportunities. Honestly, I'm down to nerf this hero after this tournament. So. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's what everybody was saying in the green room too. All right, thank you, RTZ. But only after. Only after, of course. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. glad, of course, this happened. But after, now they can nerf it. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a fantastic game to watch. I'm sure uh, you guys are all going to still ride the high. So uh, I, I hope you all have a good time tonight, but uh, come back well rested. Wait, what? You're up a bracket finals. That is... Saturday, you got a day off. That's lovely. Um, nice. <laughs> that is nice. All right, well, congratulations once again on the series, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us, and of course, good luck on Saturday. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I mean, this was a, this was a fantastic comeback, because I'm not going to lie, there's several times where we indeed got up thinking, well, 
you know, if your team wins, <laughs> going down, and then uh, the PA comebacks, they are always an absolute treat to watch. And it is, uh, and there, there's so much goodwill behind wanting to see Shopify do well, that I think this was, a, this was a very satisfying one to witness, and I'm sure that my panel can agree with that. But there's a, that was number bracket semifinals. There's two of those, that's why they're called semifinals. And uh, yeah, Shopify Rebellion, they need an opponent. And we are going to decide that opponent very soon because we got another best of three coming your way. We are going to watch Team Spirit versus Thunder Esports. So stay tuned for another banger of a series here at Dream League Season 21. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule, dare to triumph against all odds, dare to rise above fate. Passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone, to the final series of the day. I Yay! will be guiding you through it as well as Cinderin. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's you. Cinderin, We're back, baby. How's the, how's the Stockholm Cinderin MMR adventures been going? Uh, pretty okay. Oh, that's actually I, think, I think my win rate is slightly over 50%, so that's good. You know, this has been uh, an uptick for you. Yeah, I played a little bit with Fogged and Kezu last night, so that was obviously a loss overall, but... <laughs> Most of the time when I've been playing alone, it's been good. So, you know, fine. Do you notice that your your energy is different here in Stockholm as opposed to where you live in Denmark, which I don't know. <laughs> where you Copen. live uh, in... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to dox you, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, why, is, that's why I don't give you my address correct. as a safety measure, so because you don't just randomly say it on stream. That's good. Steal your dog. Yeah, my man. Uh, my energy level? Yeah. I'd say it's pretty similar. I'm, uh, I'm keeping a late, a late schedule. I go to bed late. I get That's up late, the main just thing like that at I've home. You, yeah, I'm a night owl. You are a night owl. You're yeah. a nocturnal creature. Yeah. If I if I'm in my natural habitat at home, I'll go to bed at like somewhere between three and four a.m. So I've been, keep, I've been keeping it up with that here because we don't have the morning shift. So that's good. That's right. That's perfect. And you know who else is joining us on this late shift? No night owls. I'll tell you that much. Yes, one of them is a normie dad who is struggling <laughs> to stay awake right now, and the other one. It's Kazu. Let's bring on Fear and Kazu! <laughs> Just throwing things at me. Probably. Welcome, gentlemen. Wait, which utensil did you bring today, Fear? You bring Hello. a new item every time. Yeah. I don't have time. He was oh. ready for me to throw him I was one. taking a nap. Oh. <laughs> Classic <laughs> old man behavior. Fear, welcome to the night shift. We've had you actually every <laughs> single day on the night shift. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been here before. <laughs> but here you're going to be talking about Tundra and Spirit, which is going to mm. be our series today, as well as Kezu. Kezu, welcome. Thank you're going to be talking about Kezu as well. Have I been here? I love no, talking about Kezu. I have welcome a to the night recollection. Shift. Sorry? Welcome to the night shift. Uh, thank you. It's the first time being here. Thank Glad you. to be here Handshakes well. all around. Handshakes all thank around. You. Welcome and, to the night and, shift. And, and, welcome to the night shift. Welcome to Tundra vs. Spirit, everybody who's joining yeah. us. It's a very exciting series because, well, Spirit are continuing their very hot, hot, hot streak. They have only dropped one game this entire Dream League Season 21, which is also the entirety of their group stage. And it was against Betboom, who's now in the lower bracket, which means yep. that they have nothing to be afraid of anymore. They are invincible. They're invincible. <laughs> Absolutely invincible. Why are we even playing this game? It's a formality. How are, how are they ever going to lose a game today? We just need to write something down on Liquipedia just for the sake of it. It's predetermined. <laughs> I, I would agree with that for sure. Spirit is looking super good, and yeah, I think yeah. they're the favorites going into this one by far. But By Tundra, far? Yeah, but I think by far. you got the tops and magic on the other side, mm -hmm. but we're going to have to see it if they want to win this series. That's the way I look at it. See, Topson's only one core on this side of Tundra, though, but... We're seeing this man on the screen, Mira. He's not content being a support anymore. Is, uh, no. Based on the past three games of Spirit that I've seen, he wants to do the carrying over Yatoro half the time. This team has five carries. Yeah. When they need to have the fourth and the fifth, they show up. The Maposhka Eng, the Mira Dark Willow, whatever other heroes we're going to throw in there, some Shadow Demons who's breaking you throughout the entire late game. They're coming. They'll actually, be there. I actually think it's by design that this team is just a little bit ahead of the curve of other teams, that they understand that with the map being as big as it is, the amount of resources that there are, the pace of the game, they plan to expect these games to go late enough that all of the heroes mm -hmm. can carry. And I think other teams are still maybe stuck a little bit more in the past where they pick like supports that maybe don't necessarily scale as well or that inherently don't play very well around farming. Uh, but you look at the heroes that this team plays, they will get those Midases, they will yep. get those scaling items, and yeah, we, it's kind of crazy. We had an interview the other day with uh, with Collapse, who, you know, kind of 
Couldn't really initiate very much, which he loves to do in his position three, but it didn't matter. He gave vision to his supports that were killing people. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I think that's a good way to, of attacking the series today for Tundra is to find a way to solve the support issue, because I actually think that's the that's the X factor for this team as much as people love talking about Yotaro. Yeah, I think you need to get you need to get in there, you need to get in the back line. And that's where I think where you talk about Thompson, that's your job, bro. He's gotta get back in there with his Earth Spirit, Earth Shaker, whatever it may be. You know, dunk in the back line and take him out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, I would definitely agree with that. I think Topson, like, the one thing he's brought to Tundra is a lot more aggression. Like, Nine, he, he was a good mid laner in his own rights, but, like, no one's, like, at the same level of Topson of, like, being crazy yeah. when it comes to, like, just getting in there and not being afraid to make things happen. I think that really has given Tundra a big boost. So I have been liking that. And I've also been really surprised about how well Nine is playing on position four. Like, of course, Bane is, like, super strong right now, but I was watching him, the way he's moving across the map. Like, he's catching heroes. He's always in the right spot. He's, you know, as a former mid player, he knows what his mid yeah. player needs to succeed. And it's working out really well for this team. I feel like playing with 3-3 three, three as a mid or a four, it conditions you to be a good playmaker. But I think he's more greedy, which is not a bad thing. I think it's really good in the current way how you should play Dota. But it conditions you to find moves on the map and maybe, maybe do it with less resources than other players maybe would, because you need to make more space. And yeah, I just feel like it's working out great. And you're playing with one of the most aggressive mids ever. And he's a mid before, like mm. you said. Boom, it's all together. The whole recipe, it's cooking. Yeah, it's uh, been Topson's claim to fame for basically his entire competitive career, which is why most people assume that it would be a pretty seamless transition, at least for him, into this Tundra lineup. And then Nine is exceeding expectations, the fact that he has moved... Uh, we've probably brought this topic up before, but has anyone moved from mid to four before? Because Toronto Tokyo moved from mid to five, but mid to four... Uh, it has happened. Uh, I don't know if it's been... I, I guess the reason this is so special is that it is in the recent defending champions of the international, right? Yeah. Like, usually they would not make a, this drastic of a change until at least, you know, losing the next year or something. So that's why it really stands out. We have had core players turn to a support role to, to change the team dynamic before, but uh, one player that comes to mind that tried it was Weeha. He used to play mid and then he started playing four. Mm -hmm. um, he did not find the same success. Yeah. Uh, I think in part due to his perhaps own lack of experience in the role and also the team that he managed to find his way with compared to, you know, Nine is playing with a team of TIG. Yeah. Yeah. I would also mention the fact that Hero Pool, like Nine was playing support heroes in mid All along. The <laughs> whole time, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so like, he's, I, say, I see him on Rubik, right? It's like, oh, I mean, he's not... He doesn't have to learn yeah. Rubik. Yeah. He already knows how to play it's these things. Or a Winter Wyvern. No, so he already Wyvern. has the Call button. Willow. <laughs> he has like the button pressing already down. He just needs to work on the map movement. Yeah. But still, all that being in mind, we are considering Spirit to have an edge here. As we get into the draft of game number one, and the best of threes have already started out very exciting. The Shopify series previously, what a way to start playoffs <laughs> off. <laughs> it was uh, a treat for people who didn't see that. Especially if you're an Arteezy fan, you I gotta rewatch that. Yeah. I love PA too. <laughs> I, love PA. <laughs> I, I was theorizing earlier uh, that PA was going to go up in priority to toward a first phase or at least early second phase pick, and Shopify did run it in that previous game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were backs against the wall, but the thing that's so crazy about this hero, which um, I was talking to SVG backstage last night, and he said, um, he said he thinks part of the reason that a player like Yotaro doesn't like Gyro so much is that this hero has to play well from ahead. Um, if if you fall behind, Gyro is not a better carry than a lot of the other strong ones, such as Ooh. Sven, PA, etc. Yep. Gyro dominates from ahead, but if things go wrong, it's a bad recovery hero. PA is like the perfect recovery hero. Everything falls apart, you get a rapier, all of a sudden you can win the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Sven finds one huge cleave in a fight or whatever. Um, another example of a carry that can come back from behind that we've seen Spirit play in the past has been Faceless Void, which I yeah. think Yatoro is still rating very highly and that I think we'll be maybe seeing some play today. I think Gyro's also just a lame hero. That's not a Yatoro hero. Mm. This guy, he wants to like slap or like be some <clears throat> be some type of assassin, get in the back line or like have some sick timings. Gyro's more like, I have this, I now I farm more, then I go Roche and then it's still like, it's so tailored, I think, how a gyro plays. Whereas Yatoro, I think he's more like the... You want him to be the axe factor dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. more improvisation. Exactly. So we have a first pick Earth Spirit, which is at least semi-protected with a Monkey King ban. I think most of the answers we've seen to Earth Spirits are like some Earth Shakers, maybe. Yeah, I mean, what about... Like, I was thinking Dazzle for Tundra could be one of those heroes <laughs> that you could pick. There it is. Or Dang. Thompson. 
against the Earth Spirit, because you're going to win mid yeah. right away. You've got the AoE heal for the Magnetize. And yeah, the hero itself has just looked really strong. It's a universal hero. And this is like the one hero I could see Tundra like taking a game off of Spirit convincingly, because a lot of players don't really understand this Dazzle, myself included. Like I'm starting to understand <laughs> yeah, more. I could more see them win because I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like as you see more of it and the more it's played, like you're starting to see the strengths of this hero. Like the Ags is just kind of strange. It's like a fairly new change, right? Like mm -hmm. when they change the, how the Ags work. Yeah. And it, it's pretty cool. And Thompson, he's always been that type of player where he finds something new and he's usually the first to exploit it. Yeah, you don't know it. what the hell it does. Yeah. Like, then he just whips it out. <laughs> Probably half his teammates don't even know, so he has to talk that through. His and we teammates saw... were like, why do you want us to move our couriers over the Tormentor? <laughs> right, like, I was just going to say, we saw that funny clip, uh, or I'm, I'm sure a lot of the audience have seen that clip, but in case you missed it, Tundra yesterday in a game uh, flew five couriers to the Tormentor and Dazzle soloed it. Mm -hmm. So a very, it's like, it might not seem like the biggest of deals, but at this level of play, not having to rotate multiple heroes to uh, secure that big Tormentor deal. and just having one player do it, you maintain the map control, you get a big objective that's worth a lot of gold. Um, and yeah, you do it with minimal investment. So, and can I just say, it's not surprising that it's, if something super nerdy like that happens, it's it has to be Tundra, Tundra right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> There's one thing, like, there, it's always been the backline supports that you kind of need to deal with, but I think Dazzle makes it even more special, especially when you play from mid. So if you're Spirit, you need more heroes that get in the backline. Whether it's some heroes like Spectre, Night Stalkers, or other heroes that when this Earth Spirit goes in, because if it's just that, like if it's just a, I know, like easy type of engagement, Dazzle will love it. He was just going to heal it all off over time. But if you can overwhelm him, that, ha that ha it's the only answer that I see to this hero. So if you just like chill and play backline and just wait and you don't get to break it, I think this Dazzle hero is just way too good. Well, one of the collapsed heroes that we saw that may be able to do that was the Night Stalker. Yep. Definitely a possibility here. Uh, I don't know if you would pick it this early as Spirit. Is there some concern with picking Earth Spirit and Night Stalker together as the first two that you can get too countered by the two heroes sharing some qualities like mobility and being strength or... I mean, I think the biggest concern is going to be right now losing your lanes, right? If yeah. you just pick a Night Stalker really early, you already know that Earth Spirit should not win versus Dazzle mid, so if you lose two lanes really hard, and that's kind of like the strength of a Dazzle right now as well. If you're ahead on Dazzle, <laughs> this hero is super strong. Yeah. So like, but I don't know if you can stop him from being ahead as far as like the mid lane matchup goes, but I think your side lane matchups have to go decently well. Mm -hmm. so, of course, these heroes like Spectre and Night Stalker are great on getting in the back lines, but both these heroes are kind of weak in the laning stage. So they, you're going to put yourself in a position where you can get ran over. Yeah, I think I also agree. How do you stop Dazzle in lane? I feel like you don't. Like he's going to have his first five maybe, minutes. Right? Yeah, like you. Some Lena. Like he's going to yeah, get his stuff minutes. the first five minutes, but I assume this Earth Spirit is probably already mid. So I would like heroes that when this five, six, seven minute mark, nighttime, whatever comes around, that you can rotate there. Like. Plus five inch, maybe. Have we ever some seen a Dark Willows? Mira play Earth Spirit before? We have. We have. Okay. I don't think four Earth Spirit is that good this yeah. patch though. I feel like what makes this hero good is getting the levels fast and getting those key items. Vessel. I find yeah. more often than not the problem with playing four Earth Spirit in this patch is that it it compromises your lanes too much. The hero doesn't offer very much it for your off laner. So in a patch where we see for a lot of the teams that the off lane is winning, mm -hmm. with with Earth Spirit the lane is almost impossible to win at this level. Yeah. Like what hero can you pair with uh, with Earth Spirit that that can win a meta safe lane? I don't. I don't know if it's I guess the question is, do you want to give tops in his game? Because like the yeah. only thing that you could do otherwise, which I'm probably not going to do now that I have Dark Willow, is like, you know, pick a Lena mid, Earth Spirit just ganks him like crazy, and then all of a sudden Thompson has no game. Mm -hmm. But that is definitely picking into like not really a meta strat right now. So yeah. perhaps you just throw the Earth Spirit mid, let him do Earth Spirit things, and try to outplay them in the mid game. Maybe get the better carry to carry matchup and believe in Yatoro in the late game. Yeah. I'm very you could play Earth Spirit earlier. 3, but Collapse doesn't play it, right? Uh, not this tournament. It's, it, it makes me feel weird that we see heroes like Earthshaker and Earth Spirit, and we're not instantly like, ah, oh, this is a support hero. Yeah. Except we're like yeah. instantly, oh, this is a mid hero. <laughs> I mean, the one thing you still get from the Earth Spirit mid is obviously the Vessel. Vessel is good against Dazzle, you know, you can eventually take out against Shallow Grave, you lower the heals, whatever it may be. So you can still play for that later on, but Spirit get themselves some... I mean, these are just good laning supports, but also team fighting later. So I think it will help them, like, find the better core picks later on for both Collapse and Yatoro down the line. But yeah, they're going to have to make sure to address this Dazzle more with their core picks.
This looks like the setup for an old Spectre draft, right? But Spectre doesn't have Haunt anymore without the eggs. So I don't know how good that really is uh, with the new Shadow Step Bolt, but it just, it came to mind because we were talking about killing the supports, striking the back line, that you have a Warlock protecting you in lane and you have uh, insane teamfight damage with Fatal Bonds with all that spread damage that you're already posing here with Dark Willow and Earth Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can put the Bedlam onto Spectre before she haunts, like or before she shadow steps, like we saw the other day. So maybe that's an avenue they're exploring. I've got a um, better hero for you. PA. Yeah. <laughs> you already know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they call from us. I mean, Tundra, Tundra is preparing for it already, right? By picking Tide as a lane matchup. But this is a time matchup. Bait. Until there's shards. Such a bait. Yeah. Tide is good against PA for 25 minutes, and then PA eats you in half a second. Yeah. So. Then he eats that one as well. <laughs> for oh, breakfast. Yeah, that's a very bad one. I mean, Spectre doesn't have a timing versus Tide, though, where no. PA does, right? That's so very I'd true. rather go for yeah. that route. Yeah. I do think the Tide pick is very good if he gets off to a good early game. I think the stationary team fight against heroes like Warlock and Earth Spirit, who have to like semi-commit into the fight and like kind of get going, and I think it gives you another layer of protection for the Dazzle. So here's just kind of on Spirit if they find the correct answer. I would not really be opposed to I think PA is great, yeah, as we touched on. Surprise! Yeah, surprise! I think surprise, I can leave surprise. <laughs> Why did Tundra leave it in the pool? Because, I mean, PA could have even been good for them. They have minus armor with Tide and Dazzle. They for gore, Skull emoji. I for gore. They didn't see the last match, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> PA is a hero that... It's gonna win almost always in these late game situations, right? But sometimes in your mind, you're like, we just won't let him get there, right? We'll, we'll end early, we'll put PA in a position where it won't be able to make these plays. And mm -hmm. to be fair, there's no offlaner, there's no hero in Dota that I'm just like, wow, PA can't win in the late game. So mm -hmm. you're just, they're confident that Tide, it will win versus Tide, at least it should in the laning stage. Tide will get fat, Dazzle will get fat because yep. it has a good laning stage. So they're just going to play for the economy. And from what we've seen from Tundra, this is a team that when they get a gold lead, they know how to keep it and keep building on it. And hopefully they're thinking that's enough to win the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe Tundra approached this from an angle of getting a tempo carry with that logic. Like we saw Juggernaut do well earlier today by uh, by Bet Boom in a game that was specifically not against PA. But yeah. you look at the heroes that they have. You have a Dazzle mid. If you play a Jug carry with Healing Ward, you're against all this AOE damage from Spirit. Maybe you can just outlast, get a Roche, and, and go push. Could be an idea. I do think you want the type of carry that you can gather around later, like whether it's the two I'm looking at are kind of like TB and Alchemist. I think they have decent timings. I know Alt PA can be a bit strange, but I think if you have minus armor and stuff behind you where you can rally up, I think you can also speed up the game. But um, I do think we all know that PA is quote unquote pretty broken or OP at certain <laughs> stages of the game. Quote yeah. unquote. Yeah. I don't think we needed the quote. <laughs> if you, Word like, on the street is. <laughs> if you jump the tide and you break him, like your dazzle can help you in the background. It's more like you need layers of helping each other. And even though they are playing against the best hero in Dota at a certain time, you have answers to it. Yeah. And I think the approach here is like, there's no one hero that I'm going to say they should pick right now because they get to see their lane matchup. Yeah. And I think what's going to be really important here, and I think the strat you go for is Tundra, just win three lanes. And if you win three lanes, you put yourself in a position to win the game. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want a hero that's also good versus PA, but yeah. I think you know, we've seen it in the last game, Troll's good versus PA, but yep. Troll still died in like three hits in the late game to PA. Anyone will. <laughs> Any hero yeah. is going to melt to this hero in the late game, so you're not really playing for the 1v1 PA matchup. You should just mm -hmm. play for winning your lane, playing for the tempo, map control, and having a net worth advantage, and hopefully you can close the game out before PA gets like double rape here yeah. at level 25. Interesting to see Spirit ban the Ursa here. Maybe their mindset is that this is a hero that can overwhelm PA even later on with just the flat-out damage mitigation of Enrage. If you're going for that build that we've it's talked Perma about with Rage. Perma Enrage, oh, yeah. that that's one hero in Dota that PA can't just blast. I don't know if that's And they good. wanted Axe, so yeah. Yeah. Roll and Ursa went out. I mean, Collapse yeah. is like one of the best initiating offlaners, right? Like ma ma mainly his hero pools, like melee heroes, Ursa's pretty good against that. So I do kind of like the Axe pick as well. I think like the nice answers you want to have against Tide at some point is like you want the hard lockdown that doesn't get shelled off. Last time they had Legion Commander, who else does it? Axe, you just straight up taunt him. There's no breaking free from the Kraken shell. And you can also just burst through the grave. Honestly, I think it's a pretty damn good Axe pick. I want to I make a case quickly again for Jug here, just because I think 
with Fear's logic of winning three lanes, I think Jug Grim is a really strong lane, and it's a really strong lane for Skyrath to gate to, because that little bit of X factor acts as a hero that, if you want this hero to be effective, it needs to win very early on, and naturally, you know, some of the heroes that can deal with him have been banned, but you want a Grimstroke pairing that can play aggressively, right? You don't just want to sit back, let Axe get a four-minute Vanguard, and just take control. So yeah. maybe Jug could be could be that. Skeeter loves Life Stealer. That could be an yeah. option. Lone Have, Druid is great this game I too. So. I mean, Still, Jug is also very rarely picked. I would say. I like a secondary hero who could kind of go in. I think like Lone Jug work and the fact if you want to ball up and push. Uh, I'm still looking at a hero like Alk. Maybe I'm too biased, but having a secondary hero can go in would be cool. Oh, that's I bold. Guess Void can do that. Mm. So this is Not a the hero that can one v one out carry PA in theory. If nope. he finds her, that's the issue, right? Like that's if you ever issue. chrono the PA, she's just dead. But like you're also trying to chrono a hero that you can't see. That's the, <laughs> the hardest <laughs> part, right? <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get to some point in this game where Skitter buys a blink and he just has to randomly <laughs> try to guess based on the dagger trajectory. I, uh, it's probably, you There's know, creeps are dying the there if I triangulate. <laughs> but and it's it also is. not good versus Axe in lane two. So that's yeah, they're not winning three lanes now. I think that's fair to say. That's very unlikely. It also doesn't push very fast. If Tundra are trying to out-tempo the Phantom Assassin, make her map small, how are they taking objectives? Yeah, they don't really have objectives. They're trying to win the late game with this pick. Yeah, yeah, that does it does feel that way. Obviously, there's some awesome synergy for Void. You love playing with Grim with the Inkswell. You love playing with Skyrath for the Chrono Burst. But again, the writing on the wall here is just how many times have we seen these late game PAs just completely pop off out of nowhere? Um, I guess Tundra, can you find PA? Is my question in late game. Do you have a way of doing that reliably? Just go for it. <laughs> Big old X from Fear. This book has already been written. But if you want to go on an adventure, specifically a DHL Dota adventure, well, I've got just the thing for you. Attention DHL Dark. Mysterious happenings are going on in Malaysia. Get your team, get in that facility, and figure out what the hell's going on down there. And if you want to figure out what the hell is going on in this game, number one, let's go to the PogChamp Pandas. start of the season, we had a tournament go on, Bet Boom Universe, where these two teams ended up matching up against each other in both the playoffs as well as the finals. Both series went the distance. And then we had our entire season go by, and those teams never met again in the playoffs. They only ever met in group stages. Maybe possibly because Team Spirit didn't necessarily have the best performances early on. There were some times where Tundra didn't necessarily look so hot. So they never matched up in the playoffs until we come to this match right here, Avery. Time to find out who's the best of the strugglers all year, I guess, even though somehow both these teams are also on top at the same time. Yeah, come close to, you know, the end of the year where the matches really matter. And no surprise, the TI-10 champs and the TI-11 champs Looking for him. I, Team Spirit are just an eight figure team, right? They're a what? Eight figures. If the tournament's oh, over eight figures, nice. you know, <laughs> do they show up big? Maybe they're going to reduce that to seven uh, figures. I was thinking of figure eight, and I was yeah, like, I is this some sort of like. I think they're, they're starting to extend that eight? range, right? Maybe seven figures, couple seven figure tournaments. Like, okay, maybe we'll yeah, try a little yeah. bit, you know. But generally, they're in for the big prize. Everything else is chump change. They'll leave it to the 
<laughs> Western European teams. You know, <laughs> they can have all that, but I yeah, mean, you, been, you guys can fight over the million. They have been very dominant lately in Tundra. I think they found something that's starting to work for them a bit, and they seem very confident. And of course, very explosive lineup, very nerdy lineup as we've seen this tournament with another very toxic draft with Grimstroke Dazzle opener. Throw some team fight and some lane behind it. But of course, Yatoro on his signature Phantom Assassin. He's played it three times this event. He's won three times. And he has 40 kills over those three games. Gee. So he's coming for you. <laughs> that is no way around it. Scary hero and a scary stat line to be given. Surprisingly, he also. Player. He also has a lot of deaths with it, too. He, he averages like four or five deaths a game with the PA, Something which is more than other people. So maybe that speaks to how aggressively Yatoro plays with this hero. Yeah. Ooh, about to find out. I mean, this is not a game he can play aggressive in the early mid game. I think you jump into this Tundra lineup, you are going to disappear, right? Someone's getting soul bound. You're getting dazzle poison. There's grave. One of the interesting interactions, you know, everybody's been calling my theories a bit crackpot lately, but hear me yeah, out on this one, one, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out on Here this one, okay? Here it comes. You got Dazzle, right? Yeah. You go into the late game, you have permanent grave. Uh-huh. Wow, I mean, how does PA jump any <laughs> how does PA jump the void when the void is invincible? He's permanently graved. You just uh -huh. run him in. Yeah. That's uh That's a theory, alright. You don't need to find the PA, you let the PA find you. <laughs> and then you lock him in a cage. Doesn't that mean that uh, PA should be really good at just Hunting the Dazzle first well, in a lot of these perma fights. Permagrave himself, too. <laughs> Graves for everybody. You can't, you can't permagrave two people. Well, you permagrave yourself first. Okay, he then he jumps you, on the face of his void, and then blows the void. Up the void in three hits. <laughs> well, do you have five backs? I don't know, man. It's a theory. <laughs> we'll see if it pans out. But, I mean, the grave could come in big. Because basically anything that prevents PA bursting you in some of these fights is going to feel good. Saves are one way to do that. I mean, another way is, you know, instance block. But there's no instant instance blocking happening in this game. Would you would you care to Except do, uh, backtrack. elaborate? Actually, there is. There's backtrack. Yeah, yeah, there's backtrack. There you go. You don't want to... <laughs> I know it's a very <laughs> specific characteristic that you put out there. You want to elaborate on that, or are you trying to save your strats for TI? I'm saving, I'm saving my strength. Okay. I'm just saying, there's an assassin that's quite good versus the Phantom Assassin that we have mm. not seen yet Denied called the thief. Templar Assassin that has a certain spell called Refraction, which gives oh, you... Oh, I thought you were talking about the Stealth Assassin. Yes, it gives you... Well, that too. gives you 13 instances of block with talent buffs. Pretty good versus Phantom Assassin in the late game when she has to try and poke you down and initiate on you. Yeah? So you're saying there is a carry in late game that, can, I that doesn't so. instantly die to PA? I would try it out, lose, and then ban it, but, you know... Okay. It's always worth a go. What's <laughs> happening in this game, however, is another cheese dazzle mid versus a melee hero. And Laurel is feeling the pain of the Topson Daz man right now. It's looking very familiar to the game where he played it against Nisha. He's going nice to kick him in the tower. I think, it's, I think he's dead, though. Yeah, he <laughs> can't actually win this fight, I don't think. We'll, he'll try, but Topson's too fast for him. Oh, 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 oh. Nicely played. He plants a tree and hides behind it outside of the range. If he took another Roll hit. Roll on him. Roll on him for dominance. He would have at least had to blow through his fairy fire, but very nicely played. Gets two CS with a boulder kick. Well, I guess that's a maneuver. Yeah. Still not doing much for him here, but. It kind of still leaves him in a it looked cool. shit situation. That's, that's time to roll all the way home. It's the Shadow Priest. Sends you into the Shadow Realm. I think, uh, you think Laurel, you know, they won Riyadh. Did they? It was kind of like a, a moment of... Um, I didn't know. Not redemption, but, you know, Laurel was able to finally prove that, like, hey, I deserve to be on this roster of TI winners. I'm not bringing them down. Well, not according to Reddit. But in this game, there are 10 agencies. Uh, Thompson's got two of Oh, players. Yeah, well, there's AUI. He's got two. Yeah, but he's not inside the game. Would you like to say that to him? I would. He's probably listening right now. I think he would agree with me. Well, he's too humble. That doesn't count. <laughs> I think that's actually part of the most stressful thing about being a coach is you're not inside the game. It's probably you true. You have to sit back and let your players do what you can, and you have no way to be able to control the fate. Sure. Vera 
Is this going to be our first blood? Has a fairy fire. He's going to be okay. The first blood does happen. It's on the other lane. 33 picks up the kill on Maposhka as he steps forward trying to interrupt the hard for two for one. Yutaro is also going to die. Yeah. 33. That Man. big old octopus on the end of a staff gets a double kill. And the itemization paying off big time for Tundra in, in some of these side lanes. An early headdress on Tidehunter. Not an item you see very often in the current laning meta because it's very expensive for what it gives and you have to get it early on in the lane for it to pay off, especially on a core. That is like unheard of, right? So to go this early headdress on the Tide, have the extra regen versus the spam of the Warlock and the PA, pretty damn smart by 33 and it pays off in, on top of the wand charges as nine suicides to be able to come back. Just gives them the extra manpower to fight that lane through the early harassing and get the kills on the backside. And now all of a sudden you have a top net worth Tide Hunter in this game who's cruising while his Earth Spirit is continuing to suffer because he cannot lane mid. At this point, Laurel wishes he was playing Ember against Huskar. <laughs> he would be feeling less pain, I think. Yeah, legitimately. Nine's gonna show up like Thompson needs the extra help. He gets a refill on the bottle. But this is what it does. It creates the gank potential. When you have such an advantageous one-on-one, -on -one, you want to use it. You want to be able to gank, get your supports free kills. It's just extra levels on the board, extra assist gold. This is going to be a tough early game for Team Spirit, I think. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job getting out of these silence, and of course, Collapse is free farming. That was pretty much guaranteed. So he can bring them back in terms of tempo. It's going to be the Dazzle show, though. And this is a hero that Thompson's been very successful with this tournament, is very comfortable with. And that can go a long way. He's going to have rune control. Secure the rune for Mira. He picks up the arcane rune, knowing that Nine and Thompson could very easily bully for it. They're just gonna bring everybody to this rune fight. Sneaking over here, they're gonna catch Mira as he was trying to cut into this lane to protect Laurel's tower. The rollout is gonna happen. They'll get the trade. Snaking dies for that pickup on Mira. One for one trade off in the mid lane. Honestly, not too bad for Laurel. I mean, he, yeah. he gets an extra kill and he gets some time where he doesn't have to 1v1 the Shadow Priest here. Very happy for that. But everybody's free farming on these side lanes. Everybody is just getting solo one-on-ones and they're not getting harassed as the two beefy boys are just pushing in the waves and cutting. Normally I'd say this kind of favors Axe whenever you're in this position because this is where the hero wants to be. And I I don't think Tide can exert the same pressure, but they're gonna bring in Skeeter. Extra yeah. time dilation. He doesn't have Chrono though, he's level five. That's an awkward move. And he's gonna go right back where he came from. Doesn't make it. He's gonna go right back where he came from. Good job, Laurel. You cost him three <laughs> seconds. It might come back to bite him. Hey, missed a CS because of it. Uh, I mean, the real question for me is, who comes online faster and exerts pressure in this game? Is it the Tide or is it the Axe? And if it is the Axe, you kind of have to make up for what's happening mid too, right? But the upside is you do have this Axe Dazzle matchup. So the permanent grave that was gonna bail you out of the Phantom Assassin jumps in the late game, no longer reliable. Yeah. Strategy in shambles <laughs> out here for Tundra. There is little aspects though to the uh, the shallow grave. It gives heal amplification, right? Well, not if you're dunked on. <laughs> yes, if you are dead, you do not get heals. You are correct on that. But <laughs> right, <I'm> here's <laughs> Roland to contest the rune will kick him. Back? Thompson in trouble? He yeah, with all these supports making the rotation over. Thompson is surrounded, but he's going to get the kill on Laurel first. Okay, he dies first, but he does get the kill on Laurel. Decent amount of gold, I guess, in the 1v4 situation. Thompson still finds something. Uh, that's space for the team. Gold for Collapse, as he is pretty far ahead of the pack here. This is going to be a very fast Blink Dagger Axe. He's getting stack priority, too. Man, it's going to be the Collapse show. You want to take those Ancients away from you, Toro. It's always a tough call. For your own physical health here, always have to consider it. Question with this early Axe Blink is always, what can you do with it though, right? Do you blink in and get a kill because you have damage follow-up with your supports, or do you blink in and die and then your game is ruined? Yeah, his damage follow-up is not the greatest. No. Uh, I think Mira being being able to put Bedlam on him early on is going to be really good. You're probably going to be guaranteeing a couple of kills in that. But uh, eventually, he's going to need this Earth Spirit. 
Yeah, I think that's the big combination. It's the axe jump into the Earth Spirit roll, you get the magnetize going. That's the team fight that Spirit are looking for, because then you can throw the bonds and the brambles on top of that, and everything comes together, right? right. Earth Spirit Warlock, classic combination. Only here you have one of them as a core. So it's even faster. They're going to look for 33. He is very tanky here with early phase boot armor. He does have Ravage. If he wants to put it to use here, he's going to put it to use. Last second, Skyrath Mage drops the Mystic Flare, and it's enough to be able to kill Laurel. And 33 sneaks away into the trees and TPs out. Really smart TP here. And it's just going to leave everything to clean up for Skeeter. He does have Chrono if he wants to commit it. Collapse going to show with the blink, but again, the damage. Yeah, he doesn't really get the jump in. He won it there. He should be able to get the chop on a Snake King. That extra movement speed might lead him to find another kill. Nine is going to be spotted. Nowhere really to run to. Trying to dodge Brambles, but Collapse is there with the call. No mana. There's can't, mana. Oh, we can't get a chop. Big one to get it. stack number three here for Collapse before the 10 minute mark. Damn, that is quite good. Most last hits at 10 minutes, too. He is at over 100 at the 10 minute mark. Absolutely decimating the neutral creeps in this game. And a third jump just to seal the deal, but he will not get the dunk because Laurel kicked him away. Laurel. Why do you do this? Shame. <laughs> Well, he has to make up for it. Redeem his honor by killing Snaking, Ooh. or at least sending Collapse up for a chop on that one. Man, why did I ever doubt early Collapse Axe Blink Dagger? Never again. Don't doubt, doubt Collapse yeah. on Blink. Why would I doubt him? Just yeah. He just runs, TP's top, gets two supports, goes mid, gets their mid player, and then dunks Snaking again, who respawns and insta dies. <laughs> That is quite a bit of momentum for this offlaner. I mean, Laurel's still struggling in this game, but Collapse is definitely going to make up for it. And a last hit for the Earth Spirit here. Very oh, nice. we got the roll started right before the sounds, but it may not matter. Too many slows, too much range. Nine and Thompson. Yeah, he's having a rough one. I think there's just not much Spirit can do to help him. It's the way the draft functions. Like, you first pick this Earth Spirit, Tundra picked. Dazzle into Grim to make sure, one, he has no lane, and then you have this Soulbind for him later. It just doesn't get much easier in the fight, so Laurel's going to be a liability for quite some time. It's just going to come down to collapsing and Toro making the fights happen. And, of course, you get the Magnetized Fatal Bonds combo going. He's going to do his job. More stack priority for Collapse. We'll push him up to 118 last hits. Will that, uh, will that be a detriment to Collapse later? Like we were talking about, the combo is the axe jumps in, the Earth Spirit follows it up. That seems like a pretty dream situation to get a soul bind onto. Yeah, you do have to think about it. I mean, you can't get a grip silence out if you're really clutch. Early BKBs are going to help versus Tundra lineup a lot, right? Because they do not have much that goes through the BKB outside of the last pick faceless void here. It's something to think about. It also depends who you jump, I guess, if you can find the supports. But I think it's a situation where you don't need too much net worth on this Earth Spirit for him to do his job. You just need to find the right openings. Still, Tundra efficient on the map. They'll double clear through the stacks. Tag team effort here. 33, not used to having to share these, but Thompson didn't get the memo. Yeah, Thompson is closing on the Agonim Scepter, so he really wants to get that one. Pipe is complete for 33, thanks to that little bit of gold. Snaking will die in the top lane. Not that big of a deal. Team Spirit bringing four heroes for that pickup. Nah, they didn't get the dunk either, so... Yeah. Huge waste of time for Collapse, to be honest. Have you had the Blade up. Mail yet? Of course he's <laughs> you coming see, in. His axe is net worth, man. You, this must be one of the most farmed axes of all time. It's got to be up there. He even brought a smoke with him to deliver that Blade Mail. That is nice. He is incredibly strong right now. Pretty much a guaranteed kill on anybody you find with any sort of follow-up spell. And they really want Thompson or Skeeter here. That's who they're looking for. They might find Thompson. Perfect catch. If they can kill him, the Bedlam's doing a lot of damage. And the Shallow Grave can't protect him. The that silence does stop the uh, extra bit of chop there. Calling blade charges not going up yet. Can I go again? Well, the map pressure Collapse is creating right now with this Bedlam follow-up is really nice because the cooldowns are just so damn low, right? Yeah. That's the nice thing about Bedlam here. 30 seconds. There are not many ults from a support in the game that are this low cooldown for an axe to just play off of. Like, even Skyrath ult, it's low cooldown, but 
it takes so much more of your mana pool, the uptime is not necessarily guaranteed, and even that's 60 seconds, so you're looking at two for one. This is quite a nice combination with the change. Team Spirit showing off all the little synergies here, making the map work for them from a very precarious early game with that mid matchup dominating a lot of the rune control and the rune battle that they had to commit to. That'll be a double damage in the river for Laurel as Collapse makes another move towards bottom. But that is a pipe tide hunter. Early utility for 33, just wants to sure up the team fight. And he is still number one net worth in this game. That's the crazy part. Somehow he has overcome. Well, he falls back down, but he is neck and neck with Collapse in terms of farming it up. That's those ancient stacks. Oh, yeah. Two big boys in this in this game right now. Who would you rather have? Utility 33, the Wraith packed up user, or Giga Chat Collapse? <laughs> Well, considering you call them a Giga Chad and there's no Wraith Pact, I feel like you may have uh, put your, your thumb on the scale there. A Giga Chad bit. collapse. <laughs> blink Dagger honest player. <laughs> I mean, I am a Blink Dagger offlaner at heart, so uh, I'm going to go with collapse, but it's good to have him back, you know. All right, so we got the, the anchor. They were talking about the Tide versus PA matchup, how it's kind of a debate. Tide can do fine in the lane, but later on he's kind of gets broken and killed by the the PA. But the Tide Hunter does have this tool that is kind of new to lock yeah, down a good the one. PA. I mean, this spell is just good. I think. Yeah. <laughs> just straight up, I think it's good in almost any game. Ninety percent. The the fact it's just a long duration leech that's pretty hard to kill for most melee heroes is. I mean, it just gives Tide a new way to play the fights like this, right? Suddenly he's just locking down a mobility hero forever. The Ren damage is going to come out. He's going to pop yeah, the Ravage to make sure he gets it. That is... That's the type of interaction, you know, you've played against this hero for 10 years. You might just underestimate it a bit. It's only your leash forever. I'll be honest, Laurel's, Laurel's pretty young. I'm not sure if he's played Dota for 10 years. How old is he? 16? <laughs> <laughs> Seven to nine, one thousand net worth lead for <laughs> Tundra. As we're setting up to a point where Roshan has got to be an objective. Both teams are thinking about collapse. Smoke breaks on him. ETP's out. Nobody get get caught here. ETP to his outpost, man. That was that was a little greedy. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, a little greedy there by collapse, but he'll get away with it. They stick around. They drop a ward before they retreat. I have a feeling Team Spirit. They want to keep playing here if they can. I mean, are they thinking that Tundra is gonna potentially go for early Roshan? Right. You have the Dazzle Tide Hunter lineup, so you have some minus armor, and this Dazzle honestly does it pretty reliably with the extra sustain. It's not an objective you want to give up your spear, but I don't know if Tundra are thinking about it this early. They've got to face this void lineup with Midas Maelstrom. Yeah, Spears, I was going to say, they're Spears. carry. Skeeter probably is not interested no, in Roche. not at all. Blade Mail Reflect, but you have some spell life steal. They're slowed down quite a bit here. If they can't finish off this Earth Spirit, he will deliver some retribution here. The Golems will do the work. Laurel doesn't have to. It's going to roll out here, see if he can find the other support. He knows Snake King's around. Rolls through the trees, spots him. Is his roll going to hit? It does. In time, stops that TP. A second pickup. And meanwhile, bottom, the real Ooh. prize as Collapse combines with Yatoro for some damage to find Skeeter. I think Skeeter thought he was safe because he saw all these supports top, but of course Yatoro happy to get involved here. And that blade mail doing a number on this Maelstrom Faceless Void. It's a very good axe matchup for a lot of the game. Pretty much forever, I think. Yeah, Until you're I, like four or five slot with like Scotty Satanic or something. And they've been looking for that kill. I think they were looking for that kill when they initially grabbed the blade mail and smoked. Yeah. Right? And they have been eluded by Skeeter this entire time until now. I mean, unfortunately, Thompson, you know, read that smoke and tanked it for his boy very deliberately. Of course, of course. But this time, that Tazzle nowhere to be found. I also think this Ags rush from nine is, it's interesting. I want to say it's greedy because you could go for some interim item like a veil or even just casual four staff. Maybe, I mean, Atos we don't see anymore, but these types of items have traditionally have been the go-to for, for Skyrath to build some momentum on the map. This is just like, I'm just going to scale into the late game. You know, I'm just going to be the ultimate carry. And Skyrath is another one of these supports in the current meta, like these Dark Willows, that if you get to the ultra late game that gets really weird and you get four or five slots, 
you do just carry the game. This hero becomes absolutely insane. Yeah. Especially with all the armor stacks you build up, you're just yeah, going you out. you get the shard and yeah. you've got all this magic resistance from intelligence and the armor. Yeah. Uh, initially, I was thinking the Skywrath versus PA matchup is, I mean, incredibly PA favored. But if you get to the ultra late and you just go in with Scion armor and you have, it's one of the supports that can actually get armor through its spells as opposed to having to buy a plate mail or something that won't do anything anyway. So then when you get one shot, it'll at least happen a little slower. I almost survived exactly. through that one shot, guys. Topson will have more time to grave you. Still, Tundra looking for some sort of team fight, I think, with this Chrono Ravage they haven't been able to use on the map as it's just getting split by the Phantom Assassin they can't see and Claps constantly shoving in bottom. Now it's going to be daytime, Roche. The Poshka will follow it. Is that the worst thing, though? They're not able to get a Chrono Sphere plus Mystic Flare, but they're not really behind for it. They're down by 2k net worth, but that's not that bad. And they probably feel confident about their late game, right? I mean, I feel like in some ways they did orient their lineup for late game. That's what the panel said anyway. Who, who said that? The panel. Yeah, was it Fear or was it Syndrome? I think it was Sindarin. Noted. <laughs> See what happens here. Just note that down, chat. Note that down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Noted. Here's again the... Hey, uh, there it is. Yeah, the old courier tormentor abuse. Not as exciting the second time, but just as disgusting, for sure. Oh, they tipped them because they know. Like, yeah. yeah, we saw the clip, man. You're not that cool. I mean, you are cool, but... Uh, maybe I was about to say, isn't that... I feel like that tip is saying, you're really cool, Thompson. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, maybe. When, when people tip me in pubs. That's not the case. They're saying, wow, Cap, you're so cool. Nobody's ever said that in their <laughs> entire life. I'm surprised neither team has manned up for this Roche yet. This game, because the game just feels so slow. I mean, there is a lot of AoE teamfighter on the pit. You don't want to get caught in there, but sometimes these games that are stalemates... Somebody just usually does it. It'll be another Bedlam jump and another dunk for... Yeah, silence him. Another Don't let that dunk happen. Dunk for Collapse in his mind. <laughs> I don't know. He I, thought real hard about Collapse. I, I feel like we're just playing the PA game, right? If I have Phantom Assassin and this game is pretty slow and I'm getting to my Phantom Assassin's third, fourth item and I'm going into Roshan with my Desolator timing and no one's touched me... I'm pretty confident in this meta I'm going to win the game. Or it's the game plan that I want to have happening. Now, if this if something goes wrong, you get stalled, it goes to 80 minutes. Of course, anything can happen, but this feels like the PA show. And it's going to maybe just come down to Skeeter or 33 finding Yatoro and getting a big ult landed on him. And that just seems difficult in today's game. You're doing it against the original PA god as well. This guy was playing PA before it was cool, before it was good, before anybody knew who he was. I still think there's some options. Even though they have an axe, I still feel like there's some options here for uh, the counterplay with Shallow Grave. Oh, so you're buying into my theory now. What was your theory? The old Perma Grave, and then he can't kill anybody. <laughs> you know, you get the the Juju armor too. So if Dazzle goes in, he yeah, yeah, casts yeah. like eight graves. Then you, you can't kill the Dazzle because he's got 80% physical resist. Snaking will make it not die again. The Chronosphere actually hitting the two supports. There is Skeeter. Bop is beginning a little bit early, but they're going to drop all their ultimates for this three man they found, but they're not going to be able to get Collapse. He got a call. Oh, and there it is. The Culling Blade through the Shallow Grave. They throw an anchor onto Collapse, trying to chase after him. Oh, Yatoro, though, he is on a rampage through the Tundra heroes, or at least trying to. Now he's been controlled up at the Dazzle, turns and fights. Is that BKB plus the armor going to be enough? Thompson on the run. No crit. No crit. No crit. Yet. Still doesn't have one, but he the only needs a hit. Oh, but there it is. The Shallow Grave now comes in, and Thompson has what no way out now? of this one. He's throwing Ooh. damage at your Toro. <laughs> it's not going to do enough. I mean, but it, it looked almost 
there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you saw the potential. The perma shallow <laughs> grave isn't ready yet. Yatoro was definitely frustrated at the end of that fight. We'll put it that way. Nonetheless, he gets six. De he gets up to six Deso charges. Doesn't even have to expend the Aegis here. They do find collapse on the backside, so technically an even fight. Honestly, not that bad for Tundra, considering it's an Aegis PA hitting a peak right now. And it was a pretty nice start with this Chrono. It's just... I mean, there wasn't the immediate call. follow up, right? The fact that you have to use the Ravage to kill both the supports. Yeah, it didn't feel great. Yeah. And then you had, to, you had to chase down collapse afterwards anyway. Yeah. If Skeeter gets a time walk up there, he doesn't get killed in the initial call. That fight might go a lot better for Tundra. And you can see the potential of their sustained team fight here, especially with all the spell damage. You're going to burst down anybody in this chrono really fast if everybody's online. Back over to the other side, Snaking trying to hide, not going to make it, but is maybe going to be saved by 33 here with the anchor. Put on the air spirit, so much damage. Collapse has jumped in, calling Brave. No, gets the heal just in time. Thompson, well played with that counterplay. Stops Collapse from getting the calling blade now. He doesn't have that extra bit of movement speed to get out as easily. 33 chase. Gonna keep chasing. Yatoro is coming. He is here. He wants to Does try and make something happen. He feel confident about being yeah, able to burst down the Tidehunter. They go for it, and they've got him. Thompson, he's going to need some help here. Gets an ink swell. Yatoro going to chase Ooh, after Cedar. Chris. Double crits. See you later. Just you should have banned it. No. You fool. <laughs> you should have banned it. <laughs> they thought they had the answer, but Yutoro has proven there is no answer to his Phantom Assassin. Yeah, Skeeter's rolling up his sleeve looking for an ace, but it's not going to be there this time. He pays the price, doesn't even get the BKB off. <laughs> you blink and you miss it quite literally here. This PA is a problem. And this is the downside of that slowish game from Tundra. I mean... You had some momentum off the mid. You have a lot of net worth on these cores, but you can't control the map. You can't find Yatoro. You're not creating a carry differential. And was that three crits yeah. in a row? No, it was two. Let's not get out sure? of control. Let's. I feel like it was three. He got one of the jumps. Then he daggered the dagger crit. It might have been three actually, yeah. But it didn't show the number for the first. One. Nonetheless, twelve deso charges up to Basher. Level 22 here. Yeah, and he's rushing straight to the Abyssal, too. Oh, it was. He triple crit. Let's <laughs> not get you know, too excited here. <laughs> Let's not get too excited here, Avery. <laughs> Honestly, I would I would just top left. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> Good luck, boys. Here, AUI, you play, you play for me. I don't, I don't want to play Dota 2 anymore today. Can my hero do that? <laughs> well, that's a... <laughs> Imagine your face is void in this game. You're like, I gotta hit a three-man chrono. I gotta get a time dilation on the Surf Spirit. I gotta look for some bashes. Yatoro shows up, press one button, you're gone. It's definitely a lot more straightforward. He'll claim another objective. He still has his Aegis. It seemed like forever. He's gotten so much value out of this. And the upside, 15 seconds, he won't have the Aegis anymore. Yeah, that, that's an upside if you can see him. The issue is he extracted so much out of this time period. You're looking at the net worth, but I also mentioned the levels, right? Yeah. He's so far ahead of the face this void in both categories. It is ridiculous. This is going to be it's going to be a mountain to overcome. It is not going to be an easy game for Tundra if they want to pull this one back. It's going to have to be the back of some crazy good teamfight spellcasting with their ultimates protecting the backline here. They have three backline heroes. I mean, Dazzle's a pseudo backline, but it really is on the jump. The Anchor controlling the Earth Spirit, getting a good Soulbind out, and then finding the PA with the Ravage or the Chrono. If you, if you don't connect on one of those two, I think the game's going to be hard. And Team Spirit know this, so it means green light for Collapse to jump in, find these big targets. You can also blink call this Tide with the break going in. It's not a free front line for 33 this game. Yeah. And Kaya, I like this Kaya build on the Axe. You get larger threshold for your Radiant ult here. More damage attack. coming through. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is... The, the second half of the build for Axe that you a lot of times don't see because so many times Axe is able to make a big splash early on, but then he's usually dying. He's not keeping that net worth up, but... He has kept the net worth up this game. Yeah, 60,000 ahead of anybody else on the side of Tundra.
I, normally, you would have phylactery with this build. Of course, the <laughs> yeah, that is the <laughs> standard. The, yeah, so you know, he, set he, by Avery Silverman. He's not quite at the TI-16 meta, but we'll give it to him here. Coral, he's showing on the wave. This is a battle for control over Roche. I mean, Roche is not spawning that soon, so I think Tundra is looking for a team fight. They have Shivas on 33. He's gonna try and front line now. Maybe the Shivas is enough. He can just show and bait the jump, but it's pretty spooky with this PA break and the crits. I honestly think you just get deleted. Radiant this could set up a chrono. Uh, this is the pre-Roche fight. Dyer's when you have those long attack. cooldowns. Yeah, it is. You, eat, you you get a fight now, or you don't fight at all. If it, like 30 seconds go by, you can, don't get anything. You really don't actually want to fight, because otherwise your cooldowns may be on when Roshan actually spawns. It's also setting up the vision, right? Tundra get three OBS on this bottom part of the map. It's going to be daytime Roche. They're going to pay off in the later portion, but smoke from matter. Spirit. Team Spirit gets an initiation on him. Gets a two-man silence. Jumps Broke. over the Tidehunter. Tidehunter broken. Can't Threats ravage anything. Can't ravage anything. BKB, because the other heroes have initiated on the rest of Tundra. A big <laughs> jump in from both Laurel and Collapse. Pretty much taking out any resistance that Tundra had left. Thompson, ah. he's going to be chased down. Blink away, actually. Aren't he going to stay out? Yeah, thanks to... Uh, the constant he's refreshing got the scion of armor. Dagger. He's going to be able to jump away. Nine scion that. He had the scion armor. He, he sure did, but... I mean, he tanked like, he tanked a couple of hits there. He had there. an extra 26 armor. Well, it looked kind of... I mean, it looked kind of cool until the PA showed up. And uh, that's the problem. I mean, who can frontline versus hero? This is the tied PA matchup. Yatoro just jumps him. Didn't even need a stun. Just solo kills 33 in the course of two or three seconds without any follow-up or control. And then the, the call can catch Skeeter. Just way too much freedom right now for this Phantom Assassin. And they don't have a vision mechanism. That's another piece of the puzzle you have to solve with this hero. Okay, you have Chrono. You can kill him in the Chrono. Yatoro will die. You have to be able to see him. Speaking of see him, Yatoro sees Thompson. Thompson does not see Yatoro. And that vision's about to become even harder because the Aghanim Scepter is going to be the next item built by Yatoro. Look at the early Ags on the Earth Spirit as well from Laurel. He's caught up in this game, opted for that Stone Shard. He can just go in and even save Yatoro if it really comes to it. Or Stone vision, it just kicks somebody in. His meld still not Wait, breaking, what is this? man. This is so insane. Oh, they know. They blink for it. They didn't know. know that he's actually there. They get him inside the Chronosphere, but it's is, after he popped his BKB. They are blowing everything they have to be able to control him up at the BKB. He got stoned. Oh, no, he gets stoned for him. He gets kicked away. Savior of he's Laurel. Still but they had the Grimace on him still, so they knew where it was after. to. They chase after him now with the PA. Finally dead. The Menace is gone. And Team Spirit has to give up this Roshan, try and not lose as many heroes as possible on their way out. It looks like they did manage to evac the three heroes still alive. They're all out. That but was Tundra claim a big pride. Such a sick save by Laurel, but it just doesn't matter because the anchor and the, the Phantom Chase, the vision was still on Yatoro. And it's enough to finish him off. Yeah, I, uh, the Phantom embrace stays on you even though you're in stone. Something form. chased him. It, it also was probably. Uh, some of the bolts from the Skyrath. Yep, that also falls, was following him, yeah. Either way, that whole fight starts by 33, I think, accidentally blinking on Yatoro. That, that was my yeah, impression. What? I mean, he popped Shiva's. He must have seen but something. I'd be it's because he got, he got spooked off the cliff. So Spirit were about to threaten going on 33 on top of that high ground, I believe, and he just wanted to get out of there because the Bramble got thrown. I legit think he accidentally blinked on Yatoro here. And either way, it sets up the dream as they finally find the Phantom Assassin. Oh yeah, what's the anchor? Notice the pre-grave on Skeeter as well there. Just to prevent any crit <laughs> shenanigans. They're already thinking about it. Damn, that damage in the Chrono is severe. Even with the BKB coming out to negate some of it. You get caught, you're gonna die. That's what this pick is designed to do, and that is a huge team fight win for Tundra. As they get Aegis on the Void, which is massive this game, because now, even if you jump Skeeter, he can come back and you have a better shot of finding where the PA is in the fight. He also got up to that level 20, a massive talent for the hero with this Mjolnir Midas build. So much attack speed, so much proc action. 
if you get to MKB now, it's pretty much guaranteed you'll kill your Toro in a Chrono. Which is probably guaranteed because he has the Aegis, right? This should give him the window it to be able to get plenty should. of farm. Yeah, I mean, the thing is you can kill the Void without committing the PA going in. Oh, that's nice. Look, he's going to be able to block an additional 24 damage when he gets hit by the 2,000 crit from PA. Pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty nice. Every little bit helps, you know. <laughs> you know, the next fight when he lives on 2 HP, you're not going to be laughing, are you? Yeah, that's true. If that happens. East Rune in the river, not a double damage. It will take it. And Lincoln's on top, so going to help him pro be protected from some of these daggers. Try and guarantee that grave coming out. And there's so much spell damage in the tank. He's got the anchor. No force a quick BKB. This stone save is also very important for Spirit. It's becoming more important in this game in terms of... I feel like you might even consider Aether Lens to maybe be able to stone him in the Chrono. That's a consideration here. Blink might also give oh, you yeah. some more mobility. It's hard to get it while he's... if like Because if you save Yatoro in the Chrono, this game becomes way more reliable for Team Spirit in the fights. That's pretty much the the biggest threat. Yeah. And you don't have another save. You have a Terrorize, but they're all going to be BKB'd. Can't figure out that soon, though. They start going to really late game where you maybe have a refresher on the Void. It's a funny little puzzle that's happening between these two teams. Yutaro finds the pick onto the Skywrath Mage. It'll be the seventh death for nine. He approaches his lucky number. Yeah, Ghost Scepter, not doing too much for you there. Good try. You know, you bought the physical defensive item on a support versus physical carry, and dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so stupid. He's got a. Uh, he's got this defiant shell. On PA. Just, just thinking about that, just thinking about, like, somebody hitting the Void and killing themselves because she automatically... It works in Chrono, too, right? So... Yeah. yeah you, never, you never know. Might come out here. He also hit that level 25. Really strong talent for the hero. And you know what? Cinderin brought up the point that it's also the, the 27... The 26, 27 talents for this hero that are also really good because you get the, you get this level 10 talent back and it's minus two cooldown on dagger. That's really what makes the late game so spooky. Right. And not many carries have a talent like that to go back to. It's impactful. Abyssal out. Oh and my god. Okay. You got BKBs for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think Team Spirit are going to be feeling too confident about going back in. They're going to use the Ravage here, knowing they've caught at least something the stone here. Kick. Turned into stone and kicked away, but the anchor is still on him, so they know where he's at. Oh, yeah, Toro. Toro. Meanwhile, they know the dagger is coming from somewhere over there. 33 kind of leading the charge, being a bulwark between him, the PA, and the rest of his team. Very it's dangerous to stay guard, here. Those supports. That was so fast by Spirit. Well, that's your Aegis. So yeah. much for the front line. He did get to that MKB, though, on the Faceless Void. Yeah, he did. It's worth mentioning, as well as Penta Edge Sword here. That is really going to escalate this damage in the burst. But it's got to be in a Chrono. There is no other way to see what he wants to hit here outside of landing that spell. It was also refreshed from Collapse, so that'll be on cooldown here, but no big deal. As The second the BKBs are out, Spirit don't really want to fight that regardless. And you're kind of just angling towards this next Roshan. You want to get lanes in. You want to control the vision as much as possible. Side lane's getting shoved in right now for Team Spirit. They want to draw Tundra back on the map. And of course, Tundra have to play more clumped because they're afraid of getting jumped from the Axe or the Phantom Assassin. Team Spirit doing a decent job abusing this, as they always do, just setting up threat on multiple areas of the map with deep lane wards. This Ops top is probably going to pay dividends in the next few minutes here, setting up for this Roshan. It's a scary map for Tundra. You just don't see much. And Laurel did go back for that blink. So that was his option of choice here. He does have some ability to maybe save in Chrono if it's on the very edge. But just having about the uh, Octarine is his next item. But I do kind of agree with you that Aether Lens would go a long ways. No, now he's thinking about Yule Scepter, which he could, you know, go for the upgraded Yules. Which is another good True. save to the Chronosphere. I mean, I'm sure he asked Yatoro. He's like, yo, Yatoro, do you need me to save you in the Chrono? And he 
know what Yatoro said, so. What'd he say? <laughs> you, think, you think this guy's gonna be able to chrono me? Yatoro <laughs> god? No. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody chronospheres you Toro God twice. That's right. Laurel, if you buy that Aether Lens, I'm going to kick you from the team. Trust me. They will trust him as he pushes towards an early... I was about to say an early Divine, but I assume it's Nullifier here. It is flying out. Hey, there we go. We got a little bit of extra cast range. Telescope mm. on Maposhka. That's true. Team Synergy here. I also like the uh, the top inventory there, you know. Dyer's That's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real nice one, you know. Just every bit of armor snaking can generate in a empty slot in a wind lace. He's got 67% physical resist. I mean, it's about as good as you're going to get. We'll see if it does anything for him here. It, 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 it's well, not going to do anything. There's no way it does anything. It kind oh, of did the something. Ravage, that was beautiful. Hits on three. The Chrono Spirit, but he didn't quite grab the PA. Only grabbed the Earth Spirit. They're going to blow him up inside enough? of that one. But what about the PA? Yatoro backed out of that fight. Now he goes in. His BKB is down, but the dagger actually went oh, over. Killed, killed the Faceless Void while he was going for the Skywrath Mage. Oh, that is just perfect for Yatoro. And now with the Faceless Void gone, there is no more threat. They're going to roll over the rest of Tundra. Tundra, they'll keep themselves alive for as long as possible, but... Tops and eventually falls. Is it just me or did Collapse not use his Culling Blade there? <laughs> On the shallow grave of Dazzle. Oh, yeah, no, no, cool down. Oh, he missed one, huh? Still, that was a triple dagger split that hit the faceless void as Skeeter was going for, would you believe it, a double damage that has spawned top. And uh, that dagger crit and he died. And. How much HP did the Faceless Void have? He didn't have a lot. He, he definitely had probably under... He had under probably eight or 900, but... You know? Well, it did 835. <laughs> what can you do? What, what, what can you do sometimes? You just die. Another kickback. Laurel's done a tremendous job finding these openings. The Mage is going to buy back out of the Faceless Void without the Chronosphere. That's great. Yeah, I thought for a second there, Tundra here. were going to hold on to all their buybacks. Still have a cheese on the void. An anchor him up. BKB is back up for Yatoro. Just gonna they stay anchor here. him. They phantom him. Everything they can. None of it's enough. You went martyrs plate, by the way. Radiance top barracks are under attack. Not an item you traditionally see on an Agi carry. But I, he probably feels as though he has more damage than he'll ever need on this hero, so why not just take some a little extra survivability versus all the spell damage? Sure, if he gets in the Chronosphere, gets caught in the Chronosphere, and he doesn't have BKB. Right. It's a decent amount of EHP, though. I actually think it doesn't... Like, you're probably getting bursted or you're not, you know? Sure. I think the spell damage here from Tundra is overwhelming. It's, it's an interesting choice. He's playing the thresholds. There's a decent amount of spell damage, especially with, like, this E-Blade coming out in the amp. Counteracting some of it. 33 is going to pop. Does he blind go? He Shiva missed them in the trees. In. Misses all these heroes in the trees. Laurel's going to pop out. They spot a top and They go for him. The Aeon Disc. They manage to get That's a the on these two heroes on top. Of one. Look at that call. Collapse on the edge of the Chronosphere. Draws in the faceless void. Puts him down. Still, though, the Soul Bind with the magic damage is doing its work. Your Toro's 25% from the Martyr's Blade. Kept him alive a little bit longer, but it wasn't quite enough. Somehow, Collapse, beautiful save and kill on the Faceless Void does not lead to a Steam Spirit victory. He didn't get the BKP off on the P. He just took so much spell damage in that Chrono. It was ridiculous. It was all the Skywrath Mage here. Wait, he got Collapse with a global bolt. What? No way. A shot from across the map ends Axe's career. As he did not go to Fountain, he went to the lanes to shove it in. <laughs> Collapse. <laughs> That did so much damage. 1,040 damage? What? Wait, he, he must have had like five on him or something that chased him. It had to be. Ravage going to be used as Mira. Taking a lot of damage here. Last time he was able to Shadow Realm. Blink away. Not so this Collapse time. Collapse buyback. Though, that's going to be able to put down the Refresh. Dazzle. Thompson oh. does have a buyback. Refreshes. Grabs the call. Gets him. Snake King will die as well. Those two both have buyback, but unlikely to use it. They're going to give this Roshan to Yutoro. So damn fast and decisive there from Collapse. 
gets put down on the other side of the map and says, hell no, you're not taking anything away from me. Insta buys, insta refreshes for double call, double dunk. All what right. a bizarre sequence. They had to buy back on their carry to get this, but Aegis and Cheese for you, Toro. It's definitely worth it, right? Taking Aegis away from Tundra is the real big prize here because now no one can frontline for them. No one is safe against this dagger spam, and you have that level 10 talent. I mean, it's ridiculous I'm saying that, but you have the <laughs> second level 10 talent for the Phantom Assassin, so yeah. these are really low cooldown daggers coming out in the late game that really hurt here. Four seconds. That is the power of the extra levels. He's got pretty much max Deso charges. Ah, this PA hurts, man. It really hurts. You're going to need some more Wraith Bands for these supports. Arcane Blank for the X. Matches the cooldowns. Collapse will try and find the openings. He has found them all game. One more, you're going to get Megas. Might just end it here. The question is, do you push with this Aegis four minutes? You're not going to have buyback on your two big cores. A couple minutes after this Aegis expires, it's a risky go. Like, even if you get Megas, this game might not end. So you're risking losing to claim objectives that don't necessarily win you the game. Doesn't sound great to me, right? Now, if you find sure. the Faces Void, you know he does not have buyback right now. So that is the best jump for Spirit, and they will take that. If Skeeter shows, you take that Faces Void, you dunk him down, you get a five on four. And of course, you can always just spam daggers out and play it slow. Laurel can also kick somebody back, take a fight displacement that might be a bit safer. Options are on the table here for Team Spirit. It's just about how safe, how conservative do you want to play it right now? How much do you want to push it with no buybacks? If you're Tundra, I almost feel like you want Team Spirit to take that risk. It might be your best chance to swing this game is an overextension to Tier 4s where your defensive spells really can shine. Watching Skeeter's positioning, he is sitting behind his team. The only time he ever pokes his head out is when he time walks and then instantly reverse time walks. A lot of armor being built up on this Tundra side. They're doing a really nice job of not giving easy targets for Yator to clear through. I mean, everything's easy for this hero, but even if it takes a couple extra hits to get through these supports, it counts for something. Quick smoke from Tundra looking on the side. They do have this level 25 talent on Tide, extra Ravage stun duration. Pretty big one if 33 can find the opening. I mean, the times really link up here. This Aegis ex expiring and the buyback coming back. Oh, Laurel just went Lloyd. in. Laurel, he gets spotted by 33. Does manage to turn him into stone, kicks him out. 33 is going to be guided straight into the arms of Collapse. Gets the call. Shall it great? The heal. The heal. It is enough, he but he double great and he gets the calling blade anyway. Collapse with the counter to all the heal coming out from Thompson. Can't get him the first time. He'll get him the second. No hesitation on the trigger. That is a refresher down, but you still have a VKB up for collapse. Yutaro sees his opportunity. Jumps onto Sneaky, but the Shallow Grave oh, holding Soulbind. alive. The Soul Bite and all that extra damage, man. The magic damage is intense, but the call from Collapse, it got the Faceless Void. He doesn't need the PA to be able to kill the enemy. No here. Five. Collapse is doing it all by himself. The Ravage finally comes through, but they're going to have to do it without their Faceless Void. The magic damage is what's going to have to push them through, but Collapse with another he three, three. call. He keeps on hitting him. He chops down one, looks oh. for another. Never mind, Yatoro will just cleave through him. Ball at the same time, Collapse has hit every single initiation needed to end this game. An emphatic move from the offlaner of Team Spirit. He jumping wants stacked. Time after time. 16, and he's gonna get it with a rampage to clean him up. See ya in game two, Tundra. This one belongs to Collapse entirely as he puts on an axe masterclass right here from the start of that game to the end just straight up carrying every fight.
Neighbor, you asked 30 minutes ago, which what? one are you taking? Are you taking the TI-11 winner, 33, on his Tidehunter with the Auras? Or are you taking the TI-10 winner in Collapse on a Blink Initiator? I mean, at this point, I'm taking Collapse like over almost anybody in the world, right? This guy is just absolutely ridiculous. The decision-making, the no hesitation. Some of these plays, he makes them look easy. I'm telling you, when you are in these clutch games, in these late-game fights, there are a lot of players who might not instant refresh or go for these types of jumps, these types of blink teleport cancels. If you're, especially when you're fighting for Roshan, setting up that next fight, that's what impressed me about this man. He has zero hesitation. He just knows what the correct play is. He knows where the correct calls are, and he finds them every single time. He will end this game 15-2 and 12 with 16 culling blade stacks. Max slots. I what still else think to say? one of the most impressive ones was that blink on the other side of the Chronosphere oh, to catch the Faceless Void. I mean, that was a disaster team fight if he doesn't make that move. That's a way different game, too. I yeah. mean, that is something that set up these deaths on the Faceless Void that ultimately resulted in this last fight, for example. Skeeter doesn't have buy, right? Because he's getting caught in these fights by Collapse, and his buyback's getting forced. That base defense can also go different if Skeeter has a second life, but you just don't have it. You can't get there. He ends the game one and seven. He can't see anything but his own grave as Team Spirit take game <laughs> number all one. With the triple Midas is in an inventory. That's a that's a new one. All right. We'll see if this uh, series goes the distance. We certainly hope so as, uh, again, their previous playoff series. But when it comes to the start of this, Team Spirit domination in the end of this game one. 3 Aegises in Laurel's inventory just so he could give Collapse a hand because what a performance. Clash of the Titans in this game number one between two TI winning organizations. But Collapse tells us just exactly why he won his Aegis because he's a god tier off laner and that was a god tier performance. Yeah, I mean, there isn't really much to add to what they already said, right? Sometimes you just have this more or less perfect game. I feel like Collapse made basically zero mistakes. And not only that, because you can play a great game and not make mistakes, but he also made, you know, huge plays. It wasn't just you did your job. I feel like he overperformed what anyone could have expected of the hero in this game. Uh, and to honestly, to Tundra's credit, it actually felt like Collapse needed to come up big. I think they did a pretty good mm -hmm. job at solving the PA in a game where we were concerned about it. Just dagger. Uh, but oh. I th still, <laughs> just... Uh, like the, the Dazzle versus the PA, I think it could have worked and it looked pretty good, but then they forgot. They forgot about Axe. He they just dunks through these goddamn noobs. Like, who cares that there's a grave? He just comes, he gets the early blink, he goes top minute nine, he kills him there. He goes mid minute 10, he kills him there. Takes some ancients, calls Void out of his Chronosphere at some point, like refreshes to instantly kill. I don't know. You know when you have the best carry and the best offlaner with probably the best support duo, I think perhaps maybe you. Don't let him have a free farm lane. If it goes all the way back to the draft, right? You there you go. We saw the axe. We had some ideas of what you could pick to shut it down. They're like, nah, we'll we'll deal with this it in the late stuck. game, right? <laughs> but they couldn't do it. Like this void just was harassed constantly through the laning stage all the way into the late game. Yeah, it's pretty insane to see an axe call a void out of a chronosphere. I don't know how often we get to see plays like that, but like, yeah, he overperformed. But a lot of it had to do with how easy his laning stage was. So then, Agreed. in a vacuum, if we just had Faceless Void versus Phantom Assassin, do you have any more information on how this carry-to-carry -carry matchup would go, assuming they both had equally good laning faces? Well, it, I think this matchup is a little bit hard for the Void. It's a battle of patience, right? It's, whoever shows first kind of loses, because we saw the one fight where Yatoro initiated, he got chronoed immediately, then he died, and after that he's like, okay, I'm just gonna sit back, now all of a sudden Skeeter's like using his chrono on the Earth Spirit, now that's the fight where the PA kind of like wins. It's a very stressful matchup, I think, and I think both of them are trying to be patient, not do anything, and I think that really favors the PA, because while you're AFK in the yeah. blur, you can keep throwing daggers, right? You can still help a a little bit in the team fights where Void, he's just sitting there waiting for PA to go. So it's really up to PA to just not do anything and it's going to be pretty much a PA game. I, the second layer of the patience was, I guess, Dazzle waiting to grave, <laughs> but then that gets completely overruled by Axe's Calling Blade. So let's take a look at our Acer Predator head-to-head, -head, which was the off laners for this game. It's the 33 going up against Collapse. The KDAs. 15, 2, and 12. We could have chosen any variety of statistics and Collapse, you'd have been hard pressed to find him not doing records because we also saw him, he had the highest number of last hits 
at 10 minutes of yeah. any yeah. player in this entire tournament. 102, I yeah, think. The most amount of Pog Champ plays. That's too. for sure. <laughs> I mean, still credit in this one, right? Uh, a lot of the time when we do this player versus player matchup, there's clearly, you know, there's clearly a winner and clearly a loser. Yeah. I think 33 played a pretty good game here. He did. Uh, 6, 4, and 11. This matchup against PA is good for 20 minutes, and then it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, PA was had two fights where he just flat out assassinated, tied 100 to 0. Not really much you can do about it. Yeah, what can you do about um, it? And I guess to just quickly add to what Fear was talking about with the Void versus PA kind of game of chicken, if you will, in the in the post-game scoreboard, PA did five times the damage of Void, right? So she did 65k to Void's 13. So if you're if you're picking Void as a counter to this specific hero, I feel like maybe you're pigeonholing yourself a little bit too much because you don't really get to perform Void's usual role in the game, which can be croning other heroes, you know, yeah. going into the fight, soaking damage. So you're kind of shooting yourself a little bit in the foot by having one and only one play in the game. And at this level of play, if the players are just patient yep. playing the angles, I just don't think this is a solution personally at all. Well, for as mad as people may be that Phantom Assassin is popping off, I love seeing big red numbers. Let's see if we'll get more of that in game number two. Do you want to play like a pro and gain that sweet MMR? Watch the DHL Pro Tips to improve your gameplay. Then test your knowledge to win a 250 euro Steam gift card. Become a pro by visiting esl.gg slash DHL Pro Tips. Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, Acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule. Dare to triumph against all odds. Dare to rise above fate. You love it, you wear it, wear it. Wear your passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever, whenever. Yes. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. One night in New York Is like a lifetime anywhere We're Dancing in the dark Up in Central Park All the bright lights up Times Square This town is champagne So shake the bottle Pop the cork All the deadliest sins Are like one night in New York Put on your silk and your satin We're stepping out in style We'll be the toast of Manhattan Cruising the Golden Mile This town is alive Go wild and let your money talk Any man can be king And reign one night in New York And your satin We're stepping out in style We'll be the toast of Manhattan Cruising the golden mile One night in New York Is like a lifetime anywhere Dancing in the dark up in Central Park All the bright lights up Times Square This town is champagne So shake the bottle, pop that cork 
All the deadliest sins are like one night in New York. Don't you know all the deadliest sins are like one night in New York? Lights, camera, 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 and action, my friends, because we're getting ready to send you on some DHL information. I hope you're ready, because if you're right, then I've got a little prize for you, but you got to answer the question correct. So let's get to the question. Yes! Tier 1 towers in Dota have 700 attack range. But during nighttime, they have 600 vision range. This means that you can hold alt to see the tower attack range and walk within 100 units of the radius. If the tower attacks you, it means there is a ward on top of you. If the tower does not attack you, it means there is no ward and you are safe to slam down your ward without being seen. Let's break down what to do in both of these scenarios. If the tower attacks you, you need to de-ward. How do you do it? Stand here and then here. 
If the tower hits you, only on the right, then the ward is over here, so you can place the sentry right here. If the tower only hits you on the left, then you can place the sentry ward here. If it hits you on both sides, then you can place the sentry in the middle. The formula on Dire is similar, but with this spot and this spot. One caveat on Dire is that sometimes people place a ward on this high ground, but you can check for this ward by standing in this spot. Congratulations! You can now deward mid. In terms of warding for yourself, usually people who don't see you ward will lazily plop a sentry ward here because it's the middle. So, I would advise warding somewhere around the perimeter. Usually, the closer to the enemy tower, the less they expect it, and therefore the better it is. Fascinating stuff, friends. There's a lot of information shared in that video, but there's one fact in particular that I want you to answer for me. Do you know how far the tier one tower attack range is? Because if you do, then you should go to esl.gg slash dhlprotips, and you might have an opportunity to win a 200 euro Steam voucher. Don't Yay! type it there. I'm not going to give anything to you if you type it there. But if you go to esl.gg slash dhlprotips, you might have an opportunity. How far is tier one tower attack range sent? I'm not going to answer that because that would be a spoiler. <laughs> That's correct. But you should go to esl.gg. If you enter that as your answer, that does not count either. Sind told me I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Kezi, do you know? I almost want to give a reward for that. I don't. I don't actually want to meet Slax. I don't want to win this. Under <laughs> Unless someone else wins. <laughs> That's a separate thing. You're thinking about the DHL Dota Adventure, which is also a very exciting thing. No, I think he meant he doesn't want to win the gift card, and he also doesn't want to meet Slax. Correct. If like I wanted, I would give it to Sind, and I think that's unfair, oh, that's too. I would rather have Fear have a chance. I'm not a nerd. I don't know these things. Uh, it's <laughs> fine. None of us can win. I play based off of Feel, and I'm feeling like Phantom Assassin is first tier band material yeah, he's now. We go. Let's go. Congratulations, guys, it happened. Congratulations. <laughs> but what goes through then, friends? Oh Brewmaster. You're saying Brew, Fear. Who do you think is going to go through first bands now? Mm, let's see what gets banned here, but Brew's a good choice. Let's wait for all the bands. What do you think goes through the bands? <laughs> let's see what gets banned. Well, there'll be a process of elimination at that point. What do you want right. me to blindly predict? Yeah, like yes. I did. That is what I I'm going to take your Brewmaster too then. That's just Great. cringe. Ventral are, spirit. As shown okay. here, here are the most banned heroes throughout Dream League Season 21. Invoker, Brew, Pango, Sven, Gyro. Now we're taking one carry out of the pool with Phantom Assassin. Does that mean another carry gets to slip through with the Gyro? No. no. I mean, no one's going to pick Gyro because we, we talked about it. Yatoro yeah, thinks it's trash. Fair. It could go through, but I don't know if Tundra will pick it. And if they don't, Spirit won't either. Last their first game, pick. nobody picked it. There you so go. If won't be picked Invoker again. doesn't get banned on this or the next ban, then I think Invoker is going to go through. Okay. The other bands that went through... <laughs> That's the thing called, dude. You're good. We're going down okay. the process right, of elimination. Freaking four and three bands throws me off every time. I keep assuming that everyone gets the same number of bands. Hello? <laughs> oh like my to, god. Uh, oh. I'd like to order a... Um, I would like to book a consultation for a Tsunami. Yeah, my mental health needs some checkups. Not your mental health. You just my, need to pay attention. No. But fine, then I'll tell you what I paid attention to the previous draft. Because the tower Doom attack range. and Monkey King and the tower attack range... <laughs> Doom and Monkey King were banned out by Team Spirit in the, the previous first round, and they're going through this time. Yep, that is true. It was and a lot of uh, also offlane targeting. They also banned yeah. a Beastmaster. I mean, Invoker, Beast, Venge. Tundra also have probably the... I would say if you need, or if Invoker can be played fast, wow, it's actually a little surprising to me that they banned that, but instead they're probably like, okay, Earth Spirit has a good game if we ban Invoker, so instead of going Invo, we just go Earth Spirit. Okay. I think Spirit are going to pick Dazzle. Aren't they just going to do the same thing I would that not Tundra be just did surprised. and just adjust the rules of the game a little bit? So they could ban Axe. They could... The PA is obviously out of the picture already. Laurel has shown he has great promise Dazzle. on the Dazzle yep, already. He played it versus OG. I mean, is there a mid player in the world that would not be like, please just give me Dazzle. I want to do what he just did to me, man. It was so annoying. <laughs> you know, Like everybody wants mm. to return the favor, right? But you also don't want to steal their swag, you know? You want to come up with your own idea. Yeah, don't steal the swag from a losing team. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> it's true, don't but they're going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, you know, like, if he does it and he wins mid, it's just like they're even Steven. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't come up with his own idea to crush him. He's just stealing ideas. 
Yeah, but this is like, oh, let me show you how you're actually supposed to win on Dazzle. Uh, you can't win any more than what yeah, Dazzle can. <laughs> how do you win more than that? Is there a world where okay. Tundra can play the sp Earth Spirit 4 in this patch? And this is bait. That was my question. Is it last possible? game? And you're like, no. Idiot. Yeah, so, so I personally just don't <laughs> think it's worth it, but maybe they have the flex if Spirit show enough weakness in their safe lane. But I think you need to show some pretty significant weakness. Well, before the play. thing is, if anyone knows how to beat this stupid hero, it's Thompson. This is where Avery will talk about the Dwarven Sniper. I think we might oh, yes. see Thompson the Sniper. If any hero can beat Dazzle Mid, it's gotta be the Sniper Man. I mean, sniper Lena, old man. I think. With crackpot theories. Crackpot. Maybe, actually, they, they're, maybe they're Lena coming. doesn't really win that lane that hard. Yeah, screw Lena. She lost earlier as well. Actually, never mind. She got carried by PA. So I don't think there's a single <laughs> hero that's going to crush Dazzle. It doesn't work that way, right? you got lane shove. I mean, he just lanes too range. Well. You've got universal. Yeah, yeah there's nothing that's going to crush. If there's any flex that comes out here, I think it has to be Sniper. Otherwise, you're just going to try to deal with the Dazzle from your other heroes, I think. How long does Poison Touch last? Infinitely, if you keep hitting him. Yeah, but like, how long of a time frame do you have to reapply it? So it's like four, four or five eight. seconds. So level two wind run counters it then. But then you have wind ranger. Yeah, but that would be a mid hero that could also maybe beat dazzle. But that doesn't like solve your problems. Like it's not that. That was not the question. Wasn't the prompt was who can beat dazzle mid. Stop moving the it wasn't who's I think a wind good hero. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was the question: who can run away from poison touch? Because Earth Spirit technically did that in the other game. Yeah, it worked out it. really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was thick. <laughs> okay, we need. Hmm. We need a lot of heroes, but yeah. first we need even more bans. There goes Doom. Now there's going to be a lot of heroes picked. They didn't ban Axe. It's over. I mean, is Tundra just Just reverse Uno card to draft. Heroes? Earth Spirit, Axe, go pick Warlock, Dark Willow, go a PA into Axe. Good luck. PA is banned, but... Doesn't matter, it's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> That's how broken she is. <laughs> it can be picked <laughs> when she's banned. It's coming back from the grave. It's all good. Tundra all right. We're just gonna swap drafts? That's what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah, PA is coming I mean, back. Grim isn't banned. I think the Axe is not a bad idea. I mean, even though Collapse had like an amazing game and played out of his mind, it just a lot of the instances where they did make initiations where the cooling blade was there to stop the grave were pretty big. They stopped the turnaround and they really stopped a lot of uh, what Dazzle could bring to the table in that mid game. So I think that is a honestly a really good uh, option to deal with this Dazzle here. Oh, it could I'd like also to see be. It. How about I feel like if you don't want to go Axe here because you feel like it's too crazy, how about you go AA? So that when you have the like, go in on the one dude. Is AA less crazy than Axe? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> if you want to save your offline pick, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Axe is just like... Stable. Then why didn't they pick Axe? Because they wanted Tide. Because he then why didn't, didn't they pick AA? You know, I don't have the answer. <laughs> they wanted Shadow Demon. Exactly. I mean, I think... Because uh, okay. you ask too many questions. Where are the answers? <laughs> yeah, where are they? Well... In Disruption the is pretty dsl.gg slash okay. dhl pro tips for your answers. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Jenkins video on this one. <laughs> All right, so here's her plan, right? Okay. Shadow Demon is going to dispel silences, and Tide is also going to dispel silences and purges. I guess the Demonic Cleanse will deal with the Poison Touch in some mm -hmm. mid-game situation, and then you can disrupt the person that's graved so they can't be healed, potentially. I'm doing my best to try I didn't and listen. Someone answered. <laughs> I checked out halfway through. No, I think I think the whole angle of having dispels makes a lot of sense against the two heroes that Spirit are showing so far, mm -hmm. right? What I'm what I'm wondering for Spirit is if they're like what carry is both good again good against both Tide and Shadow Demon because you know the natural Tide counters are those like Phantom Assassin, flat out strong. Well, <laughs> she's banned. Then. Uh, you know, Ursa is a classic counter to Tide, but the Shadow Demon matchup's terrible. Ooh. So I wonder if that hero actually exists here that they can pick that would be good against both of them, or if you have to kind of pick your poison. I would pick a ranged hero, personally, okay. if it was me. What ranged carries do people even play this patch? It's not a lot. Right? Gyro? We've seen a bit of Drow. I mean, Gyro is good versus both these heroes, actually. Medusa? Medusa. Medusa's not great for Shadow Demon. No, oh, true. No. Uh, it's like... I don't know. The ones I would suggest probably won't be very meta, like some Shadow Fiends and heroes like that that can just be at range. Templar Assassin is also quite good in a game like this. Yeah, actually, I would not mind those heroes. I think especially with Dazzle. Well, TA sounds interesting. Yeah. 
But I think most of the melee heroes that you could potentially like, I think SD just owns all of them. I mean, more oh, that is a ranged carry. Range. Yeah, I, I mean... It's a Shadow Demon and the sounds yeah. though. I think people... First of all, you don't really care that much about... I mean, you do actually care about Urspirit because he's a vessel carrier too, but like the way the meta is right now as a carry, you don't... There's so many dispels you can buy, right? You can buy Satanic, you can buy Manta, yeah. BKB, uh, Disperser. There's just so many like ways to this diffuse yourself but you just need to get there and that's going to be the kind of the issue and a lot of people do like this morphling against tide but a lot of tide players like playing versus morphling at the same time yeah the matchup is a little bit strange i think it's pretty even i guess we'll put it that way yeah, i, I guess both like... players like it if they just want to farm yeah right i mean if you're on point i feel like both of them can catch each other off guard like you can sometimes like clutch them out with some ravage into follow-up damage but then you can attribute shift before if you're quick or whatever but both of them are just very happy when it comes to like the first 15 minutes, right? You don't really interact all that much with one another. I mean, I will say when Morph wins versus Tide, it's a much bigger margin than yeah. when Tide wins versus Morph. So if you do happen to get the edge and you have a better like matchup, and there's a Tusk in this game here too. Yeah. So like just one rotation, really easy to get some ganks off on the Tide and then Morph is going to be one of those heroes that can get in and out of the fights. So it gets disrupted. Of course, you're going to have the silence there, but you just press Manta by BKB, you'll be fine. Ooh, PL. Well, he Pretty doesn't good. have a single bad matchup. Yeah. So, definitely. How, how's the Dazzle PL match? Oh, with the. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't thinking about yeah, the Axe Shard. I mean, it's better for How Dazzle. How many poison sure. touches does it throw? Is there a maximum limit? Or yeah, so right? first of all, he has the Shard to kill all of the illusions, and then he has the Axe to deal damage to yeah. all of them. Right? Yeah. So, that's actually. And it kind of heals your allies, too. So, yeah. that might. That's what I was kind of thinking before, like, Dazzle might actually be really good versus Yeah, he Mil. might be good. We'll have to see. Like, in theory, it might, it sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. The cap is I mean, eight I, poison touches per cone, but yeah. still, that's most of I mean, I get, Yeah. Okay. He doesn't own him, but he's way better than he used to be. I mean, back yeah. in the day, you had nothing. Now you have, like, two tools. But if you're, like, a hero in the middle of, like, PL, right, getting hit, and Dazzle heals you, it has 150% extra heal, right, on enemy units? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll get full healed, in theory. Yeah. And then we might see like him go some Mjolnir build because the Ags also applies your right click to it, which should proc Mjolnir. Yeah, that does. Pretty cool stuff. I think it's fair to say that Spirit's last pick off laner here is going to do something against PL in a grander scheme of things than just the lane, right? Like you want an off laner now that has some sort of AOE damage or control at the very least. So Tundra are going to ban out the Sand King. I was looking earlier at Spirit's heroes and I was thinking maybe they could take a picture out of, um, uh, sorry, take a page out of Shopify's book here and run a Dawnbreaker. With Could the Tusk plane? Book. Um, True. What's that? <laughs> Could be a picture book. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, I think I think Dawn looks quite interesting. It's a decent counter initiation against Ravage. It's a decent counter initiation against Earth Spirit. Uh, and you get the Tusk Dawn lane that we've seen Shopify just absolutely annihilate with. Dawn lanes well against PL. There's quite a lot of, of upsides. What but about Legion Commander? Legion's also a, a good choice. But then you're playing against a save of Shadow Demon, which is a bit... Oh, and Earth Spirit Axe is very good against Legion. So, how about gonna ban Axe? Right. How about Centaur? Last pick. For uh, oh, sorry, I just threw up. A little and then bit. you get the workhorse <laughs> that nobody knows how what does. You don't even use that shit. I'm buying that. <laughs> I mean, Tundra need what four or five? I mean, it might technically be a bad duel game, but they don't have that stun yet. Like I think you prefer some, yeah I think you prefer someone who doesn't like hard commit in because I think hard committing into ravage and disruption is a little uh, and what's little underlord or what are we looking at that's not hard uh, commit underlord is actually really interesting this game still looking at centaur <laughs> 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 sorry that's just a reflex oh too long there like a, a pseudo protection against the dawn as well if they were considering that a threat now dawn looks way less appealing. Global Silence, one of the best abilities in the game against that hero. I do like the idea of, like when you, when we think about these backline heroes like Dazzle or Sky, most supports don't really interact with them. But Silencer helps his team to, it gives them like a buffer time to continue to deal with whoever they want. If you go on the front line, you can just global the Dazzle or it helps you to kill him overall. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay with the Silencer pick. The oh, you guys were hating. Baby. Yes, <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it, both game of you. Game fear currently projectile vomiting all over the yeah. All right. <laughs> Just fuck I, it I'll be right back, guys. I gotta go back. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, you were just all hating. 
You suggested the hero. What were your main reasons that you think it's viable? Here? Pure luck. Yeah, pure luck. <laughs> I think the Stampede is nice to help reposition your team. It's good against SD old. I think you also True. you deal well with PL because he never really kills you. If you have no mana, you can still use double edge. You get really tanky. You're also like this type of guy who can go in and stampede out, so you're not fully committed. And it's collapse god. I mean, he did just play a hero that went to you know Vanguard Blink. Yeah. Owned the Kai Assange cosplay it. He's bringing it back. He's <laughs> bringing it back. Yeah. I mean, you could more or less one to one buy the exact same items of the whole game, right? Yeah. Refresh. Refresher is also not bad on Centaur. Yeah. No. With the good. Arcane Blink. Why yeah. Not? Late game. Why not? Okay. You're gonna need the mana because you're playing versus PL. Yeah. And you're gonna be probably losing a lot of int to the silencer. Dumbass. You're saying Collapse is gonna die? Uh, he did die true, twice. True. Last my bad. Oh. False alarm. Not my collapse. Not this game. I, mean, I, uh, I wanted three games, but I don't know if I'm getting them. I think no matter what, it's just really cool to see how much we've deviated from the just established meta just now. I think there's a lot of creativity in this draft. We've yep. barely seen Silencer. We've barely seen PL. First Centaur that we see on on the stream, I think. I believe and so. And there's still uh, PA. It's playing. an even game. Yeah. Well, what do you know? If you first bend PA... <laughs> you get a different spend, map! <laughs> you have to pick all the carries. Yay! Good job, guys. Woo! Sick. I'm, I'm with Spirit. Who, who do you got? Are we going three games? I want three games. I am going to go for Tundra this game. Woo! Because they picked Centaur on Spirit. What is this? Well, it's Are a we handshake? handshake? Yeah. Because we disagreed? I don't know. I'm just handshaking. <laughs> <laughs> Stop asking so, You told player. me to not ask so many questions. <laughs> I don't games. know anything. Okay, that does check out actually. Yeah, that's why he's here. <laughs> the cowbells are attracting <laughs> men. That means that it's time. It's time <laughs> to break the phone <laughs> for game number two. <laughs> Performances I've seen from an axe in quite some time. I will be very surprised to see Collapse mirror that performance with a centaur. He had to do it. He's got. Let me tell you. Okay, I'll, I'll explain what happened. Awesome. Okay, what 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 happened? How did we end up here? Last game collapsed. He has the game of his life. Well, I, I guess it's an average Thursday for him. Sure, a, a game of anybody else's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for class, it's just Thursday. Yeah. And he, he got ahead of himself. He got a little cocky. Okay. He got a little arrogant. You know, all this egoisto and, and the anime running around. Mm -hmm. This team loves their anime. And now he thinks he's the GOAT. Thinks he's the best player in the world. And he said, you know what, boys? Watch me beat him be with the worst hero in town. <laughs> Pick it for me. Give me that centaur. I'm so good, I'm gonna beat them with centaur. Yeah, that's how good he thinks he is right now. And, uh, well, Thompson played this matchup on the other side last game, and so he's very familiar with it. Which is why he just died to poison level one. So on one side, you're gonna see a centaur. And the other side, you're going to see Thompson get cheesed. <laughs> That's right. Thompson was like, you know what? I can play the other side of this matchup, too. That's how good I am. <laughs> this is a flex match right here. <laughs> Might be a lot of egos getting out of control here, maybe. Oh, absolutely. This is, this is going to be a tough one, though, when you just die first blood before the lane of the rune. Yeah. That sets you really far back, because it's a rush to bottle. Your bottle is how you survive off water runes, and then you get into the mid-game, yeah, you're going to be behind gold, but you can still make plays. Like, that's what happened for Laurel. You know, Urstrid's a very powerful hero. It doesn't need even net worth. You can lose this lane and still win the game. This is going to be a really large lead, though. And... Are you dead again? You have Fairy Fire. <sighs> Learn with Dane. See, you just can't get to the bottle. Yeah, you, that... you roll back, but... He's in trouble. You don't He's have in your bottle. Big, big trouble. And the problem is nobody can bail him out. You have Shadow Demon Silencer. 
<laughs> they willingly took this. I mean, you you were actually yeah. a little bit surprised that they still took the the dazzle as a counter pick. Uh, but Team Spirit, I mean, Laurel probably was like, I hated my life. I mean, last game, please let me return the favor back to Thompson. Strategically, I'm not surprised. I think it was the correct pick. I just think it was a game, but I think there's a world where Spirit might have not taken the dazzle. Uh, just from a hero preference standpoint, but I mean, if they're willing to play it and they enjoy the hero and they can build around it, yeah, absolutely no reason not to here. Poshko will pick up the 33 tide. It'll be Maposhko on that tusk, by the way. Just cement that in your mind. You're not confused when he's making big plays and you think it's Mira. Yeah, gotta give uh, Mira the big damage dealer in this one. So this Skyrath made for him. That very similar opening setup, like. Team Spirit just kind of took Dazzle Skywrath Mage. Is we're gonna watch collapse. Put that Centaur to use. Look at him go. Yeah, these are strong lanes for Spirit. They're gonna win three lanes here. This is what the Centaur pick is gonna do. It's gonna win you this off lane guaranteed, which means you have mid lane auto stomp, top lane auto win with Skywrath Centaur versus PL Silence. That's PL Silencer is not doing anything in this lane. And then Morphling pretty much will free farm down here. I mean, Tide is kind of favored in this matchup, but. Shadow Demon's also a little slow of a pick on the first two levels. I think this lane should become stronger for Tundra over time. This is the lane that you're really looking to get a lot of net worth out of. But those other two lanes, are they're going to be a rough time. And Tide is not an Axe, right? Like Spirit last game, they lost two lanes. The Axe won, and the Axe just brought everybody back in that game. Tide Hunter doesn't do the same thing. He can take some towers with Hammer. He can help you in a, like a team fight around a Tier 1, but... At some point, you're going to have to win a team fight, probably from behind in this game if you're Tundra. Not impossible with Phantom Lancer. He has some crazy timings. And it's already the Rome time for Thompson, <laughs> level three. Now, this is Thompson. Thompson's like, you Ooh. idiots, you're just supposed to leave the lane at level three. <laughs> That's how you yeah. play the matchup. He's a uh, Primal yes. Beast cosplay right now. Yeah. That was a very valuable kill, though, because they got him on the TP. Yeah. That is such a Thompson move. That, yeah, that's one of those moves. What the hell is this guy doing, man? Five stacks for old Maposhka. This is gonna hurt. Not quite enough to kill him, but he's blocked in a little bit by creeps. They throw the blood grenade at him to finish him off. Nine. Very good kill. Good kill. Again, that's the lane if you're Tundra, you want to go really well here. And I guess if you can gang top and just try lane him there, then you're winning two out of three, right? Who needs to have a mid? It's the future of Dota. You just don't have somebody mid. Nobody wants to play the role. Yatoro, oh, what happened? Yatoro, poison, clipping him off the fog. I think he was going max agility because he had those ten st uh, charges. He was gonna go all agility, pop it, and then he got hit by a poison. See, nine, nine was really ahead of of everybody. You understand what's happening here? See, nine would have been playing this Earth Spirit mid and just getting dumped on and miserable. Uh huh. And instead, he's like, "Yeah, you you will play mid tops, and you know I'm I'm, I'm gonna change my role. You know, you hey, enjoy Thompson, that lane. How's, it, how's mid going, bud? Yeah, it's a really fun lane these days. You're gonna you're gonna love it, man. You're you're gonna absolutely have a blast. I'm gonna go play four. You know, I'm gonna go struggle as four, just solo kill Yatoro. Go, you, you take mid, man. You got it. <laughs> Ten head plays right here from the team organizational standpoint. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I think. This Shadow Demon's happier than the Earth Spirit. In fact, he is. He is higher yeah. net worth. So basically, Nine is just the mid player. He just didn't have to play this matchup. <laughs> and he sent his support Earth Spirit mid. He's having a grand old time. Now he's like, all right, Thompson, I'll come bail you out. <laughs> you want me to lane mid? Bro? <laughs> Switch it up. Actually, why don't they do that? Thompson, you'd be a great four. Wait, now that I'm thinking about it, why don't they, why don't they just lane the SD mid? Uh, because Earth Spirit... It's, it's a good matchup versus Dazzle. You disrupt him when he poisons you, you walk away. Yeah, but Earth Spirit needs levels, I think, to function right now. Well, you just play... I mean, you can play for Earth Spirit. Go gank. They won't expect it. And Nine's a mid player, so it works out for everybody. I think that's what they're basically going to have to do regardless here. Top Sting going to be chased down underneath this tier two. They have the vision to finish him off. Yeah, but Lara the real mid. going to die, though. With and the rune. Nine is level five now. <laughs> I'm the mid now. 
You've been demoted. <laughs> I mean, chances are that Thompson's probably going to rotate <laughs> to one of these side lanes. He's the highest level. We almost got another one. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. This D's out of control. All right, arcane Radiant's runes are coming up. Or excuse me, uh, wisdom attack. runes are coming up. So nine's going to head back to that one, which. Thompson did indeed move to a side lane. He moved up to top. Phantom Lancer is going to be jungling, so. Where he goes exactly, though, he showed up in lane and immediately got pressured by Collapse Hardcore. This is, this is like the Thompson effect, though. Dyer's I'm telling you, even in this position, you, I don't know if Team Spirit feel great about what's happening right now. I know that's weird to say, but this SD got a lot out of the early game. You knew this lane was going to stomp. If it were any other player, I'd be like, all right, Dyer's this guy's done. But the problem is it's Thompson. You know this guy thrives off these positions. It's like, yes, kill me two more times, Laurel. Make my day. I don't, maybe I just don't have the same faith as you. Maybe he Laurel. baited him. If he dies here, he doesn't have TP. Maposhka's going to come in. Doesn't pick him up inside the snowball. It's going to go for the kill on to nine. Shallow Grave goes off, but Laurel... He's going to die to Thompson. Shallow Grave doesn't last that long. Plus two. No, not plus two. He doesn't have Glaze. Plus zero. Dyer's top Sad. Tower is under attack. It could have been plus two, though. But that's a recovery kill for Thompson right there. And ganking this Dazzle. That's uh, one route to recovery here from the lane. You just want to get everybody's net worth up as well as you can. Still three cores from Team Spirit having a free-for-all. So, one of them is a centaur, so you also got that going for you. <laughs> you, gotta look up, you gotta be an optimist, you know. No gank the mid here. Nine will die. Silence just lasting too long. And the tower is being chipped away. That is the problem. They can bait in Laurel and trade some kills or whatever, but this mid tower is going to fall. You just need levels, right? You need your ults on your two supports here. Like, Silence or Earth Spirit is a really strong support duo. That's a Magnetize. So, <laughs> That's a TP. That is a Magnetize. The farming Magnetize. Uh, huh. He tested it out. Does work. <laughs> Good to know. Dyer's top tower well, that was not attack. great for Tundra. This is a very bizarre game. Maybe he was afraid Nine was going to come back in the mid and take more of his waves. <laughs> I got to farm this up fast. Get it while I can. Well, with uh, Magnetize on cooldown and a Tidehunter TP on cooldown, Team Spirit will aggressively take that tower. Oh, Toro again. I don't think he's dying a second time, though. No, but he will feel the pain of those five Shadow Poison stacks. On a high level of shattering. Uh, well, Team Spirit played this early game pretty well. I mean, the, it, their draft is set up to do it, but they did make the rotations mid, which I think is what you're supposed to do. Punish this mid matcher as much as possible, take the tower, and now you have a lot of space to operate on. Pretty much guaranteed rune control as well, so Zer Spirit's not going to get any sort of recovery haste or arcane or DD to play around with. Once more, the rock of Tundra 33 here is going to have to farm up and, and be the anchor. See, this is the problem that I have with this draft, though, is that, like, if things go wrong, who's who's making plays? Nobody. It's they have just a farm the lake. Silencer Shadow Demon. Not, not, like, the most inspiring playmaking support duo. Well, Shadow Demon was mid. True. Centaur, Stampede. Disrupt again. immediately in the 33. He's going to be here with the Ravage if needed. Laurel's going to early Shallow Grave himself, try and put damage on Thompson, hoping he can trade one for one. Mira, he dies for it, seeing if he can make that happen. Gets the kill on nine with the Mystic Flare, immediately TP's out, but the Ravage is going to stop him. Uh, probably worth it here. You got to take what kills you can get with this Ravage, get back in the game. That'll put 33 top of the board. And it completes the Midas for Thompson. Oh, boy. He's coming back. I mean, his first two magnetizes didn't hit a hero, but <laughs> he's coming back. The scary part is, is he's only 700 gold behind his Phantom Lancer. So, 
Skeeter's You're not having that's bad good, this time. Good for him or bad for Skeeter? Probably a little bit of both. I feel like this is about where you expect Phantlancer to be with an offlane counter pick, honestly. Yeah. Right. I mean, he has a Silencer 5, too. What do you want him to do? That, that, that <laughs> part's for sure. <laughs> it's just so, it's so greedy and so slow. It's not a winnable lane when they have a counter pick, and they chose to use that counter pick to win the lane. Like, you're not picking Centaur here for the mid late game. You're picking it to shut the hero down and create a lot of tempo. That's what it's done. So you expect this Phantom Lancer to play from behind, but Phantom Lancer is one of those heroes, like we saw the PA in game one, that can make aggressive comebacks, right? If you get a Defusal Ags, Manta, or Heart, you're pretty strong in this game. You're gonna burn out the mana from these Team Spirit heroes. Thompson's starting to come back. Did get a rune. He's gonna put the double use. damage. Make short work of Mira, who they tried to save him with the Stampede, but he uh, turned around at in not a great time. I mean, this is where this game's gonna get interesting for Spirit. They they need to use the Centaur with this early blink to take over more of the map because if you end up in a trade war and this game gets extended, you're not gonna feel that great despite opening up the lead off the lanes. These types of kills definitely help. This is what you want to get Collapse involved in. That was without the blink. Third Magnetize will land. Alright, Topson. Level 9 now. I'm telling you. This guy, doesn't, he doesn't go away, man. That hand of minus. There you go. Doesn't go away. <laughs> Why won't you just stay down? There's he, the Blink Dagger for the Centaur, yeah. He truly doesn't go away. Every he, TI, he comes back, back yeah. on some team in a different region. This is definitely the most promising one since OG. A little Blink delivery from Nine. Fast blink for 33. They want to get some surprise kill in the morphling with the Ravage if they could. That, that's the dream. Well, you get Toro bite the bait here. It looks like he's just going to play it defensively. Has a good read of where they are on the map. Of course, it was the Midas for the morphling as well, so you're going to pull really far ahead in this period if you don't find morphling on these neutral camps. Stampede going to be used trying to bring down the Phantom Lancer. Don't have nearly enough damage. 33 now strikes. He blinks forward, revealing his blink dagger to slow down Maposhka. Help Skeeter get this kill, which they've got it. But it does leave Utoro free to be able to push out this bottom lane and go back to where he was. Oh, and nice. Nine actually was still here. Nice juke. Baited the jump from Collapse. Says, yes, you can actually miss a blink stun. He still died, but sent the message. That's the downside of that go top, right? I almost think Team Spirit made that play just to see or force a reaction on the quarters from Tundra. Yeah, it did kind of seem like that, right? Yeah, and they got a global out of it as well, and then all of a sudden, Yotoro sees him top. He goes back in mid, he gets a return kill. So yeah, much space and gold for the Morphling here. And that was a smoke for Tundra committed to try and find the Morphling in the first place. Just, that play got totally disrupted. Barely able to roll out in time. Does make it. Thompson takes a healthy amount of damage from the Mystic Flare, but he is alive. And Axe completed for Laurel, so he's ready to fight. Ready to skirmish, throw these inverse waves. Axe done for the Phantom Lancer as well. Not a bad timing here, all things considered. And this is a powerful item. The the I, Ags Diffusal is going to do some work here. Yeah, I was like going to say, how good is the Ags without the Diffusal? I mean, it's still a strong item. Like, you can't. If, if you get dragged into a fight, you can fight with this timing on Phantom Lancer. It's not necessarily what you want to do, but you can do it. And that Wisdom Room stolen. Toro continues to pump up the levels. But you really want to get this Diffusal, because Diffusal is not that expensive. As long as you don't get caught and die, you should get it pretty fast. Oh, we have the vision on the neutral camp. That'll help him a lot. Doesn't want to land somewhere? All right. He's baiting him in a little bit. Oh, the poison actually did not stretch out to hit the real Phantom Lancer. Stampede going to be put to use. See if they can kill the Shadow anchor. Demon and get out. But they're anchored down by 33. They're going to make sure the Dazzle's not going anywhere. And 33 positions himself for a Ravage. Ready to go for it, but doesn't actually let it rip because there's no damage dealers behind him. Yeah, Thompson's dying bottom. 
Got caught out by Yatoro and Maposhka. Yatoro is not jungling. He's playing deep up on the enemy side of the map right now. Again, look at the lane wards from Team Spirit. This has been their MO all tournament. Get these two side lanes in, get deep wards, and then create pickoff scenarios where the second you show somebody isolated, you're gone, and the map crumbles. This is how they are creating a huge net worth differential. It's been working pretty damn well. And it's just dragging 33 around. He's so strong right now. He is the bulwark for Tundra, but he's a tide hunter. He can't be everywhere. And it's also limited on the catch. Yeah, who's going to fight with this guy? It's got to be the Earth Spirit, right? Yeah. But he's had to recover this game. It's just going to be a slow game. They're not in the worst position, but you got to be able to get to the next set of items here. The Blade Mail on Thompson and the Diffusal for Skeeter. Take a fight with that. You're straight back in this game. That is the important one. Fine, you Toro. Also, you can create Morphling Illusions in this game, which are very strong. Uh, they are no joke as Yatoro continues to power up here. Yeah, they do have a lot of silences too to be able to follow that up, right? So, yep. disruption into Earth Spirit roll in. So they have the, the initial stun. They could follow up some silences with the disruption illusions out. Yeah, I could see a world where they could maybe kill the Morphling if not do a lot of damage to some other heroes with it. But... As far as it stands right now, they are being picked apart by Team Spirit. It's all good in theory, but in practice, Team Spirit just seems to be one step ahead of Tundra at all times. So now they're several steps ahead off of a stampede, running toward Thompson, blinking right in front of the roll. Collapse will not let him get away. Doesn't even need the stun. And look at 33. He's sitting on the high ground. He's like, guys, I have a brilliant oh, ground. He's finally going to use Yo, his gear. They can clean up two supports, but... They don't have quite enough damage to deal with the rest here. Skeeter actually has to leave, maybe. They have found the real Phantom Lancer. Yutoro is targeting the right one. Skeeter's just charging forward on a sliver of HP, and finally Yutoro puts him down. Uh, Yutoro just knew. Holds his ground. You can still see glimmers of what that team fight can look like for Tundra with these Lances and, and 33 going in, creating the control. It's a lot of damage. Like, most damage done in this fight, Phantom Lancer, right? <laughs> And that's before he hits his real timing here with that defusal. Pretty good if they only had another hero to play with there in that fight. Sadly. Oh, they might Ooh. get the morph. Maybe He's they violence. will. He's going to be silenced when he comes back Call. in. Yeah, just burst it down. Big kill for Thompson, who gets the last hit on that one. So they get 544 gold for him, and then an additional 597 for the team. Oh, this Earth Spirit's back, man. He is straight back to below Team Spirit's cores, but I mean, he is completely back in this game. I mean, uh, one of the things they say about Earth Spirit, right, it's not necessarily about the gold, right? It's about the levels, and he's got that at least going. Level oh, I 12. thought you were going to make a... It's not about the size of his totem. <laughs> no. I was but how you totem. roll in with it. Right, Austin? Right, right. No, I agree. This hero's not about the gold. It's about the player. It's not about the size of the boulder, it's about how often it's up. Which is currently right. every four seconds. You might have bitten off more than you can chew here, though. Yeah, a tad bit, a tad bit. I, I mean, the magic burst damage is so scary. Ancient seal plus double edge. That's another reason why the global is really good this game, though. You get rid of that burst off of a centaur initiation or something, it just disjoints the whole play from spirit. Right. They're going to have to think about it. at least still dispels are up. These are also not really heroes you want to buy early dispels on, right? You're going for the ags on the Mira Skywrath Mage, and it's a five position Tusk. What are you even supposed to get? Like a Greaves delivered from Gabe himself? These probably aren't supports on Team Spirit side that are going to be able to get rid of the Global Silence, so it's going to be good for a long time here. I, I still like Tundra's odds to win a fight with this Diffusal Phantom Lancer timing, honestly. I think it's king of the game for that period until Spirit get to the, the late game territory where suddenly maybe you have too much damage to throw in the Phantom Lancer, and Team Spirit will take a page literally out of Tundra's book with the Courier Tormentor kill. I was waiting for a Tundra tip, just like they got tipped last game for that same play, but no. Middle Tower no this team doesn't attack. tip, man. There's no honor in tip. You think Tundra is a very honorable team? That's right. I think if we look at all the TI champions over time and we think of which was the most honorable, 
Tundra is the first that comes to my mind. Right, of course, of course, which means that you have a ranking in your head, so who's bottom <laughs> of the list? <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. It's also a Tundra. It's, it's a <laughs> circle, and you can go around the Aegis wheel. <laughs> They're on both ends of it. Uh-huh. Who's the most dishonorable <laughs> TI player? <laughs> what kind of question is that, dude? No matter who I say, it's a hate thread. Yeah, and I would love to read that thread, so. Honestly, let's be real. It was probably Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was probably what? Alliance. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they just ratted that I, shit out. Do I out. have to play the load? Is that balanced <laughs> clip for you? All right, that was an fight. honorable team. They honorable, not... honorable team fight coming in. 33 holding the high ground. It's hey, all hey, about the Ravage jump. He's going to be first one targeted, but he sees it coming, gets off the global silence. Laurel straight up pops the BKB and runs at Snake King, trying to finish him off with the BKB for just a silencer. He's going to feel the greatest. Thompson did roll into his death, but he immediately buys back. There's and the there goes that Ravage. He got the Shallow Grave off first on Laurel. Yatoro has an opportunity to put out some damage, but Skeeter is going to jump away with a doppelganger. Yatoro? Can't do the save on the Tidehunter. Laurel somehow still alive through all of this one. The damage floating in from nine for the Shadow Poisons from a distance. Skeeter and Snake King trying to find their opening, but Skeeter just cannot get on top of these low health heroes. Laurel is going to bait him in a little bit. He does manage to actually get the kill on Laurel, but it cost him his life. Skeeter dies, and Team Spirit clean up that Roshan fight. Ah, that fight is so deep to go in there. The roll from Thompson just doesn't connect on anything because the BKB on Laurel. Laurel played that fight really damn well. The clutch grave before the Ravage as well. It causes so much pain for the side of Tundra and them having to stay there, linger so long to get this Dazzle. He gets another Shadow Wave off, so much damn heal. There's glimmers of hope for what this fight can look like. The Ags from 33 just holding his high ground. He's so patient here. They know they're going to use this Earth Spear by to create some time. Damn, what a clutch grave. Yeah, that was sick. He also had the leash on Yatoro. I thought maybe they're going to be able to turn this around, the damage going into him there. There's no silence to commit. And at this point, the fight's just getting way too disjointed here. Skeeter can only do so much for so long before he eventually gets found. And that'll be a team fight win for Spirit and an Aegis on their Morphling. These heroes are just slightly too tanky for the damage to come through. And an expensive buyback for Thompson, who is coming back in this game, but is pushed straight back down. Well... That was a lost team fight without, like we just got the Aegis and stuff like that from Roshan, but we're also gonna have the Shard on Dazzle next up. So, I feel like Skeeter's time in these team fights is over. It's not over yet, it's, it's getting harder for sure. I, I just think he's gonna, he's gonna need some time, he's gonna need some items, man. Oh, Centaur stop on tops, and even the neutrals aren't giving him anything today. Nice little pick off, at least. Who collapses has a heart? That's standard centaur build. Nothing else to do but be tanky. You know, if you're if you're gonna be a garbage can, you might, might as well be the biggest and the meatiest. <laughs> you don't want to be a garbage can. You want to be a garbage dumpster. You know. Mm -hmm. But he's been found. He's been finding the centaur stomps. They are easier to land now, and that's. Basically his job. Stampede to save Yatoro, forget the initiation, and find the stomp on the PL. You get those two, and that's what you're here for. Bottom tower is under well, find Skeeter. Another stomp on the PL. Global silence used. If the Phantom Lancer still dies, it'll feel so bad, and he does. You have that shard now, too, so Centaur's going to get real beefy in the fight if you don't focus him. I don't even know if they can really afford to focus him either. No. Does not feel good for Tundra to just go on the Centaur. Their spells are too expensive to expend on him and not on the big damage dealers in the Dazzle and the Morphling. And the Skywrath is becoming a third core in that sense. In terms of damage, you get this Ags on him. Suddenly, he's a huge threat. Team Spirit racking up the pressure here in a game two. Tundra have not found much footing in. Dyer's bottom tower. They slip another time. It could be Team Spear closing out a pretty fast game. 26 minutes in, 10,000 net worth lead already. For a team that has had the longest average duration games of Dream League. Was expecting some 
real long barn burners, and I guess we did kind of have that in game one, but this game two is shaping up to be uh, a one-sided affair if Tundra don't get something going soon. Wait, you're saying uh, you're saying you want a 70-minute drawn-out defensive high ground hold with Fatal Answer from Tundra Esports. That's what you're saying, Austin? I would love to see them do that oh, and come okay. back and win. Wow. Very biased. If there's one team that Someone can do that, game three. it's probably this one. A high ground Tundra hold? Yeah, I think Tundra is probably <laughs> yeah. the best team to do that, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, sometimes I don't know what you mean. They've got they've got the heroes, they've got the will. They've got snaking. Man's I mean, they do have Aghanim, Scepter, Tidehunter, and Aghanim, Scepter, Phantom Lance. Exactly. That is a really annoying high ground spam. And Spirit only have one real high ground right clicker, which is the Morphling. I mean, I guess the Centaur well, can do it with collapse. return. Yeah, he just sits but there with his heart. I feel like the Centaur gets poked down pretty fast. He has 10 armor here. It's the downside of this hero. And you're going to get a bunch of it removed with Gush. Oh, no, he doesn't. He has like 40 armor. Because he's going to be sitting there, and he's going to get dazzled healed every three seconds. Uh, he has 10 armor, and he's <laughs> going to get gushed. But yes, he could get Juju'd up. Okay, this is not much deterrent here. No, no, it really hasn't. I mean, 30 seconds left on the Aegis, so Tundra are desperately either trying to burn out this Aegis for free and fight around that, which they almost get it here, but then the heals come in for the Dazzle. Yutaro, it's about time oh, to rolling. make a decision one way or the other. Either back out and let the Aegis expire or die. I mean, this is your butterfly timing on the Morphling. This is when Morphling feels the best against Phantom Lancer. The second you get this, you you probably have matchup advantage. I mean, he has it because he's 8k ahead as well, but generally this is just your best item in this one-on-one. -on -one. So Yutaro really wants to push it right now. No reason to really back off on the map or not take these fights if you're confident enough in the place you're taking them. That high ground's just the hardest part. Anything outside of Tundra's base, Team Speed are going to leap. They're just going to five-man smoke it up and go straight down mid. That he just has expired, though it's replaced with another item for your Toro. That is how wealthy he is right now. Going to run into nine. I'll take him. In fact, they even try and push forward there with Maposhka. He's Jumping glimmered. out trying to find the Tidehunter. He's well. alive. Glimmer keeps Nine alive. Yeah, he's flipping away into in. the jungle. Thompson does go in with his BKB. Gets a big magnetize on several heroes. Yutoro actually, he got a little bit low there as he was more for agility for him. Nine is going to slip around behind them. Gets a vision. Ravage goes out onto the Dazzle. Try and burst him, but no. The Maposhka Snowball comes in and saves him. And now 33 is stuck inside the shards with nowhere to go. A big heal bomb coming out from Laurel. Blows up the Tide Hunter, keeps everyone healthy, topped up Tundra, full on retreat back to their base. He yeah, the hell out. Their losses, Snake King, he's gonna die, but everyone else will get back. Well, I guess Nine is still the. Yeah, somehow last Nine out in the field survived all that. <laughs> yeah. Despite him being the one jumped Global and Glimmer Cape. Pretty nice to bail him out. Might probably will not work another time as Team Spirit were lacking a little detection in the range. But now you got all these ults down for Tundra. No Ravage, no Global, no Magnetize. Uh oh. Didn't get off the Glimmer Cape in time. Gets it off now. But eventually will die as the AoE damage from Shadow Wave kills. This Morphling is just way too big. Skeeter yeah, cannot hold his ground. He knows this Phantom Lancer. When he shows himself, it's immediately time to pounce after him. He doppelgangers back, and it's just an opportunity for Poison Touch to clear out all the illusions and find the real one. Way too much damage coming out right now. Using this Phantom Lancer against them, the Morphling's turning into him, the Dazzle right, healing off the him. disruption, but the Shallow Grave comes in. That was the combo we talked about. Got the Dazzle. I mean, he this does is get down. the Dazzle, and Yutaro has to TP out. No, he gets stunned. Oh, big win there for Tundra. Topsin, if he can live, even better for him. But he does end up dying after the roll goes through. 33, lipping away on just 8 HP. Nobody's going to blink after him. Oh, yeah, Collapse tries to, but 33... Blink for Blink stays ahead of him. Uh, this is a 6,000 HP Centaur right now. Yeah, keep... Will this stack? See how many Shadow Poison stacks you need to kill this Centaur. <laughs> Probably as many as he had Culling Blades last game, so 16 if you can get there. It cost them the buybacks on the bull supports. 
That that might be the most damage I've ever seen from a centaur in a single fight. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know where that comes from. It's just double-edging people the whole time because, again, Tundra don't want to focus him. They just can't afford to. Still a pretty good high ground hold, I guess. I mean, Thompson got the job done. You get the Morphling, you get the Dazzle. Wasn't pretty. Caused you some economic damage. Double buy from your supports, but no cores. Problem's going to be is they need the confidence to go out and take this next Roshan. Because I feel like if Morphling gets an Aegis, again, that'll be too much for them to handle. I tend to agree, and that's why you just got to maximize your fighting power right now. Shard on Snake King for, I guess, a little extra damage. Whatever. Yeah. Mainly, it's the Hex on 33. This is the big pickup for Tundra. He's their most farmed hero. He's had the best game. He's going to try and pay it off by finding the Blink Hex initiation with a Ravage. It means you can disable multiple heroes for extended time. You can get, maybe get the Dazzle or the Morphling. That is what you're looking for here. You cannot go on this Centaur. I think it's a death sentence. Smoke breaks, 33, blinking That's forward. That's who they find. Finds the centaur, not what they wanted. Oh, this is absolutely terrible. him into his own doom. Disruption to buy 33, a little bit of time, but it's a pittance at best. 33 with Glimmer Cape hidden away in the trees. Finally forced to use the Ravage to just try and escape, but it doesn't matter. They've already ignored the Tyne Hunter push forward. They kill nine. Eater does manage to get away thanks to his shard. TP out. He's going to be spotted on Laurel. The poison touch doesn't quite connect in time. A little chase after him all the way back to the fountain. That's probably going to be Roshan, though. Ravage on cooldown for 110 here. That's just what can you do? I mean, if you're 33 and you find Centaur, that, that's kind of the fight over right there. Yeah. Awesome. There's no way you can commit on him and it just sets everything up for Team Spirit. They're going to see the whole team fight. They can play around the Ravage. What have we here? They needed a pretty dream scenario where they needed to be able to catch the Morphling Goodness. and somehow stop both the Dazzle and the Tusk, who are both looking to save the Morphling. I mean, the Global can buy you a little bit of time, right? Yeah. Like, it can interrupt the cast or you don't get BKB off at the exact right time. The Tusk did not have a Dispel for that fight, so you're preventing a Snowball save. I think if you find the Morphling, he will get into the pop. It's very fast as well off the Hex, because he's going to be Ashy more. Team Spirit are just way too good at these team fight positioning, and that's a tall order to just, okay, just go find your Toro and Hex him. I mean, it's like, okay. Yeah, it was pretty hard to find him last game. Not much easier here, as he will complete a Silver Edge. Now he can go and break the Tide, set the fight up for the Centaur Stomp to come through, and your Frontliner is gone, barring a Disruption save that has to come out. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And it might just be collapsed on the high ground here. Had no fear this entire game. 8, 1, and 10 on this Centaur has made it look like a very viable hero. I was wondering if we were going to see the new Axe on Morphling at any point in this matchup, but there's that Shallow Grave that used the Stampede as well, just in case it's needed. They just picked up this Aegis. They want to get a little bit more mileage out of it. Poke's becoming a little stronger. A little bit. Especially with that Hex, you walk high ground, you're going to get Hexed into the Poke. I mean, if you're Tundra, you just got to stall this game. Got to go into turtle mode. Well, <laughs> Dobson's trying to eke out every little bit of an advantage he can. Look at that backpack. <laughs> the 35-minute shovel. Shovel pays off. It's just extra GPM. Yeah. Oh, it's... Poor man's Philly. Thompson straight in. Yeah, that was a bold move. Global Silence covers him there. Trying to finish off Mira. They almost get him, but the heals and the Shallow Grave will prevent They're burning Mira's collapse. Death, I think. Collapsed it. Yeah, he is actually burning quite a bit here. Another Shallow Grave comes out just in time. Nice. Lances are doing work right now. The Tor got silenced as well. This is, this is very awkward for Spirit. Yeah, it, 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 imagine if they were a little bit more even on that net worth. The long range spam of these Lances, they Gushes, killed. Poisons. The curse, even. I imagine you had a thunderous god wrath there. 
It's too salty now. This poke it, it's, it's building up. This is what this lineup's supposed to do, right? Create a situation where you get them to half or even a third on some of these heroes, and then you can commit in. It's just like you said, unfortunately, well, maybe not unfortunately, but the way these drafts are set up, Team Spirit were probably always going to be ahead from that early game. And it means you getting to that threshold where you can commit in that fight on the basis of poking them down never really got there completely. It's starting to get there now, but. Marl heads back for a quick top up before he uh, bad jujus his way back onto the battlefield. Next, he's going to be going for Octarine. Gotta say, though, even though I can see how Tundra's lineup was supposed to come together, be able to draw out the game and, you know, like, push it late where they feel confident they're going to win, it does not feel like they answered the Dazzle nearly as well as Team Spirit did in game one. Yeah. This game probably went a bit better as well in terms of taking over the map. I think Team Spirit have played the map better than Tundra this series, honestly. Oh, well, that's a rare thing to say. It is, because Tundra's incredibly efficient and they're incredibly good at, at playing the wards and playing the vision game, but they got outlaned a little bit and Team Spirit ran away with it. Had bigger threat with this Skywrath backing up the kill potential. And their draft was just very clunky. There's not much threat coming out, so nobody has to play scared on the side of Team Spirit. Skeeter is going to face tank it and yeah, it's going to force a global out. I don't know if it'll yield anything here. The Centaur's just so damn tanky. He always has that BKB in his pocket. Kind of forced to poke at something here. Maposhka actually jumps in with his BKB, goes for nine. Doesn't get him with the Glimmer Cape. Maybe the Morphling can get it, but he instantly got scythed up as he jumped in. Has to deal with the anchor. Meanwhile, the Phantom Lancer is still in the back here. Trying to chase after Maposhka, but a shard's blocked him out. This is another fight Tundra's fine with, though, because you're wasting this Aegis period for Yatoro. He's not taking your base. You're happy about that. And you're also just gaining more confidence in this game on how to take the fights and kite it out. Hard done for Skeeter to still a very strong Phantom Lancer game. There have been some very important matches over the history of Dota between Phantom Lancer and Morphling. Some of those Topson was in. A couple of them, yeah. Generally, it's gone the Phantom Lancer's way. Whether through the matchup, skill, luck, whatever you want to call it, the game goes late enough, it gets very wonky for the Morphling. Now, there are things that Spirit have going for them in terms of the Dazzle with the AoE Hex, with the Shadow Wave. Centaur has some decent AoE. But when it comes down to it, there's a reason Tundra picked this Phantom Lancer, and the comeback can always be there if the fight develops in a way that's good for you. Stampede so chasing after him, Snake King was de-warding. Nice four staff, Ogre Steel Totem keeps him ahead of Maposhka. Nicely played, now Maposhka is a bit overextended. They're gonna pop the Ravage to make sure they can get a kill out of this one. Fortunately, the Shadow Grave kept Yotoro alive. Satanic gets him back up to full. Same goes with the Cheese on Laurel. They're both back up and Topson surrounded by heroes. He'll die, but does have a buyback. Touch your fight it going though. He's gonna throw the Lances in, burning out the mana. Yotoro completely gone here. And now they can play off of that mana being gone. See if they can chase after these heroes, but not feeling confident about it. I mean, they technically got a one for one. It's not even. You'd much rather have Thompson up than down, but... Again, you're holding on to some glimmer of late game hope here if you're Tundra and just trying to get Skeeter to smite him. So any fight where Skeeter survives and you get gold out of it, you're probably okay with... Waveform cooldown. I mean, that's your best tool to try and combat this matchup. Just going with the waveform attacks. Try and add some AoE damage. You also have options here with this Morphling in the late game. You can go the Daedalus build and try and crit on your way in. You can go... I think at some point we even saw like an Octarine build. With just super low cooldown waveform. Right, you're just waveform attack target right. as many times as possible. Here, Yatoro is thinking about Hex. So he's not going for... A, the waveform buildup, he wants to just go in and find a big target and kill it. Get a numbers advantage. Because in some ways, they do. Have, they will always have some answers to the illusions, right? With the uh, yes. dazzle. Like, he, if he gets in a moment where he hits it with a poison touch, clears out all the illusions, finds the real one, it only takes a second for then that sight to be able to follow it up and 
them to bring down the carry and end the game. The thing about the Scythe here going in single target for Yatoro is you do have the global and the disruption that can bail a single target initiation out from Tundra. It's not a guarantee. Like, in a pickoff scenario, it's great. But the problem is you're, you're already in a situation where Tundra are stuck on their base. I don't know how many heroes you're going to find on the map because there is nobody on the map. Let's see what he ends up deciding for. I wouldn't be surprised to see him change this, but I mean, Hex is never bad. That's for damn sure. It's also going to make Collapse's life easier. Either by follow-up or his lead stun is just going to get chained. And he's getting beefy. His AoE damage is starting to come through. BKBs on the Poshka to counteract this global. Strength Blink for Collapse to add more illusion clear. But it's all about the poke. Drain their mana, slow them down. Got collapsed down to about half health here, and he's perched up. He does have Stampede. Tundra, pretty certain that's what they're really fishing for. Just trying to get spells out. They just want to force a misstep. That's all they're doing here. Trying to bait out a mistake from a team that makes very few. Tormentor, and that'll be Scion Armor. Top of this Ag Skyrath, no joke here. The damage getting pumped out is very heavy if you get caught by any of these stuns. There's a punch, potentially that Morphling Hex and the Centaur Stomp, as well as the Hex from the Dazzle. A lot of setup to just pump in this damage, and you don't necessarily have to commit either if you're Team Spirit. You could go in with Maposhka, punch somebody up, drop a Skyrath ult, see what happens. Maybe you get a Global out. Maybe you get a a Ravage that gets forced. Yeah, that's probably another thing about the Scythe. His biggest resource when it comes to this chip damage, it's not his HP, it's his mana pool. Like part of the reason he can't just go up and hit high ground a little bit is because he loses that mana so quickly. And with him having no mana means Tundra can actually play that team fight. They can just kite around the Morphling and hit other heroes. That does help a little. I don't know if it fixes it, but it, it helps in a, a very prolonged situation. I'm surprised Tundra are contesting this. They're not going to be here in time. They're also getting hit by Global Concussive, so Team Spirit know they're here right now. That's going to be Aghanim Scepter for the Tusk. So I was wondering if we're going to see a, an Aghanims versus Aghanims at any point. Tusk versus Earth Spirit in the ultimate dislocate uh, the enemy team. Oh, Thompson. Actually, man, Thompson here. Global Sounds goes down, pops the BKB with Walrus Punch. Maposhka quickly cleansed himself of that silence with his BKB. Gets the stun required. Now Thompson down. Gives an opportunity for Team Spirit to poke the high ground. Does that buyback back up? The collapse going to force the issue. It's going to get the buyback instantly. Even better, they got the support of nine. No more saves until he buys back anyway. Snowball backwards, nicely played by Maposhka, getting him outside of the base as the buybacks come through. Tundra are trying to push themselves forward here to catch something. Thompson went for the initiation, missed it though from the side. Meanwhile, Yatoro just chases down the back line. Both supports are now dead in the midst of it though. Mira fighting for his life, the Shadow Graves keeping him alive and the heroes are dying. There is nothing that Tundras can seemingly do anymore against this lineup. They have run out of resources, and they have run out of games in this best of three series. Team Spirit will close it out 2-0. Uh, collapse is too big and too bad here, man. He, he put on a performance for sure here. Everybody from Team Spirit showing up. They just feel so comfortable in this patch, and a lot of the games we've seen this entire tournament, they're happy to go late with anything. It doesn't seem like the heroes necessarily matter. They're always confident in their scale, getting the farm on everybody. The Ags on Maposhka to just steal the deal if they had to go the high ground, but they don't even have to because they just start that fight with a clutch blink hex pickoff. Everything's just coming together for them, and they look damn scary. This is a terrifying team to go up against right now. Tundra pushed back down. Back to the drawing board here in terms of what was working for them and what wasn't. This lineup in particular felt a little slow and Team Spirit definitely took advantage of the lane matchups. You lost with the Dazzle versus the Earth Spirit and you lost with the Earth Spirit versus the Dazzle. Yeah, that can't feel great. It does not feel great.
it really doesn't because you feel like you just got outplayed. And I mean, maybe that's what happened at the end of the day. You probably just got outplayed. Well, Team Spirits looking damn fine in this upper bracket. Looking forward to their next matchup. Definitely a favorite for this tournament for sure. But Tundra, I'm sure they're going to go to the lower bracket. Uh, and I imagine they're going to be a tough opponent. Don't envy anybody who matches them in that lower bracket, especially after learning from this series. But that closes out the day nice and easy. We're going to head back to the panel, break down this second game. Tundra needing a little bit more to take on Team Spirit. Spirit have not missed a beat since the Riyadh. A whole month and a half has passed, and some teams, namely Game and Liquid and Talon, have kind of fallen off quite a bit since that tournament. But Spirit are keeping the good times rolling. Meanwhile, Tundra fall to the lower bracket after a 2-0 loss here, where they will face off against the winter winner of OG versus Nine Pandas. But they're not out of the tournament quite yet. Still, though, I'm considering Spirit to be Nearly a lock for Grand Finals. For as good as Shopify looked in their series earlier against Betboom, the Spirit is operating on another wavelength. Well, it is worth keeping in mind that the one team that Spirit did lose a game to lost to Shopify as well. It's right? the transitive property here. They lost so, to Betboom. Shopify number one. Shopify so beat Shop number one. So Betboom was the only team to beat Spirit in a game. <laughs> And now Shopify did beat them two to one. Okay. They have a chance. Okay. I mean, I think it's pretty fair to say at this point, just the thing that is so impressive to me always when I watch Team Spirit is their creativity in the draft, I think. They just have really deep pools. This game, you called the Centaur. You had the eye for it. So did they. Um, another outstanding performance from everybody on the squad, right? Don't expect anything less from them. I, I don't actually know. I feel like you need to come in with such a clutch idea which in game one they maybe tried, but then they let through the axe. And I don't know, they're just so good. They are very good, I must say. I mean, I said they were heavy favorites going into this one, because it's just like they're, everyone on the team knows exactly what they need to be doing to win the game. Where on Tundra, like, yeah, they look good some games, but other games they look a little all over the place here. They've got the consistency. And I think since winning Riyadh, that has really just like powered them up to really believe in themselves, I think, in each individual role. And everyone in each individual role is performing really well. I would especially want to highlight Laurel because I used to talk to him throughout the years and be like, He's definitely probably the weaker point on the team. He's having the most inconsistent games. Now here he is, like dumpstering Thompson 1v1 harder. I said, how could you dumpster even harder in the reverse matchup? And he somehow found a way to do it, which is quite amazing. In an earlier interview on one of the secondary streams, Laurel was asked what team he was most excited to play for. And he said Tundra. And I, I have to imagine that part of the Dazzle pick may be a little bit of a statement thing where he's just like, you know, if Thompson thinks they can do Dazzle, now's my chance to really... Yeah, watch me do it to him. Watch me do it. And he did it extremely well. He did all the... He did have to grave himself when he was tormenting, though. Thompson didn't grave himself when he was tormenting. Ooh. So, gotta a little work bit on of that. unfamiliarity wow. on the hero. I'm just saying, there's room for improvement. But right now, the team as a whole, every single player throughout Dream League Season 21 has had a contention for being MVP in any given game. And that's always the most yeah. encouraging thing for a team, is that, like, it's not just your cores that are carrying you. Your aid, like Mira and Maposhka, have consistently been MVP contenders. And I think for a team of this caliber, right, like Team Spirit, the reason they want to play against Tundra is they are the defending TI champions, True. right? So there's always that rivalry. It feels like every year, whoever won the previous year really wants to play against the team that won the year prior, mm -hmm. right? Or vice yeah. versa. Because uh, they feel like, you know, this, okay, this is definitely when you've been at that level, uh, you know, you know what it's all about, you know what it takes. And when both teams play their absolute best is when you get the best games. I don't think Tundra played their best today, personally. Uh, I think as good as Spirit looked, Tundra definitely had a couple of situations that were a little bit shaky. I think in this game, for example, for me personally, Thompson was over aggressive in this game, which is unusual, right? Because usually he knows his aggression very well and either accomplishes, he, he will play super aggressive no matter what, yeah. let's be honest. But a lot of the time it has a very positive impact. I think in this game he got himself killed yep. multiple times with no real payoff. Um, and perhaps that's just unfamiliarity with being this far behind as the Dazzle matchup he was obviously shut, put him. Yeah, like he was shut down so much. Maybe it's just too hard to play when you're like so far behind. And I think they didn't really find a good footing back into this game. Again, I think game one, the idea is kind of cool. Maybe they forgot about the Axe down the line because sure, every game with Dazzle, you always win, whatever it may be. You haven't played against the Axe yet, but game two, yeah, I just think you can just see that spirit. They're going to go to the Grand Finals. Yeah, I think the issue I saw with uh, Tundra in this series in particular is they're 1-2. Like, they 
are not completely syncing up exactly on having good games. Like, I'd say game one, Skeeter did not have a good game one on the mm -hmm. faces void. It wasn't great, even though Topson was doing really well, whereas 33 was pretty stable in both games. And then in game number two, Topson wasn't really stable. Skeeter was kind of having a more stable game. They needed, when you're playing versus a team where you have five players that are playing really well, like on the side of Spirit, you have to be able to match that. And unfortunately in this series, Tundra could not find the stability within the two cores. Yeah. It's okay though, they will have another opportunity as they move forward throughout the lower bracket. But for right now, we've got a winner's interview with Mira of Team Spirit. Mira, congratulations on this win. And I'm especially excited to talk to you because I've always considered one of your signature heroes to be Dark Willow. You played it two times in your grand final against LGD and TI. But over the past two years, you have barely played this hero. I think you've played it like two or three times, and now you've played it like four times in this Dream League with a 100% win rate. What has brought Dark Willow back for you? I guess uh, like last year it uh, wasn't that good, but after patch where they uh, like rework Bedlam, so you can use it on teammate and you like uh, just can't stay uh, mid position, and uh, don't commit and just look at fight, like go in, but let me skill in someone. And uh, it's kind of nice here now. Very, uh, it's very like easy to pick it because it's like uh, like also universal. So you you just smash on lane and then you have super broken two uh, spells on your ulti, and it's kind of nice. So that's why we pick it. Have you practiced these Bedlam duos? Because you look really good. We saw you doing it with your Spectre. Yatoro, you would put it on him before he shadow steps in. Uh, in this series, you were putting it on Collapse's Axe before he jumped in. Is this just uh, you pubbing experience or is this scrim experience? Uh, like basically from pub and uh, you can also like use it uh, like on Warlock's Golem, on uh, um, Laundroid Bear and a lot of uh, like units. So it's very good now. You can just like solo win game in pub. <laughs> I love to watch it. Love the tip as well. Fear, you got any questions for Mira? I do. I've been watching you and Collapse in the off lane for a while now. It seems like you almost always win your lane. Is there any team that has like a safe lane that is hard for you guys to play against? Or is every lane pretty easy? Uh, maybe Skeeter plus uh, Fata, like in the past, and Nightfall <laughs> plus uh, Kingslayer. Yeah, I guess his name, his nickname was something like that. And they were like our uh, strongest opponents on lane. But for now, I don't know. Maybe uh, the duo of, um, gaming um, GG duo like uh, Salary and uh, Duracho are very good on laning, so yeah, I would name them. They are toughest opponents on lane. All right, and then the next question is, a lot of people say you guys are in TI form. Do you guys feel that as well as like towards the end of the year, you just won Riyadh, you're going to this tournament, you're steamrolling. Do you feel that as well that you guys are just like powering up towards the end of the year as you know TI is getting closer? I don't know. Uh, we like uh, basically we're just chilling we uh, um, before the tournament started we just uh, um, told each other that we're going to play uh, not uh, too much like trying and just uh, chill and see um, uh, uh, um, what we can achieve we don't want to win this because if you win tournament you will lose ti so <laughs> <laughs> Like playing some series, uh, if you win, nice. If not, uh, doesn't matter. Sounds like that. All right, I'm up next. I was told to say something in Ukrainian, so hopefully I'll do it nicely. Ooh. I was told to say, Shote. Shote. It's nice try. <laughs> not the best one, but it's nice. <laughs> okay, but, uh, I tried. Wait, what's okay. the translation? You, you, it's like, you, what's up? You, Is that right? You uh, like should say, not show, but sho. Shote. Shote. Was it better? Yeah, better. Yeah, okay. better now. <laughs> and now on to my question. So I remember last year, you gave an interview where you said you struggled with uh, imposter syndrome. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's... It was strange for me to read since you had just... Right, you won TI and you didn't have like a great year, I would say, up until Riyadh. Could you tell me if... Has that gone away? If it did, did someone help you with it? And like, how, how do you feel now? I guess no, but I don't care like anymore. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, like if it's not uh, me, uh, I mean like if uh, 
my impact on team um, doesn't matter so yeah, like it doesn't bother me like anymore mm -hmm. uh, it like it is what it is uh, yep. and i will just try my best and i don't think about it anymore okay well i think you're one of the best fours so i don't know if you care Thank but you. i think it's good if you can try to feel like that yourself as well and second so when your teammates got to hear about this or they heard about the story because obviously they did and they know how you feel um how did they react did they talk to you about it or like you know was there a lot of interaction when it came to that we didn't talk much uh, but i know but you know they just like cheer me up okay. like, all the time they're very nice guys like and uh, yeah they like try mm -hmm. uh help me with uh, some cheering me like after the games when i play good when I play bad, they just beat me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Thanks for the answers. Love you. <laughs> You're never gonna stop for the, the end of the interview, Kazi. <laughs> You're gonna stop for the end. Uh, I have a question about your coach, because we see uh, Silent quite a lot in the background, and I feel like he has like the perfect name for this team, because I consider Silent a bit of a silent assassin, in, in the sense that I, I'm hearing from you guys' interviews that he's had a really big part of impact in you guys' success. What is Silent's biggest strength as a coach? Is it match preparation, drafting, keeping you guys on the same level with each other, or what's the what's what does he do the best as a coach? I think he's a uh, very smart and brave coach because he don't uh, scare. He's not scared uh, of uh, like uh, non-meta heroes, and he thinks that you can pick like any hero like if the situation is good for him, and uh, he just. Like he, uh, like mostly, just try to follow meta. But like, if you need some, I don't know, chain or maybe visage or maybe something like this or maybe some bristleback carry, like like um, um, previous patch. So he will pick it and and it will win us a game. So I think he's very like creative and smart. So do you, do you have a, do you have any idea where he gets the creativity from? Does he play a lot of pubs and have a lot of information? Does he do a lot of analysis of like historical drafts that teams have played over the years? Like where does he get his inspiration from? Mm -hmm. um, he's playing maybe not now, but in past he's playing uh, like a lot of overthrow. It's custom game, and he just mostly take builds from there. Yeah, that's his source of uh, like his. Uh, new, new, uh, um, like, like ideas. Yeah, he sees some, uh, some good hero there, and he just uh, like bring it to Dota. That's basically method. That's really interesting. All right. No wonder thank you. you guys are so good at team <laughs> fighting. <man. laughs> yeah. uh, Mira, my last question is uh, more of a reminder. Uh, uh, two days ago, you played a series as Dark Willow, where you made one of the most memorable plays I've seen in a very, very long time, where you managed to steal the Aegis. And mm -hmm. in my mind, that's like one of the plays that will stay with me as a player forever. How does it rank in your pantheon of all-time plays that you've made? That's uh, uh, second best uh, my, my play like in my uh, um... Your career? Whole career, yes. First one was like as Rubik. I stole, like I guess, uh, something uh, like in some um, um, like similar way because uh, the first uh, like time, uh, like it was my idea, and this time, uh, um, Laurel just said to me that my life uh, like a support doesn't matter and just go die <laughs> and try to. <laughs> like, I guess, and I was like, okay, and I was, and I was uh, like, just okay. Like basically, I didn't believe that I, um, I can do it. So I just like went in and uh, was hoping that I will die fast without hesitation. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> and it, it all went badly because you got the Aegis and then you ended up living even longer. And Laurel was yeah. like, damn it, Mira, I told you to die in there. Yeah, I mean, they were both died in the end. He got they the Aegis and then he died. died. So everybody won. That's awesome. Best yeah. case scenario, Mira, and the best case scenario for you moving forward in this tournament as well. Congratulations on securing a top three finish at the minimum and best of luck against Shopify Rebellion later on. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. I'll have to find that number one best play, but poor, poor Mira. <laughs> Just trying to die. It can't even do that, right? Oh, the man. steals and ages. All right. No big deal. I'll try it on you next time, and maybe you'll do it too. Yeah. Let's go die. Oh, yeah. I got an ages. I was dead already. I <laughs> couldn't do it. Someone's got to die. That's true. Do you have a, a most memorable play that you'll always remember of your career, Fear? There's not one that just jumps out. No, not really. Because you've had so many. I mean, the, I had a similar, <laughs> like, Roche steal at TI6 as well. Okay. And the upper bracket 
versus uh, Digital Chaos. Yeah, they were like winning. I still end up stealing the Aegis and we end up winning that game. I was playing Sven. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cousin, you got one? I have one. Uh, TI7 qualifiers with Secret. We played against Danish Bears. Okay. I played offlane face with Void and I think Danish Bears had Ace at the time. I defended the throne like 2v5 and did some sidesteps, whatever, and I think mid one like kept yelling for me to like sidestep back and forth. I think in the middle of the team fight, I told him to like... playing Tetris with you. No, I, I, I was like playing <laughs> Void. <laughs> yeah, like I was chronoing and I was like 2v5 and like you have like very high movement speed. Yeah. He was telling me like how to move and I think eventually I just told him to like shut up. <laughs> anyway, we defended the throne, ran down mid and we won. What, what, what were you sidestepping from? I don't know, like Earth Spirit Cake. So someone was about to Fisher, and you have like high movement. Oh, it's like, okay, okay. careful, Fisher, careful this, careful that. <laughs> Imagine you're playing a high stress situation, and your team is just yelling, keep moving, your hero. <laughs> like, what do you think I'm doing, dude? No, I remember this. But yeah, that was, that was good times. All right, Sven, what's yours? Uh, I got third in um, the one we Fistful of Tangos <laughs> and Lost of Fear. <laughs> you remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, my, I have a good play from that, too. Oh. I remember I dodged a Sonic Wave from S4. So, oh. so unironically, I actually went back and watched the VOD from You S4 did. I did. Yeah. That's such a Tsunami thing to do. It was a, uh, he, in game one, it was, he was playing Puck, you were playing Rubik. And, well, I think it's safe to say that I understand why Fear won that 1v1 challenge. That sounds, that sounds <laughs> believable. <laughs> Was it best of one? Oh, man. Uh, no, it was the best of three. I, game number two. So I, I think you guys had like a way that you could ban heroes or something. Yeah, there was. I don't remember yeah. anything. Probably. Cool. He does, though. Okay. Now, I, I think I remember now that we've remembered the tournament even existed. Correct. That there were bans. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to look forward instead of looking back because we are wrapping things up with the upper bracket here at Dream League Season 21. So let's take a look at the bracket all together and see what's left. We got wow. lower bracket games, elimination tomorrow. Wow. We've got Entity taking on a Gaming Gladiators, although it is an Entity that is going to have a slightly different roster, as I believe Stormstormer is attending his brother's wedding. And so... Oh. Yes. So it's only three of the original players. Correct. Instead of five. Or uh, what, yeah. Four. It's, uh, so their, their roster tomorrow, I believe, according to Fishman, is going to be Watson, Maureen, ATF, Kataomi, and Fishman. That's right. not a bad team. I mean, are, they, <laughs> are the gods just on gaming side or what? Like, they barely escape <laughs> elimination. Then and now all they of get sudden... to play against Malreen, so it's a free win. <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> no, then all of a sudden, like, other teams have to have stand-ins while playing against them. It was meant to they be. Yeah, gaming needs this. They suck. Well, yeah. Now, <laughs> now <laughs> hear me out. Malreen and Amar both have Timbersaw and Husker as the, some of their best Ooh. heroes, so they could flex them in two lanes now. That's too much overlap. They also play, none of but those anyway, heroes Shopify are meta. Shopify Rebellion Woo! back in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And games ends. we won't watch tomorrow, Shopify Rebellion are top three. <laughs> I'll Wait, tell you what is tomorrow? tomorrow then. Yes, let's see. OG oh. versus Nine Pandas is the other elimination game. But see, I no, told you it wasn't tomorrow. You lucked out, Sven. <laughs> We're not doing upper bracket finals quite yet. Instead, we will be doing the second set of lower bracket semifinals. It's Entity versus Gaiman at the top of the day, starting at 12 CESD, followed by OG versus Nine Pandas. Kazu, you got a favorite for those two? Ooh. Okay, in the OG match, I'll actually give it to OG. Okay. I feel like they've they've got the magic, they've got MC. Nine Pandas, a bit shaky for me. I still like them, so slight edge to OG. And was I supposed to give you the favorite for the first one? Hey, wait, before no. you jump to that one, Nine Pandas started out five and one, right? And now they're five and five. So they're coming off two O twos. Am Is I that wrong? True? Am I wrong in saying that? That would be actually pretty hilarious. I thought Nine <laughs> Pandas started out really, really that was good a and then right, lost. Right, left situation. Games I think so. I don't, I don't even know who BB team is playing, but they're going to BB lost. team is playing the winner of Entity Gaiman. Right, Who's right, your left. favorite, Fear? <laughs> right, right, left. Right, right, left? Yeah. BB team's got it? Yeah. Oh, so, so that means you have Gaiman, Nine Pandas, Nine Pandas and, then and Bed Boom. Pandas? Didn't they just lose two matches in a row? They got 2 would by Entity earlier. Oh. Nice job. And then they <laughs> split versus Tundra. <laughs> And then they, before that, they also lost to Shopify. So they got one win out of their past six games. Okay. So I thought I saw close. them at five and one. So it wasn't that. I guess they were. Well, I, I, technically, I guess numbers are. No, ma no matter whether it's exactly how it went down with the numbers, my point is they may be on a little bit of a downward trajectory. I think sure. that's fair to, that's say. Fair to Whereas say. Whereas OG mm -hmm. have kind of stabilized, I would say. And they've the got the part. magic. OG magic. And they've got, the, they got the magic. Do they? The they good have old stand in magic. Yeah, and Seb. How can you not say they have stand not in magic? magic. 
They're pretty stable. I don't know. If they what? You guys also doubted me on the Centaur. Let's believe me on the <laughs> Oh. Oh, okay. Then we're going to bring up the Centaur car for any argument now. <laughs> I think now. we should bring no, up no, your I, I, I predicted Centaur, so I'm right on everything from here on out. <laughs> I'm very serious, as you all know. I Absolutely mean everything I say. Infallible from here on out. Oh. Whatever that word is. <laughs> oh, I taught you a new word today. It's the precipice, of, you it's the precipice you, of English. God damn, I was going to quiz him, <laughs> but do you remember what it means? Yeah. Precipice. Yeah. What? When you're on the edge and you're about to do it, but then you get knocked down and you die. <laughs> well, we're on the well, edge. That's <laughs> not... Okay. Uh, about dying. Give me some points. It's all right. We're on the edge of the right. end of this broadcast. We're on the precipice of ending this broadcast. But before I do that, I also want to tell you that if you want to watch some live Dota and you weren't able to afford tickets to Seattle because you're not a millionaire, well, then I've got the next best thing. This December, we are running a tournament in Kuala Lumpur. It's ESL1 Malaysia Kuala Lumpur coming, and you should come to the next one. You can get tickets. They're on sale right now. And I hope they're still in stock. Because if not, I feel terrible for baiting you into being like, oh my god, there's a tournament? Oh, they're also. I would love to. Oh, wait, ah. it's sold out. <laughs> Thank you, Tsunami. But if you do the e ESL Dota DHL adventure, then you could win an opportunity to meet Slax at Kuala Lumpur. So the option's still on the table. Just or if you win the gift card. Happens. Win the gift card. <laughs> then you could spend the gift card money to go to this event. <laughs> there we go. There's ESL so many ways of going. And all provided by our proud sponsor of DHL. Yay! We yeah. love DHL. We love DHL. Yay. What a trip to meet Slacks. Sweaty Slacks. I love that they said yay twice and then win a trip to Slacks and spoon <laughs> <or> nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's it for us, my friends. Any closing thoughts? No? Kez was always right. Kez yeah, always I mean, right. Kez who's... RTZ PA, guys. Woo! Let's Woo! go! Let's go! Shout out to PA. Uh, oh, you tried miss. to make I me miss, to dude. Miss. What the hell? This guy's sabotaging <laughs> me on the couch. And you still hit because you're always right. Woo! Yeah! No, no, stop crying. <laughs> He's just imitating. <laughs> oh, that's a good throw. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I knew you were good at throwing. You always were. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap things up here, friends. I hope you've enjoyed yet another broadcast of a Dream League Season 21. And for one last time, it's the Pog <laughs> Champ Pandas.
Since the dawn of time, all have submitted to one true ruler. Fate, moments of euphoria, sorrow, acceptance, all are fleeting in the face of destiny. Yet only the bold dare defy this rule. Dare to triumph against all odds. Dare to rise above fate. You love it, you wear it, wear it. Wear your passion. <laughs> Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.